ends up striking out the side, and the Giants salvage a win in this three-game series, and they end up going three and three on this homestand. Oh, baby, oh, baby, oh, baby. Interesting start there. Giants get the win. They do lose the series to the Nationals. Jordan Hicks, what a game for him. Uh, I'm not going to take too much away from that. You play Patrick Corbin. Patrick Corbin's been one of the worst major league pitchers the last three seasons. But I do want to start here, Shaska. We'll get back to the Giants. We will talk some Giants at some point. But a good win for them, as you say. Good morning to everybody out there getting off the graveyard shift. If you're at work, what is happening? If you're getting ready for work, what is happening? Shout out to my local Starbucks, Iris, and this is Bologna. Oh, it's good yeah. to see you this morning. Marianne, we, we could have done a show right there, 5.15 in the morning. She's got material. Oh, she's got plenty of material. I was like, I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. <laughs> got to go. Trying to make it to work on time. But uh, good morning to everybody out there getting off the graveyard shift. The overnight dancers. Hopefully business is booming. The weather's starting to heat up a little bit. You know, people are getting outside a little uh, bit more. Uh, good morning to all the hoopers out there, all the NBA fans, all the students, all the teachers, everybody who's going through spring break the last two weeks. Uh, Lutman, Spadoni, Shasky, and also YouTube and Twitch brought to you by First NorCal Credit Union. Upgrade your savings dividend. Open a First NorCal First Class Money Market today. And you can now download the Odyssey app directly from our YouTube and Twitch pages as we, as we have added the QR code on both pages. All right, we're going to talk a little Giants at some point. They win yesterday 7-1, a much-needed win uh, against Patrick Corbin and the Washington Nationals. Patrick Corbin came in that game with the 6.97 ERA. Not so good, but I was watching a lot of basketball last night, Shasky. Had my binoculars on. And I'm watching the Nuggets and the T-Wolves. The boy, the different Nuggets look good. They look good. Jokic just was dominant. I mean, give me offense over defense all day in the NBA. Rudy Gobert had no shot against Jokic. I mean, no shot. Then I walk, flip over to Suns and Clippers. And the Clippers were basically playing their G League team, the Ontario Clippers, Ontario City Clippers, or whatever they're called. And KD and company had to play over 30 minutes the in that Ontario? game. Ontario? I, I mean, can I, I just say you're just brilliant? Keep going. No, I, I think that's their G Keep League going. affiliate. You're but on no, no. fire. You were no. on a mission. But today. listen, but listen. I'm getting wrapped up for the playoffs. I'm getting wrapped up. And we got the Warriors and Blazers tonight, but we're going to be watching Sacramento and the Pelicans to see what happens at the G1C. We'll be watching tomorrow to see what happens at the G1C between Phoenix and and uh, the Sacramento Kings. So all, I say all that to say I'm in playoff mode, you asking when it comes to all NBA right. basketball. I'm locked in. Are you ready for some numbers? Give me some numbers. Okay. ESPN put... ESPN put an entire breakdown of all the probabilities last night, and I went through the whole thing. I got a little more confused than I wanted to be, but for those that are scoring at home, are you ready? Are you ready? Win probabilities based off 17 different metrics that I don't understand, but let's just, yeah, let's just call it Bonte D2, okay? The Warriors are a lock, obviously, in the play-in. Right. Well, to, to make the 7-8 game, the probability... For the Warriors to make the 7-8 game, 35%. Okay. Higher than the Lakers at 13%. Just to let you know, okay? Higher than the Pelicans, who are at 20%. Now, to make the 9-10 game, obviously 65%. It's pretty straightforward. To make the playoffs outright, 48%. It's a coin flip. All right, so let, let, let's break it down to the, forget all the probabilities and the analytics. To get I'll, it, I'll, 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 get, I'll, I'll keep it simple for everybody. So the Warriors, if they want to be the number eight seed, they either need Sacramento to lose two of three, or they need the Pelicans to lose every single game the rest of the way, <laughs> which is three games. I love rooting for losers. So, so I do too. And listen, it may not work out. So my my thing is, you need Sacramento to lose two of three. Because if the Pelicans, they could lose to Sacramento, they could lose to the Warriors. But what would the Lakers do in New Orleans on Sunday? Would they rest LeBron and AD? <laughs> would they play their guys? I... Because that would give the Pelicans a win, and then the Warriors would be stuck in nine, and they'll be hosting the LA Lakers in a playing well, game at Chase Center. Is Anthony Davis still having non-concussion-like symptoms and retina Nasha. eye surgery? Nasha. Cyclops? Nasha. Nasha for AD. It's like the Odyssey for the Lakers. You know, they're, they're going to go up against the Cyclops. They're going to, you know, go on, go on this long Odyssey, this journey. I'm going Greek mythology on you. Uh, will they rest? I would think they would rest those guys. Yeah, on, you? The, on the Sunday, yeah. if they're locked into the 10 seed, there's no reason for LeBron and AD to play, which is why I look at Sacramento. I need Sac to lose two of three. 
I need the Pelicans to win tonight without Brandon Ingram. And I need the Suns to win tomorrow. Something's going on with Phoenix. I watched that game, and KD's just standing in the corner on most possessions. No wonder Frank Vogel's on a hot so, seat. That yeah. offense is so remedial, and it's just Devin Booker, my turn. Bradley Beal, your turn. KD should be the second option on that team. Well, it's interesting. You said something in the thread last night that I had saw. Again, I'm not pretending that one game encapsulates where a person is at. It's his end of the year. He was hurt last year. But what did you say in our group thread last night? There seems to be a little slippage with this off-the-ball movement. Okay. Off the ball movie. So, Michelle, my wife, and I went down to, to Phoenix, and we went to go visit Nash, and we went uh -huh. to that game that they lost. They got destroyed by the Denver Nuggets. I believe yep. it was the second round. It was the exit yep. game. Yep. I mean, it might have been Kevin Durant's worst game as a professional, so I, I'm, I'm granting him that. But she kept saying, I can't believe how slow he is. I can't believe how he can't explode, because... Even when he was at his zenith, my wife wasn't the biggest fan of him. She just right. didn't like his attitude. Right. She thought he was a whiner, and he played angry, and she didn't like that. And she loved that Draymond used to punk him. My wife and I could not see eye to eye on that, but that's fine. Neither here nor there. Yeah. But she kept saying, he doesn't look fast. He yeah. doesn't look like he can jump. And I was like, ah, it's one game. It's the end of the year. But all year this year, no, he, he's still remarkable. He's seven right. feet tall. He can get his shot up. But B, he's not the same player. The Warriors the got the best years of KD. No doubt. I don't. I don't think anybody uh, watching basketball is gonna is gonna disagree that the best years of Kevin Durant were in OKC and in Golden State. No doubt. And look, the first year in Brooklyn, he was dynamic. I mean, Kevin Durant. Let's not let's not get he's it an all time here. great. He's still dropping twenty seven seven and five. Right. He's twenty seven seven and five with the just raw data. But just watching it last That's night. That's what I'm saying. He's taking a lot of possessions off. And obviously he had the Achilles tendon injury. I mean, for crying out loud, Kevin Durant's 35 years old. <laughs> He's 35 years old. These guys are not going to be the same and be prime players throughout their entire career. But there is a little slippage. For sure. A little. Just a little down tick there. Just like Steph Curry, there's a little down tick. Yeah. LeBron James, there's a little down tick in certain areas. And they're compensating, overcompensating for it in other areas. But Kevin Durant, I just look at that team and the way they play. Now, Devin Booker's a special, special oh, player. He's one of, one the, of the most dynamic one-on-one -on -one players in this league. But it's a lot of him ball pounding for the first 20 seconds of the shot clock. And that's where Phoenix not having a true point guard. Yes, they miss Chris Paul. They missed Chris Paul yeah. in a tremendous way because he would get them in their sets. Instead, it's Bradley Beal and Devin Booker, who are not natural point guards. And then Kevin Durant is just, when he does move, they don't get the ball to him. So then he's just kind of standing in the corner. Like his last season with the Warriors, remember how he would just stand in the corner yeah. and just chill? I'm seeing the same size there with KD in Phoenix. And I saw a lot of that. Dude, they struggled. The, the Clippers didn't play Westbrook, James Harton, Kawhi Leonard, or Paul George. Bones Highland went out there and dropped 37 on them. We, they were dropping, they had Amir Coffey, Terrence Mann, Plum Lee Tucker, Boston Jr. I mean, it was literally JV versus varsity. And the Clippers were up at the half. I was like, I can't believe this now. I had a little rooting interest because I had KD and a couple props for uh, prize picks. Thanks, Jante. You know, uh, the Jante Porter who may be banned from the no, league. Maybe? No, will be. <laughs> you want to talk about what you mean to a sport? Look at the contrast between Otani getting yes. a pass by the federal government <laughs> and Jante Porter basically going to get you know eviscerated right. off the planet. Right. No, it's no doubt there. So, uh, Phoenix, Phoenix, but however, Phoenix winning that game means the Warriors have no more hopes of going to seven or six. They're stuck in the play in. So it's eight or bust. It's eight or bust. So can we explore something before we move on? The Kevin Durant divorce from the Golden State Warriors and Steph Curry. We've won the divorce, correct? Yeah, they got a championship. KD doesn't. But, like, had they not gotten the championship, isn't it still... Kind of an L for Kevin Durant. It's it's an his L legacy for both. has not it's, been enhanced. It's an L for both. You know, it's because like if you sign KD, if you if KD says I want to stick with the Golden State Warriors, I want to sign here, re-sign here, then that means there's no Draymond Green. And how does that work out? Oh, I didn't I didn't think about that. Because yeah. Draymond Green, once KD walked and went over to Brooklyn, signed with the Brooklyn Nets. That's a good. Point. Draymond got his hundred million dollars. Yeah. Not this time around. Look, he's got another hundred million dollars, obviously, in his past all season. But KD, basically, that last season with the Golden State Warriors, it was misery. No, I know it was. I'm just saying, like in terms of like perception, you know, league wide. Right. 
I, I just feel like Kevin Durant's legacy has taken a big hit, and it's it sucks because uh, yeah. everywhere he's gone, it feels like it's imploded. Yeah, I mean, just think about the Brooklyn situation. I, they go to the playoffs. <laughs> Kyrie gets hurt. James Harden turns into a dog. And, and they, Kevin Durant is a quarter of an three inch. inches yeah. away from eliminating the Milwaukee Bucks in a game seven. A season in which the Milwaukee Bucks win the NBA championship. That, that was, was the Brooklyn's, high water mark since being divorced to dude, Steph. And and, Ste and KD lost that game. They lose that game. And KD was elevated because yeah, of his I agree performance. With you. Like, I, oh my God, Kevin Durant. We just appreciate his greatness. Appreciate his greatness. And Giannis after the game said, man, Kevin Durant's the best player in the league. Then the next year, they get swept by the Boston Celtics in the first round. Yeah. In the first round, he got swept. But they, they've been a nightmare. I mean, he... Steph's never been swept. I, <laughs> I, I just like all the teammates that he signed. At one point, they made a trade for Ben Simmons, and he wasn't going to play for them. And it was just... It's been it's been a nightmare for him. And then going to Phoenix, it hasn't worked out the way that he expected wow. it to. And they gutted that roster, too, to, yep. to try to go all in for this year. And they, they went with Bradley Beal. And I don't think that that's been... I, that has not been successful, has it? No. I no, mean, like... Not even close. Bradley Beal hasn't been on the floor. The thing I don't understand, they miss... <laughs> Why did they give up on Mikael Bridges? Well, they go get Kevin Durant. Oh, I know. I'm. I, I yeah. mean, uh, I'm not Kael Bridges. Who's yeah. the guy they traded for for uh, to to get Bradley Beal? Oh, Chris Paul. Chris Paul, but Chris Paul. <laughs> I, but that's the point guard they needed. Right. That's what I just said. I just said that. Like they miss Chris Paul because in the fourth quarter they don't have a floor general. But what was it? They attitude have, with him last no, year? Did it no, no, they fit? just no. He got hurt in the playoffs. I know that he got hurt. And, and but I know they, Aiden and they was just a stopped, malcontent. And they just stopped. They just no. Eddie Johnson, to this day, he said it on this show. He said it on those, when he joined us on uh, NBC Sports Bay Area for Warriors pre and post game live. He loves Chris Paul. He says he's a total professional. You know what? Eddie Johnson's not lying. No, I'm Chris talking Paul's about Aiden. What happened? Like, oh, DeAndre Aiden. Oh, well, Buddy Williams and Aiden, they got into it uh, a couple years prior. And Aiden just did eight. They. It's funny, they play Aiton today uh, up in Portland. He's putting up some numbers recently. But Aiton just his relationship, Portland. his relationship with that organization just soured. It soured. So, But that that's not why they're losing. They no, 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 guard. no. I'm just saying. They like, traded Chris Paul. That whole they scene. They traded Chris Paul because, you know, he's 38, 39. He got hurt in back-to-back -back playoffs. You see what happened against Dallas when they, got lost, by, when they lost by 30 in Game 7. And they just thought, well, we can go get Bradley Bill. And this whole myth with Bradley Bill, like, he's a very – Good player, but I like he's been elevated to greatness, and I just don't. I don't subscribe to it. I think it's a high volume shooter who needs a ball in his hands. He doesn't make guys better around him. He's a special talent, but I never saw the fit with him in the Golden State Warriors. Whenever somebody said, "Go get Bradley Beal," go get Bradley Beal, I'm like, "Huh, Bradley Beal? Why?" Now Bradley Beal's played in 51 games this season. How many games has he checked out of? You know what I'm saying? Due That's to hamstring accurate. injuries or leg injuries, so they're just not. They don't have any chemistry, but Kevin Durant, Kevin Durant and his legacy, like Stephen Curry's legacy has been elevated. It's been cemented. Especially with the championship yes, and the finals absolutely. MVP to win without KD. Because absolutely. for some reason it was, you got to win without Kevin Durant. You got to win without Kevin well, Durant. he did. He did. And he carried them. And Kevin Durant has been swept out of the playoffs. And he's been humiliated in elimination games by 30. By 30. So, you know, KD, if he would have stayed here, how would it have worked out? You know, Clay Thompson and KD would have been out the entire next season. I don't know how it would have been. To me, Kevin Durant signing with the Golden State Warriors, I never thought he'd be here for more than four years. I never, when he signed here back in 2016, yeah. I was happy as hell, Shasky. I know we I, all were. But I never thought he was going to end his career with the Golden State Warriors. Uh, well, okay, that, that I would probably agree I, I just with. Never but thought. I thought he'd be here longer than what he did. Three years? Yeah, that's that's a short period I thought of time. Four, I thought four years, maybe. Okay. But well, with the way that last year played maybe out. Maybe I was delusional. Well, no, 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 it's fine. Some people thought that. Some people thought but that. The, yeah, I you're thought, right. But, As the season played out. I, I, I'm not even, I'm not even, you were there. I'm not even trying to be 2020 hindsight here. Yeah. I'm not. When he signed here, I thought, boy, they're going to have KD for at least four years. I thought a four year okay. and then boom, everybody yeah. will move on because of salary structure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe he wants to move on. I don't know. I just never thought he would retire a member and go to St. Warriors. But three years and you go to three straight NBA finals and you win two championships, I'll take that all day long. But the way that last year played out with the go to St. Warriors, he's miserable. He was not happy playing basketball. It was so like going to those games, Shasky, and being in those locker rooms and going to the media, like to the pressers or whatnot. And I was in there when he went at Ethan Sherman Straw support Whitley. She thought he was talking to him because she was sitting next to Ethan. And I was like, no, nah, that was he was coming at Ethan, not Whitley. 
He was cool with Willie. He was cool with all of us. It just was miserable. It's like, but, damn, he's gone. He's gone just like that. He's going to leave. Can we explore this just, just a little bit more? We'll move on. I know. But like, because I find this very interesting. Like when Shaq and Kobe separated, there was no like, oh, well, Shaq got the title first and then Kobe got a couple. And like, we, we do this. Like we, we try to, who won the divorce? I think Kevin Durant has to look back at his warrior time differently today than he did two years ago. How do you think he ago. looks at it? I think now, like, sometimes the grass isn't always greener. Yeah. I, you know, and I, I think that he thought he was going to go on and win championships, and no matter where he went, they were going to win and waltz into the, the Western Conference Finals or Eastern Conference Finals, excuse me, uh, w with with no problem because he is that good. That That's how good he is. But I, I just think that we, we underrate how hard it is to build a team around guys. Yeah. You know, like, and, he, I, and, he had, and, he, and he threw all his eggs in the Kyrie Irving and James Harden basket. And it, look, here's the thing, too. I, I don't even. I don't know if he's going to look back and say, "Boy, I regret leaving Golden State." No, not regret, I wonder, but I think but he'll I look wonder, more fondly today about his Golden State tenure than he did two years ago, however, uh, three years ago. I always think. I think about KD like this. How's that? What if he didn't sign with Brooklyn? He signed with the New York Knicks. What do you now? What do you mean by that? You signed with the new, wrong New York team. Brooklyn in New York City, the Brooklyn Nets are completely irrelevant. Yeah. It is a Knicks town through and through. Yeah, that that, that nobody yeah. cares about the Brooklyn Nets. Yeah. Nobody. And if he would have signed with the Knicks, it got Kyrie to say because Rich Kleiman, his manager, for Room Thirty Five, all that stuff. Oh, yeah. He wanted him to be with the Knicks. Another guy with podcast. Like, yeah, yeah, but he wanted him to be with the Knicks. Yeah. And when you go to New York City, he could have been that guy where LeBron spurred the Knicks. All these stars spurred the Knicks. No one. He could have been. But Jalen, KD, KD could have been that guy. So you think that all the same stuff plays out, but it happens for the Knicks, and he's elevated? I think so. If he, if he, interesting. I think he's elevated with New York City. You're probably right because New York. I mean, they elevated Julius desperate. Randle to exactly. superstar status, and I don't think he's even close. Exactly. You're kind of right, exactly. actually. Now you know what? You know, I, so, you're, you're so right. Like if he was signed with the Knicks you're, you're and Kyrie right. for some reason right. wanted to go to Brooklyn, right. they should have gone to Madison Square Garden, the Mecca, the Mecca. But then you'd have to work for James Dolan. That's tough. And the facial technology, I mean, you know, whatever the hell he's got getting into the stadium. Yes, I mean, that's that's one thing, but I'm sure they could have looked past that. But, I mean, that I don't know, man. It's, it, I hope it doesn't end like this for Kevin Durant. It sucks because he's an all-time great. He is. And my appreciation for him I, is through the roof, and, people, and I just... Well, people just disrespect him. Like, like no, he's that is on so Twitter, unfair. And these fans unfair. just come out here saying he's got meaningless rigs, and his rigs don't matter. I mean, come on. They don't count. I mean, the vitriol he gets from fans... These young fans, it's just, and he claps back at them to his credit. But what could have been? Don't you think that him being a quote unquote top 10 player of all time is pretty much off the table? Why? Why would it be off the table? It just, it just, it feels like we've seen the best of him. And like, whereas. There was a point in time where I never thought Steph would be considered a lock top 10. And, and maybe there are people still holding out on this, but where Steph was never going to be viewed as a lock top 10 player of all time. And then he wins that other championship and it's like, boom, he, you're talking about elevated. He's, he's in the top 10 for the majority of people that are right. watching. And then it feels like KD just won't get that benefit of the uh, doubt. He'll uh, always be a oh, top five score of all time, top 10 score guy to get a bucket, but not one of those type of players. I don't, I, I feel like it's people crazy. Don't take that next leap. Yeah. I mean, his career averages, I mean, they're unreal. 27 points a game, seven rebounds, four and a half assists. He's a lifetime 50% shooter from the floor, a lifetime 38.7, three point percent shooter, Kevin Durant. So I top 10, I, I think he'd be about top 10. Who are you 10. bumping out? He'd be in my top 10. I don't know who I'll bump it Who's out. Who's had a better career real quick? Because I know we got to hit the break. Yeah. Kawhi Leonard or Kevin Durant? Kevin Durant's had the better career. Kawhi has the, the more significant moments. moments. Yeah. But, but at the same time, Kevin they, Durant has the, the three-point shot over LeBron James. Twice, two years two in a row. Two years in a row. Yeah. But Kawhi, be, winning the championship in Toronto was one of the all-time great moments. And then beating the Heat, right? Like where, where but, but LeBron's you know, at the free throw line. He's, and here comes Kawhi going to check in. But, and LeBron's like, oh, my God. But here's my guy, Fitz. Bob Fitzgerald, throw an asterisk on that Toronto championship. We all know they don't win if Kevin Durant but, plays. But, but, but it, it Kevin happened. Durant came back in See, the no, first no, quarter in game five. One. Game five, Kevin Bob, Durant. Make sure you don't miss that break, bro. All right, let me not make, miss See, that break. See, why can't we just hold the L? Yeah, it, it, it happens. The other can, team beat us. Uh, no, that's fine, but it's it's reality. They don't win that series if KD. KD scared the living daylights out of that country in the first quarter, game five. 
they were like, oh, this series Tony is Tony Dorsett over. doesn't separate his shoulder in the first quarter. The Dallas well, Cowboys win that NFC well, that, championship Well, no, that's game. not Come fair. On. That's not fair. Well, then, that's not fair. Kevin Durant's an all-time great. you telling me he doesn't make a difference? I mean, the Warriors are starting Quinn Cook in Game 3 of that series. And Alfonso McKinney. It's the Warriors game day presented by Xfinity. Yay! At home or on the go, you'll get the fastest internet to all of your devices. What is coming up on the game? Brought to you by Fremont Bank, full service banking, no compromises. For 10 minutes, we're going to have some fun. We're going to talk to my girl Fatima Amin Ra from the Alameda Wolves. We got something cooking here with Fatima Amin Ra. Uh, we'll break that down on the other side. That's coming up. Brought to you by Fremont Bank, full service banking, no compromises. Hey, Bay Area, find your fill
It's Draymond Green. Tip-off is coming later today with the great Tim Roy. And then tune in to the Morning Roast tomorrow morning for the best Warriors coverage. Draymond Green. Draymond Green. Questionable today. Right knee bruise. Right knee contusion. Basically a bruise. Right knee contusion. Uh, we'll get the red light in San Francisco in just a sec. Do we uh should we take this call? No, no, let's get let's get to my home girl. I believe she was playing in the Royals World Tournament. Uh she's a founder and CEO of the Women's Premier Basketball Association, Fatima Amara. And she's gonna join us here on the Morning Ross on 957 the game to talk about this league, to talk about her hoop dreams. She has one hell of a story. Fatima, good morning. How are you? Good. <laughs> Good morning. I'm so happy to be here. Um, yeah, let's get into it. It, it. Weren't you in the World's World Tournament this past summer? I was. I was. I was getting a couple of buckets. A great event. I had an amazing time. Um, got to see a lot of great hoopers out there. So, you know, it's always fun to get a hoop and get the community coming together. Hold on, hold on, Fatima. We're going to get you a yeah, better your, line your here. You're breaking up a little, little bit, a little bit here. Uh, but this, what do you know about this league, Shaskin? Well, basically, you know, uh, if you read the story, there was a, an, an article written in the Chronicle yep. about the league. Um, Fatima bounced around looking yep. for places to to, to play and, and going overseas and whatnot. And the opportunities are few and far between yep. for women hoopers, yep. and they have to go overseas. I mean, everybody's kind of now aware of what happened to Brittany Griner having to play yeah. overseas, even though she's in the WNBA because. Because there's just not enough um, money to pay decent salaries for some of these these high level athletes, and so there's a, a lack of opportunities. And they're trying to give people uh, who maybe would be on the fringes of playing professional basketball more of a spotlight and a league to play in. And mm -hmm. so she's pioneered this league after a really arduous journey herself, trying to find a league to play in. Yeah, the founder of the Women's Premier Basketball Association started in 2022. Eight teams right here in the Bay Area. <clears throat> we're going to back on a line in just a second because I want to ask her what made her start up this league because I think you're on to something here. All right, we got Fatima back. All right, Fatima, we got you back here. Founder of the Women's Premier Basketball Association right here in the Bay Area. Started in 2022 with eight teams right here in the Bay Area. Fatima, what made you start this league up? Uh, I mean, I've gone through so many things in my career as being a professional athlete and, you know, I just have a huge love for the Bay Area and, you know, this has definitely been a part of my journey. So when it came time for me to start the Women's Premier Basketball Association, the one thing I had in mind was creating more opportunities for the women in my community. Um, there's a lot of amazing basketball players in the Bay that, you know, sometimes don't get the recognition that they deserve or, you know, know what steps needed to be taken in order to get to the next level. So I wanted to use my experience with being overseas and networking with individuals during my time being a professional athlete and bring that back here to the Bay Area so I can provide as many opportunities, not only for, you know, the players in the league, but just, you know, members within our community. I love that. Now, you know, I think a lot of people, like, in their minds, uh, you know, the, the male athlete, they, they go to high school, and then they go to college, or if they're, you know, inclined, they go to the G League, and then they want to go to the NBA. We don't think about the, you know, the non-traditional pass. Where have basketball taken you after high school, after college? Because you've traveled all over the globe, it looks like. Yeah, no. I mean, my path wasn't a traditional path. Like, I graduated from Encino High School over in Alameda. I wasn't, you know, a high player at that time. So I had to go to the JUCO route, and I had to figure it out. And, you know, I bounced around, you know, a few schools. And by the time, you know, I was down to my last year of eligibility, I had to make a decision. So I ended up going back to my hometown in Toronto, where they have five years of eligibility within the collegiate system as opposed to four years of eligibility oh. within the NCAA system. Yeah, so it was a numbers game at that point. So I bet on myself, <laughs> took the leap of faith, went out to Toronto, ended up uh, graduating from Ryerson University. But, you know, during that time there, I wasn't a player that always got a bunch of minutes. But I think the biggest thing I could use to my advantage is the fact that I was a part of winning programs. Every team, most of the teams that I'd been in, that I'd planned during college, I was around a winning culture. So I knew what it took to be able to get to that next level. And, you know, when it came down to me graduating and, you know, at that point, I'm only averaging like 3.5 points per game, but I have dreams and aspirations of becoming a professional athlete. So I have to, at this point, 
change my focus, figure out, okay, what do I need to do to be able to make this happen? Because at this point, it's a long shot, you know? So, you know, during that summer after I graduate um, in 2017, I, I get to it. I'm trying to go to any combine or, you know, be a part of any team that I think will be able to help me get to the next level. And, you know, it's hard, especially as a woman, like there's not very many opportunities, especially back then when I was starting out to figure out, okay, where do I get from here to the next level? So uh, ended up being able to uh, get my first pro uh, start over in El Salvador um, ended wow. up being the second leading scorer there. Yeah, I, I had to put up crazy numbers. I was having like 30 points per game. Nah, I, I, <laughs> we saw that in the story. I was like, man, you're out there getting buckets, but the living conditions <laughs> weren't right. I heard you was out there sleeping the with living. cockroaches, Fatima. No, 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 seriously. Hey. Like, it was rough out there, huh? No, it was rough. And if you don't love it, like anyone would have just thrown in the towel from, from the jump, you know? But I'm out there. They didn't even pay me on time. Well, we won't get into it. But again... Like I really had to love the game enough to be able to recognize that, you know, I need to take care of business right now. It's not always going to be like this. I'm going to have other opportunities moving forward. I just need to get past this to show that I'm worthy and I'm deserving of an opportunity at the next level. This is is incredible. So you created this league. There's eight teams. Let's say you're driving around with uh, a young daughter in the car or a young boy in the car. A lot of parents say they maybe can't afford a warrior game or or it just doesn't work for them or whatever. How can they come support you guys? How can they come watch you? Because I've, coach girls basketball for the longest time. I got a niece playing at St. Ignatius right now, and, and I'm sure she would love to go out to a game. So you know, where, where can we come watch you guys play? How can we come support this league? Uh, we would love to have as many people come out and support the league. Right now we're in the process of solidifying a gym for this season, but our start date is June 1st. You can find all of the information on womenspba.com. We're more so active on our Instagram at womenspba, but I mean, I'm huge on representation and I was once, you know, a young girl that didn't really have people to look up to. So I had to, you know, find players in the Bay Area with established rears. Like, for example, Alexis Ray Lawson, like she was an amazing big sister mentor. She went to Tech, won some championships there, went to Cal, was an amazing player and then, you know, ended up being a professional player in the W and then obviously overseas. But, you know being able to see her go through what she had to go through only helped to um, keep me motivated within my journey. So I want to be able to show the next generation of athletes within the Bay area, um, you know, that maybe if the W isn't their first option or isn't a possibility for them, they can still be able to play high level basketball and create other avenues for themselves. So, yeah. I just hit, we're at. <laughs> I just hit I just hit a uh, follow on Instagram yep. for everybody out there uh women's PBA yep. it, it, it co- pops right on up yep. hit that subscribe button and, and best of luck to you Fatima we're we're proud of you uh keep fighting this fight man I know you're working long days to keep this league going and with the WNBA coming to town you never know what opportunities may come for you around that organization or whatnot so keep doing what you're doing Hell yeah. and supporting women's college basketball women's professional basketball and you know what it's on a heater right now cuz I sure in the hell enjoyed the women's tournament a lot better than the men's tournament this past season facts oh my gosh it was an exciting one and it's an exciting time for women's sport so again i'm a huge advocate for pushing that needle forward we're creating spaces for women to be more successful and i I just want to be able to see you know what's in store for us in the future so the more support the better i appreciate you guys thank you for you know giving me a platform to be able to share what the Women's Premier Basketball Association is doing for the community. So thank you guys. And, and Fatima, I may need you on my team I was next just season for the World's War Tournament. Yeah, thank you. He <laughs> needs a ringer. I, I, we were struggling out there. I know you saw me out there. It was not It was not a good look. Pick me up. I'm, I'm ready. You know, we have a lot of amazing women in the league as well that would love to be able to play in the well, Warriors World Tournament. So... I, We're available. Pick us up. I now need some I'm, shooters. I need some shooters, Fatima. You could be Tom Hanks, and this could be kind of like a, <laughs> a league of their own. A league of their own. Yeah, you no have a, we'll a full the, women's team we'll, out there, and we'll, you're running things. Hey, we'll run the show, Fatima. I like that. I, I was watching Fatima out there. I'm sure she got handled. I was Let's watching Fatima. <laughs> hey, keep Let's us posted. Let's do it. Please keep us posted, and when yep. you guys secure a gym and everything, uh, yeah. we'll, we'll jump back on so we can get everybody out in the Bay Area to come support you, all right? I love that. Thank you so much. If I can, I would love to share one more thing with you guys. Um, We're in the process of raising money for the league this year. 
We have a fundraiser that's live. We could definitely use more support okay. from the community to help, you know, put this, amplify this league as much as possible. So if you guys can support us in that way, we would appreciate it so much. The link to our fundraiser is in our uh, bio in um, our Instagram page. Okay. It's in the link, of course. Yeah. Um, but yeah. All right, Fatima. Appreciate the support. Good stuff. Perfect. Good stuff, yeah. Fatima. Hell yeah. Fatima Amara here on the Morning Ross on 95 Game, founder of the Women's Premier Basketball Association right here in the Bay Area. Started in 2022. Eight teams here in the Bay, and she's a Bay native, of course. Fatima, take care. Thanks for the time this morning. Thank you, guys. Have a blessed one. You Very too. Cool. You, you too. too. Fatima Amara, we'll keep it moving there. Good stuff there from Fatima and support this league, yeah, man. At I like what she's PBA. doing. And she's been, if you read her story, Carlo Torino did a great incredible. piece on her. And this piece was written back on June 23rd of 2023. It's one hell of a story about Fatima and the grind she's gone through, the journey she's gone through with her family and her personal career. So uh, go ahead and read that story. Go support her. All right, we'll keep it moving here. We'll talk a little Giants before pivoting to Warriors. Big game for the Warriors. Big implications in the NBA right now. The NBA is on fire as we ramp up for the playoffs and the play-in tournament. That's all coming up. Brought to you by Fremont Bank. Full service banking. No compromises. The greatest American rock and roll band in history. Aerosmith. Presents Peace Out. The
Brandon Kaczynski. Hey, Dub Nation, it's Brandon Wajemski, and you're listening to The Morning Roast with Bonte Hill and Joe Shasky on 95.7 The Game. This segment brought to you by Go to State Lumber, serving the Bay Area for three generations. When you succeed, we succeed. Visit go to statelumber.com. Pods on the heater right now, 58% for the three point line over his last five games, shooting over 51%. It's good to see Pods bounce back and play well. Really impressed with the rookie, Trace Jackson Davis. Impressed with him. We'll talk to Chris DeMarco, assistant head coach of the Warriors, at 9.30. We have Anthony Slater coming up at, the, at 8 o'clock. He's live in Portland, Oregon. And these playoff scenarios here, we'll get to let's get to squeeze in some Giants in a second. But just real quick for all the Warrior fans out there, as we pivot the Giants, we'll get right back into the Warriors. But here's what you need to know. Suns win over the Clippers means the Warriors can't pass the Phoenix Suns in the standings. So go to State's hopes for the number eight seed. Now rest on the shoulders of Sacramento and New Orleans. Now, Sacramento plays the Pelicans tonight. If Sacramento lose, they lose to the Pelicans, which they've done. <laughs> I, think, I don't think they beat the Pelicans all season. If I'm not mistaken, Spinoni, look this up. The Pelicans have been a bad matchup for the, for the Kings, although Brandon Eager was not playing tonight. Pels win, and then you need Sac to lose tomorrow to Phoenix. So if Sacramento loses two of three, and the Warriors go three and oh, the Warriors will jump up to the eighth seed. Now, if the Pelicans lose all three games and the Warriors go 3-0, the Warriors will jump up to eight, and they'll be playing the Kings in a 7-8 game. However... 4-0 against them this year. So can 3-0? you... 4-0. I oh, think the because of IST. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 4-0 against them. Can you do me a favor? Yeah. Spadoni, we're doing on-air stuff here. I need the Scarface... Fly, Pelican, fly. Come on, Pelican. Pull that up. We're going to have that ready. We're right. going to play that all day. So, so rooting for the Pelicans to play the King or to jump the Kings. Yes. So you get the Pelicans. Now, here's a situation that I do, I could see happening here. Give it to me. I can see the Kings splitting these next two games, beating the Pels or Suns, and then beating the Blazers on Sunday to keep that spot in the 7 8 game. Mm. Then I can see the Pelicans losing two straight to the Kings and the Warriors. But going back home on Sunday, they host the L.A. Lakers, and the Lakers at that point may have nothing to play for. They may have nothing to play for. And I can see them resting LeBron, resting AD, which gives the Pelicans a win. It keeps the Warriors at nine if they do go 3-0. I think you want to get the eight seed. No matter what. Because you'll want to win the 7-8. To now avoid Denver in that first round, you get what I'm saying. You see Denver last a hundred percent. Denver, astute. So Denver, this is crazy. So when their starting five is intact and healthy, and that's Nikola Jokic, mm -hmm. Jamal Murray, mm -hmm. Michael Porter Jr., mm -hmm. Aaron Gordon, mm -hmm. and Contavious Caldwell Pope, mm -hmm. when they're healthy, they are fifty-one and seven in their last fifty-eight home games. Fifty-one and seven. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's not bad. It's pretty good. It's not bad. So basically, what I'm saying, that stat tells me, is they don't lose at home when they're healthy. And uh, I, we know about the Mile High City. I still believe <laughs> that like they're the most vulnerable in the first round. Maybe. But yeah. But Jokic, yesterday in his post-game interview, he dropped. You know, we understand we get the one seed. We may have to play the Lakers or Warriors. So they're already thinking about it. Oh. They already know, like, okay, we got to wrap up for either LeBron or Steph Curry. But last night, Jokic, this is just insane. Rudy Gobert, supposed to be the defensive player of the year. <laughs> Nikola Jokic, <laughs> 41 points, 11 rebounds, 7 assists, 3 steals. He was 16 of 20 from the floor. Did you see the Bron uh, Brown dunk on Gobert? Oh, I saw it. I watched the whole entire. It was amazing. Christian Brown came out. I mean, he was hooping yesterday. He had, what, 8 points off the bench? Yeah. <laughs> this is incredible. This Jokic sixteen to twenty gets a defensive player of the year. Rudy Gobert. To me, it's Operation Get into the seven eight game. Get seven eight. Yep. Operation Get into the seven eight game. Now, yep. well, now Shasky with the tiebreaker, OKC is two. Minnesota's three. I'll take OKC. I'd much Denver. rather play OKC yeah. than, a, than a Minnesota T Wolves. I'll see Minnesota the second round if I need to. So OKC. That side of the bracket's the better side of the bracket to yep. be on. So here's OKC schedule. Tomorrow, they host the Milwaukee Bucks. No, Giannis Antetokounmpo. Well, they won last night without... They did. Or they beat Orlando. Your Orlando. My Orlando Magic. Held they them can, under they 100. Have, they have no shooting, man. They just have no shooting whatsoever. Um, 
<laughs> say, I love Paulo. They got no shooting. Uh, so Milwaukee, they host Milwaukee, OKC, tomorrow night in OKC. Okay. I can see OKC winning that game. All right. And then they end the season against the Dallas Mavericks. Now, Dallas right now is a game behind the LA Clippers for their four spot. Wow. They went from seven, six, five, four right. all in a week. Now, the Clippers, they got a cupcake schedule here. <sighs> They've got the Utah Jazz and the Houston Rockets. I feel like we've spent, as a nation, we've spent more time on the Clippers than the actual L.A. area <laughs> spends on the Clippers. <laughs> I just, I, they're, they're a team just wasting a playoff Dude, spot. You, know, you just don't they're know. They're not what, going anywhere. No, you just know. You just never know what you're going to get from Kawhi. No, I do know. Hard, they're they're not going to win. Come on, you tell me you love Westbrook They'll on win that team. a series. You think they beat Dallas in the first I round? I don't know. But I'm just saying, like, in general, like, they could win a series. No one believes in the Clippers. Would you be surprised if they honestly went to the Western Conference Finals? Yes, I'd be shocked. Oh, okay, all right. You I would? would? No, I wouldn't. I would not be. Someone's getting hurt on that That's team. That's what I'm like, saying. Come on. There's more medical tape on the floor when that team is out there than any other team in they, professional they sports. Are, they are unbelievable. They I are mean, a fascinating a watch. They're, but the Dallas Mavericks are a game behind the L.A. Clippers. Let me see who has that tiebreaker. Uh, but basically, our rooting interest, Shasky, either Sacramento loses 2 or 3 or the Pelicans lose out and the Warriors go 3-0. That's what it boils down to. Let's go, pals. So, first of all, first things first. Warriors have to go 3-0. Well, they, and yeah. they can't eat the cheese tonight. And you know what the cheese is? The rat, rat, rat poison. The rat poison. You, I, I don't know what you did last night to sleep. You were in a mood today. I love it. Oh, I got some great sleep. It was Pelican, me. Play, you come know, on, Pelican. There it is. <laughs> there it is. That Scarface, Tony Montana, sitting in the bathtub or whatever the heck he was in. Do it one more time. Pelican, play. Come on, Pelican. Come on. Pelicans. So Michelle What's, Pfeiffer is like, all you ever talk about is money. He exactly. Doesn't even respond to her, just says that. Oh, it's the By the best. way, speaking of money, Chaz asked Pelican. for the money song. Pink Floyd. Papa, play money. Papa, play money. And then she just bounces with me. Really? Get the song. Yeah. My, I'm feeling good because we, <laughs> I miss that. Hey, dude. Listen, we, we, we're we feeling good because we hit the pool yesterday. Uh huh. And the pool wears you out, man. It really does. Yeah. Back and forth. Back and forth. Uh, the Clippers. <laughs> what, what? What else is there to do? <laughs> I mean, it's just you're doing a lot of jumping. You're <laughs> jumping in the water. Like you're jumping in the water. You're getting underwater. Front the games in the hot play? tub. Side to side. It's just side to side. You're talking to people. You're jumping. Thanks, Ti. Yeah, you're doing flips into the pool. You you jumping in backwards. So wait, wait. You were doing flips. I'm visualizing I wasn't doing flips. you. I wasn't doing flips. Doing flips no, in the pool. I do. I I that's one of my moves is the padded flip and it's not a full flip anymore it's yeah. like a, a belly three flop. quarter flip it's a belly flop and uh, I get in trouble every time why do you get in trouble because the lifeguards don't want you flipping in a in a less than eight foot pool oh well we don't have a lifeguard so, so the second the lifeguard turns at least up the river uh, the second the lifeguard turns their head I'm like whoop I'm gonna do it you know that's just my move um so no the Clippers well, did win the season two what did series. I do wrong. They beat the they beat the Mavericks two games of one this year, so they have the tiebreaker. So basically, all they have to do is win one more game, and they lock up the four seed, which means Dallas can rest everybody on Sunday, which gives OKC okay, a win, right, right, and now right. OKC could be the two seed. There's steam coming out of my brain because of how hard it's trying to work to keep up with I you. I know you got lay this steam. down. I really bad. Lay this down as simple as possible. You okay. want what to happen? So here's what I want to happen. Okay. First things first. All right. I want OKC to beat Milwaukee and Dallas for the next two games. Okay, so just taper it down. We want OKC to win. Yeah, to beat Milwaukee and Dallas. Okay. So I need OKC to go 2-0. and oh. Write this down. Okay. OKC, go 2-0. and oh. right, let, me, let me get a pen. Get a Keep pen. Going. OKC goes 2-0. and oh. They lock up the two seed. Okay? Got that? So OKC is in two. Dallas is in one. Go ahead, write it down. Okay, see. Right, just one let's, second, one second. Let's go. Let's go. All right, all right, all right, all right. Oh, my last note. 14 of 19, the Dodgers have won in, in oh. L.A. against the Giants. All right. Okay. OKC. Goes 2-0. 2-0. Oh. Oh. To wrap up the two seed. All right. Wraps up two seed. Okay. Two seed. Okay. That's now, checklist number one. That's checklist number one. All right. Number two. Number two. Warriors need to go 3-0. Oh. Warriors go... Three and Number oh. Two. Okay. Three and oh. Okay. Now we need either or. Okay. Number three. <laughs> Pelicans <laughs> lose out. It go oh and three. Either or. I love this. Pelicans lose out. Okay. Or. Or. Kings lose two or three. Kings lose 
two of three. All right, give me the king schedule one more time. They have the Pelicans, mm, the, the Suns, Suns, and then the Blazers. And then the Blazers. <laughs> so we're relying on, on Chauncey Pelicans. Billups, huh? Come hey. on, Pelicans. I mean, the, I need the Pels. So the Blazers actually, they're two and two in their last four. Okay. Stop. <laughs> Are you? You're laughing through that. You didn't even believe what you just said. Four or five. How they're many, a 500 team, how man. How many players on that Three, roster are you getting four, ready five, to learn six, the name seven, of? Eight, nine, how many seven. guys on that team are you getting ready to learn eight. the name of for tonight's broadcast? The Blazers thing? have lost 12 or 14. But they did play the Pelicans tough. They were up, <laughs> they were up, to, they were up three at the half. They're motivated to break out of. They're the up three right at the half after a long road trip. Is is Chauncey Billups going to wear all black because he's fighting for his life? Like Michael Hall of Jackson. Famer, Chauncey Hall of Famer. Yeah, Hall of Famer. Big shot, Chauncey. Big shot, Bob. Or a big shot. Well, Chauncey. that's Robert. Orley. Yeah, no, that's Robert. How Orley. dare you? Big shot, that. Billups. Yeah. Big shot, Billups. Absolutely. So Aiton here, DeAndre Aiton is actually I, having. He went so, to Colorado, right? Yeah, he went to Colorado, yeah. Colorado Buffalo. Um, I remember him all in right. a game. The one game I watched them at Colorado, they were playing. They were either playing Texas Tech, Iowa State, or Nebraska. I remember it was the old Big Eight conference. Remember the Big Eight? Yeah, it was like Nebraska, Oklahoma, mm -hmm. Oklahoma State, uh, Iowa State. I still have Kansas a, State. I have a book from my grandpa. It was the Pac Eight? Yeah, the Pac all right. There so, you go. Yeah, so you I know all remember. about these conferences and so the Billups, Southwest Conference, the not the Southeast Conference. It was one of the worst possessions I've ever seen in my life. Billups in Colorado, he's holding the ball, holding the ball, holding the ball. Then he jacks up a three and makes it at the buzzer and like rolled around the rim. That's the only time I saw him play in Colorado. Anyway, <laughs> quick aside. That was a quick aside. Tajay Aiden in the month of March. Oh, give it to me. He's averaging twenty six points oh. and thirteen and a half rebounds, shooting fifty five percent from the floor. Hollow Man Part Two and eighty nine percent. How about this? <laughs> in four to five games, he's played in the month of March. Four of those games, he did not go to the free throw line once. Oh, so he's like a warrior. So he's eight of nine. He's had one game in which he's gone eight of nine for the free throw line. Okay, did you see what happened yesterday uh, during one of the broadcasts? Rachel Nichols says that the Warriors' success depends on, you know, because they're one of the teams. This is her saying this one of the teams that goes to the free throw line a lot and so their their success depends on you know if they go to the free throw line or not oh gosh I mean Rachel I know you got your job because you're family with a bunch of people who are very influential how about watch the game how about watch the game <laughs> You had a very prominent role. You were literally in the studio when the majority of the Warrior games were being broadcast over the last decade. And you don't know that the Warriors don't go to the free throw line ever. I'm going to leave that one alone. Well, I'm going to say it. I'm going to leave Rachel alone. Man. She's not, got a lot of power in these streets. I don't care if uh, she's got power. Uh, she got power because of, uh, her, her aunt is someone <laughs> special in television. Uh, April. I mean, excuse me, in the month of, excuse me, eight in the month of April is averaging 26 and 13. In the month of March, DeAndre Aiden averaged 23 and a half points per game and 13 rebounds. So we're trying to stop Aiden then tonight, huh? Operation Stop Aiden. I think TJD can do it. He's o up for the task. Operation Slow Down Scoot Henderson. <laughs> he had 15 assists last time out. Operation Slow Down Chris Murray, give the me, twin brother give, of give, Keegan Murray. Give, give me their top seven players that are going to play tonight. Oh, my God. Just give, just give it to me. Just give it to me. The NBA's got to love this. Jabari Walker. Jabari Walker. Okay. three. Yeah, everybody knows him. Yeah. <laughs> out of Colorado. Uh -huh. Everybody knows him. He has Another player out of Colorado. Right. Okay. <laughs> Chris Murray, the identical that, twin that, of Keegan Murray. I know Murray. him. I know him, and I wanted the Warriors to maybe draft him. I, I wanted him, too. Yeah. He's actually playing well. Four, yeah, six, no, I like him. Lines. I like his you brother. Better, you better be on high alert with uh, Chris Murray. Scoot Henderson. We know Scoot, 19-15. Yeah. to 15 Where's every out. accessory? Do you know Ryan Rupert? Nope. <laughs> Second round pick this past season. I know season. Murdoch Rupert. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was funny. Do you know Justin Benaya? I saw you looking at me in the peripherals for my <laughs> approval, yeah. and I'm not giving it yeah, to you. Yeah, he's always looking for approval. Uh Justin Benaya, do you Ooh. know who he is? First season out of Providence. I know Sean Benaya. <laughs> Justin Benaya, uh played 22 minutes the other night. Ugh. They went eight deep. They got a playoff rotation right now. Duop Reith from LSU, 6'9", 245, coming off the bench. You better pay attention to You've Reith. You've been selling me on this roster for a week now. And then Delano, Delano Banton out of Nebraska. Second round pick in 2021. How many two-way contracts <laughs> yeah. do they have so they're currently active? Deep. Now, 
I don't know if uh, Matisse Stiebel's going to play. He's out. He was out with There's a ankle injury. I like to have. Oh, him. we all like him. Now that's a name as I a ninth man. A long time. See, Zucci made. He knows five one zero. Xfinity Mobile Tech side. And brother B, you remember how hard they played the last game of the season <laughs> against us last year? Yeah, I'm not counting on Rip City. Yeah, the Warriors scored fifty five points in the first quarter uh, of that game. <laughs> come on. So take care of the Blazers. I look. Are the Warriors in a position to be overlooking t- uh, no, teams? No, no, no. I mean, using the Bonte Hill algorithm, right? There's a three-point checklist that needs to happen here. Yeah. This is kind of like my dad's swing thoughts for and, someone and just remember, learning golf. It's Warriors going 3-0 and and in the either-or situation oh, between but, the Pelicans I, and Kings. I'm going to lay it out for you because I wrote notes. OKC wins two, and the Warriors go 3-0. and And then the third one is a... Gots to take it either way, either or. Pelicans lose out, or the Kings lose two of three. I kind of want to talk to somebody from the Kings to see how they're filling up their sack. These are some monster <laughs> games up there. The GMC is, is this monster more fun? Games. Is this more fun than worrying about like this, I know it's ridiculous. I'd rather have a regular playoff seed, but is this little you know tap dance we're doing toward the end of the season? Isn't this more fun than will we make the playoffs or not? Uh, it's fun. There's like four or five things involved yeah, here. We I mean, got a bunch fun. of teams. We're watching. I mean, well, otherwise, we wouldn't even be worried about this. Yeah, I mean, imagine if they didn't have to play in. We'd be <laughs> losing our mind. <laughs> I mean, imagine if they didn't have to play in. The Warriors right now, a game on, behind Sacramento. We'd be really ready to get sacked. So, Warriors right now, 35 losses. Lakers, 35 and ESPN losses. ESPN has them at a 65% chance to be in that 7-8 game. Oh, man. The Warriors. Let me get my game notes here. You want some game notes on the Portland Trail Blazers? Let me get you ready for Blazers, Warriors, folks. Who gets you these notes? <laughs> Dude, I, I got I got people with high I places. got it. I, okay. Okay, you, I can find you. These numbers, the king, I will never share with you. The king claps. Hey, Stats, hey, please. Hey, hey, and listen. here come the court. The other day, you were talking about how, how you always compete with me. Well, now I'm competing with you. And I'm keeping these numbers away from you, Chasky. You're not getting these little nuggy nugs like this. The Blazers offense, since January 1st, yeah. The Portland Trailblazers, uh-huh. they're 12 and 36 since January 1st. 12 and 36. Their offense is ranked 27th in the NBA. What offense is efficiency, oh, efficient. 29th. Uh. Effective field goal percentage, dead last. Turnover ratio, dead last. Uh, you know what? I, I My favorite part of tonight's going to be Chauncey is a really good coach. You know, these guys are playing hard for him. For who? We do. We just do this with, I feel bad. It's not, it's no one's fault. Wait we, till my intro. talk about the motor center. I, you know, I'm bringing up the motor center. <laughs> the motor uh, Listen, the Blazers offense. In it the used to be the, the Rose Garden. It used to be the Rose Garden. Uh, field goal percentage in the restricted area. Blazers, dead last. Field goal percentage, non-restricted paint area, dead last. Points per game in the paint, 26 in the league. Bonte, hey, we were talking about some of those horrible Warrior teams from yesteryear. It was like 19 wins, 21 wins, 23 wins. Portland has 21 wins. Now. They are where the Warriors now, were for 20 years. This will concern me for tonight. Oh, here we go. The Blazers love to set the tone defensively. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Before the All-Star break, their defensive efficiency in the first quarter was dead last. Since the All-Star game, Portland's defensive efficiency in the first quarter. 17th. 11th in the NBA. 11th. So you better be locked in early and often. Man, Chauncey Billups, he's really getting him to form. I mean, he, he is. is. He is. That's why they're going to be playing so hard for him tonight. Opponents field goal uh, three-point percentage in, this, uh, in these first quarters. Before the All-Star break, they were 18th. Since the All-Star break. Fourth in the league, giving up just thirty four percent from three since the All Star break. Oh, I could sell this one, baby. So, like, like I'm running the Pro and Trailblazers, and I'm like, "Yep, it's Chauncey's fault." Like, like, could you imagine doing the math that way? I mean, <laughs> I you know. just read me off the <laughs> roster, and like, he's fighting for his life as a coach. And I'm saying to myself, "What's Chauncey? How does he have a chance?" Uh, hey, who's the guy that got fired from Charlotte? Steve Clifford? Oh, Steve Clifford. No oh, shot. Steve Clifford's a great coach. Like, I don't even know if he is. Look at their roster. No, their roster's Mikhail terrible. Mikhail Bridges is out here just, like, doing, like, duck hunt because he's allowed to just shoot anytime he wants. Oh, my gosh. The Portland Trail. The Warriors wins. have to win this one, and they have to win big. Yeah, they've got to take care of business. They've got to take care of business. They've lost five in a row at home, Portland. So, okay. So, they don't have a whole Who court advantage. Who else plays tonight that I need rooting interest for? Pell's Kings. Pell's Kings. So now that's a game. Come on, we just got to come on, Pelicans. 
Let's go. I want the Pelicans to go. I want, I want Sack to drop. I want Sack to play the Lakers in Wait, the night. You? Team. Yeah, I want Sack to drop. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want Sack. I'm writing that down. I mean, Shout Sacramento. Let me say Sacramento. Pause. Shout out. Pause. Sack to drop. Uh, pause. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we don't need these, we don't need no sacks dropping here. <laughs> Can I do a quick shout out before we hit the break here as everyone's driving around in their cars? Uh, my buddy Chris Gajero uh, is a coach over at university and uh, oh, young, university high school. Yeah. He coaches a, with Randy Bacello. Yeah. A, a young man, ba- baseball, a young man, oh, baseball, uh, Rohan Hardigan. And if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, I apologize. He threw a no hitter. Uh, versus Stuart Hall yesterday at Big Rec. University won 12-1. to Rohan threw five innings, no hits in the win. One unearned run. University High School 3-0 in the BCL league play, first place. Rohan specifically, this young man, overcame very serious health issues in the winter and made a great comeback. He, he lost some weight. It was very serious, like some very serious health things that this young man went through. Uh, he had two RBIs and a hit. He had his 17th birthday yesterday. So I just want to give a shout out to Rohan. He struck out eight different guys wow. and um, wow. just a great young man who who really came over some adversity, overcame some adversity, and I wanted to give him some love. Chris Gajero, if you're out there, buddy, much love to you in university. Yeah, shout out to university. And by the way, you are listening to 95.7 Game KGMT FM and AC1 San Francisco. Don't forget, you can also, you didn't play Phil on Mike. I didn't know. Uh, I, I lost track of time breaking down the Portland Trailblazers. Uh, just log out of search 95.7 Game. Shout out to everybody who watches us on YouTube and Twitch. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel while you are there. Brought to you by First NorCal Credit Union. Upgrade your savings dividend. Open a First NorCal First Class Money Market today. You can now download the Odyssey app. Directly from our YouTube and Twitch pages is we have added a QR code on both pages. All right, more playoff scenarios with the Golden State Warriors. 888-957-9570. Does it matter to Dub Nation whether or not you're 9 or 8? And if so, why? I would love to hear from Dub Nation as we break down these playoff scenarios. Warriors in Portland right now. They'll take them on and then come back home to take on the Pelly Pels tomorrow at Chase Center. That's all coming up. Brought to you by Fremont Bank Full Service Banking. No compromises. Come on. I'm being a D. I'll be.
I want Sack to drop. Come I'm on. I'm being a D. I'll be a D. Yeah. And I'll take the D. Darny, you're more like me than you think you are. The Morning Roast is live on YouTube right now. Take it away, Bonte. <laughs> are you out of touch? <laughs> I like this song right here, though. I don't know why. I, I, it gets me fired up for tonight's game. It does. I'm telling you, music like this, sometimes, <laughs> I swear to God, I used to listen to Escapade, Janet Jackson before football games for some reason to make me feel good. Uh, Escapade. Ooh. Yeah, she got bangers. Uh, is that Rhythm Nation or 1812? Rhythm, what album is uh, it? Is it 1812? Maybe I'm, 1814? Yeah, 1405? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, but I, I know Nation, everything. She's coming to chase it or soon. I know. I saw that. To, man. My sister used to tape. This is back when you had the, the little boom box. We would tape songs off the radio, the live radio. Mm -hmm. you, you'd hit the little play and record simultaneously yep, to, yep. to get some into the ringtones too. What, yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. Back the and day. she would make her own little mixes. One of the first tapes that she had was a Janet Jackson tape and man. I'm going to go see her at Costco, Played that thing dude. out. I, I'm going to go I see got Janet Jackson. major respect for Janet. Go hit up the, go see if I can get, uh, get inside the Chase Center for that concert coming up. She's kind of like, her catalog, I mean, I know it's not forgotten on most, but it does feel like we sleep on her. Oh, we do. She has we a do. catalog. As Mariah gets a lot yeah. of love, and Beyonce, yeah. Taylor Swift, Janet, Janet, Madonna, obviously, yeah. who was just at Chase Center. Janet got bangers. Oh, bangers. Absolutely. And she had that most iconic photo when she had her hands on her head and you know, I thought you were going that. Super Bowl there. That's what I thought he was going. No, that's too obvious. Wardrobe that's too malfunction. That shows you how deep I am into Jenny Jackson. Everybody, the Johnny Cup ladies can say, oh, Jenny Jackson Super Bowl is just Timberlake. No, I'm talking about the photo that every girl box during their paternity photos. It's true. It's true. It's just sad. I got to go to that concert. I'm good. Maybe now. I'll be D. Lou there. <laughs> Shasky, I mean, Guru will be there. Is he? No, nah, I don't know. He don't want to go to that. That does sound like a guru. But everybody's happy. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to be not. surprised. Is Guru happy about this game tonight? Look, oh, we got, for sure. We got action, Dub Nation. The NBA's on fire. Last night, you had the Clippers giving the Phoenix Suns hell. Giving them all they can handle. The now Phoenix can stay off. They go to Sacramento. They're, in Sac they're probably flying up to Sac tonight. They'll probably be in the building at the G1C. Scotty, like an old college team in the stands. You imagine KD tonight at the G1C, watching the Pels and Kings, taking notes. Willie Green, taking notes of Willie Green and his mannerisms and Mike Brown and everything like that. And you got Frank Vogel sitting there to go to one center said, Frank. okay, if we do this to Frank. the Sacramento Kings, maybe we trap from here. Then we had the T-Wolves and the Nuggets in the Mile High City. And boy, Jokic put on the show. He's 16 and 20. I can always tell when he got a great sleep. He comes in and he's just waxing poetic. I know, I was here just early. keep going. Dude, I was, I'm like, was at the Starbucks at 5 and more? I said, you know what? I need to slow down. <laughs> I'm not trying to get here too early. <laughs> so I'm looking at Janet's uh, discography here, and it was Janet Jackson's Rhythm Nation 1814. So I think you nailed that. 1814? Uh, what yeah. you say? You said 14. You said 18. So I don't know. I don't even know what I said. Yeah, I don't know what I said. And then Janet, 1993, Velvet Rope. She's got wow. I mean, so many hitters. Yeah, I got to go to that concert. What's I that know. concert? Can you look up Janet I Jackson look it up. Chase Center? Yeah, I'll look it up. Janet Jackson Chase Center. Yes, folks, we're doing that. By the way, I know. Uh, I'm look here. I'm looking here at the Xfinity Mobile text line six five zero. Jackson holidays up June twelfth. June twelfth. Ooh, well that may so be tough. Wednesday night at eight o'clock. A Wednesday night eight o'clock. June twelfth. In the middle of the NBA Finals. You might have a game that night. I was gonna say we may be in Boston. <laughs> Give me we the parlay. Give me the parlay of checklist things <laughs> that have to happen for that to go down. Well, the words have to. <laughs> you know what? Seriously, gotta set, gotta set a toe against the Blazers tonight. First That's off. when the ball will drop. You know what? I want Sack to drop. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Pelican! <laughs> Listen, I'll tell you guys right now. <laughs> I'll tell you guys right now, man. Uh, June twelfth, a uh, Wednesday. Can you check the final schedule? They have the final schedule. What it? The day it starts. The dates. Game one, game two, game three. Because we might. <laughs> this is a piss off, Stiney. Warriors might be playing for Keith if they can play the Oklahoma City Thunder in the first round. Now, what would it take? Oh. Game three is on Wednesday, June twelfth. Oh, so they would have to postpone so Janet Jackson, yeah, for a finals game. Yes, because obviously we're assuming the Warriors don't have home court. In yeah, they won't line. have home yeah, court. That's true. Yeah, because they're gonna be low. Wow, wow. I love Bonte. They'll postpone Janet. Janet does not get postponed for anyone. Mm -mm. So, what are they gonna move the finals game? No, I'm just saying, like, she move just, it to Oracle just... Arena in Oakland. That's right. <laughs> oh, that's. 
One last she's time. No, she's going to go to Sutter here. Health Park. <laughs> you know Sutter what? Sutter Health? <laughs> 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 hey, Sack finally gets the finals. <laughs> I want Sack to drop. <laughs> Sutter Health Park. Well, we all know the G1C will be available. Uh, Ain't no finals games uh, being played up there. Uh, Look Pearl, Jen, and Jackson for a day, Sacramento. If they play, <laughs> so there, is there any way that they could play Sacramento in Sacramento in one of these two Playing scenarios. I don't think so. So that's probably I, off the table. It's it's well. Hmm. <laughs> check your parlay card. Well, yeah. Is there a way for the Lakers to move into that seven eight game while the Kings just fall into the nine ten? There. That's just that's a possibility. Yeah, because the Lakers would just win out, well, and then the Kings would lose three in a row. I think. That question I'm confused about. So that's why we have Anthony Slater on at eight o'clock. <laughs> This is why we bring in I'm the telling you, this one of you. Each, each team has listen. three games left. Uh, uh, there are certain days when you come in, and my guy is, it's like with Curry. The hoop feels eight feet wide. It's like Barry Bonds. Like he knows anything listen. in the zone is going in the water. Right. And today's listen. one of those days. For listen, you. listen, I'm, I'm just going to sit back. Hey, listen, no, 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 no. Listen, even the 5 0, no. He can't get to me today. Why is this that? This is how you know what, I feel like He can't on? even get to me today. The 5 0, no. You guys need to change your name to 95 7 New Warriors. Oh, you guys do. Is Clay's on that team? And the Warriors you do know good other sports. You do know where it's a baseball game, right for the Giants. Blah blah. So number one, you know Mondays we do 49er, fo- 49er football all, right, all day long. No, you know what like, we do? We do what you want to talk about. <laughs> right. And right now, you, the audience, wants to talk about the Warriors. I'm happy with Brock Purdy. Do, hey, five one zero. No, honestly, do you want to? You really want to break down Giants Nationals from yesterday, where they beat Oh Patrick Corbin. Tyler right. Fitzgerald looks good in center. Okay, eight, eight, great. 957, 957. Nazi stolen base. Yeah, the Giants got their first stolen bases of the season. And back oh, by the way, the Giants didn't hit a home run on a homestand. Oh, by the way, the Giants, with the Raiders in scoring position over their last nine games, they were 6 of 61. I'm actually excited about the Giants. All right. Do you really want us to talk about Giants in that game yesterday? That stinker? Oh, great. I do they, want to see you six sell of eight me. with a uh, rush scoring position yesterday. Oh, oh, oh my gosh. Around. They, hey, they, the, 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 brooms, the, the Nationals didn't get to use their brooms yesterday. Here's the best Whoa. part. What, I, the pivot will come the second the Warriors get eliminated. And Bonte's like, I tell you what, this national team, this is a big game here on pregame live for San Francisco Giants. Oh, oh you know, I could sell it. Patrick, <laughs> oh, could Patrick sell Corbin it, has given up 27 Patrick hits Patrick Corbin. 27 <laughs> hits? Are you right. kidding me? Patrick Elite baseball. Corbin, we All knew right. the second he got the money, it was a bad deal. One hundred forty million with the Nats. The, I love how series. Rendon and Corbin have gotten paid from that World Series, and Juan Soto still hasn't. Yeah, but you Isn't know what? Isn't that funny? Rendon was great, though. Rendon was. Yeah, but everyone excellent. knew two hundred and fifty was an overpay. Yeah, I mean, yeah, obviously. <laughs> I mean, that, I mean, that's a lot Ace of money. fan last year. Too. So, so here, <laughs> I mean, here, here you go. I actually five, know the Ace fan. It's it's this guy Mike. It's a long story. Here you go. A 510 fan about the Giants. Here's your Giants breakdown. They Jordan pitcher, Hicks looks great. Right. They beat a pitcher yesterday who, over the last three years, has gone 9 to 16, <laughs> 6 to 19, and 10 to 15. His ERA in the last three years 5.41, oh 4.83, 5.28. All right. The guy gives up. He's given up over 200 hits in back to back seasons. That's your Giants breakdown for today. Here's what they have I have a day want. off. They're going to buy, they're going to Tampa Bay to take yeah. on the race. Really? What do, you, what do you want to talk about with the Giants? You want to talk about the Baltimore Orioles? We can talk about that all day long. Jackson That's a Holiday. baseball team. Jackson Holiday misplaying a ball out in center. That looks like a major league baseball team. A lot was made of him getting number seven. I didn't realize it was such a hollowed number for... Well, Billy Ripken, I guess, Billy was the Ripken. last to no, wear Cal seven. Ripken wore number seven, I believe. They didn't retire that number? Huh. Weird. Billy Ripken wore seven. Oh, who so cares they about made that? a big deal about that. Yeah, well, his was dad. Like, his dad wore number seven too. Matt Holliday. Yes. Well, that was the yeah the yeah uh, yeah, yeah. So look, yeah. We'll, we'll talk NFL draft. The NFL draft's two weeks away. We're in the midst of a Warriors playoff run. We will. By the way, we just recorded a podcast with Brian Baldinger oh, the other day. Fifty new minutes Liquid of straight draft magma. coverage. Yeah. It's some prospects to watch. Boy, the draft is coming. We will talk some draft. All right, we'll talk some draft. Even though I know a lot of you don't watch college football, we'll still bring some of these prospects to the table. Actually, we do. We do. Second yeah. most watched uh, I, I sport agree. in America. I agree. But the Bay Area audience, do they really watch college football? I think we do. What are their ratings with the Bay Area market? That I don't know, but I, I think we watch the big time games. Right. I think we watch. I do. I think we do watch. I think we just love football. I just think America yeah. loves football. But we also love the Warriors. And let me tell you, people out there that are hating on it, the Warriors have... 
They've made us a lot of money here at 95.7 The Game. So I'm very thankful for the Warriors. And I will say this. I want the Warriors so badly to be in this 7-8 game because I think they can win the game and then jump into that 7-2 matchup, which to me is infinitely more favorable than the 1-8 matchup. Yes. All right? Obviously, winning only one game and just one game, then you get a little bit of rest, all that. Duh. And then I know Steve Kerr said yesterday with Willard and Dibbs, you get two bites at the apple. And I agree with him on that. But I want to win the 7-8 matchup, get into the 7 seed, because to me, that side of the bracket is infinitely easier than going the the, the path through Denver and having to win two games just to get to Denver. Right. Yeah, that's that's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot. That, to me, if, feels like a five-game bow yeah. out. 25 and 11 in the last 36 games to go to State Warriors. They've won 16 of 20 on the road. 16 of 20 on the road. Come on, man. They're on. Kyle Rickman Senior wore seven. Junior wore eight. Yeah, I knew. I knew. Wow, junior so was eight. Senior wore seven. I didn't know that. Well, Billy Ripken was yeah. the last guy to dawn. So number maybe seven. he wore it because of his dad. Or I, look, to this day, I still think that's one of the coolest things ever to have yeah. your brother at short and you're at second. Yep. And then your dad is in the in the that, dugout. That I mean, that's sick. that's that pretty, pretty special. Sick. That is special. That is special. So, don't you really want to hear Giants baseball? Like, does the audience really want to hear about that game yesterday and what they've done well, Jordan or not Hicks, done? Quite frankly, Jordan Hicks might be one of the best pickups. It's early. We're, we're, we're like right. two starts in or three starts in. But, like, he's been one of the best pickups in baseball, this free agency. If, if you look at bang for the buck, a guy just sat out there. And anyone could have had him. Oh. The Cardinals just let him go. I don't know what the Cardinals were thinking. Hey. You know what? Austin Slater raised his batting average to 100. Well, and, and he right. tried to steal a base and got right. hosed. Yeah. yeah, one for three yesterday. Tom Murphy defensively is <laughs> pathetic. <laughs> He's also batting 077. Hey, thank God we gave him $4 million a year instead you know, of keeping Joey Bart. Maybe Fitzgerald's the answer in center field. Three for three yesterday. This is what I'll say about Fitzgerald. I don't know if he can play infield because I know that they want to turn him into a Chris Taylor type. He is an outfielder, and I like him in the outfield. No doubt. Um, He's nice. I like I like Fitzgerald. Jorge Soler want to see want to see some power from him. Maybe going down to Florida will help him. Uh, it's been one ninety one, one ninety one so far to start the season. I think, you know the Giants going to win. They improved to five and eight. They're fourth place in the NL West. But Hicks was pitching well. That's a positive. Bullpen was clean yesterday. About Miller bouncing back, struck out the side yep. at the top of the ninth inning. You'll take that. Thus concludes today's Giants talk five one zero. 650, the Giants. Oh, no, we suck again. <laughs> Did you see well, I, uh, he pitched twice in the series? Uh, Derek Law, remember when he used yeah, to be on the Giants? Yeah. And I love Kruk and Kipe. I do. I love them. I love them. Love Kruk and Kipe. But I was listening to them, and they were having a conversation. They're like, you know, at one time, we all thought Derek Law was going to be the future closer for a decade. No, no. Kruk, I love you, Kruk and Kipe. No, no one thought that. Not one Giants fan uh, thought Derek Law was going to be the closer for a decade. I guarantee you I could find five Giants fans who thought that. Derek Law? Well, not for a decade, but I had high hopes for Derek Law. Well, it's one thing to be like, you know, a guy in the bullpen. It's another to be a setup guy. It's an even another to be a closer. It's Ooh. a whole nother category to be a decade-long closer. Derek Law in 2016 had the 2.13 ERA. <laughs> He was, always a, pitch. he was a funky reliever. I know, I know. I know. Come on. 2017, <laughs> 5.06 ERA. I root for him, though. 2018, 7.43 ERA. Then he had to get out of the country. Went to Toronto. <laughs> he was so bad at the Giants. He's like, dude, forget playing in the U.S. I'm going to Canada. <laughs> I'd rather go so, to the uh, AL East. He went the all Giants. the way across the country. Right. Hell, he left the country, went north. And he dropped his ERA down to 4.90. Then he was like, you know what? It's under five. Let me get back into the States and go pitch for the Minnesota Twins. So <laughs> we're playing last night against a bunch of young guys from the East Bay. Uh, at least that's where some of the guys were from. And uh, in, in the Kyle, I believe, is the second baseman's name. We were talking for a little while. We're in the handshake line. And, and some of the guys are like, hey, I listen to you every morning. I'm like, oh, thank you. I really appreciate that. And one of the guys yells at me, DFA Yaz! And I turn around, and he's like, yup, yeah, like he's choking, obviously, but like, that's where, I mean, I, I know 
you and I were having like a goofy conversation about yes, but people are really like sick of it. Yeah, I, I get it. I was my whole point was he's not the really no, Lucy. No, I know he's part of the problem. But when you but see someone like Tyler problem. Fitzgerald come in yeah. with that youthful exuberance and and to run the bases the way but, it is, and I don't even know if he's any good, but it's just a jolt of something different. So the attendance numbers for the Giants the last three games pulled us up, love it. They've been because I'm seeing a lot of it at the seats after yeah, the opening well, series. They were actually much better Monday, Tuesday night than I anticipated. Okay. I, but because you got to remember, people are still yeah, in school. No doubt, no doubt. You know, yeah, there's I, also spring break. I don't expect so, them to go to the death. Yeah, but people are I will out of say town. This. If they struggle on this road trip and they come back home against the Diamondbacks, right? That's the next mm -hmm, home stand. Mm -hmm. Corbin Carroll. Crowds made. We got to get Kyle Nelson on too. Let's get our oh, Kyle yeah, Nelson on. We'll get him on. Of course, play the Galileo. We always love having Kyle Nelson well, on. While you're at it, book book Corbin uh, Corbin Carroll too. Yeah, let's get. You Corbin can do Carroll. that. Yeah, let's do that. He's he's such a stud. Oh um, God, I'm interested to see what the crowd looks like because I think to get more fans back on that next homestand, you need to bring up one of the youngsters. Mm. It has to be Matos or it has to be Luciano. Have you seen Ramos? He's looking amazing in yeah. AAA. Now I know they don't make decisions based off how you're doing in AAA after a week or whatever. He's been down there forever. Yeah. He hit a bomb yesterday. I'd love to see Ramos for a couple weeks. 25, 24, 25,000 last three games for the Giants. That's not bad. It's not bad. It's not bad against the Nets. I mean, uh, okay, you have it's to, not bad. Again, with school and everything, and yeah. the Warriors still playing, yeah. and, like, I, I I, don't know. I think those are good numbers. Um, They drew 40,000 for each Padres game, no doubt. Opening series, you got the first night game of the season. First game of the season yeah. at home, and, of course, the first Sunday afternoon game. Sunday afternoons, you usually get great crowds all the time. Usually get great crowds on Sunday afternoon. Everybody's out of school. Everybody's chilling. To they me, want to go to a yard. Uh, to me, baseball, tr like you know how like NBA doesn't start until Christmas Day, Memorial Day weekend. It to me or Father's Day weekend are the are the seminal kind of like openings of baseball for crowds and and people to really shift their attention there. All right, let's move on. Let's get back to the Warriors. Giants, good win yesterday. Good win. <clears throat> Steve Kerr. Asked why the Warriors have turned it around again. They're 25 and 11 in their last 36 games, 16 and 4 in their last 20 on the road. Willard Diz asked Steve Kerr how they turned it around this season. Just the overall uh, growth of the team. You know, guys like Jonathan, Brandon, Trace, young guys, Moses, these guys, the young guys who have progressed and become you know, really important players for us in terms of winning and losing. That's been huge. And then I, I just think the vets have helped foster that environment they've mentored these young guys really well having chris ball to me is such a huge advantage uh for for our group uh, the non-staff minutes i've never been more comfortable with them than i am this year because of chris so you know getting him back from injury but also having him mentoring uh the younger group um it's a really really good group of guys and a well-balanced roster so we're uh, we're healthy and knock on wood hopefully we'll stay that way Healthy. Draymond Green is questionable due to a right knee bruise, right knee contusion. You shouldn't need Draymond Green to beat the Portland Trailblazers, but I do want him to play to continue that form, to continue the rhythm that he has with TJD and Wiggins and Clay and Steph in the starting lineup and get these rotations set. We saw a playoff rotation the other night mm -hmm. for the to State Warriors against the LA Lakers. Anybody have a problem with the rotation still? We took a lot of calls about rotations no, well, yesterday after the biggest win of the season, boss. Something that I've been thinking a lot about, and you're wearing the shirt today, the Kavon Looney shirt, and we all love Kavon Looney, right, as a fan base. Yep. He's a very beloved warrior. The seminal moment in the season was pivoting off Kavon yep. Looney and going to Trace Jackson Davis. Yep. And it's, it's not this severe, but it's got a very big, you know, Benji Molina to Buster Posey type mm. of a vibe in that you had a fan favorite and obviously no one's saying Trace is Buster right. but like when you moved off a fan favorite you know and who was still a, a, a solid player but you went with a younger guy that's just provided something different yeah. and it's really clicked and it's worked and it's and it's going to continue to work and it's going to be at the expense of, of a guy that everybody loves and he's done nothing wrong per se but like we're rolling with the better guy right now, you know? And I, I think the Warriors deserve a ton of credit making that decision. And I think Kevon Looney deserves a ton of credit. I mean, he, I never expected him to say anything. But still, I think it's very difficult to see someone come in and take your minutes. I, I think most people thought that if the Warriors were going to have a really good year this year and get into the playoffs, Kevon Looney would be a big part of that. And he hasn't. So, um, this may be some breaking news. I don't know what's going on here. 
because uh, you're right. I, I, your assessment of that, I, I'm with you wholeheartedly. That little subtle tweak it, in the lineup, and it, Looney is a fan favorite. He he's is a, a big fan favorite. I love him. His it, parents loves us. He's beloved love in his the parents, locker room, no doubt. He's her he, loves dude, him. Three chap, three tied chap. Um, and look, I, I mentioned this yesterday. At some point, they will dust off Loon. You no, would need no him for about five to ten minutes. Agreed. And he'll win back over the fan base by saying, that's Loon Dog. Exactly. Those, those same four-minute stretches is what made JaVale McGee lovable. Yep. Those same four-minute stretches is what made B. Elites or Otto yep. Porter Jr. Or, heck, Zaza Pachulia lovable. Festus lovable. But I just saw this tweet from O.J. Simpson's account. And I don't know who's tweeting from his account. I don't know if it's spam or what. But it says... TMZ confirmed it. 95-7, the game. Breaking news. <laughs> Holy smokes. I don't know how to feel about this one. OJ Simpson has succumbed to his battle with cancer. He has passed away. Passed away. OJ Simpson has passed away. Wow. I. That's kind of crazy. Wow. Like that is the OJ Simpson what? we grew up knowing to the OJ Simpson we now know and everything that's picked in the OJ Simpson and what he meant for pro football and then what happened after pro football. OJ Simpson passing away at the age of 76 years old. If you were just going to make a list of San Franciscans, like native San Franciscans, for before, don't don't talk about the, the after playing career for a second, just for a second. But if you were saying the greatest athletes to be born and raised in San Francisco. Joe DiMaggio, even though he was Martinez, yeah. California originally, yeah. but he was raised here mm -hmm. in San Francisco. And O.J. Simpson. O.J. Simpson, not even close. Bob St. Clair? Yeah, I don't Bob think, but I don't think he's on their level. O.J. Simpson. Is considered one of the greatest running backs of all time. Galileo High School. Yeah. City College, San Francisco. USC. USC. Rose Bowl champ. Yeah. Wow. 2,000 yards in a season, in like a 12-game season. I mean, holding the football with one hand. Uh, you know, I mean, you're, you're the the documentary did such a great job. Like my yeah. dad was talking about uh, this is before my dad passed. He was talking about how O.J. Simpson. You don't understand about how powerful O.J. Simpson was as a person yes. in San Francisco. If you didn't grow up in the '60s and '70s, he yep. was one of the seminal athletes. Yep. And he, the Niners weren't good. Okay, in the late '70s, and they traded for yep. O.J. Simpson. Barlow, he was a superstar. Yeah, he was a superstar. Eddie D hung out with him all the time. And um, then when we were wow. growing up, I remember OJ as the Hertz commercial guy and as the guy on Naked Gun movies, oh. and he was beloved. And then, obviously, 1994 happened. Well, also just watching the NFL on Sundays on NBC. On the sidelines. He was with Bob Costas. Yes. He was next to Costas. He, he, he was a unbelievable great smile. broadcaster. Yes. A great smile. And then 94 happened. And we'll, uh, we, you and I will I remember never it like it was yesterday. 888-957-9570. Like, it, it was And we watched the trial. I was in seventh grade, yeah. sixth or seventh grade, six. whatever, fifth, sixth, seventh grade. We watched the trial like at certain points in class. They would I, roll the big television I would in. run home after school and watch it on Coffee 20. They showed <laughs> it remember Coffee that. 20 every single day. Now, going 94, that day, and I got to pull up the exact I'll, date. Here. I'll never forget. Um, it. Watching NBA the finals, NBA Finals, Game Five, June seventeenth, June seventeenth, nineteen ninety four. So thirty for thirty on that. June seventeenth, nineteen ninety four. I was eleven years old. Knicks Rockets. Yep. Hakeem or Patrick Ewing are going to get a ring. Yep. It's a rematch in their NCAA National Championship when Hakeem was at Houston mm -hmm. and Patrick Ewing's at Georgetown and Ewing beat Houston and Elijah in Seattle at the King Dome and Georgetown got their national championship under John Thompson. Game five, Madison Square Garden, a swing game. And NBC went away from the game. It, game five of the NBA Finals. I had no idea who won until the Chronicle came out in the morning because I couldn't stay up late Bronco. for the, a white Bronco on the freeway because Nicole Kidman and Ron Goldman got yeah. killed. And the images of them getting killed and stabbed to death was just gruesome. Nicole I, Simpson, excuse me. Nicole, who did I say? Nicole Brown Simpson. Nicole, yeah, yeah, Nicole Brown Simpson. Yeah. But the entire thing was, uh, I mean, it's changed television in terms of the way that we consume television. Like right. Shows like First 48 and all these crime things, Judge Joe Brown. Like, think of all the different ways television changed immediately after that. And he's got to be one of the, I don't know if he's the first, but at least as an African-American, to cross over. Oh, 
into a corporate world it's, where he's getting all the commercials. No doubt. All the movies. No doubt. He could do no wrong. So when you watch the 30 for 30, and he's living in, you know, in LA Brentwood. and Brentwood and he's living and he's hanging out with people at the country club and stuff. He became that guy. And a lot of people were like, wait a minute, OJ? What's happening here? But he crossed over for African Americans no and he was that guy. He was Everybody that dude. Everybody loved OJ. Damn. Dude, he was doing, again, naked gun movies and he was one of the funniest guys on there. And then... The murder happened. Yeah, it just changed everything. And it changed. And I still, like, you know, with all the evidence and everything, it's, and you watch the 30 for 30s, and it's like, yeah. wow. Wow. The real killer apparently was still on the loose. I mean, it, it's it's unbelievable. So OJ that was, Simpson, I think that's the greatest sports doc I, I've ever seen. Oh, it's. And I know everybody I, loves Last Dance. No, I love no, no, the no, OJ no, one. No, no. The OJ one. Was because, the best doc I've ever because seen. Because it showed you, like, for us, yes. being city kids, him growing up in Patrail Hill. He's taking his best friend's girlfriend. How about when he, he took his best friend's girlfriend? He, he took the bus to go see his dad who lived in another housing project and found out that his father was dating another man. That's how he found out at 11 years old with his with his best friend. Crazy. Taking the bus over there. And, and look, I mean, and he's, and he's and at that time, I, like, again, he had, there's a lot that's baked into it, but like OJ Simpson and San Francisco will always be linked at the hip. Wow. And and here, I, I always tell this story, and I'm going to tell it to the day I die. The reason the 49ers, in part, drafted Joe Montana and became the team that they became was because they traded two first-round picks yep. for O.J. Simpson, yep. and they didn't have a first-round pick. Well, and because they didn't have a first-round pick, they had to be more creative to look around. And... Bill Walsh pretended like he was going to trade back in and he wanted to look at the Clemson quarterback and that's where he found Fuller. Dwight Clark. Yep. I mean, all of the 49er well, legacy goes back to that well, horrible trade of O.J. Simpson. It goes to Joe Thomas, who Joe Thomas was a GM of the 49ers and he was a terrible GM. And people around the league were like, do not hire this guy. Do not hire this guy. Eddie D was trying to make him. He was like, he didn't know anything about the league. So he went to Joe Thomas, who knew the league, but had a horrible reputation within the league. Well, Joe Thomas becomes a free becomes a GM of the Niners, and they go seven and twenty three. Remember reading about this in Hawaii last year, just kind of refreshing my mm -hmm. my knowledge about the 49ers. And he, he traded all these picks for OJ Simpson. Bill Walsh is saying, "Don't do it." OJ comes here. He practiced what he wanted to. Didn't play. He was hard. hurt. It was a terrible the, trade. The knee it was, was more shredded. so for show. Yeah, like hey, we got OJ. Uh -huh. We got OJ. It was We're to sell tickets because they didn't yep. like the Giants. They didn't have a, a draw. Yep, yep. And so Bill Walsh took over, and the rest is history. But wow, OJ Simpson, God, let's go to Ted Patrol. Yeah. I wonder how people feel about yeah, this. Yeah, it's it, mixed to your feelings. Point probably. Of like I don't know how to feel. There's a part of me that like he's completely infamous for clearly. A lot of heinous things yeah. he's attached to, but there's also this unbelievable legacy. Uh, it's just it's, it's very it's a tapestry of, yeah, of, I, of I feelings. I don't know how to feel. Yeah, I, I know. don't know how to feel about it. Uh, Ted Patrell Hill. Ted, what's happening, man? You're on the roast. Good morning, gentlemen. How you guys doing today? Doing uh, great, uh, man. Topic. I, right up my alley. Um, anyway, I'm a Caucasian male. Uh, my mom was a mother of six on welfare back in the seventies. Uh, we actually moved to Patrol Hill Projects in the mid-70s. And I remember O.J. coming up to the Patrol Hill Rec Center and doing a tree sweet commercial. Wow. And like you said earlier, he was just like you say, it was like the Pied Piper. All the kids followed him everywhere he went. I mean, if you ever got a hold of it, there actually are pictures of him doing the commercial up at the Rec Center. Uh, it was just, it was, he was iconic. And... Like you say, unfortunately, you know, it was a fall from grace. And again, you know, you guys hit the head on earlier. He got caught up in the L.A. lifestyle, whatever it had to be, and changed his whole outlook. But he was true hood. <laughs> yeah, no <laughs> doubt. No doubt. Well, that's the thing. One thing I, I watched, uh, uh, there's like this whole like history in the Bay Area. MC Hammer and OJ and their fall from grace and very different. I mean, they're completely different. But how MC Hammer lost all his money yeah. and how OJ was but, on top of the world. Yep. And the, the the deaths and the I mean, the murders. I, I just remember me. the images, Shasky, of when he was not guilty, but he had to give uh, the Goldmans all this money. Well, he right, lost the civil case. He lost the civil case, and when they were breaking his Heisman trophies and burning his jerseys, it was like, damn, damn. But then he ends up going to jail in Las Vegas for trying to get out, his right? stuff back. Well, I don't even that whole thing. Yeah, was, that whole thing was just strange. But the thirty for thirty when Ted just called and said OJ was true hood when he was found innocent in the trial. 
all of a sudden he became black again. Is what the documentary basically portrayed him as. It's like, man, you really didn't do anything for us for a long time. You forgot about us. Now all of a sudden you're a rap videos and you're talking like slang and yada, yada, yada. Just a very, very, t- I mean. He's a symbol for how many different things? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I mean, like, Bonte. How many like- skeletons was he hiding in his closet? That's what makes me think. It's well, like, man, the guy was. And then he resurfaced, obviously, with Cameron and Mace. Yes. On it is what it is. And it was like, whoa, this is this is interesting. It's a part of our history here in San Francisco, you know, and and then, look, this is part of like you know every family that, that you're in is you got some good and bad things that happen and stuff, and like not that OJ is part of my family or anything like that, but like part of the history of the city, OJ is a huge part of it and will always be. But then he disgraced the city so bad, no doubt. That Galileo changed the People field. People disowned them. Yeah, it went from OJ Simpson Field to George Whitefield, a longtime high school when coach at Galileo High School. That happened like. Around the time that trial, like yeah. mid nineties or whatnot. I mean, he held how many city college run, uh, running records, uh, rushing records? But then we covered city college yeah. all those years. Nobody really talked about OJ around there. I mean, he he not only got to USC, he was like, "I'm so good, you have to bring this guy with me." Yeah, exactly. Callen. It's just it's it, man. I the mean, the Bronco chase is all time. It is all time. All time. And I'm getting like a text. it was yesterday. I'm getting a text from Rocco. It was his birthday, and he was at Eagle Pizza. Everybody remembers wow. where they were. Wow! Do you guys, you guys, like it, you guys weren't even alive. We were one year old, if that. Yeah. So when you when we bring up OJ, what do you guys think of OJ? Because you don't yeah. even remember the good, right? Not the good, but you don't remember you the, 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 the lovable yeah. OJ that was prior to the the chase. I remember the first first big OJ story, probably for Sam and I, is when he tried to get his memorabilia back, gotcha. and then he actually went to prison. But everyone had already told us all about, like your parents, like yeah. everyone knew, like even my mom, who doesn't even care about sports, knew what was going on in 94 with that chase because it was just such a massive story like i mean the kardashians to this day crazy because yeah. of because of OJ. the representation yeah. of that like there's just again right. it's the layers that came out of that are Dude. unbelievable and, and I, he's like the first big like sports slash media star right i remember yeah, that's bo saying. jackson's last game as a raider oj is interviewing him it's on incredible. the field that's right he was, it was so it's crazy that's right. it was incredible that's if right the glove don't that's fit right. you must have quit like that's right i mean i viewed him look again wow. what whether this is accurate or not i viewed him as a murderer you know what i mean like yeah. and, and it got off that's the way i viewed it you know what i mean like and I, I, yeah. it's i just i'm I, telling you the truth of how i, I felt i and then when seeing he got the, off chasky when he got off sorry to cut you yeah. off man but i just i just can't remember thinking as a kid how the hell did he get off? No, but then Everyone that's what I thought. thought. I thought that's when a young Bonte Hill thought, boy, money could get you that's, out of that's everything. That's what I thought, too. That's what I thought. Money, money will money, literally like, money buy will your get freedom. you out of everything. And that's why I always thought Michael Vick, he had no shot in that dog case. Because I was like, they need to make an example on some athlete. Because athletes are just getting off. But, but Dante give, Stallworth, but, when they're little, I mean, it, the list Michael goes on Vick, and on. To Michael Vick's credit... He has acknowledged all of the yep. things that he did wrong, yep. and he's learned, and he's changed his a lot of his behaviors, and now he's a spokesperson for explaining to people, you know, what he did wrong. I never felt the culpability on from OJ's yeah, perspective. It, it might, in fact, it felt like he mocked people and, for it. And also, I think on the flip side, people have understood Mike Vick said, "Oh, that was their culture. They didn't know any better." I, I mean, I grew up in this part of San Francisco yeah, where pit bulls are fighting pit bulls, and we just all sit around yeah. and watch and thought it was cool. It's not cool. Like I, I didn't, but I didn't know that. I didn't know that at all. Um, wow, it, Ralph, Ralph, we're gonna get to the calls here. Ralph and Coyote Creek. The chase was on my wife and I's first wedding anniversary. We sat and watched it all day. It was crazy. Never forget it. And yes, we are still married. Well, because I know, I, if I, I remember wife, correctly, <laughs> they're like, he has a gun. He's gonna hurt himself. Like everyone thought he was gonna, gonna commit, commit suicide, suicide in the vehicle. Who was the guy, Cato Kalin? Yeah, Cato Kalin. Was, I mean, it's just, I mean, just, yeah, it's just a list. The whole story was just, and he was in the guest house. Yeah, and it, was just, it was. The whole thing was insane. And then I'm, I'm watching like the doc, person. and I'm like, there. Did the did the son help him? I, did I the son do it and he covered I, it up? Like, I don't. I don't know, man. The whole I, thing was so murky. But for the first time, we saw the Nicole uh, Simpson gashes. Vante. That image, I was like, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, your poor family has to watch this. I hope they didn't watch it. Let's go to the calls. Thomas and Sarah Ball. Yeah. Thomas and Sarah Ball, what's happening? Hey, boys. Um, I personally am never going to be able to forgive him just because I graduated in 95. And it basically, there were two things that happened that were took over my high school career. And it was a guy who stole a tank in San Diego and OJ. Wow. And it was, even in class, all they did, at prom, there was like a white Bronco. Like it was just, I never going to forgive him. 
<laughs> wow. I, I, how did hey, Thomas real quick? How did you view? How did yeah. you view OJ before that? Uh, I really liked him. I'm a big football fan, so I liked him on the sideline. My dad was a huge. He's from Pittsburgh, so he was a huge. You know, OJ fan and would tell me all how, how great he was, you know. So I totally had a rosy disposition on him until he. Everyone did. He was like beloved. He was beloved. Right, B? Beloved. I mean, when you're in movies, like comedies, when you're on sidelines, again, the Hertz commercial, him running through the airport to get to the, like, it's, it's, it's etched in my it's, brain. No, no doubt. No doubt. I just remember him being on NBC yeah. with the crew, with <laughs> I, Bob Costas, I, Will McDonough. I and he was so polished he was great. as a broadcaster. He was great. And he had the respect for the players because they I all know. looked up to OJ. Uh, Marvin in San Francisco. Marvin, what's Jeez happening? Louise. You're on the roast. How you doing, guys? Well, I'm an eyewitness to pretty much all of OJ's things that I saw him play against College of San Mateo when he was at CCSF and that was I think the number one junior college team in the country yep. and all I know is he was it was like when I saw Lynn Swan play in high school it was like this guy who just runs away from everybody for the whole game and so I followed him after that it's it's so sad he's like the Pete Rose of football you know he's this guy who did all these things but you can't talk about him because of this this personal problem he had but O.J. Simpson, to watch him play uh, was absolutely I? amazing. I mean, some nights some nights on Monday Night Football, it was it was a give O.J. the ball and it's eight yards. Yep. Second down, give him, give him the ball eight yards, give him the ball 12 yards, you know, and then he would break one. His runs against UCLA, uh, I think, in a huge game and uh, was uh, really memorable. And But you got to remember this, though. That was the NBA Finals with scores like 84-78. <laughs> Yep. With two minutes to go, and you'd be sitting in a in a sports bar, and everybody would be like, with the NBA Finals on, everybody sitting there talking, right? And all of a sudden, it, they were rock fight games, right? And all of a sudden, here's a picture of this Bronco that you think is a commercial, and then it went on and on and on, and then the game was a little thing in the lower part of the screen or something, but nobody really cared about the game because it was the, one of the most boring finals of all time. Uh, anyway. So that was uh, my impression. I, I just think that the real problem uh, that everybody had with the OJ thing, including the black friends I had at that time, was that uh, the way the trial went, where everybody knew what happened, and yet the trial said it didn't. And that was a big thing in America, yeah, I think. I, that was one of the things that cab drivers are talking about, you know. You know, I, I was told uh, from people that saw, I never saw him play live, obviously. He was, OJ, uh, OJ was basically Adrian Peterson meets Derrick Henry. Yeah. I mean, speed. Size. Size. How wide it. Yeah. I mean, this guy, when we grew up, we're like 2,000 yards. That's OJ Simpson. It, it literally. It was literally OJ Simpson. Was oh, it yeah. 2032? 2037, 2032, 34. That was in the 14 game schedule, too. Yes. 14 game schedule. Yeah. We're, we're basically, schedule. everyone knew you were running it. Yeah. And that was an overtake until what? Uh, Eric Dickerson? Uh, Eric, Eric Dickerson. Dickerson. And then. I want to uh, say Jamal. Uh, did not Chris Jamal Johnson Lewis. do it? He did get two thousand. I don't know if he surpassed OJ though. So AP, AJ AP, AP, Peterson. I think AP. Peterson. Did I think got like it was like ten yards short or something. God. Wow, crazy, uh, unbelievable! Wow, what a what a Bob shell, man! And, and look, I'm gonna tell everybody on social media: be careful how you tweet about this stuff. <laughs> be careful how you tweet. It. I, and people are coming down Adam Schefter because he tweeted. And here's Adam Schefter's tweet: as an ambassador, the NFL, Adam Schefter, NFL insider. O.J. Simpson, a former football great who was accused of ultimately acquitted of the brutal 1994 slayings of his ex-wife and her friend, has died. People are already going crazy saying, man, you got to put all that into his rest in peace. And it, it's part of the story. It is. But he also did this with Dwayne Haskins, said some nasty things about Haskins, which is not fair. So just be careful. Just be careful how you tweet about O.J. Simpson. I, I just, I don't. I feel a little indifferent because of what's happened and what's transpired over the course of his life. He's one of the most infamous individuals in the history no doubt. of sports and culture, and he's born and raised in San Francisco. Think about his Twitter page. Oh, I mean, hello, Twitter world. Let's go to the injury report. Yeah, I want to yeah, keep yeah. talking about this. Yeah, yeah, this. we got Anthony Sutter coming up. Wow. Right. It's the juice. It's man, I, what a polarizing individual. A polarizing individual. OJ Simpson passing away at the age of 
76 as he succumbed to cancer, prostate cancer, that is. All right, the Bucks announced that Giannis Antetokounmpo will miss the final three regular season games. Of course, he missed last night against Orlando as he continues to get treatment on a strain of his left calf. Giannis is expected to undergo daily treatment and evaluation over the coming days, but no timetable for his return has been set. Head coach Doc Rivers said he is hoping Giannis will be ready for the playoffs, but cannot say for sure if he would be available for the first round of the playoffs. All the news says that it's not a no damage to the Achilles tendon, which is good. We always take calves, Achilles, all connected there. Hopefully, Giannis will be okay and he can play these Eastern Conference playoffs. That was the injury report brought to you by Boxer Curzon. Northern California's premier workers' compensation law firm helping get your workers get their lives back for over 40 years. What's coming up in the game? Brought to you by Fremont Bank, full service banking, no compromises. The one and only Anthony Slater. Well, lines are wide open. If you want to discuss O.J. Simpson, who passed away, one of the most infamous characters in American sport history, in American, in America period, and he's born right here in San Francisco, California. It's kind of crazy what's going on in this world today. All right, all that coming up on The Morning Rush.
What is happening? What a, what a day. What a day. Shout out to Fatima Amara, who joined us, founder and CEO of the Women's Premier Basketball Association right here in the Bay Area. Um, shout out to Anthony Slater, who joined us in a moment. Shout out to YouTube and Twitch, brought to you by First NorCal Credit Union. Upgrade your savings dividend. Open a First NorCal First Class Money Market today. You can now download the Odyssey app directly from our YouTube and Twitch pages as we have added the QR code on both pages to the Xfinity Mobile text line. Shout out to our great friends at Flowing Water Plumbing and Drain. We haven't forgotten about you guys. If you're going to call into the rush, you better bring it because if you don't, you will be flushed. Brought to you by Flowing Water Plumbing and Drain. Uh, the breaking news here, the breaking news is O.J. Simpson at the age of 76 has passed away. Now, I'm seeing Michelle Steele post. It's hard to explain how wild and surreal this still is. 2024 is the 30, 30th anniversary of the White Bronco car chase. NBC would toggle back and forth between that and Game 5 and the Rockets Knicks, and that happened midway through the second quarter. So... Man, I'm seeing a lot of RP Johnny Cochran's, who was obviously the lead uh, lawyer for that case. Got OJ off there, but uh, wow, 76 years old. OJ Simpson passes away. Let's go to Anthony Slater, who's in Portland. I don't know if he's in Portland. Anthony, good morning, man. You in Portland today? I am in Sacramento. I'm oh. going to Kings Pelicans tonight, which, by the way, I think is even even bigger game for the Warriors than their own game. Absolutely it is, because we've been breaking down the playoff scenario. But first, because uh, we will pivot back to O.J. Simpson, so let's just get this out of the way. You're around our age, Anthony. I'm sure you remember 1994. We're all watching the NBA Finals, Rockets and Knicks. O.J. Simpson passes away. What goes through your head when you hear that? Um, I don't know. I mean, I watched the uh, 94 uh I don't remember, like I was four in '94, so oh, wow. I don't remember being locked into that. But that uh, the thirty for thirty they did on it, which was like a real time thirty mm-hmm. for thirty, I thought was really good. You know, and it kind of brought you the way it was made, kind of brought you to that day a little bit better than I remembered when I was mm-hmm. four. So um, it's interesting. It's definitely like shocking news to wake up to. I'm not sure I got some grand take on it and, right. and y'all probably need to be careful on that oh yeah no I, I'm, I'm just I feel it different I don't know what, how to feel about it it's just yeah. reporting the news and who he was but, before uh, everything that happened and like he was this broadcaster at NBC polished Hertz commercials polished broadcaster one of the biggest falls from right. grace I can think of as a sports athlete ever North, I mean yeah. you're talking about one of the greatest players to ever yeah. play the game it's crazy yeah yeah, yeah for sure they're, for they're, sure they're, and they're, Go ahead, Anthony. Kind of a, I would say, in kind of a weird post, you know, post whatever you want to call it, the last ten years or so. I mean, even like, kind of became like a gambling face. It was in Vegas at times. I don't know. Yeah, no, nah, no doubt. Yeah, we're we're not. Uh, no, there will be no tweets from us about this situation. We will just talk about how fans feel, about, like just kind of discussing the guy here. But let's move on to basketball because it, it is starting to heat up in the NBA. Last night, Nuggets and uh, T Wolves a really good game in Denver. The Suns struggling with the G League Clippers last night. The Suns don't look right, but you're right. We laid out the scenario here. The Warriors have to go three and zero for a chance at the A seed. But what's more likely to Kings losing two of three or the Pelicans losing all three? Because I can see Anthony the Pelicans losing tonight. And then tomorrow night to the Warriors, but then the Lakers will say, "Why do we need to play on Sunday? We're locked into ten, and therefore the Pelicans can get that win to keep the Warriors at nine. But I do agree, tonight's game up in Sacramento is huge for the Golden State Warriors. Well, it also would depend on who the you're talking about the last game in the regular season. Who did the Lakers want to play at the nine? That right. could be important. You know, if they beat the Pelicans that day, they're in New Orleans. They could stay in New yeah. Orleans and play an extra game. But that's you know, do they think they have a better chance of beating the Pelicans and flying to San Francisco? beating Warriors. I don't know. Um, as far as, like, who should the Warriors root for? You know, uh, like, it's almost one of those scenarios where, like, whoever loses, like, you, you know, then you root for a different game. Because the one thing about the Kings is the Kings have a hard game the next night against the Suns, and you need the Kings to lose twice. But then the Kings finish at home against the Blazers uh, on a day that that Blazers team, which is a G League team, essentially also will be, you know, two hours from vacation. So I don't know how hard they're going to be going for that one. Um, so, it's whoever loses tonight, you, you need, you have one more chance at a loss, which is, you know, Warriors obviously have to beat the Pelicans, but the Pelicans on that final day of the regular season or the Suns coming to Sacramento Friday night and also beating the Kings. Um, and then the other thing, you know, I don't know. We, I feel like this is being lost in like, Warriors got to go three and oh, they don't go three and oh, they're going to be the 10 probably. Cause I think Lakers could win the final two. So that's not off the table at this point. 
I think nine is most likely, then ten, then eight. Okay. Okay. Um, it feels like their entire season shifted when they essentially switched off Looney and, and Sarich too, uh, and, and went to Trace Jackson Davis, and, and particularly in that starting lineup. Is that one of the most surprising moves the Warriors have made over the last four or five years in terms of roster from what they had? Not an acquisition, just utilizing a roster piece in a different way. Maybe. I don't know. There's been so many over the last five years, uh, you know, including like starting wise in his first game, you know, redoing the rotation last year where suddenly Ty Jerome and Anthony Lamb are in it. Um, Joe Michael Green starting in uh, game one, I think it was, of the second round last one. season. Clay Thompson getting benched uh, this year. I didn't know that that was ever going to happen. It did. Um, I don't know. I just, I like so many to, that I can think of, but it will, you know, significance was, it ended up being big that this time around, um, I would say the season turn when Draymond returned from suspension and, and yes, he went small ball center for most of it. And now they've kind of flipped that and he's not doing that as much, but, um, I think they're what, like 25 and 11 in the last 36. Yeah. And I think that's primarily since Draymond's been back. And, um, I think it is. I think what we most learned is that when this team is whole, when Draymond Green is on the court uh, and able uh, and, and eligible, they're a good team. You know, they're a four-five type seed. Yeah. So that's like the biggest key for them—not only health, but like Draymond Green's eligibility. Yeah, in the twenty-five games Draymond didn't play, the Warriors were eleven and fourteen. You got to think that flips if he is available for those games, whether it's due to suspension or or injury here. But Draymond Green offensively, we we talk about this a lot, Anthony, and you know you you see Bully before the game, and uh, the Warriors are now talking about the coaching staff and everybody that when he's aggressive offensively and he's letting it fly from the three point line, he's shooting a career high from three. I know most of those threes come in the first half, but still five made threes in the first half against the L.A. Lakers, and all of a sudden they got to start. Oh wait, we got to get up on this guy, and it opens up the floor for everybody else, like a Clay, like a Steph, like an Andrew Wiggins. When he's aggressive offensively, if you just look at the last three years, when he's aggressive offensively, the Warriors are nearly unbeatable there. So I guess Draymond Green said it was mental. How much have you talked about him maybe letting it fly a little bit more offensively? Yeah, you know, I remember uh, he got undercut by Javale McGee. And this would have been one year, like 2017, 18 mm -hmm. uh, range, and fell down and and injured his shoulder, and like his hips were bothering him at the time. He talked about it the other night, particularly the hips. But physically, I think his shot took a took a um, a hit when he was like in the early Durant years, and then so he stopped shooting the three, and then you know Durant's around. Remember, he stopped being a scorer because he was like. You didn't need to on that team, right? And that's where I think he just lost the shot. It hasn't come back. It still hasn't. You know, defenses are not going to suddenly go into tonight's game like scared of him, right? From three, but uh, he's hitting it at a at a more reasonable clip this year. Maybe it, he says it's some of the mind, some of the body, um, but it's a major thing. I think what's even more important offensively is when he's doing those like DHOs to the rim, mm -hmm. or you know, just the, the straight line attacks and layups. Like when he's making the layups. I think that's bigger to like kind of screw with the defense because the defense want, is, is playing him to pass, particularly on the drive. They want to bait him into the floater, uh, bait him into making a bad pass and a turnover because he's just, you know, so thirsty to pass. Where when he's just like straight line drive, okay, nobody's coming over. I'm going to slip a layup in. That's when I think suddenly the centers, the Jaron Jacksons of the world, the, you know, the Steven Adams, whoever, name, name your center over the years, that's when they have to kind of change up what they do. There's been a lot of talk. Obviously, Clay joined Draymond on his podcast. His father's been on multiple stations locally. He was with the Willard and Dibs. And what's your sense right now? Is Clay coming back next year? We'll see. I, I think what what happens to the close of the season matters. You know, if they flame out, and um, if there's a if the Warriors management and ownership suddenly has a desire to like really limit spending uh, because they just spent historically and got a you know, nine, ten seed that, that flamed out on April 18th with zero playoff home games and made zero playoff money. Um, that might, again, like lessen the motivation to like really kind of throttle up the, the, the cash, uh, you know, extinguisher. Um, so then what would, you know, what, and then the other thing is what will he get on the open market? He's played himself, I think, into a much more, you know, more likely payday. Uh, we'll see what that payday is. Uh, and then, you know, I think the negotiations that happen in 
you know, illegally, I guess you could say, in May and June uh, before July will matter. You know, I mean, clearly with Draymond Green, um, we didn't know and he didn't know and he thought it, there was a time when he said it, there was a time he thought he was going to Memphis and, and the Warriors ended up paying up and giving him the deal. I think end of the day, just because it's always been proven that the Warriors, Joe Lake ends up paying right. and trying to bring back like the core guys, like he did with Steve Kerr, like he tried to do with Bob Myers, like he's always done with Steph Curry, like they tried to do with KD, right? KD would, would have still been there if he wanted to be. Um, I do think they probably get something done. But I do think how this season ends and the taste that's in everybody's mouth, Clay's mouth, the Warriors' mouth, every you know, I think that matters. Yeah, Anthony Slater here on the Morning Ross on 95.7 The Game. Our 95.7 The Game insider joins us every single week. He'll be in Sacramento covering the Pels and the Kings tonight. Huge game and huge ramifications for the Golden State Warriors. Uh, whatever happens up there in Sacramento tonight. Jonathan Kaminga just returned for two games, and obviously he's a polarizing player around these parts. Came back against Utah, 9 of 11, a double-double, but that's Utah. Struggled a bit against the Lakers early on. I thought he was key in that stretch when they outscored the Lakers 16 to 5 at the end of the third quarter. He played some big minutes in the fourth quarter as they put the Lakers away. What's your read on J.K. and his role moving forward here? Obviously, he's not going to start. They're going to roll with T.J.D. and Draymond in the front court, but how's Jonathan Kaminga taking it behind the scenes, Anthony? You know, I mean, I... Uh... I'm curious to see what his minute totals are over like a chunk of games, particularly playoff games. I think one of the things that uh, was at the was at the core of of the issue even early this season was how the playoffs played out last year because he did close the last regular season playing twenty something minutes a night, and then he went from that to basically DMPs the entire playoffs. And um, that is when coaches show their deepest trust level in players, right? You know, like when a when a playoff series shrinks, when yep. minute totals of your better players go up and your lesser players go down, like who do you trust in those moments? Um, and like, does Steve Kerr trust Jonathan Kaminga in a potential playoff series against Denver? Is he going to play him down the stretch? Is he going to play him twenty five to thirty minutes? Um, I think Kaminga's earned trust. Now the lineup combination issues that have presented himself, I think, have complicated things because. Trace Jackson Davis is playing well enough. You need to get him a lot of minutes. Draymond Green is guaranteed to play a lot of minutes. And it seems they've decided those three can't play together in a lineup combination for spacing purposes. I understand that thought from a basketball perspective, but that's probably going to limit then one of the three's minutes on any given night. Some nights it'll probably be Trace Jackson Davis, particularly if Kaminga's playing well. He wasn't playing that well the other night in L.A., right? So what did he finish with, 21 minutes? 21 minutes, yep. Yeah, that's low for him. If that's a nightly thing, you know, I'm not sure he's necessarily going to love that. And I understand that, you know, he wouldn't. Um, but we'll see. You know, he's only played two games back in the first game. It was like, uh, I don't know, he was probably 28-ish minutes and, and finished with like a, you know, a double-double. So, um, we'll see. I don't know. I You know, he's not, I will say this, he's not going to suddenly shrink like into the background and he's getting, you know, right. 10 minutes a night. I think he's guaranteed in the 20 range, and that's probably dependent night by night how he's playing, especially early in his stints, if that moves more towards 30. All right, Warriors playing some good ball right now, 25-11, and 11, uh, 16 to 4 in their last 20 row games. Do you believe, before we get set for the play, that the Warriors have a deep run in front of them? We keep hearing from Steve Kerr and members of this team that they have a deep run. Now, it depends on the back. Like, if they play Denver in the first round, that could be trouble. You play OKC in the first round, I think you got action there. What do you believe the prospects are for this team moving forward here, Anthony, during this playoff run? Yeah, well, I mean, what you mentioned is important, and it seems like OKC, I don't know if it, if it is intentional at all, but it's kind of played themselves out of that one-two or, or is kind of nudging that way, and you know that helps them avoid the Lakers, which I think is the matchup they really don't want to face uh, just from a size standpoint. But I think OKC is probably going to be three and get maybe Phoenix. Mm. Uh, Kevin Durant and OKC, they're, which they're will be interesting. Anthony, they're tied for two right now with Minnesota, and they played Milwaukee and Dallas in the last two games. you got to figure that Dallas may rest their guys because they don't have a tiebreaker over the Clippers. In Minnesota, maybe they both go 2-0, and but I believe OKC has a tiebreaker. Yeah, okay. Well, you know, I mean, it's it's there. Jalen Williams has been in and out of the lineup. Shea's missed some games. It just uh, I haven't felt the hunger from the Thunder to, mm. to necessarily be up there, certainly to get up to one. Um but one would be the only way at this point. Well, the Lakers, I guess, could still climb. But yeah, um, yeah. I mean, to, to answer your question, I think if I agree with you that if if the Warriors can somehow get in a series where they're facing Minnesota or the Thunder, like we're going to be watching that intently. I 
the experts will probably be picking either like, you know, Wolves or Thunder in seven or even like there'll be some Warriors in six type upset choices. I think those first two games would be interesting to see if the Warriors could uh, get one of them. Like, you know, could we be talking three weeks from now and the Warriors are in the second round and threatening in a second round series? Sure. Like that is on the table. But also on the... Also on the table is they're eliminated like five, six days from whatever. You know, right. next Wednesday night, next Friday night. Like that is, there's probably a 50% chance of that at least. <laughs> what so. a season. What a yeah. season, man. I can't wait to see how this unfolds. Anthony, we'll be following your work up in Sacramento, man. Have fun at the G1C. All right, fellas. All right, Anthony. Anthony Slater, one of the good guys, man. Our 95 7 game insider here on the morning roast. Kind of like a mashed potatoes guy. Look, he's a mashed potatoes guy. He's a basketball fan, and he is smart. He goes, be careful talking about O.J. Simpson. Be careful talking about this situation. So here's the breaking news. He passed away at the age of 76 due to prostate cancer. We know who O.J. Simpson is. He was a great football player. One of the best running backs of all time. Great USC Trojan. Great Galileo Lion. Great City College uh, Ram. Then 1994 happened. And hell, who, know, who, know, who, doesn't, who knows what happened behind the scenes? But obviously there was some smoke there with his ex-wife. And a lot of people have different thoughts on O.J. Simpson. A lot of people. Um, I was talking about Eric Thomas uh, between the break, KCPS. He was just telling me, Shasky, that when he was working at KGL Channel 7, he was in L.A. And he said, you could take the bleachers from Kettlestick Park. And that was basically the setup for the reporters and the photographers down there in L.A. It, just, it was a who's who. I mean, the, the, the way we cover trials, television, reality TV, I mean... Just from a t television standpoint, and I, I geek out on these things, that was a moment that changed television forever. The way TMZ operates yeah. is the way that we operated, cutting into the Bronco chase the way they did. Mm. I mean, ESPN just less than a decade later would do the exact same thing. We're going live to Pedro Gomez with yeah. Barry Bonds going yeah. through his home run thing. They never did that. Yeah, They never did any of those things. Uh, the way you know court television has exploded... I mean, how many judge was it? Judge Joe Brown, Judge Joe Brown, Judge Judy, yeah, People's Court for a long time. I mean, there's a zillion of Judge those. Joe Mathis. Uh, Mills Lane had his own. Yes, that's <laughs> right, Judge Mills Lane. I mean, there's so many elements. Uh, now you have you know prosecutors that are famous. The Robert Kardashian angle. Uh, this is one of the seminal moments. You know, if you're about our age, let's say you're 40 or older, everyone remembers where they were. Everybody remembers like everything that happened throughout that entire thing and how we were watching every single step of the way. And it's just, it's crazy. All of the little like offshoots uh, that, that have spurned from this. I mean, B, he's look at the athlete, the player before he's one of the greatest players in the history of his sport. Legendary, legendary. Then he became one of the most charismatic people to cover the sport yep. and crossed over to the general American public, mm -hmm. as a spokesman, well, as a salesman, I, as an actor. I'll say it since I'm the black guy. He did something that a lot of African Americans couldn't do. He crossed over into white America and was accepted by white America and corporate America. Absolutely. That's just what it is. And he made a bazillion dollars <laughs> by doing it. I mean, come on. I mean, it's like, like he was one of the first. And a lot of black folks Hands I know down. growing up was like, man, OJ's a sellout. OJ's a sellout. OJ's a well, sellout. And and watching that doc, that, that 30 for 30 doc, the difference between him and Jim Brown was very, very different. Yep. You know, uh, to your point about white America and how they viewed Jim Brown, yep. think about what Jim stood for mm -hmm. and what he wanted to be portrayed yep. as, and think about how OJ went in the complete opposite direction and and made it a point yep. to say, I don't want to be like Jim Brown. Yeah, no doubt. Which is crazy. Which is crazy, which is, which is insane. Because Jim Brown was in Jim movies. Brown with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Absolutely. Bill Russell, that iconic photo, Muhammad yes. Ali. Yes. They were about... The movement. And of course, our boy, Dr. Harry Smith. Yes. Dr. Harry Edwards, I should say. Dr. Harry Edwards, who's a legend. Um, and OJ went away from that. And by the way, that was a time, too, where, you know, dating outside of your race wasn't really popular. Oh, it was. Remember the movie Jungle Fever, Spike Lee? You're 100% kind of like, correct. You know, a lot of, a lot of, if you dated outside your race, whether you're white, white parents saying, my daughter, you dating a black guy? Hell no, not acceptable. Black people. Are you dating? You're marrying a white girl? Really, dude? Like, it was not acceptable no, during those times. You're so right. OJ did that and crossed it over. So, so many there's avenues. Layers. There's layers to this. And um, then and then for him to get off, uh, and again, like, people could say uh, he was proven innocent or whatever. We've got, 
I mean, if you watch the documentary, they talk about yeah. DNA. Like that's the whole thing on right. DNA. We didn't even know anything about yep. DNA, and that that trial changed a lot of things how this state and how the entire country operates regarding DNA. But like, if you watch it, like. He was linked to the murder at some point, yep. whether he was directly the one who did it or if he was involved or whatever. Regardless, he was also convicted in a civil case, yep. lost all of his money. And then his fall from grace. Oh, my gosh. And then but, what he what he represented the last five, six years but, on social but, but media. The last 10 years, he got, no, but the last 10 years, he became... To some people, like I remember, we see Joe Fortenbaugh, like, a, uh, like, like almost see, like a comedian. Like yeah, like everybody was like filling OJ. I was like, yeah, OJ, tell him like it is, OJ. Hell yeah, OJ. Like I remember Fortenbaugh, uh, who's our first take right now. Congrats to Joe Fortenbaugh. I remember Joe Lowe and Dibbs. They were talking about OJ. And Joe was like, Bonte, do you see OJ's Twitter account? I was like, yeah, I don't follow it. Yeah, exactly. But it was one of those accounts that you looked at every single day. It's like, what is this crazy dude up to today? And Ford Ball is the same thing because like, I see all my buddies following him. It's like, dude, I'm not hitting the follow button. But he would watch what OJ was doing every single day. He'd be like, look at this guy talking about fantasy football with no worry in the world. Then on one of the most popular podcasts out there today, Cam and Mace, it is what it is. He became a correspondent on that show. I know. Unbelievable. Talking about Messi Marv and San Quinn yeah, and E40. Right. And talking about how he's from Portrayal Hill Projects. Unbelievable. It's, I mean, I, again, Made in like, America. Go watch the doc. A five part Made in 30. America. Yeah. Made in America. It, you know, again, like I, I say, it, there's Joe DiMaggio and there's OJ Simpson wow. in terms of guys born and raised in San Francisco who became national icons. National icons. And DiMaggio is so old. Yeah. Look, most people in our audience don't even know what we're talking about. Yeah. The guy dated Marilyn Monroe. Right. He was, no, that's it, how big time he was. <laughs> I mean, Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> I mean, like. From San Francisco, from the Bay Area. And maybe I'm Simpsons getting too school. crusty by saying right. that. No, 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 no. Joe D. Everybody knows Joe D. We talk about 56 game hitting streak. We talk Joe DiMaggio. Uh, let's break real quick. We'll get to Robin on the other side. 888 If you got any thoughts on OJ Simpson, who just passed away at the age of 76. San Francisco's own, and I don't even know if San Francisco claims them anymore after what went down with L.J. Simpson. That's all coming up, brought to you by O'Reilly Auto Parts. Check engine light on. Take the guesswork out of your check engine light with O'Reilly Veriscan.
Now, back to the morning roast with Bonte and Shasky. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Uh, Warriors in Portland tonight. We'll talk to Chris DeMarco, 930 here on the roast. We'll do that for about 10 minutes up there in the Motor City. But right now, we're going to roll in this OJ stuff because OJ Simpson um, has passed away. One of the biggest falls from grace in American sport history. We think about his whole career. But I, I want to ask the fans out there, what is his legacy? What do you think his legacy is? How do you view OJ Simpson? 888-957-9570 is the number. I was going to say, you know, like there's like uh, in music, you see this a lot with whether it's R. Kelly or stuff that's going on with Diddy right now. People are always like, you know, yeah. there's certain cases where they separate the art from the artist. You, you see this in, in particular things. Yep. Like I feel like OJ, for a lot of people, and I know for the younger guys even more so, the athletic achievements and career and everything he did prior to 1994 are completely irrelevant. And yeah. all it is is Bronco, you know, the ac accusations of murder, how the, he lost in the civil trial, and then he ended up eventually going to jail for trying to to, to uh, rob someone um, of his memorabilia and stuff. Like, it's all of those things, the infamous things, and none of the other stuff. And it, it just feels like society has decided to... We're, we're never going to bring up the athletic no, achievements. Because here's here are the athletic achievements. Yeah. For people who don't know OJ, there's a lot. I get it. Where did OJ Simpson play in, 19, in the 70s to the 60s? He's the NFL MVP in 1973. He was Offensive Player of the Year in 73. Five, five time first team All Pro, five time Pro Bowler. I mean, AP Athlete, Associated Press Athlete of the Year in 1973. <laughs> He won AFC Offensive Player three times. He's a four-time rushing yards leader. 72, 73, 75, 76. Buffalo had, Buffalo had no, no passing game. 70s all-decade team. 75th anniversary all-time team. all -time team. 100th anniversary all-time team. Buffalo Wall of Fame. National champion in 1967 with USC. Heisman Trophy winner in 68. Maxwell Award winner in 68. I mean, the accolades go on and on and on. And for the longest time, for the longest time, he was the single season leader when it came to rushing yards in a season. In 14 games, he rushed for 2,003 yards in 1973. Now, since there's been seven other players to do it Eric Dickerson, Andrew Peterson, Jamal Lewis, Barry Sanders, Derek Henry, Terrell Davis, and Chris Johnson. But OJ was a fun. That's how I remembered him. And then, huh. And, then, and nobody celebrated OJ Simpson. We're just laying it out. No, for we're laying out there. it out. We're laying about who this guy was and why it's such a polarizing, why he's such a polarizing figure. And then 1994 happened, and whatever led up to 1994, obviously OJ was spinning out of control. He was acquitted of murder of, of a mur uh, of a situation where a lot of people believe OJ did it. Now he was acquitted of it, but then he lost the civil trial. He ended up going to jail anyway because he tried to go get his memorabilia back. But I, I. I <sighs> I don't know how to feel about O.J. Simpson because of what happened after 1994. And I see, I saw both sides of it. I know a lot of people haven't seen both sides of it. I saw both sides of him, like being this broadcast African American. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you find out in the documentary made in America, he really didn't mess with black folks when he started rising yeah. to the top. It's just, it's, I mean, everything about him was like way over the top. You know, whether it's the athletic achievements, whether it's the performance in front of camera, like his, his charisma in front of a camera like that's what i remember before 94 yep. was the charisma in front of the camera because i didn't see him play yep. you know well i'm talking about my youth you know like uh, i've seen him now in highlights and things like that but like the charisma in front of the camera was the thing that popped for me and it was like no way no way he could have done these things and like you read all the evidence and you see all the stuff that's laid out and even though the trial didn't convict him i mean it's an overmounting an overwhelming amount of evidence you know basically linking him to to both murders mm -hmm. and he loses the civil case and then he becomes the cautionary tale of like he tried to like rub it in people's faces and everyone was out to like, oh, no, 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 no. Well, society's going to find a way to get you back. And the yeah. karma ended up getting him yeah, back, no you know, and I think a lot of people I don't I don't even know how I felt. But a lot of people were like, yeah, you had that coming. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And I, I always felt grimy seeing, seeing his stuff popped everywhere. Like I'm, I'm chuckling because the amount of people that will recirculate his tweets and yeah, his appearances. Yeah. Did you feel grimy? Oh, I, I didn't even do it. I stopped. Like, when he first got on Twitter, I'm not going to lie. I started looking at his Twitter every day 
for a good well, month or two months. Well, it's hard not to because it's and after that, it just got over it. Well, and so, I forgot he was on Twitter. I haven't looked at his Twitter page really in like five years. They're, they're both. I, I again, this is my feeling. I believe he's a bad human being, yeah. and I believe R. Kelly's a bad human being. Yeah. And there was a time where, like, I had playlists and stuff where R. Kelly was on them. And then once I learned more of the details, yeah. I made a conscientious decision. Yeah, I'm removing all of the R. Yeah. Kelly stuff from my. I do not play R. Kelly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and so every now and then there'll be an album that I have from someone else where he. Like a feature, and I go, got to delete that gotta, from the library. Or just got to skip. It's well, no, a banger. I, I yeah. actively delete it because right. I don't want it coming up again. It, it, it's a banger. You're like, yeah, I can't play that. Ever again. Because now when I listen to R. Kelly, I think about what's going on. I'm like, oh, you man. Can't. Who's, you can't. You can't. Well, when it. I you watch some of those, it. again, like. And somewhere. I didn't watch it. I, 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 See, I, I watched it with story. my wife. I got the story. Montage. I watched half of the first episode. And you and have said, a daughter, and it's, it's, I just. I watched half of the first episode. I maybe watched the episode, and I I needed to know. What I saw was all I needed to know. And it wasn't one accusation. No, it was, it was multiple. It, it, multiple. Right. So anyway, like when I, when the, the OJ thing, the, the way it was laid out in the doc. And again, I'm not saying that the documentary is 100% the, the way it went down. There's just an overwhelming amount of evidence that you look at all. And I'm just using my common sense and seeing everything that happened. And I think his legacy is... All over the place. It's all over the place. I don't even know. I don't. I don't. I, I think his legacy is also. I, I, you I know. One, I just. I just. I, to me, one of the greatest falls tale. from face. It's a cautionary tale. Absolutely. He had everything, and he blew it. OJ blew it. Not anybody else. He blew it. That's a really well stated. He blew it. He had everything, and he blew it. Um, Bill in San Jose. Bill, what's happening? You're on the roast. What up, Bill? Hi guys, uh, let me turn the radio down, okay? Yep. Uh, you know, I, I was a senior in high school. I, I went to I went to high school across the street from City College. Oh, Reardon. Nice. And OJ. Yeah. Or no, OJ Lick was, uh, Did you go to Lick or Reardon? Yeah, Lick Lick oh, okay. Go Tigers, and, baby. Go nice. Tigers. Yeah. And then after school, uh, we used to go over and watch uh, OJ on the practice field at City. Um, and he was just, he was fantastic, you know, and he, he'd smile and he'd be real nice to everybody and even the kids, you know, high school kids, uh, didn't even know him and stuff. And, um, just a real, just a real nice guy or he seemed like a real nice guy. And then I also used to live on the other side of, uh, Petrero Hill and, uh, I'm, I'm white, and, but I used to walk through the uh, the project area, you know, when I was uh, when I worked at San Francisco General, and I used to walk down there, and I used to think about OJ after it all happened, and I think he was kind of a victim. He was a victim of his environment, you know. I think I think that um, even if, oh, I remember one thing when I was a. a, a all right. What? It, 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 there was a lot going on there. Here, here, here's called, what I will he, say he, about that housing project. It's a notoriously dangerous yeah. and rough housing project that they've been trying to fix and clean well, for they're, they're decades. Cl they're cleaning it out, and it it's, looks a lot better now. But unfortunately, I hope those people that were living there don't get displaced because there are some really good people from course, Petrero Hill, no doubt about it. But when he says, I got to disagree with Bill when he says he's a product, product of his environment. He made it out of that environment. He made it to an environment that we all didn't know exist. I mean, which is Brentwood, California, yeah. down in L.A. Yeah, I didn't know that existed. I didn't know about that environment. The, the he made it out of that. So that, to me, is not an excuse. He made it out. Like, if I something yeah, happens to me, yeah, Shasky, because yeah. I grew up in a similar environment. Yeah. Pastry projects was right around the corner. Saw crackheads every single day. Yeah. That's why I always say, man, when the gunshots going on, oh, I'm good. I'm going back to sleep. Anyway, if I go back to that life or if I do mm -hmm. something... I'm, the, the, the environment is what made me me today. Exactly. It's what's made me stronger. It's what made me think about everything and say, okay, I can make it out of it. A lot of these basketball players have made it out of environments. A lot of these football players have made it out of those environments. I'm not going to sit here and listen to the excuse, though, about OJ saying he was a product of his environment. Because that environment from when he got drafted yeah. to the NFL to when he was at USC yeah. to whatever happened until, yeah. up until 94, the environment was a little, he made it. OJ made it. He was a national star. A global. 
Hell, he was a global star. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not buying that one. No, no, it doesn't. It, it, look, there's we can make a lot of excuses and stuff, but at some point you got to pull yourself up by your bootstraps and you got to understand right from wrong, especially when you've been in the in the type of rooms that he was in for decades. That his that his fame and his money and his access and his exceptional athleticism put him into like the guy knew right and wrong better and yep. and he was wrong. Uh, over and over. And it wasn't just, like, if you watch all of the documentary, and again, I'm not saying that the doc is the end-all, be-all, but when you watch it, like, that, it wasn't just a one-night thing. No. No. There was a lot of domestic situation yep. uh, issues that were going yep. on internally, and, and he was wrong for a long time. Yep. And people around them knew that. Yep. Her family knew that. So, I, I don't I don't know. I don't want to hear that. Um, let's go to Chris at Burlingame. Chris, what's happening? Hey guys, how you doing? Great show. I listen to it all day, freaking long. Thank you, brother. Uh, Thank, thank you. you. Listen, um, listen. No, when I heard he died this morning at I don't know six thirty, I said it's about time to myself. That guy committed the most heinous crime by slashing those two beautiful people to pieces. Who does that? The guy's an athlete. Yeah, he had a bad upbringing. Thousands of people have bad upbringings. They seem to get away from it all. Not everyone can, I agree. But you don't, when you commit a crime like that, something is wrong with you. I mean, you just can't do something like that. Barry Bonds, Mark McGuire, they took steroids. A lot different scenario. Totally. Do we acknowledge their great attributes? I don't know. I mean, but this guy killed two people. So anyway, that's all I got to say. Well, and that's where we had a caller earlier, you know, equate gambling with Pete Rose to, to murder, like m murder outside. Well, we can argue about the horrible crimes to commit to someone, but murders at the top of the list. Take somebody's life. E exactly. Now, again, there's no coming back from, from it. That. So I don't want to say, you know, it looks like it's a it legend, him, but it's a legend. He was acquitted. So by the court of law. He's not a murderer. You know what I'm saying? Which is, which, it's, but I, got, I think that's a huge part of the legacy right. is I think a lot, a, a lot of people on, on all sides well, are like, how the hell did this guy get off? Johnny Cochran. Because when Spreewell chokes Spreewell, uh, P.J. Carlosimo, who was a lawyer for Spreewell, Johnny Cochran he was, was in up the, in the Oakland. He was in the famous photo. <laughs> the really? Famous photo. I yep. didn't know oh, that. Yep. Go wow. Put up the photo. On the cover of the Chronicle. Yeah. Google yeah. it right now. Yeah, Google it. It's right now. Spencer, yeah. Brian Shaw. Yeah, they're all standing yeah, there behind him. They're all standing there behind Spreewell, and Johnny Cochran is a lawyer. Johnny Cochran. And he said in the court of law, but in the court of public opinion. The court of, yeah. and, court of public and opinion. in the court of the civil case, which you you need less, uh, obviously you need less, uh, you know, evidence and whatnot, but, but he... Again, if if they do that, in the words of Stephen A. Smith had famously said, if he was the attorney, he wins that 10 out of 10. I disagree with Stephen A. Smith on that. The times were different, but just go back and watch everything, you know. Let's it, go to... An uh, acquittal doesn't mean yeah. that you're completely innocent. Okay. There, there's layers to this. Let's go to uh, Philball Mike. Philball Mike, what's happening, man? You're on the roast. What up, Philball? Hey, man. I mean... OJ's a legend, rest on, on the athletic field. The thing is, you we don't know. Who, whoever whoever has no sin casts the first stone. We don't know what happened, who did what. At the end of the day, a lot of people that we watch, listen to, they got skeletons in the closet, For man. For sure. So with For that sure. being said, with that being with that being said, I'm going to keep bumping R. Kelly if I want something to happen. You feel me? I'm going to do what I do. Everybody do what y'all do. You feel me? If you don't want to listen to somebody, do that. Don't listen to them. If you don't agree with somebody, do that. Don't listen to them. But everybody casting opinions, and, 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 and this, ain't, this ain't sports talk. This is life or death. So whatever happened, happened, and he was proven innocent, and there's a lot of people that's been proven innocent that's been hella guilty. So let that stay where it stay, man. Y'all be smooth. You feel me? Y'all can hate me or hate me and love me or love me. I'm going to say the same thing on my station. There it is, FOMO Mike. Let's go to uh, good Uncle Gene. Uncle Gene in Oakland. What's happening, Uncle Gene? Hey, fellas. Uh, you know, I love FOMO Mike a lot, but uh, skeletons in the closet. I mean, most of us don't have real skeletons in our closet. Now, you know, when this guy died, 
Uh, and you mentioned you uh, reported it early. I felt basically nothing. Okay. Yeah. As opposed to how I felt when Jim Brown died almost a year ago now, mm. okay? Mm. Complete opposites. Complete opposites. That's a man that was dedicated to the advancement of his race. And, uh, you know, OJ, he ran all right. He ran away from all of that, okay? Uh, I loved to watch him. I enjoyed when he, when he was a runner and played for Buffalo. And, you know, of course, he was washed up by the time he came to the Niners, but... Still, and I watch. You know, I had fun watching his movies, but after he committed murder, and come on, he did commit murder. Uh, that was it for me. So, uh, no, I, I feel nothing, and that's that's how I feel. Yeah. Sorry. All right, Uncle Gene. Uh, six five zero two D mobile text line. Wow, your opinion, Shaskia Bonte, is your opinion. OJ has a family as well. They do not want to hear him being slandered on a day like this throughout the airways. You guys casting your searches is ridiculous. Well, no, let me. I want to step in. Hold on. Yeah. Time out. We didn't give an opinion on OJ. All we're doing is laying out his life and trying to educate the people who don't know about OJ Simpson of who he was before and after the murders of his ex wife and her friend. That's that's all we're doing. We I we Shask hasn't told you how he felt about OJ dying. I haven't told you. I just I just said I don't know how to feel Monte. because of who he is and everything surrounding him. We're not giving no opinions on OJ. We're not saying this or that. What way? We're just laying it out for you guys. Look, Come on, man. Listen, dude. Listen. I don't, I don't want to compare my dad to OJ, but I just eulogized my father. Okay, and my father wasn't a perfect man, but a big part of my dad's life was him getting sober. And I brought that up in the eulogy because that's part of who he was. A big part of OJ's life is the Bronco chase and what happened. A yep. humongous part. That happened. This all happened. It, this is all part of the story of who he right. is. If it wasn't a big deal, he would have never lost his job at NBC. Exactly. Come reporter. on, man. Like right, You got that sound? Here's Bo Jackson's final game. Because I remember watching this as a kid. Bo Jackson was sick. They were playing the Bengals. I think they had played the Bengals a few weeks prior at the L.A. Memorial Coliseum. But Bo Jackson on a big run. Hit goes out. He's done on the football field forever. You never see this. An injured player limping off the field getting interviewed by a reporter. Well, that reporter happened to be O.J. Simpson. You know why? Because all these players, they would talk to O.J. because they looked up to O.J. and loved him. Now, does Bo Jackson talk to O.J. after 1994? Probably not. But here it is. O.J. Simpson walking off the field with Bo Jackson during his last ever football game in a playoff game, getting a report right on the spot. Oh, seconds, and congratulations to the L.A. Raiders. Sam Weiss's Bengals lose to Art Shell's Raiders 20-10. to 10. It'll be Buffalo and the Raiders with a chance for the Super Bowl. O.J.? Yeah, I'm down here with Bo Jackson, Bo. You kind of hurt yourself the, the day you were running real well. Can you tell me the nature of the injury? I will play next Sunday. You think you'll be there next Sunday? You had an opportunity to watch yesterday's game. Have you ever had the occasion to play in that type of weather, and how do you think you'll do? I played in it twice. Once against the Bills and once against the Giants. So I'm looking forward to it. It's always nice to go up there and play against those guys. We just got to go up and try to play some and finish football and try to get a win. It doesn't matter how we do it. We just got to go up and try to win. Is the injury a hip? Is it a pull, or do you have a hip pointer? It's a slight hip pointer. So it's it. But it's really not that bad. All right, folks. Good luck to you. See you next week in Buffalo. Boy, a couple of greats in that picture. Heisman, Simpson. Bo Jackson, Dick Enberg on the call. Exactly. And O.J. Simpson. And Bo Jackson said, I will play next week. And he didn't play another football game the rest of his life. <laughs> it's unbelievable. I mean, there's layers to that. That's unbelievable. Two of the greatest collegiate athletes of all time. Two of the greatest running backs I know. Do With Dick Enberg, one of like the like crazy. seminal broadcasters top of, the, of top. the last 50 Top of the top. Years. Put up like Keith Jackson. All, all the, the great of the greats. Oh, my. The, the way we view Michael Strahan currently is how a lot of people viewed O.J. Simpson. Like I, that, I, I want to give yeah, the younger audience. Yeah, that's, that's I'm using call. it. I, I don't know that's if it's a, a like call. for like, but it's very close. Wouldn't you agree? Absolutely. Like, Strahan is like, oh, like if, if Strahan came to your family function, everyone would be around the table laughing it up with, with Strahan. That's how America viewed O.J. Simpson In, back Infectious then. personality, oh, the dude, smile, just, the charisma, oh. all the commercials. He that's a good call. Us. Right. He's great. And, and, and let me let me say prior to here, everything because the YouTube chat is going crazy. This is <laughs> people are going to feel how they feel. 
There's no need to shame anybody for feeling one way about O.J. Simpson. We don't tell you how to feel about the Golden State Warriors or how to feel about the Giants. You feel how you feel, and we have a discussion. We have a conversation. No need to get nasty over this. He is one of the most polarizing figures in American sport history, probably in America. When you talk about one of the falls from grace, biggest fall from grace, who comes close to O.J.? I, I, who comes close? I, I, like Pete Rose is still adored. I know he's kicked out of baseball, but Pete Rose is still adored. As we look around what's going on in society with the Harvey Weinstein and the P. P Diddy currently, like right. we don't know anything about anyone yeah. ever. But when we Social talk about like P. Diddy's fall from grace, if it ends up ha like it's unbelievable. OJ, 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 even P. Diddy is not as good in his field as OJ was. In as his LJ field. was in yeah, his, no doubt. And P. Diddy's one of the, the better artists. Not even close, right? Not even close. It's a, I wouldn't even call P. Diddy a great artist. And, and Maybe a great mind for exactly. putting people on, but and, and, and then like all right. of your accomplishments in one field, they don't outweigh doing horrific things to yep. people. So, but this is all part of when we discuss these individuals. This is all baked into it. Yep, no doubt. Uh, let's go to Big Smooth in Oakland. Big Smooth. We we'll get the David DC. We'll continue to roll here on the morning roast. Big Smooth. What's happening? <laughs> what a topic, man. What a topic. Listen, it's unreal. Wait, wait, can you believe that? You wake up on a, I woke up on a Thursday morning thinking we're about to talk play in. OJ we're about to talk kicks. <laughs> OJ does it again. But listen, man, I, my take is different. I mean, yeah, no, nobody, nobody celebrate OJ in light of what happened, but you gotta understand, OJ was my Michael Jordan. Mm, see? OJ was listen, man, he was it, it doesn't even I don't think the strand compares because OJ was he, he 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 was way bigger than that. I mean this guy was the first field reporter. He was the first crossover. He was he was the first uh athlete that I know that had a signature shoe. He had that spot built. Remember those spot built uh yep. the cleats? Uh I wore thirty two in middle school because of OJ. Wow. He was highlight football. He was the electric company. He was Howard Cosell. The juice is loose. You got to understand how big this guy was. He had an action figure. Man, this was OJ. But then the up flip side was LA OJ. Uh, the whole Kardashian, whatever. That was a whole different career. The OJ has about four or five sides of him, but that one side, which is where he became beloved, he had to become beloved first to get to the point of where he fell. But OJ was the top dog of sports. It wasn't just football. OJ was, there would be no Michael Strahan, not even close if there was no OJ Simpson. Now, I'm not celebrating, listen, he's before his God right now, so don't worry about it. Whatever, whatever, whatever was done or not done, it doesn't matter at this point because you can't change anything, but he's before his God, and only God can judge him. So anyway, y'all be blessed. Good luck with this, man. Have a great one. Great call. Wow, great In call. In terms of giving move. some perspective from someone who clearly right. was around prior to did everything you, that went did down. Did you hear what he said? He was my Michael Jordan. That was incredible. That, Michael Jordan's my guy. Yeah, of course. You grew up in Michael Jordan. You know. Oh, come on. Michael Jordan, Game 6, Utah. I thought that was it, but like, he was must-watch. I watched... From 91 to 98, I don't think I missed Jordan game as a kid. It's Well, obviously during the week where you don't have cable yeah. networks, you don't have league pass, but national televised games, if Jordan was on and the Bulls are on, you're watching every second. We need the entire starting lineup the way they did it. Now starting for your Chicago the whole Bulls. Intro, dude, 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 dude. The whole intro was iconic. So that's how big OJ was for Big Smooth and for a lot of people. He was there, Michael Jordan. I did a show with Greg Papa for many, many years, who grew up in Buffalo. Idolized. Idolized OJ. As the Told me all the stories about OJ. As a player. Like, wow. OJ, we will go to the games. It was before Rich Stadium, wherever they played yeah. in Buffalo Municipal Park or whatever it was. I don't yeah. know what it, the name of it. That's where. That's how far back he goes with OJ. It was like the grace he ran with. Gliding. The speed. The breakaway speed. Breaking tackles. He was the only offensive threat on that football team, and it did not matter. And he still ran for 2,000 yards. It, it's just crazy. I mean, and uh, um, the, we're looking at the Bronco right now. Like, if, if someone has a white Bronco, I, I haven't seen a white Bronco. They made a new one, and I still see it in the color white, and I still think of it. Like, like that's what yeah, I'm how saying. How could you not? It, how can you not? I mean, it's it's just one of the seminal moments. Yeah. And the fact that he was from San Francisco, yeah. born and raised in Petrero Hill, like that, 
Because my dad would always say like, oh, City College. Yeah, City College. City College, Petrero Hill boy. You know, you're coming over 280, just look to the left. Coming over 280, look to the left. No, Galileo High School. I know. Going up, going to Washington, or knowing people who went to Galileo, a lot of buddies who went to Galileo. It used to be named O.J. Simpson Field. It was O.J. Simpson Field. It's incredible. And as soon as the trial started in 1994, and Antoine, we know Twan, yeah, yeah, Coach yeah. of Sacred Heart Cathedral, Antoine, Antoine Evans. Evans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll tell you all about it. They renamed it George Whitefield, who was a legendary coach yeah. at Galileo High School. They named it George Whitefield. Wanted nothing to do with OJ. Washed their heads away from Nobody him. Nobody did. When I was covering City College, I'd never seen anything around about OJ Simpson. I didn't see no photos. I didn't see anything. Wow. People distance themselves from him. Let's go to Dave in DC. Dave, what's happening? You're on the roast. Yeah, uh, I'm going to say this quick before I get flushed again. No, so no, nah, you're okay. That, <laughs> I'm just worried that whatever people feel about OJ, I hate to say it, but it's probably going to be divided among between race by race. So to me, that's a very sad thing. So I wish we could get beyond that. Yeah, but, I, I think, Dave, thanks for the call. You know what? I'm a black guy. And I feel like after, you know, as a kid, as a teen, getting out of Hoover Middle School, watching the case, you know, at first I was like, OJ didn't do it. OJ didn't do it. I'm a young black kid. I'm ignorant to it. It's like, oh, this is white versus black. And then over the years, it plays out. And you become more educated mm -hmm. about the situation. And then you watch Made in America. <laughs> and it's a five-part series. I'm telling you, there's a lot of black kids like me who probably feel like he got famous and forgot about us. He got for, he got famous and forgot about his hometown. That's what you felt like? Absolutely. It's like, wait a minute, he's at the country club? Like, you couldn't bring people along? Yeah, yeah. And how he did, like, even then, in high school. Okay, his boy, his best friend, what was it, AC? Yeah. Al he's dating a girl. <laughs> he dating a girl. And he goes, OJ picks me, go, oh, I'm going to pick you up. And he picks me up, and he's got my girlfriend in the front seat. The character, that's bad character. I like, hey, you don't do that. It doesn't you matter, like, what, race doesn't matter are, yeah. what race you are. It's like, wait a minute here. What's going on? So I don't want to hear about product and environment because when he did become famous, and he did, mm -hmm. from watching the documentary and talking to people who were around, Jim Brown, whatever, Dr. Mm -hmm. Harry mm -hmm. Edwards, and look, he was like, yeah, I'm not really black. I'm, I'm OJ. You know what I'm saying? Like the great Jay-Z line. <laughs> I'm not black, I'm OJ. Well, that's what it felt like. So I felt like, he kind of sold out our race. But then again, I need to be more educated about it. So he's a polarizing figure for me. So I hope that race, whether you're white, black, Mexican, Chinese, whatever it is, let's just look at him as a person. Well, and I think that what we're not going to like I, one thing I want to say to the audience, we're not re trying OJ on no, air. No, all right. That's no, no, number no, no, one. No. OK, we're not. Society has already figured out where people are feeling when it comes to OJ. This is all part of it. This is all, this part, is of all story. part of the legacy. And when someone passes away, there's an obituary. Again, I told you, he just did this for my dad. And part of everyone's obituary is all the things that happened. Yep. You know, and we're not weighing, you know, the athletic career versus the heinous things he's been accused of and which one he's going to. No, it's all of it. And I just think that we're, I'd like to hear people's perspective who are a little yep. older, who were around and understand what he meant to mm -hmm. America the second that yep. Bronco chase started. It flipped everything. Everything. It flipped everything. I, when that, when those finals were happening, we're watching Knicks and Rockets. Jordan's first year retiring. Knicks had just beat the Bulls. The NBA's at the they top beat of the, the top. Pacers. It's Bob Costas. It's Madison Square Garden. It's a pivotal game five. Sam Cassell's cooking as a rookie yeah. for Florida State. You got Vernon Maxwell. You got Robert Horry, rookie out of Alabama. You got Otis Storp. You got Oakley. You got Mason. You got Ewing. You got Starks. It is the top of the top. Knicks are trying to break a title drop. Patrick Ewing's finally about to get his ring. They win game five, but midway through the second quarter, little pivot. Somebody's in a white Bronco. And what do you know? It's O.J. Simpson in a white Bronco because his ex-wife had been murdered. I'll never forget it. And from then, I was like, wait a minute. O.J. Simpson, murderer? Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. How, why is he in a Bronco? The football broadcaster? It's the insane. juice? The guy who ran for 2,000 when, yards? When, and it completely flipped my, Bonte, my perspective also when, on him. When, when the nation had, the majority of the nation had five channels. Yeah. Yep. And it was on every channel. Every channel. It, like I, I, like that's the other thing. Like I know Spadoni, you guys all grew up with cable, right? And I had cable by the mid '90s, but the majority of America had five channels. Yep, give or take.
Yep. And every one of them was on that. Was it not? Yep. Yep. So we're not retrying him. We're not rehab. We're just kind of trying to educate people. This guy was born to San Francisco, Patrail Hill Projects. Made it out. Played for the Niners. Played for the Niners at one point, but really was bigger than that. Was a big star at USC in that LA market. Big star with the Buffalo that's, Bills. That's when the Bills were nobodies. Yeah. And then after his career, had a very his post career was as, been good as if, successful if, as his playing career, which is saying a lot. Which it might I mean in, in many ways what he did for athletes on television. Is as like why does every guy have a podcast? Why is there a the right. TNT show with Charles Barkley after the game? Because the guy's like OJ, literally. Yep, that's the evolutionary step. Yep, uh, you are listening to ninety five seventy game KGMG FM and HG one San Francisco. <laughs> Don't forget that you can also watch us every single day on our YouTube and Twitch streams. Just log on and search ninety five seventy game. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel while you are there. Brought to you by First NorCal Credit Union. Upgrade your savings dividend. Open a First NorCal first class money market today. You can now download the Odyssey app directly from our YouTube and Twitch pages. As we have added the QR code on both pages. Shout out to the Xfinity Mobile Text Line, including you six five zero. We love you too. Larry uh, in San Francisco. One thing oh, I would say, right. the other thing, like if you want to get like all sportsy, like we do the worst trades in Bay Area sports history. The OJ trade might be one of the worst oh, trades in Bay Area sports history. It, it might Two be. Two first round picks and a slew of others. Joe Thomas, the GM of the Niners. For a guy who had up. like 800 combined yards right. in two years. Joe Thomas, GM of the Niners during that time. Look him up. And read <laughs> it's his a story. horrible trade. It was a horrible, horrible trade. And that's like the 44th thing that when you yep. bring up OJ that would come to mind. Let's go to Larry in San Francisco. Larry, what's happening? Hey, good morning, man. Wow, life is something else, ain't it? We're here today, going tomorrow. Unbelievable. But you know what I can remember about OJ, man, coming up in the 60s, I mean, in the 70s, man, as a teenager, you know, like watching Monday Night Football, and uh, it was so much just watching Monday Night Football, but we wanted to see what OJ did, you know, watching Howard Cosell do the halftime show mm. on, on the juice, you know what I'm saying? And that was something to watch, you know, even though I watched him at USC, you know, when he ran all over the place and, and got his Heisman Trophy win and then became the Buffalo Bills, you know, when he first started, everybody thought he was a failure, you know, because they had already drafted, uh, you know, people like Jim Plunkett went to New England, and you know how that worked out. But at the same time, you know, watching somebody from the hill, man, to Chell Hill, that was something big in our neighborhood, you know what I'm saying? Hey, let me ask you something, Larry. As he moved yeah. on to L.A., do you feel like O.J., not necessarily turned his back on San Francisco or the hood, but like he sort of separated himself from that and didn't really try to bring up his upbringing from Petra Hill. Did you feel like that at all? Let me tell you something about that, man. A lot of us cats, man, back in the day, when, after he got famous and everything, and it just seemed like he didn't really, I'm not saying he didn't care about where he came from or anything like that, but he didn't put it out there like, hey, I came up in San Francisco out of Petra Hill, tough neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Petra Hill back in the day was pretty tough, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, doing the civil rights movement, all that stuff. You know, that was still fresh going on. Black Panthers doing their thing mm -hmm. and all this other stuff. That was what he was dealing with back then. So, uh, and then as I got on, I looked at it, what you're talking about. I just, I figured, you know, like, he's been like that. You know, that's just him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, yeah. when, he, when he changed, we don't know. But I can tell you about his mom, and they were pretty cool. His brother, you know, worked at the gas station down there. He was a cool guy, you know what I'm saying? But, like I say, man, I'm just shocked. I'm, I'm sad for him. At the same time, I'm thankful that we had a brother from the city, man, that did his thing, man. That's all I want to say. What I that hear about. that. I hear that. Um, let's go to Robin San Bruno real quick, Shasky. Robin San Bruno, before we get to the break. What's up, Rob? What's going on, fellas? First off, we on RP OJ. Whatever happened between, you know, that stuff happened. I'm, I'm not going to, you know, dis, you know, talk bad about the man. It's a lot of public figures that are still alive, that are dead, that Americans, you know, we all celebrate. They did some of the most heinous things in American history, and they still get, they, they, we don't look them like that. So I'm not looking at OJ like that. He was a brother that made it from the hood. You could say he turned his back, but, you know, he, he, he seen something new. You know what I'm saying? He, he stepped his game up. You know, he probably got, you know, too big for himself. He got humbled, but at the end of the day, man, he he, he came from dirt. You know, then when he came up, it was like, man, wow, I'm here. I just came from that filthy place. So it is what it is. I don't think he's a sellout, but I'm not going to bash him, man. R.P. O.J. All right. There's a lot of people who felt like that. But that's, I think that's, again, as we're discussing someone who's passed away, 
what is their legacy? Like yeah. I was, I thinking of like again. I, I keep going back to my dad because I just had you know went through my dad's death. It's like, what is my dad's legacy? I would, I would talk that almost immediately. Not just for me, just fuck everybody he knew. And I look at someone like O.J. Simpson, and I think that you are going to get one of the widest, yeah, widest, yeah, range of reactions yep. from people out there because of the diverse life he lived mm -hmm. prior. To 1994 and then just what happened in 94 and on think of how polarizing it's been i mean look, look let's call it what it is we you and me want to stay employed as long as we possibly can right. all right <laughs> and there are landmines with every single word said by every single person who's Don't getting doubt. on this and, right. and i'm not i'm not mad we're doing the best right. we can right. as real things happen i'm just i'm just right. some dude who grew up in excelsior right. you're just some guy who grew up on wall street and and this is someone who both of us Kind of liked prior to 1994. Like, oh my God, he's one of he's from San Francisco. Like that's what I was doing. He's one of us. Yeah. He made it though, you yeah. know. And then all of this stuff happened, and it's a tapestry of yeah. of chaos. And we're we're trying our best to like navigate this situation, and but we're also know, trying to be real. You know, and, and it's crazy because all we're doing is being real and laying it out. We got <laughs> the range. We got, of we, you got six five zero who is angry at us. Angry at for us. what? Who knows? Who knows? You two dudes, straight jerks. We'll never look at you the same. If you opened up the Chronicle, okay, let's say, and I know people a lot of us don't love OJ. So, so, but, but Bonte, open up his uh, Wikipedia. Yeah, I bet no, it's in the first paragraph. No, no doubt. I'm, I'm not. I, why? First of all, I never met OJ. I never saw him play. Yeah, exactly. Right. right? The only thing I loved about him was that he was black. And then once the trial happened, it was like, wait, what? If, and I'll never forget. It brings me back to the trial. That's I, when, it, when, I was he was, when he was acquitted. Yeah, middle school. I was going to the PE. I was a teacher's aide for a PE yeah. class. Uh, they Mr. roll Moore. the TV in. Mr. Moore. Didn't even roll the TV in. Mr. Moore just came out. They found OJ in his shit. Now, I remember some kids. We watched it. Some kids. I didn't even watch it. I they was rolled just, it I was in. in class. And the teacher turned it off after. I was like, all right, now we get back to social studies. Right. Well, we, were, we was playing hoops. And Mr. Moore came up. Well, OJ's innocent. I was like, wow. <laughs> and they <laughs> called it the trial of the century. Yeah, they did. The trial of the century. Every day it was on TV. Coffee 20. It, every day. They're all stars because of it. Johnny Cochran's a star. Are the Kardashians a star. the Kardashians without that trial? I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't mean, know. let's go to Kim Kardashian sitting sidelined at an NBA game. <laughs> I mean, like, right? You know. And so, how many people who watch that listen. stupid Kardashian show have no idea right. who her father so, is? So, this is why. This is why the OJ situation is so polarizing. It's insane. Because you don't know whether or not to explain the good things that he did. Because it's like, yeah, sure, he did all these good things athletically. But the person that we grew to know, boy, kind of narcissistic, right? <laughs> kind of out Monty, there. Monty, like, just... it's, it's tough to, so, so, you know, I know there's some people out there on YouTube and they're probably texting me right now or, or they're out there on the text line, Xfinity Mobile text line said, talk about the good OJ did. And then there's the other half saying, stop wasting time on him. He's a murderer. It's like, how do you talk about OJ? Let me give you two I, docs. Let me, not docs, but let me give you two movies that just came out. Oppenheimer and Napoleon. All right? So depending on what side of yeah. history you fall on, some people think that those guys should be tried for war crimes. Right? right? You yeah. know? And so, like, like, this is what happens when you are a public person with the type of infamy that OJ has. Yep. You're going to have a wide range of opinions. Look, poll America about anything. Is the sky blue today? <laughs> You're going to get 50 zillion responses. <laughs> Let's take uh, one quick call. One quick call. Other side, other side. We'll take one quick call. We got Chris DeMarco coming up. We cannot push him back. We already did before. He never let me hear the end of it. So Chris DeMarco will join us at 930. We'll have him off for 10 minutes. We'll end the show. Get back to this. What a day. Warriors are playing the Blazers. Playing stuff is going crazy. Giants have the day off. But O.J. Simpson has passed away at the age of 76. So we're just asking, how do you feel about his legacy? What are your thoughts when you hear the name O.J. Simpson? That's all coming up, brought to you by Robert Half. Robert Half Research indicates 9 out of 10 hiring managers are having...
Oh man. Oh man. Bate, oh, man. Bate, let me oh, just ask man. you this. If I just said infamous, he's one of the, the, the people you think of, right? Oh, no doubt. Right? Like I know we think of like sports infamy, like Barry Bonds and Mark McGuire, like what they were accused of, which I believe Barry did it, but like what they were accused of is significantly less severe in terms of what we all have as our moral compass from what OJ like, was accused like of doing. Aaron Hernandez was so polarizing to me because of, what he, you know, like think about Aaron Hernandez. Yes. That's infamous. And he's now gone. Yes. You know, I mean, accused of multiple murders. Right, right. Just. And that documentary was, right. I mean, I, I not even and somehow some way the university of Florida has been able to sweep on their oh, rug about a murder when he was in college. It's in, like it's, unbelievable. It's, it's unbelievable. It's, uh, Aaron Hernandez, you say Aaron Hernandez, you're like, wow. Okay. Well, the Aaron Hernandez story is, I mean, it's, yeah. It, well, it's I remember all over. talking to Der Dr. Harry Edwards when I first got an yeah, internship yeah. at the other station. And I saw Dr. Harry Edwards, he's getting ready for a hit in KGO. And I was like, man, Doc, I yeah. should put my hand out there. We're going to talk to Chris DeMarco in 10 minutes. So we'll get everybody on the line yeah. for Chris DeMarco. I know we're going to segue off of this. It's very weird segue. But Dr. Harry Edwards, he was blaming the Patriots organization. He goes, dude. The Patriots knew Aaron Hernandez's dad was part of Puerto Rican mob up there in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. Like it, Dr. Harry Edwards is breaking it down. It's like, dude, they knew this and they enabled it and blah, 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 blah. Like they do all these background checks. Background checks on top of background checks. So they knew Aaron Hernandez was kind of a no good guy and, you know, saw what happened there. But infamous, like falls from grace. I mean, fall from grace is really. Fall from grace is I it's can't, a short list. I mean, Again, we're seeing what's going on with Diddy right now, and and that feels like a fall from grace. Diddy, I don't even know. Like, I don't even know what's. I haven't even kept. Who up knows? With it, but, but like, but like again, again you know. same thing. Like, but but to to understand OJ's fall from grace, you have to understand what he meant at that time. Yeah. And I think it's really difficult for the younger crowd to really understand just how popular the dude was. And how, how much of a trendsetter he was. I mean, we had a guy call in and say that he had a toy, uh, a little toy of O.J. Simpson. He had a signature shoe. You know how many people have right. been tweeting and Instagramming, messaging us about how Michael Jordan and Tiger Woods essentially took the script of how to yep. sell yourself to America Playbook. in the same way that O.J. did, except they did it without doing what he was accused of I mean, doing. He crossed over into white America and became a star. All of a sudden, he's playing racquetball with some of the richest people in L.A. You know what I'm saying? He has 30-second Hertz commercials. He's on. He, he's in Naked Gun movies. NBC. For, I mean, this is why. Let's get to the lines, man. We got Chris it's DeMarco, just, I, uh, assistant head coach of the Golden State Warriors, coming up. It's it's a wild one, man. It's a wild one. Um, I will watch that doc over. You just said it during the break. I'm oh, probably going to watch episode again. one when I get to the house today uh, after my haircut. Doug and Berkeley, what's happening? What's up, You're Doug? You're on the roast. Hey, guys. Good morning. Morning, good morning. Doug. morning, Doug. Um, I, I want to have a slightly different take on things. Um, I remember when I watched the OJ documentary and one line stood out to me, there was a, a white individual and, you know, OJ just got off and he said, wow, OJ's acquitted. I guess they played the race card race wins again. And it flashed through my mind in that moment, how it could, nothing could be further from the truth. O.J. did not get off because he was black. O.J. got off because he could afford mm. the best lawyers. That was a moment, in my mind, that was a moment when, if you feel that O.J. was guilty, that was a moment when you should have said, boy, the criminal justice system in this country is broken, Yeah, and we really need to do it because if O.J. gets off, something's really, really wrong. That's if you believe that he was guilty. Yeah. Um, and, and, and you know, I'm not coming down on one side or the other on that question, but 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 that was a seminal moment where we could have said, "Wow, we need to change this," because you know uh, that shouldn't have happened. Klaus von Bülow, the same thing. He got off, and because he could afford the best lawyers, so so we missed a moment there where we could have done something about the criminal justice system in this country. It's yeah, a really uh, well it, stated. It was so on it, everything you guys are talking about, about how great OJ was um, as a player and how his fall from grace is, is, is monumental. I agree with Thanks for taking it. You know, it's a great that. call. And I'm, I'm glad you bring up the, the, that should have, it should have been a moment for us to alter the criminal justice system. I've been in it. Okay. O on the wrong end. And I will admit to you that like, 
I don't think people understand how impossible it is to rehabilitate yourself in that setting and in those environments. And it is very difficult to uplift yourself from those. Like, yes, we do need some changes and it's a very deep conversation, but like I watched it on the Epstein doc. Epstein had, he just walked. He just just walked. He should have been in jail like 30 years ago. Like I said, an hour ago, when that case happened and when he was acquitted, because I thought there was so much evidence, but whatever. Um, yeah, exactly. Knows, I, We're I just looking what at what, I, I through just, the prism of the whatever. Doc. But I did think, as an 11-year-old kid, I was like, damn, if you have money, you can get off of a lot of things. <laughs> money a will lot wash of away a lot that. of things. It would. Financially, you could buy cops, you could buy this, you could buy judges, you could buy whatever. It still happens today. It's just unbelievable. Let's go to uh, Aku in L.A. Aku, what's happening? You're on the roast. What up, Aku? My guys, my guys, first of all, I want to say, you know, my condolences to my boy Shaq, man, you know, you know what I'm saying? I understand that. Been through it myself, sir. Uh, Thank you. Second of all, oh boy, of course, you're welcome. You're welcome. And the last call, it just threw off a little bit what I was going to say. But the criminal justice should have been fixed a long time ago before OJ. Let's just get it clear. I grew grew up in San Quentin State Prison. My Mm. father was a lieutenant there. You understand me? I lived in Moran, went to San Rafael from Richmond. I'm throwing all these shots out because I live in L.A. But, um, (laughs) yeah, but so it should have been been fixed. So it started with the Rodney King, and that's the reason why OJ got off. Should have been fixed. Second of all, I called because my man OJ, rest in peace. Now, check it out. I just want to give a quick. If y'all didn't know, he used to be on the show. With a uh, Mason Cameron called mm-hmm. it is what it oh, is. Yeah, it is what it is. Yep. Commentator there. Yep. Yeah, and so man, it was hilarious segment. So he gave his favorite rappers, and the list was Tupac, San Quinn, and Messi Moore. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, so he kept it bay and he kept it Frisco. And then um, lastly, if you were a black man working in an all white establishment the day that OJ was uh, acquitted. It was not the place that you wanted to be, and I'm just gonna say, <laughs> no, that's I made it real hefty and hard for a brother, man, back that day. So, uh, yeah, shout out I mean, to y'all. Thank you and, for uh, sharing that experience, though. Yeah, that no, is no, true. The divide, like, the divide, and I can feel it right now. The yeah. divide because a lot of our brothers that are calling are saying, "OJ, may you rest in peace, you're a San Francisco legend." And I've seen a lot of my friends say that on Instagram and everything, sharing this stuff and everything. And then there is white America, or if you're not black, non-black people, are like yo. Screw OJ. We're happy that he's dead. Like, it, it's. I'm it never is a happy polar. anyone's no, dead. No, no, but, but, I don't, but I'm just, I know I'm you just mean. saying. I'm just I know saying. You, you know mean. what I mean? Yeah. Like, there's people out there right now. Mm. I'm seeing tweets of people we used to work with saying, yeah, huh, karma. And I'm just thinking to myself, boy, I, I don't know if I would do that. I'm not dancing on anybody's graves like, that's dead. You as know somebody, what I'm saying? As, somebody, <laughs> as, as the caller started off, like, it's, I don't wish for anyone's death. I don't wish for anybody to go through any, you know, tougher situations. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm like Uncle Looney. I'm indifferent. I don't know how to feel. Well, but that's, it's just, that's, it's just, a, it's just a guy that we a lot of black people looked up to. And this fall from grace, what happened and how it happened and the way he pivoted and moved around, it was like, you know, you know, you know, you say to me a lot, B, in this industry, you're like, hey, that guy over there or that girl over there or whatever, you know, look at how they're operating. That's that's a case study of what not to do. Yeah. You know how you always say that to me? You yeah. do. Like, I'm just you lace me up on game in, in this industry. Not that, you know, you're pretending to be uh, Mike and the Mad Dog, but right. you, you've told me certain things of like what to do, how to conduct yourself. Whatever. You've said it over and over. And I truly believe you're 100 percent spot on. O.J. Simpson is one of the cautionary tales when it comes to getting, whether it's power, fame, money, uh, feeling too big about yeah. yourself, arrogance, what, however you want to put it. Life will smack you in the face and put yep. you back down in your place. No doubt. And no we doubt. learn it all the time. All the time. All right, let's get to Shaka and David uh, before we pivot to Chris DeMarco. We'll end with the Warriors. What a show. It was a weird pivot, but, you know, a lot of people were hey, talking about OJ. This is the man. story of the he's day. Polar, he's polar. Dude, everybody's going to talk about it, and he was a legend. Shaka knows. Shaka and Berkeley's educated on OJ. What up, Shaka? Long hey, time Shaka. no talk. What's up, big dog? How you doing, man? Shasky, man, I want to say uh, condolences to you, man. It seemed like I've never met him, but he seemed like a man, man, man. Thank you. And you got a lot of his qualities, bro. I, I appreciate you know, so that. I want to say that first. Thank you. I, um, what I want to say, first I want to start off with, what we should do right now as a people, like Rodney King said, this, can we all get along? Is everybody's going to have an opinion. Everybody's going to remember where they was at. Everybody's going to remember the chase. Everybody's going to remember that he got off. 
Everybody's going to remember his football career. He's going to be remembered for a lot of things in American history. So, you know, everybody's going to have different opinions. We just got to get along, man. And I said Rodney King names because we watched him get beat down mm -hmm. by four policemen yep. for like 30 minutes, man. Mm -hmm. And the whole American, and the guys, the four policemen got off, man. They got, okay. they signed that up. And they said they were not guilty. So let's pivot to 95 when the O.J. Simpson case happened. And he introduced us to the, uh, he had all these rich and famous lawyers, uh, friends. Remember, that's why we know the Kardashians. Yeah. We first heard that name, Kardashians, because they dad. You know, so uh, uh, I look, look at O.J. for from, from Portrayal Hill, uh, you know, a little bit younger, who I didn't get to watch, Jim Brown. So I got to watch, uh, you know, late 50s. So I got to watch O.J. O.J. ran for two thousand yards yep. in 14 games yep. that's 17 games 14 games wow. so nobody probably will never do that that nobody that set that pace he was a great runner physical special i mean he, he was fast oj had strides he, you know then he, he he went to uh movies Commercials. I remember the the, uh, the rental car commercial when he run through the airport. Yep. Everybody remembers that. Mm -hmm. He was the first black athlete we saw on TV, and and, and white America embraced OJ. And this terrible incident happened. And he the, uh, with him and, and the, uh, allegedly, I don't know. He he was found not guilty. Uh, he the, the, the justice system that was that we all know it, what it is, found him not guilty. So uh, he came home, he was arrogant, kept being arrogant, and that's yep. what really made people more mad. Shaka, good call, man. You know, good call. Thanks for tapping in. I I remember so the aftermath of the Rodney King huh, uh, beat down, the L.A. riots happened. Yeah. But also downtown San Francisco, some things were going down. Oh, yeah. Because I'll never forget my uncle. Uh, they called him Sheik, Kevin Tendo, my mom's brother. We don't get along great. Yeah. You know, it's just whatever. But I remember as a kid, him going downtown and coming back with two leather jackets with the beepers on them because they were riding downtown San Francisco over the Rodney King stuff. I'll never forget that. He's some fresh leathers because they were looting. And, yeah. and look, I don't promote looting. People got businesses and all of a sudden you're getting mad at them and breaking into their businesses because of something that happened yeah. 800 had miles away. You, you had nothing yeah. but, but that's how black people felt. Yeah. It's like, man, Rodney King just got beat on camera. And you guys did nothing about it. So this is how we respond. Mm -hmm. We riot. We're going to hit you where it hurts. We're going to kill. Well, we're going to kick in your businesses, which, you know, but I remember that day and the aftermath of that. So that's why it's home. Well, I'll tell you, the, the race element is impossible to ignore. And it's going to no be doubt. a story in America. And it always will be a story because the, for a variety of reasons. Yep. And people are going to say, well, if you keep talking about it, you bring it. No, it's look like we all do this, like in every setting, and in every area. Like uh, you never bring this up. All right. I know you don't, yeah. but I do on your behalf because I think it is important. I think it is important for kids who didn't play professional sports to see a black guy who didn't play professional sports as a pre and post game host on a television show to be the morning drive radio guy who didn't play professional sports. How many black guys in America right now in sports in just the sports radio industry are driving a show who yeah. didn't play professional sports? Yeah, not many. They're few and far between. Yeah. All right. And you're one of them, and I and I'm proud of that, and I think it's great that. that 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 is a title. But you don't want to bring that up. You don't want me yeah. to just keep saying. But I want to bring it up on your behalf because the race is a part of it, yeah. and it is good for people to see. It. So people look at OJ. There are a lot of people that like this man who called in, who's in his fifties, saying, "When I saw that guy on television on the sideline, that was powerful." Yeah, and I think that that is something yep. that you can't ignore. And so as you're talking about the riots, well race is a part of yeah, it. No and doubt. I know we want to say, oh, it's not. No, it is. it is. Just as we talk about women playing basketball, and it's important that young girls like your daughter, like my nieces, see girls playing basketball at a high level. Right. I do think that's a part of his story. And, and you know it what? is a part it's of his well story. Said. It's well said. Uh, well said, Shaska. And Oaktown A is like, why can't Bonte bring it up? I just don't bring it up. No, you don't. To me, it's just, I know what it is. You see me. But I think you it's powerful. It I think it's you know, powerful that I bring it, it up because, no as a white guy, I have to be a, a champion of yours on your behalf because I want to help elevate everyone else yep, around, no and doubt. I want them to be aware well, of it. And I get where you're coming from, but I say it because it is important. Because I got a little boy that I want to see other people like yeah, you so up well on television and and leading that. There's well, enough white guys right. doing enough things <laughs> in sports. All right, we, you know, we got enough microphones. Um, 
Yeah, no, nah, it, it's two points in my career. One, when I was picking up calls at KBR, the guy just called and said, man, you a brother, man? Oh, man, they had a brother here. And look, it did something to him, right? And then I was going through some struggles in the radio industry. It's a brother in Oakland. I remember, never forget Lake Verity. He just goes, hey, man, keep that seat because what you're doing is not just representing you. You're representing all of us. You're doing this for us. You're giving us hope. You're giving us a chance to say that, wow, the impossible is possible. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of people, this was impossible. Hell, I thought it was impossible. Um, so hey, I, I appreciate the words, man. I but, appreciate but, but, the words. I mean, because like, because like, I try to just be, the it's way part I look of the at it, story. Yeah, it is part of the OJ story. It is. Story like, the, the way, race part and, is, and, cannot be denied. And another reason why I don't really talk about it is I was like, man, I was dealt the same hand. I was dealt my hand. You were dealt your yeah. hand. He was dealt his hand. Whatever. Yeah. I had to do what I had to do to get to this point. Yes. And I, I, I try not to make race a part of it. I try. And I know it is. I know it's a sticky point, especially with this LJK. So, love it. If DeMarco's not picking up, you know what? We'll pivot. Maybe we'll get him tomorrow. Yeah, it's okay. It's all good. If he calls us back, uh, go ahead. No, put him on the line. If you got him, get him on the line. Uh, let's go to David at Berkeley uh, real quick. David at Berkeley, what's happening? Yeah, good morning uh, to both of you two. And thanks so much for your show. Appreciate you. And my condolences on the loss of your father. Um, Thank you. And I, I, I uh, yeah, for sure. I, um, I really appreciate the tone and uh, context you're giving this conversation. It's reflecting the complexity of just being human <laughs> and the human story. Um, and, I, you know, I was born in San Francisco like OJ. I moved to L.A. when I was a kid. And uh, my dad was working on his Ph.D. at USC when uh, OJ won the Heisman. So we were huge Trojan fans. And I grew up idolizing <laughs> OJ as an athlete. And um, he was incredible to watch. And um, then when the Bronco chase is on TV and the trial is going on, I mean, it, it turned my world upside down. Um, just, you know, the view of a person, how quickly it can change. It just gets very complicated. And I remember like a year or two after he went into the pros, my dad and I, I was still a kid, maybe nine, 10 years old, we're walking across the USC campus together. And my dad looks ahead and he says, oh, you know who that is coming our way? I said, no. He says, that's O.J. Simpson. To this day, I, I still have O.J.'s autograph that I got that day. Uh, my dad got him to give on one of his business cards from back then. And, and it's been interesting conversations we've had over the years wondering how the value of that autograph has probably fluctuated so much over the years. Um, but not that I ever want to get rid of it. I mean, it's... it's, it, it's um, like I said, it's complicated, um, but his passing just sort of conjures up all these feelings and memories and reflections. And I, again, just appreciate the way you've held the conversation about the complexities of just this one man. Yeah. So thank you for that. It's extremely complicated. It is. And that's Very. the thing that I think <laughs> it evokes a lot of emotions, you know, and it I get uh, are you going to go nuanced? Yeah, no, no. I'm just, I got a lot of people <laughs> text. It's like, good luck with this topic. Oh, I wouldn't want to be you. Actually, this is what separates the cream from the crop. This is what separates the champs from the chumps. When you can't tackle a situation like this and have a nuanced discussion. We're just being without ourselves, being, man. Without being nasty and, you know, and, and slimy or whatnot and having the right tone. There's not a, Look. there's not many radio shows that can do what we're doing right now. So I appreciate you know, everybody calling in and, and accepting the calls and the callers have been on point. Be respectful of each yep. other. You know what I mean? I, I think one of the things that I, that I think about when it comes to this, like th this is, it, this was a, a key point in life for a lot of people because of all of the different things. I mean, that guy was just saying like, you imagine being a, a black guy with an, an all white office. He was saying right. that. I mean, no, I can't. No, I can't because in the most of the settings I'm in, yeah. I'm there's usually well, a lot well, more white guys, you don't right? Want to touch but but base. like as my wife, who's a woman in a lot of work settings, she's worked in a lot of places where she's the only woman, yeah, right? And she's shared things. her experiences yeah. and she's just just a, a woman. Yeah. So no, we can't relate, but that's why when we have these conversations and we share and we put it all into the in the boiling pot, this is the problem with America right, as right, a whole. Right. We're unafraid or we're afraid to have conversations and learn and grow. And hey, mm -hmm. you have a point of view. I have a point of view. Let's try to meet in the middle. It's now it's like echo chamber and yeah. yell at you. And if you don't agree with me, you're an idiot. And blah right. blah 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 right. blah blah blah. But my point Everything being is, is that skip a I think, a debate. <laughs> but, to, but to your point, B, that's why we have these yeah. conversations on air because I find them to be a growth moment. And there is an avenue for it. Obviously, exactly. Obviously, people 
love talking about it. We've taken more calls on this this week, this situation, than we have on the Warriors, Niners, or Giants combined. <laughs> we throw out the Giants. The Giants can win five straight games. You know how many calls we'll get or how much participation? We'll probably get three calls during the show. Obviously, there's a lane for this type of conversation because it's all related to sports. O.J. Simpson was a badass on the football field, a badass who a lot of running backs in the 80s looked up to. Guys who went to USC because of O.J. Simpson. They wanted to be wear the same jersey that O.J. Simpson wore. It's true. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's what it was. And so that's, that's why we're talking about it, because he's one of the most polarizing figures in American sport history. Because of what happened in 1994. It transcends and what sports. Happened. No doubt. Transcends no doubt. it. He was the crossover, like you said. If you don't think CNN and Fox and MSNBC, I don't watch any of those channels. Right. But like, if you don't think they're running with this all day, you're tripping. This will no be doubt. on the cover of every newspaper. Well, I don't even know if we do newspapers anymore, but you know we what do. I'm saying. I, I get what you're saying. Uh, let's go to Earl and Richmond real quick before hey, we Earl. get to Chris DeMarco. What's up, Earl? <laughs> Hey, uh, Monte, um, first time I've talked to you guys, I listen to the show quite a bit. Thank, Thank you, Earl. Uh, Thank you. You, me you mentioned you mentioned your grandmother's name and your uncle's name, and I know your mom, Becky. I yeah. was that guy in the neighborhood that took all the kids out and made them play sports. Um, softball, football, basketball, whatever was popular, we went out and we played at that time. But um, speaking on Simpson, uh, nobody knows for sure but the Lord what really happens between him and Nicole and uh, young man Goldman. And so that being said, um, we just have to allow God to judge him. If he did it, he'll stand in judgment for it. But uh, he was a great athlete. He was kind of a knucklehead. I saw him one time in San Francisco. I was a young guy, and I waved at him. He looked at me as if I didn't even exist, and he just drove away. So that's his personality. But yeah. I enjoy the show, guys, and I'm very proud of you, Monte, though I don't know you. I knew Becky and Kevin and your grandmother on Fell Street in San Francisco. And I know your mom is proud of you, what you've accomplished. And Shasky, you do a great job. Keep it up. you like that. Thank you, man. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. About to get emotional. I right, know. Shasky. I was going to tear up. I know. You're the emotional one. I am the, I am the emotional nah, well, one. We got we to clean it up because Chris DeMarco's on the air and he's going to judge us for Emotion, getting emotional here. We're getting emotional over the Blazers, Chris. What up, Coach? Good morning. We got you back on. I <laughs> promised him. I said, no matter what happens with the hotel room, I need Chris DeMarco on because he would never let me live uh, down bumping you for whatever knows. Well, I don't even know what we bumped you for last summer. What's going on, Coach? It was, it was talk about shoes or something, man. I'll never forget. Oh man, wait, 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 so are you a shoe guy? Like, what's you got? A, no, you got no, an no, extensive? No, we bumped him for a shoe guy. Oh, we, we bumped, bumped him. We oh, bumped, I forgot yeah, what I we really bumped him. Know. Yeah, he doesn't know. He was coaching the he was coaching the national team in the Bahamas, right, coach? Oh man, that sounds good. Yeah, day. yeah, we were. Uh, I, I think we were about to start, so we were yep. getting close. Yeah, we're but it, it's all good, man. I know you're busy. I know you're big time. No, oh. no, 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 Chris, you're big time. You've been with the Warriors for twelve Shots years. Fired. No, he is big time. He's one of my favorite guys, man. I love Chris. Man, you should always see him in the inner Richmond. But you guys are up in Portland right now, and you guys are playing well. You guys are playing some really good basketball. 16 and 4 in your last 20 road games, 25 and 11 in your last 36. Do you feel like, coach, right now you guys are playing your best ball? Yeah, I think we're right there. Uh, I think we're finally getting healthy. Um, we're finding the right combination. So, as you said, 16 to 20, 1, 8, and 9. Uh, we got some good momentum right now uh, going into the play in. Have you been as surprised as we've been with Trace Jackson Davis and, and just where he started the year versus where he is now and how important he is to just winning and losing on a nightly basis. Yeah, I mean, I, I should shout out the young coaches in the video room. They were telling us from day one uh, before a lot of us got a chance to see him up close that, like, Trace could really play and he was going to help us this season. Um, and he's just continued to develop. He's super coachable. And I think he gives us another dynamic, uh, you know, on both sides. So offensively, he's a good fi finisher, and defensively, just anchoring the defense behind the play, some rim protection. You know, he's young and can run a little bit and, and all that, and it's kind of added, you know, a lot of value to the team. Coach, what in your mind has fueled this second-half surge? Has it been a return to Draymond Green? Has it been Andrew Wiggins? He's playing well. Jonathan Kamiga's rise in his third year. What in your mind has been the, been the reason for this uh, second-half surge? Yeah, I think it's a combination of all of that. I think... Uh, you know, we a lot of our guys have really been playing well. Wiggins has been incredible uh, recently, as you said. You know, Kabenga gave us a lift. 
Uh, Chris has been super steady off the bench, you know, mm-hmm. playing playing the one. And um, I, I, Gary Payton's been phenomenal recently. Uh, you know, we just had a lot of contributions, and we found a, a good little zone right now. And you know, we're playing we're playing well. Coach, you've basically been tasked with player development. At least that's what your title kind of suggests. And I'm sure that on some level, every coach is there for player development, right? But, but like, honestly, when, when you were um, not just an assistant coach, but working on the player development, is it player to player and you're working with a, a long-term plan? Like, break it down because I, I do think – you know, just seeing Pajemski develop this year or Trace Jackson Davis or Jonathan Kaminga ascend. I don't think people understand what goes into the day-to-day grind between the coaches and the young players putting in the work. Yeah, I mean, every uh, we have a large staff now and a huge focus is on developing players. And it's an everyday thing. You know, even, uh, even today, guys who didn't play much last game or low many guys, they'll be over at the gym right now with our young coaches playing threes, fours, fives. Uh, working on actions offensively and defensively, you know, it's an everyday thing. And uh, and you can see it helping us, you know, late in the season as these younger guys understand the NBA game more uh, and, and continue to, to help. Uh, not only not only as they, as they start to learn the league with personnel and how to be in the right spots defensively and offensively, you know, those young fresh legs, get in the paint, being able to sprint both ends. Uh, I, I think you see those contributions and it's because of, our development team and how much time they put in, how much film they watch with these guys. Talking to Warriors assistant coach Chris DeMarco has been here for 12 years, uh, been along for the entire ride with Steve Kerr, four-time NBA champion. And so watching Clay Thompson this season, obviously he's a polarizing figure with this team. He's an upcoming free agent, but really just watching him play, coming back from that two-year hiatus with the leg injuries. And you see him last year lead the league and made threes to shoot 41%. And then this year, having to have a role adjustment here, going coming off the bench. Now he's starting again. Now he's playing his best basketball. What would you say to the audience about Clay Thompson and how he's tried to navigate his career knowing that, hey, I may not be the same player, but I could still be effective. How has that been day-to-day with Clay Thompson, Coach? Yeah, I mean, he's just such a weapon offensively. You know, even if he's if he's not touching the ball, if he's not in the action, guys guard him all the way up to half court. You know, if you go into a game, we're playing Portland tonight, you know, he's going to be heavy in the scouting report. So it opens up everybody else offensively, just him being out there. And he's an unreal competitor. Uh, you know, he just loves to play basketball, loves to play the game. You could never have enough of those guys. I remember even the Charlotte game that he missed recently. The guy was just grumpy the entire game. You know, he just wants to be out there playing. <laughs> so if you can have guys like that who love the game, you know, who, who are winners, like it's always going to help. All right, Coach, let's play a little rapid fire. I want to learn more about your relationships on the team, okay? Uh-oh. So I'm going to ask you some questions, and you can pick anyone on the staff or any one of the players, okay? Guy that you want on your team if you're playing video games. Guy I want on my team if I'm playing video games. Um, I'll take Draymond. Okay. Guy most I, I likely... Love, I love to talk trash. If I had somebody else rolling with me, it'd be nonstop. <laughs> like, I'd love it. All right. <laughs> You'll win before the The guy starts. who's least likely to pick up the bill at a big restaurant. Oh, oh I'm doing that. No, no, you no. You're not get you're not getting me on that. <laughs> right, who, yeah. Who's the guy that you? Who's the guy who makes the the best company at dinner? <laughs> who makes the best company at dinner? I'll just, I'm gonna give it to my guy Ron Adams. I knew you were going there. Uh, I knew he was going. Yeah, with I, I'm giving it to Ron. I give Ron a hard time too. <laughs> I right. give him a little love. You know, we share an office. We spend a lot of time together. Um, you know, I do a lot of dinners with Ron, so it's definitely. Uh, enjoy his company and you know he's seen it all he's been in the league for 50 years so by the way won't you quiz Chris DeMarco about the North Beach district oh how about that what's your favorite bar in North Beach favorite bar in North Beach that wow that's a good question okay we, may not want to bars. That. we don't need, we don't need the paparazzi call to find yeah. Chris DeMarco <laughs> yeah I, I would I would just uh I mean, I love that that area of uh, Chubby Noodle, the old Don oh, Pico's. Yeah. Yep. I like Cafe Sport. Oh, you're a Grant Green guy, huh? So Tamari, I, yeah, I just yeah, <laughs> yeah, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> they, you know, a bit. Original Joe's. Oh yeah. yeah. They got the game on. Oh yeah. I was able to watch the national championship game the other day while having dinner. Like, so you know, I'd, I'd say that area about three block radius.
I, I like that. All right. The guy that you don't want to be in the front seat if they're driving. Ooh. Why are you trying to get me on these? Because well, I want to know uh, more about Shaq. these guys. Hey, hey, make sure Christian Marco is not me, Bonte Hill. That's Joe Shasky to butcher ass. I would buses. assume it's Joe Lacob. I'm sure he's got a heavy foot driving. Hey, Joe Lacob doesn't drive. Yeah, that's, that's, a good point. Drive. <laughs> that's a good point. Let's do this differently. Guys, I would, if they were flying a, a four seater plane, that I'd be comfortable being in the, in the passenger seat. Yeah, who's that? I would, say, I would say Clay, Steph, Chris Paul. Have you been on Clay's boat? One. Yeah, I just I, I I need my pilot not to get shook. Yeah, see, there you go. Wow. I like that. I like that. Wow. That's a great you know, answer. If you really think about it, like you know, one bad move, you're in trouble. So uh, I'd say that. All right, so you're in the woods. You're in the woods. All right, and one of you legally would like to shoot down a deer. Okay, because we're in hunting season. Who's the guy most likely to actually pull that off? Oh, definitely, definitely our shooters. Yeah, I mean that that one's easy. That's got that's got to be Steph Clay. Um, I don't know why, but I feel like Gee could could do it too. Gee said tells. Really, I like Gee said tells. Right, we we did this little Waymo series, man. He saw the Buffaloes. He was like, "Whoa, look at the Buffaloes!" Uh, anyway, Great let's get hair. back to basketball real quick. Uh, what has been the biggest challenge? You're bringing up all these players here, so I got to ask you about the rotations because we get calls about the rotations every single day. What is the what has been the biggest challenge for this coaching staff in managing the rotations this season? Well, yeah, we. I mean, you get injuries and players missing, so stuff changes game to game. But, you know, I think we found a good rhythm with uh, Draymond and Trace as the 4-5. You know, allows Draymond to be a little bit more free out there and Trace still protecting the rim. And I think it's given our defense a boost. Uh, but, yeah, you always want enough guys who can attack the paint. You need some shooting out there. Um, but I, but I do think uh, you know even even Pajemski and Chris we got different guys who can really handle the ball now and I think we found the right combinations but it is a challenge um, and, and it's also a challenge you know you play Portland one day and then New Orleans the next and those lineups look differently and you got to mm -hmm. figure out how to guard versus size and, and maybe the previous game was versus speed and um, so I think you just got to find the right balance but you know it changes all the time in this league. Well, what do you guys got in store for DeAndre Ayton? How do you slow him down tonight? Yeah, Shasky's worried about the Blazers, Chris. Well, I mean, he's he scored twenty six I mean, in the last however many yeah, games. Twenty six to thirteen. He's balling right now. He, yeah, he's tough, man. You know, you know where he's from. The oh. Bahamas. Oh. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Wow. <laughs> so, yes, sir. So he, Chris got the insight. So I expect DeAndre Ayton tonight to have nine and I because of Chris's oh. expertise oh, on like DeAndre Ayton. He knows the ins oh. and outs of DeAndre Ayton's game. <laughs> no, don't don't do don't do that to me. But uh, no, I, I'm really happy for him. You know, he had he had uh, a hell of a time in Phoenix, and you know they made that run to the finals, and you know now he's starting to play well here. So I'm really happy for him. And you know they're still a dangerous team. He's playing well. Uh, Scoot Henderson, you know he can get going, and they got some other guys. Uh, Bands had some big games recently, so. You know, we got to be ready to play tonight. Co Coach, 19 what? to 15 the no, other day. Stop that. No 19 to 15, Scoot me. Henderson. No, Coach, Shasky's Coach. overlooking the Blazers. I'm not going to do it, Coach. <laughs> What's this your go-to order at, at Original Joe's? What's your go-to order? Man, are you a big OJ's guy? Uh, bro, I go to oh, Westlake Joe's. There every week. I go to Westlake Joe's once a week, man. When you get old, and, and yeah, it's, it's, that's my spot. I eat everything on the uh, menu. Yeah, I mean, it's the it's the spicy vodka pasta, I think, right? Is that what it's, what's is that what it's called? Yeah, yeah there it's you the go. Good stuff. They, one of the referees were profiling the other day. That's his favorite. Yeah, meal. he likes to Ed make Malloy's, the penne. No, that's Ed Malloy's favorite oh, meal, Christian Mark. You see Ed Malloy be like, "Hey, oh, me and you." Go. Now we're now we're bringing the refs into it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Chris, thanks man, for your time. This is being a fun sport, man. You're one of the good guys. Always enjoy our conversations, man. We'll do it again soon, brother. All right. Yeah, appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Anytime. Chris DeMarco, man. He's a really good dude, man. I wish we would have got him on earlier this season. People need to know him, man. He's got a great personality, man, as you can see right here on the Morning Roast. Chris DeMarco, uh, right here on the Morning Roast. This is the head coach of the Golden State Warriors. With that said, let's get to Fast Five. Yeah, I know you're big time. Fast five, my thoughts is, wow, you never know.
What type of curveball will be thrown your way in this business? In sports radio. Put your mic on, Shasky. People, <laughs> people always ask, do you prep for the show? Like, yeah, yeah we do all this prep. <laughs> and then something like this happens. Right. And, and then you throw all the prep out the window. You throw all the numbers out the window. Like, what do you do? Like, come on, man. The love. The, 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 I mean, sports radio, man. It's nothing like it. Nothing like it. Okay, my final thought. Get that button ready. Fly, Pelicans fly, <laughs> Scarface in the bathtub. That's going to be me later on. Come on, Pelicans. Come on, Pelicans. <laughs> Beat those Kings. Hey, I'm listening to Casey and D-Lo, too, by the way. They're going to be shook up there in Sacktown. And then you know Drapes. <laughs> well, I tell you, we got big games coming up in the G1C, you, man. It's going to be lit. Do you know how they're going to start respelling that that the name of that show? What? King and, Giddy? No, it's going to be called The A Show. Sutter Health, the A's, they're going to sack. Oh. Spell it with a thousand A's. Oh, man. I want sack to drop. <laughs> that's, that's a two. This is a horrible joke. <laughs> guys, you guys want to talk? Uh, my final thought is uh, yesterday's Giants game was two hours and seven minutes long. <laughs> oh that's God. too fast for a baseball game. Oh shut God. up. Get the hell out of here. I will not kept... shut up. That is too fast for a baseball game. Dude, you should have kept the mic off. ruined baseball. <laughs> hey, love it. I'm here to tell you right now. We don't care. <laughs> if I wish the game would have lasted an hour 45, damn, would have had more time in the pool. Go ahead, Spinoni. I'm sorry, I thought this was Final Thoughts where we could say what's ever on our mind. <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought this was America. Well, what you is didn't this turn South on the microphone at first. We it's stopped talking. South Park. You guys really can't. You guys jump in. Oh, you I'm talked sorry, out. I thought this was America. <laughs> you talked out. You guys got a workout today? Spinoni, get in here, man. I wish, <laughs> I wish on a day like today, Norm McDonald was alive. Bro. If you don't know who Norm McDonald is, oh, look no. up SNL weekend update all time during the OJ Simpson saga. Oh gosh. R.I.P. Oh, to Norm McDonald. Yeah, I I can't wait to tune into Steiny and Guru. Oh man. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. That's all. Well, I don't want to brag. I, I live in a regular neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I brought you by Xfinity. At oh. home or on the go. You'll get the fastest internet to all of your devices. Warriors, Portland tonight. Sidey Guru next right here on 95 7 Game. I want Sack to drop. Come on, Pelican. Say hello to Spring at the California Academy of Sciences. Spring in the garden. See the massive animatronic.
Mayor Steiny and Guru on 95.7 The Game. Oh, man. We got a lot to talk about today, Goo. Yeah, we do, Steiny. We got uh, life to talk about. OJ Simpson. Yeah. The Pass juice. It at 76. We got. We got Warriors. We got the Giants salvaging a game yeah. yesterday against the Nats. Where do you want to start, buddy? Let's start with OJ. All right. And I just, what he meant to me, Stani, is he was the first real-life Denzel Washington to me. You know, black man on TV, handsome, um, doing the commercials, running through the airport, and got his reporter job, and I tried to model myself after him on the field, Stani, and off up until what happened in 1994. But I will say rest in peace to the juice. But, Stani, I don't know if there's a more divisive name in American culture than O.J. Simpson. And I hate, you know, that that's part of the story. But I'll, t- I'll just tell you this. I know you didn't ask for this heavy, but I, I talk about Norm and I's deer hunting career. Yep. And Norm was such a nice guy, Stani. When we would hunt, we would meet strangers. And my dad, we road hunt. He would always stop whatever car was coming, however many guys and gals there was, to say hello. And I used to say, Pop, everybody didn't want to stop and talk to you. Have you ever thought of that? But that was just his nature. And I'll leave you with this. After 1994, and we're out there with rifles, Tiny, shotguns, it changed. And I hate to, I'm not going to blame that on OJ, but after that verdict, Norm would still the same practices. Hey, how's it going? And I'm getting older and maturing, Steiny, but I could tell you our experience, especially mine, changed. And, you know, I could be putting that at the wrong doorstep, but nobody can take that from me. And I'd be like, Pop, we're coming to hunt, not not meet and greet, but it's just sad that I can have that a part of the O.J. Simpson story. But, uh, yeah, rest in peace, man. Yeah, we can. Uh, I moved out here in '90, and obviously, I listened to a lot of Bonte and Shasky this morning. And OJ's from San Francisco, so Petraea Hill. He's uh, indelibly tied to this area. So uh, we we can absolutely positively talk about OJ Simpson and and kind of you know what 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 he meant, yeah, and uh, and that connection to the city that probably became a that was a blessing to start and maybe a curse uh, after 1994. Yeah. Um, but I, I can just tell you that what I remember most about O.J. Simpson was O.J. Simpson and the electric company. Um, the electric. Back when he ran for 2,000 yards for the Buffalo Bills. That oh, was look what at you. His offensive line was called. <laughs> Re- Reggie McKenzie, I know, was one of the guys on that offensive line, but when he ran for over 2,000 yards, I, I want to say... The electric company style. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, I want to say that the uh, the NFL, they may have put Buffalo on special, like on a Monday <laughs> night game, or on a, they televised Buffalo Bills games on, on Sundays when... They were just an okay team, but because he was pursuing the record or pursuing two thousand yards, uh, that I, I I felt like their games were on just about every week. Mm. Um, then he became kind of a spokesman, obviously a commercial pitch man for Hertz is the big one, and um, man, you know, and then then the rest, the movie from, career, yeah, yeah, then the rest from nineteen ninety four on, and uh, he passed today, seventy six years old of cancer. Man. Uh, I'll just I'll throw it out at 888-957-9570 is the number. Honestly, I don't I don't really know what to ask or what what I'm looking for here. I'm not really sure. Yeah. Um Well, what OJ meant to you? you yeah, yeah, that's fair. I mean, that, that's totally fair. I mean, I you know, he was he was one of the greatest running backs of all time and then he became one of the greatest pariahs of all time, if that's even a strong enough word for him. No doubt. But uh, we, we can talk about O.J. Simpson, 888-957-9570. And, um, you know, I don't I don't know if we want to go O.J. hard and then spring. Well, I don't want to get fired because, yeah, I got a lot to – I love you like a brother, Stani, and there's no subject we can't broach, but I need to be careful. And if you allow me, I'm going to do this. Yeah. 
So I use the word divisive. I'll yep. never forget when that verdict came in. I was at work mm -hmm. and Josiah Anderson, I used to work with at Icon Office Solutions, rolls up on the other side of our cubicle and goes, he's innocent. And, you know, as a young black kid, Stani, I got to be honest with you. If you look through American history, there have been many black innocent men wrongly convicted and they've gone to prison. OK, so. O.J. Simpson, to me, and I'm using him selfishly, he was he he to me was a guy that represented. OK. I'm not happy he got off, Stani, but to a lot of the black community, he was one where the system it worked for black folks, if that makes any sense. So thoughts and prayers to to Nicole and the Goldman family and Nicole Simpson. But Stani, it's it's a whole layered thing of what OJ, not just him, meant through the judicial system, if that makes any sense to you. So there's a lot of feelings, a lot of people that I've lost relationships with over, not because I threw a parade that he was innocent, but that's what he, there was a divide, Stani. There was so many men and women that have been convicted in this world, uh, black men and women that were innocent, that were wrongly convicted because they didn't have the money to, to get people to fight for him. And here's OJ Simpson where it looks like he did this heinous crime, this heinous murder, but yet he got off and a lot of people felt like, okay, the scoreboard was, and this is wrong, but it's real. The scoreboard read, you know, you know, a black male, the system worked for him if you thought he was guilty. So when I hear OJ Simpson's name, man, that's why I say divisive and, and, and I'm already getting it right now. Goo, two wrongs don't make a right. I understand it. But at the end of the day, I'm just trying to share with you, Stani, and the listeners, just how heavy his name, how it was, he was my hero, and then what he represented after that. Yeah, 888-957-9570 is the number. Uh, the, one, the one part about this all that I don't really remember. Give it to And me. if someone was around at that point, uh, you know... I, when when he came back to the San Francisco 49ers at the end of his career and the 49ers you know acquired him to to uh you know create some excitement yeah. but he was at the end of his career yeah. um you know that that's the kind of stuff I'm I'm uh I'm curious about because I know the 49ers weren't very good then um and it didn't work out. Yeah, yeah no, okay. it, it it apparently didn't work out. Eight hundred um, yards, I believe. He got yeah, it. and and then you know, obviously, part of this is the is the Bronco chase. I'll never forget it. Where were you? I believe it or not, I, I Friday I was, night. I, I was trying to think about this, and I think, if I'm not mistaken, because I looked it up, I think I was at a Giants game. Come on, stop! And I actually looked it up, and they played the Cubs that night at at Candlestick. They won six to one, and I have a vague recollection of being at that game. But either listening to the radio or or just knowing that something was going on um, that was crazy. They didn't show it in the ballpark. Then I don't <laughs> think so. <laughs> okay, because now but I, I think they have that thing up there. Yeah, but I can't. I can't quite remember. And, and the, the other thing that that sticks out to me at the time was, you know, you had. I, I mean, what would seemed to come to the fore after that trial was you know money can if you got money no, you can you can you call, can uh, you know buy some justice yeah. but uh OJ Simpson you know I I mean as an athlete I remember him as a Buffalo Bill wow man uh, being on the east coast and you know that's the Howard Cosell highlight Stardy. I yeah. remember that the, the juice is loose yeah uh, yeah, that's why they called their uh, offensive line the electric company because that's what that, turned. That's a great one. I that's hadn't what heard turned that on one. the juice is what they said. Now I don't real quick here, Johnny. Yeah. I don't know how how tough you've been following social media. OJ's been out there. Okay. He was on Cam and Mace's podcast, and he was their uh, you know their their sports guy, and they would go to him. Johnny, about a month ago, he put a video out at golfing, mm -hmm. and he said, you know. There were some reports that he was sick or he passed, and he looked in the camera and said, I'm good to go. I don't know where those reports came from. And if I'm correct, about 30 days or less, he's no longer with us. Yeah, I guess my 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 question to, to either sports fans or non-sports fans is, you know, how do you even talk about this guy right now? I mean, seriously, what what's there to say? Do, do, 
Does wow. he earn, does he deserve to be remembered? And if he's remembered, does he deserve to be remembered for anything good? That's deep. I, I don't know. That's I deep, mean, Stein, you, you know, it's, it's it, the, the one thing was I heard he died. I heard the, the uh, you know, obviously we'll talk about it if people want to talk about it. But when it comes to something like this, my feeling, and I'll, I'll just ask the listeners and, and you is like, well, what do you, what do you talk about? Like what, what can not, can you talk about? We can talk about whatever we want, but how much time does this guy deserve? And the time that he gets or that you give him, how much of it should be spent on the football? How much of it should be spent on the commercials? How much of it should be spent on the acting? And how much of it should be spent on the fact that he yeah. 99.9% killed two people? Uh, so it's, I, I don't, like, I'll, I'll talk about it. I just don't know. I want to make sure to be kind of sensitive about this because I don't think it's a joke. Yeah. But by the same token, um, you know, I'll, I'll be happy to be led down a path here that I don't know where it's really going to go at, at uh, 888-957-9570. Tell, tell me this, and I want to run this by you all. Yeah. So, again, I didn't know O.J. Simpson, but when you go to a funeral, and I have, and you have a connection with that person, he or she, the funeral is the the location for you to to remember the good, right, Stiney? So I guess that's what I want to do with O.J. Simpson. You know, God bless the dead, but at the end of the day, I understand this. There's a lot of things going to come up, man, but if we were at a funeral, you never go up and, oh, Stiney did this and, Stiney, you know, Guru did that, but I got to just tell you how I was introduced to, to this death this morning. My friend Danker sent me a, a YouTube uh, video, Stani, where the guy says what OJ was involved in and who did the murders. So Chris Townsend and I, you know, we used to do radio together back in the day, Stani. We've watched every doc, uh, the people against OJ Simpson. And I don't want to say I'm fascinated, but I gravitated to it. So this morning I'm driving down 80, not even knowing he passed. And here's this guy just saying what he was involved in, the, the, the cocaine, the mob, and who did what. And then I find out why that was sent to me. He passed. But, I, Steiner, you just said a question I don't have the answer to. Right. So I guess if we were at his funeral, right, you wouldn't go up. I've never been to a funeral and somebody said bad words about somebody, right? I mean, would do, do you even go to, do right. you go to that funeral? Right. I mean, would you go to that funeral? Yeah. I mean, th look, there's a, I mean, you know, he had a family. Obviously, that that probably you know is mourning right now, yeah. but um, yeah, I don't, I, I, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I get, uh, I don't want to stir the pot. I, I, I give Stani, I'm letting them off now. But Stani, there are some people, and I know them, that would say he went to the judicial system and was found not guilty. And you know what I'm like? That'll set it off, and people side eye you. And I get it, but that's what happened. Yeah, uh, I'm just looking at some of the text and some of the uh, YouTube chat comments. Uh, uh, Alnetta, one of our favorites, yeah. uh, Alnetta says, uh, Steiner, you act as though you were there. Um, I don't know what you mean by that. There. Um, you talk as if you were there, Steiner. No, I wasn't. I was uh, I was watching it on TV, I think, yeah. if I can remember correctly. or what Friday I night, Nick's Rockets. What I remember is them watching it maybe after. I can't, I can't quite remember a lot of the details about that night. I just remember kind of the generality of the chase, you know, the slow speed chase with, uh, with Cowan in the car with him. So, and then I got to use, yeah, let me add this, Donnie. There's a, there's a disappointment. Again, I don't want to make this about race, but there's a disappointment to me as a black man that OJ Simpson with all that incriminating evidence was an innocent man and then he ended up going to prison for something that was, I guess I could call it one of the dumbest things ever. So there's that part of it too, Stani. This man spent time in prison for something that a lot of people think he should have been in for because of a stupid decision. Yeah. Well, uh, no, I didn't say that on that. I said there was, what, a 99.9% .9 chance that he did. I mean, again, like this is why... 
you know, we got to be careful yeah. about where I, you know, yeah. I, listeners don't have to be careful, but I, I guess I have to be careful. But as about far as race dining, when I say divisive, could you, I mean, we could go throughout American history, but you do understand that was as divisive as it gets, right? Yeah, absolutely. And people weren't behind OJ. They were behind the color, if that makes any sense. And it's almost sad, too. Uh, 925, I was born and raised in South Central L.A. on 119th and Berendo. Okay. And I remember O.J. running from the cops right there on the 105 free, 105 freeway uh, during the NBA Finals. Uh, it was breaking news, so we ran down the street and actually saw the Bronco. Yeah, that's the other thing that happened. Is wow. It was on TV, and then everybody saw it on TV. So anybody who was in L.A., kind of along that road, came out and was watching the Bronco go down the highway with all kinds of uh man with all kinds of you know police in pursuit so yeah it was absolutely positively crazy no no doubt about yeah. it um so we can we can talk about OJ Simpson I don't know how I'm going to tra- uh no, I hear segue you. to I the Warriors well, yeah. right I now I got you um big game tonight but yeah they play Portland tonight Phoenix won last night if you know you had any thoughts on maybe No it's this- no, the, the Phoenix Suns winning last night means that the Golden State Warriors, they are locked into the play-in tournament. Damn. It means they can't move up okay. uh, to number six. They cannot get to six, but they could still get theoretically to seven, eight, uh, or nine, which they have control in. But it depends on what the Pelicans do, what the Kings do, and to a lesser extent what the Lakers do. But And those two play tonight at SAC, New Orleans and... In the Kings. Exactly. And then, I guess, tomorrow, the Pelicans come in here. Yeah, I'll be at the game. So, I think the Warrior fans, whatever they want, is they want the loser of tonight's Kings-Pelicans game. I think they wanted to keep losing at that point. <laughs> um, How do you get that home game? Yeah, you got to get to nine. Well, I think you get the home game if, if the Pelicans beat the, the Kings and then you, you beat the Blazers, right. then you beat the Pelicans. The Warriors have to go 3-0 and and oh, okay. the uh, the Kings have one to go two. one and two because right. uh, the Warriors lose out on the on the uh, and the Kings got Phoenix, I believe, Sunday. Yeah, I think they do. Game. Now, now Phoenix may not have anything no, to play right. for you are in, right. in that game. It looks like they're destined for a first round matchup against the against the Dallas Mavericks. So there's still a lot to shake out. I'm excited uh, with dying. the Warriors, but they got three games to go, and and uh, then we get into the play in play in scenario. Yeah. Um, Giants win one yesterday. Goo, uh, they need seven that one. one. Yeah, they stole a base. Look at so you. So they're yeah. um, they're now five and eight. Five and eight. And there's a hundred and sixty two, or there were. So I think you got hundred and fifty four. I don't know how many you got left, but yes, Donnie. Not exactly how you drew it up out the gate, but you know they got guys coming back. Uh, Webb has been Webb, so we'll see what they do uh, in Tampa Bay. I'm starting tomorrow. When uh, if we turn to the Warriors, uh, what you got? My, my question for for Warrior fans is is basically what what would be the ideal way this could play out? Because the the one thing that also happened last night is the Denver Nuggets beat the Timberwolves, so the Nuggets are now the one seed. Wow! So, do you really want to be eight if you're the Golden State Warriors? To me, if the Denver Nuggets are locked into one, is there any way to get to seven? And the only way you could get to seven is you got to get to eight first. And if you get to eight first and then you win a play-in game, now you're number seven and you'll have either the Minnesota Timberwolves or the Oklahoma City oh, Thunder. Man. So, I listen, no I, disrespect I, I think to those two. Yeah, I think the Warriors are going to have their, their work cut out for them regardless. But I think we all can agree you'd rather not play the Denver Nuggets in the first round. No doubt about it. Is that something we can all agree on? No doubt about it, Donnie. Uh, The other thing I was thinking is here's one reason why I don't think you want the Nuggets. Because if if this thing goes like it's going to go or like it's expected to go, so the Warriors play tonight, then they play tomorrow. Sunday at 12. Then they play Sunday. Then they'd have to play Wednesday if they're the nine. If they're the nine or ten, then they have to play Wednesday if they win. Then they play Friday if they win. Then they play Sunday. So it would be a Sunday game against the Nuggets. 
Wow. And it would be their third day, third game in five, five nights. While Denver's just been resting. While Denver's just been resting. Now, maybe, you know, maybe to some people's way of thinking, yeah, Denver will not have played for a week. So maybe you can catch them a little bit rusty and, and steal a game. But 888-957-9570 is the number. We can talk some Warriors. Also, we'll uh, go, we'll get into some of this Steve Kerr sound. All right, he was and, good with the guys yesterday. Yeah, Whether he was. Did. The uh, to me, I, I'm going to play this right now because I, I I think this is this is really worth talking about. They asked Steve Kerr yesterday. This is Willard and Dibbs. Asked Steve Kerr, why have they been able to turn it around? Why have they gone from 19 and 24 to 25 and 11 over the last 36? Let's really take a listen to what right. he said. Just the overall. Uh, growth of the team, you know, guys like Jonathan, Brandon, Trace, young guys, Moses, these guys, the young guys who have progressed and become you know, really important players for us in terms of winning and losing. That's been huge. And then I, I just think the vets have helped foster that environment. They've mentored these young guys really well. Having Chris Ball to me is such a huge advantage uh, for, for our group. Uh, the non-Steph minutes, I've never been more comfortable with them than I am this year because of Chris. So, you know, getting him back from injury, but also having him mentoring uh, the younger group. Um, it's a really, really good group of guys and a well-balanced roster. So we're, uh, we're healthy and knock on wood, hopefully we'll stay that way. What'd you hear there? That we got some contributions for some youngsters. They took strides in pods, uh, Moody, uh, TJ D. Steiny, and the 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 back end of that, you know, the health part. What you cited yesterday about the big three outside of Draymond missing have remained relatively healthy. So they got a shot in the arm, is what I heard from them from places I don't think they thought they were going to get, nor were they getting early on. The one thing I heard, I'll get. To- and it's hard for me not to think there might not be something there. He, he, the first thing he mentioned were four young guys as to why this team got better. Kaminga, Brandon Pajemski, uh, Trace Jackson Davis, and Moody. I forgot. So that was the first thing he mentioned. But the other thing he mentioned that I think is interesting, and the reason I think it's interesting is because it's always been kind of background noise. And it's the part about, and I also think the vets helped foster that environment. Does it feel to anybody else like there was a dynamic change with the big three and kind of the way they've thought about moving forward? My, my simple question is this. Were the veterans more open this year to incorporating younger players or were the younger players just so good that the veterans didn't have any choice? But mm. the one the one theme of the Warriors over the last, you know, uh, over their dynasty that, that surfaced, I think, is whenever we talk about young players and ha- whether young players should be playing more, and, and we always seem to fall into the trap of we, we want to see these young players play more, there was always either, well, they're not good enough to play with these superstars or... The superstars have been a little bit reluctant to let young players in, especially if the veteran players didn't think they were worthy of it. And it it feels like something came together this year where there was a mutual respect that the veterans had for the young players, and then the young players were good enough to get that respect. Or maybe they were good enough to get, they were good enough, and that's why they were respected in the first place. But I, I kind of want to get into that. The, the, the melding this season that the Warriors have done between the young and the old. And then lastly, isn't that a reflection on Steve Kerr? Doesn't that show you that Steve Kerr has had a heck of a year as a coach? Got to give it to him. Because it, it took him a little while, but he figured it out. And now the veterans are very, very important. And I think we all realize that the Warriors can't accomplish what they want to accomplish without the young guys. So I, I, I heard a lot of the Steve Kerr sound yesterday, Goo. I want to I want to get Let's into it. it. And then I also just want to talk about, you know, we talk about what kind of year Kaminga had and what kind of year Curry had. What kind of year has Steve Kerr had in your mind? 888-957-9570. It's Steiny and Guru. We're going to be with you for the next four hours. Why do you think the Warriors have turned it around? Is it because the veterans were were giving the young guys more of a chance this year? 
or was it because the young guy simply took that opportunity? That segment, sponsored by Safeway. Look around. You can find cars like these on Auto Trade.
This guy is such a D. Now, back to Steiny and Guru on 95.7 The Game. All righty, Warriors play the uh, Portland Trailblazers tonight. Spinelli, did I see... Is uh, Draymond Green questionable tonight? Knee contusion. Knee contusion for Draymond Green. And, you would think uh, they don't need him, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Shout out the Blazers. I don't know. I mean, the one thing I always look at, I mean, there are a lot of teams that don't want to win right now. No, man, what is that? Let me look at... Uh, I thought they, Phoenix was one of them last night. They needed that game. They came back. They did need that the, game last night. Man, but I'm looking down. at the standings. And right now, let's see. In the East, Charlotte's got 20. Portland right now can win and not jeopardize their draft position. All right. So this is their uh, playoff game know, tonight. It's, you it's not like the Spurs are going to rip off their last. Well, they might. But uh, I guess Portland could still fall below San Antonio if the Spurs win their last two games and the Blazers lose their last three games. Or the Spurs win and the but. Uh, you know, there's no reason the Blazers shouldn't at least try tonight. Yeah, but we'll we'll see. The Warriors right now one eight of nine, and we're talking about what's changed this season for the Golden State Warriors from a nineteen and twenty four start to a twenty five and eleven run that they're on right now. And I just I think it's interesting that you know one of the themes again with with Steve Kerr has sometimes been that he doesn't play. Young guys, yeah. or he hasn't played the young guys certainly during the dynasty. And this year, I think we can all agree the young guys have played more than they they have more than young guys have played ever under Steve yeah. Kerr. And and my question is, I know there's a lot of fans out there because I hear from some of them that that think Steve Kerr has been a little slow on the draw with that. Um, I, I actually and. I, I look at the job Steve Kerr has done this year, and I think he's done a great job. I mean, I, I just think he's done an absolutely phenomenal job. I just wrote down a couple things here, Goo, that that he had that he did this year. Wow. That you know, some of the st- and I may have missed some because I just did it off the top of my head. But the f- remember the first thing he had to do, he had to convince us and him, meaning Chris Paul, that Chris Paul had to come off the bench. I forgot all about it. Chris Paul never came off the bench in his career. They acquired Chris Paul, and Chris Paul had to be a sixth man on this team. And a um, professional. Exactly. He gave, uh, the one thing that, that Steve Kerr did is he absolutely positively gave Kav- gave Kavon Looney and Dario Saric the first crack at things in the front court. And he stuck with those guys for... Half the season, Sarge was in the rotation. Looney was starting a good chunk of the time. Oh, and then he made a change. You know, what was it that he saw in Pajemski that that made Steve Kerr say, you know what, I'm I'm going to get this guy some playing time from the first week of the season. And if you look at the Warriors, Pajemski's been a mainstay in terms of that rotation. Yeah. Sometimes starting, sometimes coming off the bench. How do you think Steve Kerr has handled Jonathan Kaminga this year, in his in his third year? Did Kaminga take the type of jump you wanted him to take? And we'll, obviously, he's still got some work to do with Kaminga. Goo. I'm, I'm just going to go all through yeah. these, and I'll, I'll let you jump yeah. in the end. Uh, uh, here's another part of the job. Steve Kerr and the media. I mean, it's a big part of the job. You send the message to the fans about what's going on with your team. Uh, is that part of it? Then he moved to Trace Jackson Davis. He started a rookie, second-round pick. Um he moved Clay Thompson to the bench at some point this season for 14 to 16 games. How did he handle the Wiggins situation, which was another delicate situation where Wiggins right. took some time off? What about Draymond Green, who had a, uh, you know, sabbatical, er- erratic type of year? You like the way he handles Draymond Green. And then what about even just taking responsibility for a lot of the team's close losses early in the season? I kind of want to really get into and dive in deep with Steve Kerr this year and what kind of job you think he did. If, you were, if you've been a critic of Steve Kerr, are you less of one now because he's integrated the young players or are you a critic of Steve Kerr and you're looking at this team saying maybe he should have done it earlier? Where, where are you at with Steve Kerr at 
957-9570. Stani, I love it, and I'd be a liar. And Chris M called me out on YouTube. He didn't even call me out. He was like, Goo, remember that rant you went on about Kerr's handling of Kaminga? And I was banging on death saying, I want to see it. I want to see it. He should be playing. And this season, when they were five games under, it looked like it was it was going the wrong way. So how can I, as a man, double back now? And watch the strides, as we all have, of one Jonathan Kaminga and say that Steve Kerr, that was not the right formula. It was the right formula. Okay, exhibit A. Then pods. I got to be careful here. But remember when we talk about Brock Purdy and who were the two defensive players? Oh, it was Trent Williams and uh, Fred Warner walking off uh, the practice field one summer day. And they whispered to each other and said, you know what? That kid's got it. There's something about that kid. This was way before he was even going to be starting. So now all of a sudden, I bring in Exhibit B, what Pods was doing in the summer camp or, you know, as a training camp where they were like he was going at Draymond Green if he missed an assignment or whatnot. And then Kerr trusted Pods to be able to pick up this high complex type of offense. And now he leads in plus minus. So that's another win for Kerr. Then you are right. You coaching? I thought this was going to be a dumpster fire. And it kind of started out as with no fire extinguisher when, when he was in Vegas, Chris, and, and that was making his round. He talked to Chris and whatever he said, Chris said, I'm going to be the pro and I'm going to be the six man. That worked out. And then for him to tell Willard and Dibbs, I had been a slave to the lineup that had got us, you know, four chips, but I went away from that. And then here comes TJD, Matt Steinmetz. I questioned Kerr, and I always said he was on my Mount Rushmore of all-time coaches, but I questioned him. And now when you bring this up, I almost, I sport melt, not tuna melt, I sport melt with this, I have to give him his flowers. So Steiny. Everything worked out, and now they're clicking and gelling at the most important time of the season. Yeah. If I'm being real. That's the way it looks. Yeah. That's the way it looks. Uh, this is an interesting point. And the, the clay. I left the clay. Yeah, apart. That The clay one was the big. That, there's no doubt, even if clay to this day feels like, I can't believe they moved me to the bench. That jump started him to get his groove back, right? We, I mean, we, it just looks like it. Yeah. I mean, where where are the Kerr critics right now? And there you go. I guess is what I'd, what I'd be asking. Uh, and what kind of year do you think that Steve Kerr had? Because when, when I do look at, when I look at the entire season and all the stuff that happened. You labeled a lot. You I, went through a lot. You know, I think, I think he's done a great job of managing it. I, you know, I think, I think coaching a team like the Warriors over 10 years when they're winning four titles I get it. It's a it's a great job. It's a great NBA job, but I don't necessarily think it's a it's an easy job when you have to do that. And I just I th- I think you know I've heard a lot of criticism over Steve about Steve Kerr over the years, and I've just kind of never really gotten it. And the reason I've never really gotten it is because I feel like we know what Steve Kerr is as a coach, and he's a coach who's going to rely on the guys that he trusts. He just is. He's not the kind of guy who wants to throw rookies out there and just have them play because every year the Warriors play, for the most part, they're playing for something. They didn't need them, so the young guys. My, yeah, my feeling was always, you know, if you don't like Steve Kerr as as a coach of this team, then I think you got to get somebody else because we know what we know what he is. It's we know, we know what he yeah. is, and we know the veterans. Uh, believe in him and that they have the the relationship between Kerr and the veterans is the most important relationship on the team. And Steve Kerr addressed it accordingly. And let's put a right on the table brought to you by Atco, Stani. I think mid-December, early December, we were, before he got that extension, you know, we weren't saying it, but people were calling like, you know, the one thing Kerr doesn't do, he's does not he doesn't know how to handle the young players. And we didn't know and we we had conversations about it. I don't I don't need you to back me up, but you you were with me like people were calling in like, does this team need another coach? Was he coaching for his job? Is this team at a juncture now to where they need a new voice? And look how it's all played out, man. 888-957-9570 is the number. We're talking about Steve Kerr. 
Uh, we've gone through the, the, the roster for the last few weeks and, and kind of figured out where everybody is. And then we can also talk about the challenges that Kerr's going to face moving forward. And to me, the big one is, you know, how do you get Jonathan Kaminga back to how effective he was, maybe coming off the bench as he was when he was starting? Is that possible to get Jonathan Kaminga to play at the level he played as a starter when he's coming off the bench now? Because, I, I mean, I, 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 I wouldn't say it's etched in stone, but I don't think anybody mm. out there thinks Kaminga is going to jump back into the starting lineup anytime soon, which is fine. But then how do you maximize Kaminga coming off the bench? 888-957-9570 is the number. Let's go to, uh, let's go to Horace. Horace is in Texas. What's going on, Horace? How you doing? Oh, what's going on, fellas? You guys doing okay today? Yes, yes sir. sir. The Lone Star State. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, well, you know, uh, you know, I, I want to touch on the, I want to touch on the OJ thing, but uh, I also want to say something about, you know, the Warriors when it comes to. I hear a lot of people talking about who they want to play, who they want to avoid. You know, who you don't want to play this team in the first round. You don't want to play that team in the first round. Hey, listen, we need to get off of that because when you start trying to prefer this team as opposed to that team. You know what? You end up getting the team you wanted, and that's the team that does you in. So I think we Mm. need to just let, you know, quit talking like that and say, listen, we need to be prepared to play the team that is standing in front of us. I don't care if it's the Lakers. I don't care if it's Denver. I don't care if it's Sacramento, whoever it is. That's where your mindset needs to be. We're ready to play mm. whoever. And, I, and, I, and I, 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 I cringe when I hear people saying, ooh, I'd rather play this team. I want to play this team. Okay, you get what you wanted, and that's the, you know, that's the team that does you in. Quit doing that. <laughs> be no, ready I... for whoever you get. And if you're <laughs> supposed to go deep in the championship, yeah. if you're supposed to go deep in the playoffs, you should be able to beat whoever's in front of you anyway. If you're, gonna, if you're supposed to really be the champion, you should be able to beat anybody in front of you. You know? Yeah. So that's all I got to say about that. Now, as far as OJ is concerned, man, you got a mixed bag here, man. Yeah. You know, how, how, do you, how do you approach it? How do you look at OJ? Man, you, know, you had this wonderful football career, one of the greatest running backs to ever play the game. Then you got the acting career, the commercials, and then you got this murder thing. Oh, man, my goodness. Uh, uh, so I, I, it's like this. I can understand how people feel that, hey, he's guilty. I can understand how some people say, well, he's innocent. You weren't there, and you never know. And I can understand why some people might have the attitude, hey, I've seen all kinds of people get off, and you know they were guilty of sin, and they got off anyway. Why not him? I don't know how I feel about it, but there's one thing I can say is this. Miami's got the oranges, but Buffalo's got the juice. I remember that. I'm going to give you a three on I that. Remember wow. That. <laughs> little Howard Cosell from that uh, Horace ball, in Texas. That is a boy. Um, yeah. Yeah, so uh, if you're just joining us uh, and you didn't miss, you didn't uh, hear the first segment, O.J. Simpson dead at uh, 76 years old, died of cancer. And we talked about it uh, in the first segment, and you know, it's, it's a tough thing to talk about. What was the I, offensive I, line's name? I got to uh, tell you. The electric more company. I can't believe Spadoni. Had you heard that, Spadoni? I had no, not. That's heard all that. time. Yeah. And I got a fact to wait. turn on the juice? Yep. That's a, that's a three. Exactly. Uh, did you know OJ was supposed to be the Terminator? It went to Schwarzenegger. I didn't know that. I'll be back. But uh, it's supposed to be OJ. Yeah. All right. Do you know why they didn't go with OJ as uh, the Terminator? Oh, boy. I don't know. I don't. Careful. It's because uh, James Cameron did not think he would be a believable Bad character guy. as a killer. Wow. wow. You know what? <laughs> I had heard that, actually. Right. That Now that rings a bell. And that's not a joke. That's like no, legit. I did. That's, that's, I did it. Wow. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. that was the thing about OJ. Everybody loved him. Yeah. Shout out Norberg. Pre nineteen ninety four, naked gun. Some of the cl- I know you've seen that. Scotty. Yeah, absolutely. Um, eight eight eight. On the boat. What's that? 
scene of OJ on the boat and, and Naked <laughs> Gun where he keeps like tripping over everything in the room. Less he like stuffs his toe on the stove, <laughs> bangs his head on the wall, he like touches the wet paint. Stop and it's just, it. That whole scene oh, is just, man. oh, it's so great. Yeah. Wasn't he a pilot in one of the uh, airplane movies airplane, yeah. with uh, Leslie airplane. Nielsen? <laughs> yeah, that's what I... That's no, what those I, are my but movies. But so is Kareem stuff. Abdul-Jabbar. That was Kareem. Yeah, that was Kareem, Kareem was the original Kareem. one. My but dad he was says, in The Naked did. Gun. Yeah. I mean, I'm sorry. He was in... Airplane. No, not thinking Naked Gun. I think you're thinking uh, Towering Inferno was the other one. That yeah, I think he might have been, yeah. Remember Kareem said, okay. tell your dad you try to guard Lanier. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Excuse me, stewardess. I speak jive. That, uh, then when they went and said where basketball was invented, that was so racist. <laughs> Let me stop. What's the, uh, if you're, for Warrior fans out there, what's been the biggest difference for you in this team from 19 and 24 to 25 and 11? It, do, do you pinpoint one thing, or do you think it's a bunch of things? And if it's more than one, I'm, I'd am i love to know what they are. Because if you think about it, like think, let's just do it from a logical standpoint. So Steph's been struggling a little the second half of the season. Right. So this 25-11 and 11 run has actually occurred when Steph has not been carrying them. Mm. Steph was playing better when they were 19 and 24. So you could make a case that Man, if Steph doesn't play like he played the first half of the year, maybe they're 15 and 28 at that point. But could I make a case? Do I sound like I got Curry underwear? I'm going to throw it back to you. If I say just the gravity, even when Curry's struggling, of him being out there, that's where the Warriors start. Always do. Always do. Uh, Ray's in Watsonville. What's up, Ray? How you doing, man? Hey, hey guys. Hey. A um, couple of things. I hope you guys can hear me. I'm going to... Uh... Yeah. Type into an area here, but anyhow, real quick, I think the biggest change uh, for the Warriors from from uh, previous times is the uh, getting Chris Paul. You think about it; we've had young draft picks before, and we thought that they would uh, uh, step yeah. right in, but they but they never really, you know, did anything. Think about it: if we had Chris Paul last year, you think that we still have uh, uh, pull on the team? I think that uh, we may have, but also thinking about. You know, we've we've always heard that, okay, Draymond, Clay, and, and and Curry, how how were they mentoring the younger younger guys? Mm-hmm. I think that they tried to, but they never really stuck. And you can see just Chris Paul being on the bench talking to the guys when he's out there on the second team. I never liked the guy to be honest with you, but when he's on our team, man, I really appreciate everything that he's doing for the young kids and, and getting. Cause that's only going to benefit us going down the road when we don't have the other guys with us on the team. You yeah, can, real yeah, quick, ahead. I just want to jump on him quick. Hey, thank you. Sure. Oh, he I'm, That was a great call, Stanley. He has me thinking now, who who would have been a better steward than Chris Paul? And I don't want to take anything from Pods, Kaminga, because when Kaminga got on the floor, he wasn't starting. He was to unlock those guys and TJD, Stanley. So what better vet to be the maestro, the conductor of, Hey, I know where you like it, big fella. I'm a th- you know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's a bonus in itself. I mean, damn. I mean, couldn't you make the case that that the Golden State Warriors, their original, you know, the big three, they just they weren't great at mentoring. And in comes Chris Paul, who over the course of his 18 year career has played for championship contenders, but then he also, if you remember, got traded to Oklahoma City where he found himself on a young team, not ready to win. I remember that. And what did he do? They went to the playoffs. He went out and he led that team of young players, even though he knew that he wasn't going to be able to get it done that year. So I, I think that's a good point. I mean, how m- maybe Chris Paul has a lot to do with this for being a bridge between Man. Curry, Clay, and Draymond and the young players. And let's be another rats, Donnie. Yeah. His Curry, Clay, and Draymond were the second team. Chris Paul was out there with those guys. Yep. Yep. Uh 957 9570 What grade are you giving Steve Kerr uh this year? Here's uh where's my guy he said Steiny. I'd give Kerr a B minus. A B minus for 2024 season because of the 10 seed. I think he's a top five NBA coach, but he wants to run with the dogs who got him there not the young players. His forte is not player development. Well, can we really say that now? Well, I mean, I 
I think a lot of people would agree with the four one five up until this year. Up until this year, I mean, the Warriors didn't develop a lot of young players because, to me, they didn't have good players to develop because they were constantly drafting 27, 28. Jordan Bale. And it's a crapshoot. Here's the other thing. Let's look back at the Chris Paul Jordan Poole trade. Good trade? It's a good trade? You happy with the trade? I'm happy for the trade now, but in four years, when Chris Paul, I've started, I, that's another. I know he's not coming back, but if there was a way to bring him back, I would want him back, but I'll, it's a good trade right now. Wait, bring who back? Chris Paul. Oh, okay. But I thought if, you meant Jordan Poole. But in three more years, if was... Poole is, you know, 16, 18 points and a guy that could come off your bench, uh, I still miss him, Stein. He's playing better, but for right now, it worked out for the Warriors. Chris Paul is the adult in the room, man. Yeah, I'm looking at the uh, YouTube chat. Josh Ram, great trade. Juan Cruz, absolutely. I mean, if you look at the way Poole played this year, I think you got to be okay with the trade. Yeah. Three, four years down the line, if, if Poole straightens himself yeah. out. And he's been playing better. Yep. Yeah. Uh, let's go to uh, Lift, Lift Timmy in Oakland. What's up, uh, Lift Timmy? How you doing, man? Timmy. Hey, what's up, boys? How we doing? Hey. Right. Yo, I just wanted to talk a little bit about uh, Wiggins, man. I'm... Uh, I'm looking forward to the play-in, and I'm looking forward to uh, to big production from two-way wig. But I feel like this guy's got the potential to turn it on, especially in the times when play-in and playoff potentials there. Um, I think that I think that if we continue to keep Jonathan Kaminga kind of at bay or whatever on the bench or coming off a, a sixth or seventh man position. I think with with his absence, I think Wiggins got potential to produce a lot more than what what we might expect or what he has been very spotty throughout the season. Yeah, and that's that's to me the the part that I'm looking for that that, that I'm watching is how do you get Kaminga yeah. back into the fold. That came at a bad time the tendonitis, right? To take him out. I I hear your partner but that guy from Texas, our guy that called, mm -hmm. he has to be the only one poking the Denver Bear. I know you still got to take care of business in the play in, but if you got into the playoffs, I'm sorry. I'm. I just. Well, I'd like to see Denver the second round when we're really feeling it. But my point is, are we going to see the best Jonathan Kaminga? Not because he doesn't want to give it to us, though, because he's got a lot going on up top. About hey, when I left here, I was starting. Now I'm not. Yeah, we're going to have to find that out. Now, no, uh, six five zero. I think this is interesting. I wonder if there's any. I don't know if the, well, I'll just read it. I think Steve Kerr changed his approach to the rookies and the young players because he heard the dissatisfaction coming from many fans. They were calling for his removal, so he changed. So he changed. Well, I don't know. I don't know if it was the fans. Maybe it was Joe Lacob. Maybe it was Mike Dunleavy. Maybe Mike Dunleavy said, "Look, I I know these guys. I scouted these guys. They can play." Maybe one of the big three said it. See the the one thing and. The one thing I don't hold against Steve Kerr is the Trace Jackson Davis coming in midway through the season. I, I cannot go ahead. Yeah, I, I can't. I, I, I didn't mention his name once. Well, you know, a couple of times we did. Now he let the youngster play. Yeah. You're you really going to play a rookie goo. But maybe the fact that he didn't play Trace Jackson Davis for the first half of the yeah. year is a reason why Trace Jackson Davis yeah. is is yeah. looking pretty fresh right now. 888-957-9570 is the number. Uh, Steve Kerr was on with Willard and Dibbs yesterday. We're going to get to some of that sound uh, on the other hour, but it got me to thinking, what kind of year do you think Steve Kerr had? You want to give Steve Kerr a grade for this year? I, I, I got to give him at least a B plus. Who got a B minus? And the, <laughs> the, other, the other thing is... Um, yeah, they were a six seed last year, but they have more wins this year. And according to Steve Kerr, and I think a lot of Warrior fans, this team's better than last year, right? So if this team's better than last year, is it time to give Steve Kerr his flowers? That segment was sponsored by Safeway. This week at Safeway, get more savings when you buy more with your Safeway membership. Buy one, get one free on Mix and Match.
Because I just busted in his office this morning. The door was closed. I didn't. <clears throat> it was all bad. This is Moses Moody, and you're listening to Steiny and Guru on 95.7 The Game. Uh, the other thing that uh, we didn't mention, I guess a caller called in during the break. And and, and I'm ashamed. Yeah, and uh, you know, we're just kind of listing all the stuff that happened this year, all the decisions <sighs> Kerr ended up making that look like, at least to this point, they've worked out. But, you know, the Warriors had an assistant coach, Dayan Milojevic, pass in the middle of the year. Wow, man. I'd almost forgotten about yes, that. Yes, sir. Man. And... Um, Coach Decky, you know, I think I think it's fair to say that in the wake of that, maybe not right away, but I think over time it cal- it, it galvanized the team in a way. If yeah. you remember when he passed, there was a lot of negativity uh, going on with the team. They yeah. they weren't winning, they were struggling, and I think something happened there where guys on the team just just gained a greater appreciation for the game they were playing. No doubt. And went, ab- went about their jobs a little bit differently. but um, Put what, their grievances to the side. Exactly. What uh, what grade would you give Steve Kerr this year if you're grading Steve Kerr and how he's handled all the stuff that's going down? I just I just wrote all the stuff that went down. I just, you know, it's pretty amazing when you kind of list it. First thing he did was he had to tell Chris Paul the sec- <laughs> Chris Paul the second. There Chris Paul the third that he was coming off the bench. Uh, Looney and Sarge were playing early. Then he had to take those guys out of the lineup. Played Pajemski all year long. Uh, how do you think he's handled Jonathan Kaminga? Um, what about the media? Does that does that factor into this? How he handles the media week in and week out? You happy with the timing of moving Trace Jackson Davis into the starting lineup? Uh, what about what about having Clay Thompson come off the bench? Not an easy decision. How do you think he handled Wiggins? who uh, missed some games because of personal time. Well, what about Draymond Green, who was suspended this year? And then uh, just all those kind of things. Um, I'm just thinking about with, with Steve Kerr, and and he's been the one constant throughout this, this not only the season, but the entire run. 650 says, uh, uh, Kerr played, okay, and this is, now let me know what you think about this, Goo and, and, and Warrior okay. fans. Kerr played Kaminga out of necessity only because Draymond got suspended indefinitely. He didn't figure out he didn't figure that out or pull that string. Well, I this is the beautiful thing about life, Stani. We can't prove that. So the facts are the facts. That's how it played out. What if what if somebody what if I told you you got this new job? You're a top executive at uh Microsoft, Stani, and somebody says, Stani, you only got the job because the person they wanted in Arkansas, some they couldn't make it or whatever. Who cares? Like, that is something that you can't prove. The proof is in the pudding. And right now, I mean, he's coming up aces. I will say this to you. If somebody came down from Mars and said, the Warriors are in 10th, that, would you give them that notebook and the list of things that we listed of what this team had to get through? Or would you say to that person decided you guys can cite all that, but they're still 10th. Would you say it's some merit to that? I mean, Cause I there's think, an element of bad luck with the West being better and you got a better record than last year and you're 10th. Like, where do you, where do you come out on that? I think it's a matter of the bottom line is, are you a warrior fan or not? Mm. Are you a big warrior fan? Or are you more of a skeptic? I mean, that's to me, that's been the number one thing with this team. Every every positive has a negative, and and the so called negatives have a positive. And what I mean by that is, okay, they're they're better than last year. Everybody seems to agree that right now they're better than last year. They're going to win more games than last year, but. They have a worse seed than last year. Man. So how do you look at it? Hey, we made improvements over last year, or you know what? We didn't improve enough because we fell in the standings, and we have to go into this thing as maybe a 9 or a 10 seed. Um, you know, I, I always look at a, a team and basically say, this is kind of who they are, especially when we're at the end of a season. I mean, whether it's baseball 162 or basketball 82. I mean, the Warriors right now are 44 and 35. They're nine games over 500. They won 44 games last year. So it looks like they're going to improve on that total by a couple games. And to my way of thinking, that's a success. 
Now, can they get further than last year in the postseason? Well, obviously, it's going to be harder to get further this year. Oh, man. So I, I don't know. You tell me, Warrior fans, how do you look at that at, at 888-957-9570? Just like some people would say, well, we lost five or six games that we shouldn't have, so we should be four or five games better. Yeah. Okay, but I could also say that maybe another coach under a different circumstance, the season falls apart. Maybe the season falls apart after Draymond Green gets suspended. Maybe they go downhill, and right now they're behind Houston. Uh, who knows? I'm asking Andy Warrior fans. Yeah, I'm asking Warrior fans what what they think. How, how responsible is Steve Kerr for where they're at right now, and, and are they reaching their potential like a great coach wants to see in, in his team? Uh, this is random. Starting yeah, real quick ahead. from Slater, he tweeted out, uh, Thompson's added to the Warriors injury report tonight in Portland. Uh, right knee tendonitis. So I wonder if it's – thank you. You should be able to handle – you going in, you think, Stoney. But Portland's probably going to play it like it's their game seven. I mean, I just – Like if, Gray, if Dre and Clay didn't play, I think the way the Warriors are balling right now, Kaminga and the rest of the game can handle it. Yeah, I mean, I'm wondering why those guys would show up on the injury report if they aren't going to not play. You know what I mean? Mm. I mean, we we woke up this morning and figured the Warriors would be at full strength, and now we're hearing that Draymond Green is questionable and Clay Thompson is questionable also. Yeah. And they got a game tomorrow night that's going to be tougher than this one tonight. You know what that tells me? What? They're not necessarily going for uh, uh, going for it. Right. I, I mean, you. they'd love to go. I, you can't tell me they don't want to go 3-0. Because that gives them the best shot at getting eight, but maybe That's Denver, they've though. weighed everything that they can possibly weigh, and they think, you know what? We'd rather go in at nine or ten, having given these guys some rest, as opposed to playing everybody that's available. And we got, look, they got three games in four nights, too. Before right. they get to the play-in game. So, so when you said so eight, we you doing? meant eight of the top ten. They got a battle to get eight, seven or eight. So you were just talking eight. Right. What I'm, the, okay. Yeah, what All I'm right. saying is the only way they can get up to eight for the most part is to go 3-0 and oh in their last yeah. three games. No, no doubt about it. And maybe what the Warriors are weighing right now is that's less important than, than getting Clay a day or two off or getting Draymond a day or two off, maybe getting Steph – a day or two off, either tomorrow or Sunday. But I mean, it's, it, I mean, it's setting up <laughs> like Sunday might be a game where a lot of guys don't play. But we don't know how much Sunday's game's going to mean. I mean, if you have an opportunity to get to eight, oh my, with gosh. a win on Sunday, you got to take that. Kerr talked about it with Willard and Dibs. Yeah, so, hey, this is hashtag random. I got to yeah. give it to you, Donnie, real quick. Speaking of Dibs, Cliff Clavin, he's beautiful. This is so random. So a gentleman's sweep, I thought, was just 4-1, no matter how you got to it. But Dibs was saying yesterday, I believe, the team has to win three. You have to be down 3-0 for it technically really to be a gentleman's sweep. Were you aware of that? I, mean, that's I thought a, it was just 4-1. I always kind of thought about it as you get up 3-0, and then they, they get, get they you get, one. Yeah, they get the gift game, and then you come back home and, and, and win see the series. I'm like, look at my man. Uh, uh, 408. Kerr did great on all the things Steiny said. He doesn't have a great team, but he got him to buy in, play together. Uh, yes, they could have won two or three more games if Steph. Uh, I lost the thread here. If Steph Warriors will start next year, okay. But he, you know, I, I'm with you. I think, I think, I think it's one of those things where you get caught up game in and game out. I think it's easy to be critical of, of Steve Kerr, but I think if you look at the big picture, you know what? I'm going to give him an A-. minus. Yeah. I'm going to give him an A-. minus. Yeah. I'm um, not mad. I think that's what I'm giving him. Uh, here's uh, what he said about the fact they have been playing well, but they're still in number 10. The number one reason is because the West is, is so damn good. I mean, that that's really easy to figure out when you look at everybody's records and, you know, how many uh, talented teams that are that are out there that are absolutely going for it. You know, uh, teams have, have sold out 
um, to to put the best rosters together. And so there, there's just very little margin for error. You know, it, when you look at the, the top 10, 11 teams in the West, where, um, clearly three teams have, have been better than everybody else with, you know, OKC, Minnesota, and Denver. But everybody just seems so bunched together. And, and um, so every game's close. We've played more close games than anybody in the league. And I think early in the season, we lost more than our share of those. And we're trying to make up for it now. And, and we're winning some of the close ones. Yeah, that was Steve Kerr on with Willard and Dibbs yesterday. Yesterday. What about the, just the idea that you had four young players, you have you have four old players, and they had to figure out how to win. They had to yeah. figure out how to win. They hadn't played together. Pajemski and Trace Jackson Davis weren't even on the team. Jonathan Kaminga has a much bigger role this year than, than ever before. You got Chris Paul, who's a pretty big part of this team, who's got to figure it out. I mean, couldn't couldn't you make the case that yeah, eh, made sense? They were going to struggle probably a little bit earlier in the season, but once the halfway point hit, they figured stuff out. They started locking in rotations, and now they're playing the best ball of the season. Yeah. Isn't Sarich that what a coach is, is supposed yeah. to do? No doubt. Chris and Sarich, second. and to identify, I love that Sarich and Looney is, you know, is guys that maybe we could get something, you know, a little more for some other guys. He had to see that. He saw it and did it. Let me read this to you from the 415 Xfinity Mobile text line. Wes being better is not bad luck, Guru. The Warriors are not better than last year because the older players can't keep up with the new, the newer, better competition. See, that comes to me, as, and, and, and we talk about it a lot. Stani, they're a team, so it's not like we can watch the game and just – segregate and say, well, they're losing this game or they lost this game or this run happened because of Steiny, Spadoni, and Sam. It's all collective. Well, I, I just, I think that you know, the, some people are going to have a, a negative reaction to if you say, boy, the Warriors had some bad luck with Draymond Green. Well, what was uh, that? I mean, there was no bad luck with Draymond Green. Gotcha. Draymond Green was Draymond Green. Yeah. Um, I kind of agree. It's I don't, I don't know that it's bad luck that the West is better than last year if every team that's better deserved to be better then it is what it is yeah. um doesn't help that the west is better this year I, I you'd love to be going into the playoffs as a six seed but that's not going to happen Man. so now what do you do what do you do and what do you give you win what do you give steve kerr for a grade this year at 888-957-9570 spadoni what grade I, would I, you I, mean, give I, him? I guess i could troll I guess I could troll and say, what would you say? A lot of well, there's a lot of critics out there. Steve Kerr, you don't seem to be saying oh, much right now. Okay, guys, the Steve crickets. Kerr critics. What what can you say? Crickets. Okay, yeah, we should be winning. We should have won fifty. Okay, well, you're at forty five, and you're playing your best basketball of the season with three games left. It could be. 48. That's what a coach does. He takes a team from the beginning of the year to the end of the year, and he makes them better, and they get better, and that's what the Warriors did. I'd give him a B plus right now. B yeah, plus. Well, There's some hits and yeah. misses there throughout. Well. I mean, probably should have brought Clay off the bench a little earlier in the season. But there were so many weird things happening this season mm -hmm. with the Draymond suspension. I think he handled all that very well. So I'm giving him a way more than a passing grade. What? Mike Dunleavy, though, I think for mm. me gets an A plus with okay. this off season. Chris Paul has been a revelation for this team and with those young players in a way that <sighs> Steph. Dre or Clay just never were. Like he is so damn important, not only as a facilitator on the floor, but for the emergence of Kaminga, Trace Jackson Davis, wow. Pajemski. And that's we gotta give credit to Mike Dunleavy then, yeah. don't we? I think because I think a lot of people crushed it in the time. Like yep. we're bringing in this villain yep. and getting rid of Jordan Poole. Like it was crazy. He's gonna be mad and he's you, not starting. And you re-sign Draymond, like that wasn't right. popular with a lot of the fans. I'm giving Mike Dunleavy a little Connectivity was the word, guys. That's what Dunleavy used, Donnie. And and they're they have they've, they've they're proving that. You know, I'll never forget before the season even started, I was talking to some Warrior people about Chris Paul, because they, they made the trade for him in the offseason and then apparently he came around. He was around the facility a lot, and somebody said to me, this guy is unbelievable. And I'm talking Chris about Chris Paul. Paul. And I didn't know what he meant by unbelievable. I'm like, oh, what's what's going on? He said, the guy's just an unbelievable professional. Like, I don't think Chris Paul was psyched about getting traded to the Golden State Warriors. I agree Warriors. with that. But he still came in here. You coaching? And he came off the bench 
and he had to play with young players, and he embraced them. He embraced them in a way that the veterans hadn't been able Man. to embrace young players. Damn. I mean, again, maybe maybe Chris Paul was the bridge that the big three needed to start to accept that some of the young players were ready to play and help the team win. And how valuable was that? Y- you tell me. Man. I mean, you tell me. 888-957-9570 from the 415. I'd give Steve Kerr a B. I think that Chris Paul is responsible for a lot of the development with the young players, being that he got that group up to speed. That made Kerr's job easier. That's fair. Yeah. Uh, that That's fair. Nobody mad. Uh, 888-957-9570 is the number. Uh, Steve Kerr was on with Willard and Dibbs yesterday, and here's what he talked about the confidence level of individual players. Confidence level is really high, and um, you know, our guys are feeling good about themselves and about each other. There's a, a really good chemistry and commitment to one another on this team that's been there all year, and I think that's one of the things that's allowed us to uh, to get to this point and, and play through the adversity that we had early in the season between the, the injuries, the suspensions, uh, even some of the just struggles uh, with our play. The guys have stuck together throughout, and I'm really proud of them, and, and it's fun to watch them play. I thought Wiggs last night was was key right away. He played a great game, and we had a lot of guys step up and, and, uh, and play well. Man. That was Steve Kerr on yesterday. Uh, and look, if, if you feel this way, you feel this way from the 408 Xfinity Mobile text line. You guys are talking like they're a top seed. <laughs> they're a 10 seed. That's at best a C. At best a C. See, I didn't. I didn't look at this. I never looked at this team as a fifty-win team, though. Like, if you think well, the season's fi- not over to that person too, like they still could get in the tournament, and then no. But I mean, what he's saying, like the bottom line is, they're not going to be a higher seed than last year, and that and that's exactly what I'm talking about. You you can say, who cares if they're better? They're in a worse position this year. Well, I, that's a fact. I, I understand yeah. that. Do you guys remember what the season over under was? At the start of the season, according to Vegas, for the forty-eight win, win total, uh, was it forty-eight and 40, a half? Forty-seven and a half. Pretty amazing. That's so pretty Boy, crazy. How they know that? Huh? That dude, the Sharks. So, so the un- the under hits. Well, they're going to probably go over, right? Wait, are they thirty? They got forty-four. Oh, they could still get forty-eight. Forty-eight. Yeah, right? you're right. They could still get forty-eight. I'm telling that way. you what. This team goes forty-eight and thirty-four. How can you have seen the whole year and think they've underachieved? You because you would not be using perspective. You, that person that typed it, his prerogative, shout Checked out Bobby Brown. Check out the Brown. under, because they have three games left. Never mind. So it would be 47. Yeah, so they wouldn't the hit. Would, they wouldn't yeah. hit. Actually, okay. he gets an F now. If yeah. they over hit, uh, he would have gotten an A. Okay, now okay. he gets an F. Uh, yeah, Stanley, they're ignoring all those things you wrote on your list. 408. I don't know. Does, does this hurt? Steve Kerr's grade needs to, consider, needs to be considered. Or what you have to consider with Steve Kerr's grade is Steph is playing at a lower level this year than he was last year. And the team has more wins. He's right. Well, that means they're better. And they're not a one trick pony, Stiney. Well, who's who well, I don't want to see the one trick. Who, who gets credit see. who gets credit for that? To me, Steve Kerr gets credit for that. Like somebody like I, Steve Steph Curry, if Steph Curry this year was not as good as last year, then the and Clay Thompson is about the same and Draymond missed way yeah. more games, how are they better? How? The others around him. Exactly. And that's Steve Kerr. It's the other guys around him. It's mm-hmm. Kaminga who emerged. Chris Paul. It's Pajemski and Trace Jackson Davis who stepped up when they got their opportunity. Pajemski got his earlier. Um, Pierce Evans on the uh, YouTube chat, 8 and 11 they were last year versus the top five of the West compared to 3 and 16 this year. So yes, they have a better record, strong. but they're worse against the top five. Yeah. That's Pierce Evans. And how many of those t- games against the top five? Here I go. Did Dre not play? You but, know what I mean? I would. You know that you might that might well, skew the numbers a little bit, but it is what it is. I get it. I mean, there's a big that but they that's, tricked off a bunch of game leads, but that's not Draymond Green. Mm. You. Like even if Dre, I don't know how many games Draymond missed, but there is a big difference between eight and eleven three against 16. the top five 
and three and sixteen against the top five. Even if you want to give them a couple wins with yeah. Draymond Green, they just have not beaten good teams this year. And maybe that'll come back to bite them. And also, wouldn't it be? Po- oh, go ahead. Yeah. Sorry, I mean to cut you off, Cooper. Also, like how many of those games came like you know early in the yeah. season, the first two months before they kind of really f- figured out who this team was? You know, early on Fair. we weren't seeing a lot of Kaminga. We weren't seeing a lot of TJD. Who you know the the the, the inclusion of those guys in the rotation in the last few months has been a big reason why the Warriors are playing better. So I think that's got to factor in as well uh, too when it comes to that you know record no, against top no five doubt. Team. But they still can fix that, Lubman, that Destiny and Spadoni. They could. What if they went on a run? If they, I got to know what constitutes a run, but what if they said, use that stat 3-16 and 16 as Charmin because we are going to play our most our high-optium basketball at the most important time. And if they could somehow get, like Minnesota, Stani, I know they're, they got younger, fresher, and they got, but their half-court offense to me, I'm like, okay, it's going to slow down. Let's see. I just don't want them to get Denver if they were to get past the play-in. I mean... But you got to face them. When, you got to face the bear. Well, and the other, the other thing is like that's, I mean, when you're in ten, you're going to have to take what what you're given. Well, there you go. Beggars can't uh, be choosy. Four one five. Kerr did a great coaching job this year. I'm with you. Let me tell you what I don't hold against Steve Kerr under any circumstance is this idea that Trace Jackson Davis should have been incorporated all year, and that's that's what I mean about Steve Kerr is still Steve Kerr, like. Think about this. They were 19 and 24, and two guys who were playing, they don't, they don't even play anymore. No, yeah, Looney yeah. and Sarge don't even play anymore. Yeah, right. So that's a big deal. The, the bottom line is, is that they weren't winning, and he found something else. And I, I submit that I don't think Trace Jackson Davis would be as effective now if he played as much as Pajemski. Because I think Pajemski, as good as he's been, has hit a little bit of a wall. Obviously, he's had some good games in the recent Playing past. Playing better but lately, though. The, re- the reality of the situation is, uh, Steve Kerr would tell you that Trace Jackson Davis didn't emerge as a better player than Kevon Looney until we were 35, 40 games into the season. Mm-hmm. And then finally, Trace Jackson Davis essentially did what you got to do to get on the court, and he beat out Kevon Looney. He wasn't better than Kevon Looney to start the season. So that that's another thing. I mean, Steve Kerr did something that's against his his nature. But he removed yeah. two, he actually removed three veterans from the starting lineup at one point or the other this year. Looney, Sarich, and Clay Thompson. Yeah. He took them out of the starting lineup. Yeah. Like what more do you want if you're a critic of how he doesn't like young players? Yeah. Well, he certainly gave him a chance this year. Steve Kerr, A minus, A minus. Did you give him a grade? Yeah, A minus. All right. Eight 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 nine five seven nine five seven zero is the number. Warriors play the Portland Trailblazers tonight, and uh, we we've run the gamut of of talking about the players. It's time to talk about Steve Kerr. If you're a critic of Steve Kerr, have you come around? Have you come around? This team's playing their best basketball of the season at the best time to be playing the best basketball of the season. 888-957-9570. Where are the flowers? Where are the flowers for Steve Kerr? I'll be a guy that gives them to him today. That segment was brought to you by Fremont Bank. Full service banking, no compromises. He deserved it. If you need bold banners to boost your business, but you're
Now, back to Steiny and Guru on 95.7 The Game. Xfinity Mobile text line from the uh, 408. They're saying we're on the Warriors payroll. They're letting us know the check is in the mail. Cut that. When have we ever been accused of that? Um, <laughs> here's another one from G on the YouTube chat. LMAO. Certain demographics love to give Kerr all the credit when we win and none of the accountability when we lose. What grade would you give Steve Kerr? And we can open this up to Mike Dunleavy, too. Yeah. I got Dunleavy for four moves. Tell me if I'm forgetting any. Resigning Draymond Green, yeah. trading for Chris Paul the third, and drafting Pajemski and Trace Jackson Davis. And Chris, yeah, no, you didn't. That was it. They didn't make a move at the deadline. I give him an A+. Plus. He wouldn't got the grocery store. So Dunleavy, what do you, what what grades you give Dunleavy and what grades you give Steve Kerr? I'm giving Steve Kerr an A minus, and one of the reasons I'm giving him an A minus is because I didn't think this was a 50 win team from the get go, especially when we had no idea coming into this season about Trace Jackson Davis or about Brandon Pajemski. That's when, the when, when the season started, nobody nobody was including them in, well, we got two rookies who may help us win more games the second half of the season because they'll be fresh. Now they're part of the NBA all-rookie team, two of them. Exactly. So, Damn. Um, to, me, to me, there's enough credit to go around to say two great picks by Dunleavy and great utilization, I'll say it, great utilization by Steve Kerr this year with the rookies. And the other thing that happened this year, and you can say that it happened by necessity, but Jonathan Kaminga took that third-year jump individually. Now, I think I, I think what we could discuss theoretically is... Him going public? No, no I don't oh. care about that. And, you know, the other thing about that is, did he go public... The report was that Kaminga's camp says there was no quote in the story. There was never anything from Kaminga that said, I want to play more. It was a story that said Kaminga's camp says that Kaminga's lost faith in the coaching staff. So when we when we characterize what happened with Kaminga, I, I don't think I just don't think it's fair to say he went public. Maybe his camp did. He didn't. That's interesting. But like Kaminga never said, I'm mad and I want out of here unless I start playing. Yeah, G on the YouTube chat says, JK's treatment alone knocks Kerr down to a C plus in my opinion. And you know what? And I'll play devil's advocate here. Did anybody ever stop to consider that maybe, maybe going out of your way to develop Jonathan Kaminga maybe held the team back in the middle of the year? Is that possible? Would anybody ever look at it like that? Uh, you're right, I did. They did make a deadline move. 916. They traded Corey Joseph. I forgot about that. Um, 925 is interesting. Chris Paul's been a better veteran on the team than Andre Iguodala. Way better availability and way better play as a mentor. Well, as a mentor, yeah. Andre got it. Uh, uh, NBA Finals MVP off the so, well that bar is high. This team may not get to the actual playoffs, but Chris Paul's impact, man. I'm the first one in line. Willard was with me. We kind of weren't feeling the. Uh, I don't want to speak for him, but we kind of weren't feeling the uh, Chris Paul, ad, you know, addition. And he's man. I wonder how much is. I I don't want to take anything because I can't, and I'm excited about TJD. But how easy has his job been to hit the floor? With with Chris Paul as your captain, as a conductor. Well, with four years of college you experience, to too. Well, that's big. I mean, the, the bottom line is the Warriors, look, they drafted Wiseman. He couldn't play. They drafted Kamengi. Couldn't play to start. They weren't ready. They had no experience. Yeah, Wiseman got the shot to play, too. He drafted Moody, who played one year. Drafted Pajemski, played one year, and he jumped right into the starting lineup. I got to give Pajemski a lot of that, a lot of the credit. But 
you know what? Maybe the reason Trace Jackson Davis is playing is because he played four years of college. And maybe now looking at it, maybe there was a disconnect between the veterans and the young players. But for whatever reason, Pajemski and and uh, and Trace Jackson Davis goo have have proven that they're yeah. okay. they belong on this team. And not only it's not just a matter of well, let's get them playing time because they're rookies. It's like no, you you have to give them playing time because they bring a dimension that you never had before. Right. And now all of a sudden, to me, when I'm watching the Warriors, it feels like if it's nine deep, ten on some nights, it feels like feels like strength in numbers is right back at us. Uh, Mystic Mech says it wasn't terrible to start. Matter of fact, Sarge with Paul was hitting early on, and Mike Dunleavy was getting love for getting it, but uh, you forgot about that, right? No, I have Sarge on here. Yeah, he got, I mean, okay, call me Steve Kerr. Remember, apologist. I like Sarge. Call though. me a Steve Kerr apologist. <laughs> oh, he missed on Sarge. Who cares? Yeah. Who they cares fixed if it he was missed, missed on Sarge? Yeah. And you know what? Maybe they mm. needed Sarge. To be Trace Jackson Davis's placeholder for the first three months of the season because Trace Jackson Davis needed to needed an adjustment period. Well, Uncle Looney says it best, Donnie. Mm. You don't get about Chris Paul. You don't get the name nickname Point God is being a distraction. Every team he's gone to, he's made them better. What do you do with Chris Paul now? now I'm told you, but you you don't got the funds, do you? Can you allocate those funds, man? Because I mean, his impact is. Or can Pods be in year two CP3 as far as running the second team? I'm not saying he's not capable, but I'm talking about that that wherewithal, that 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 OG veteran stuff that Chris Paul has. Yeah, I mean, I and Chris Paul ain't no punk on defense I mean, either. Too, Donnie. The problem with Chris Paul is that next year's con- next year yeah. is not guaranteed. But if you want him on your team, it's going to cost you. And how many teams don't want him to be their starting point? See, I'm still I saying wonder. he's a point guard, man. I wonder. Uncle Looney here on the uh, YouTube chat with uh, with an interesting stat. Uh, Warriors are the only team in the NBA, uh, only team in NBA top 20 teams that have one guy playing 30 minutes. Denver plays five guys over 30. Well, they're young. Yeah, I don't know if that's a strength or weakness, though, Looney. Well, Uncle the Warriors Looney. were like that in their heyday, 14-15 when they won. It was... Steph left, Clay right, Dre up the. I mean, that's what you do when you're young, Stoney. They can, the youngsters carry the load. Yeah. 888 957 9570 is the number. Uh, somebody help me explain or help me to understand how it's obvious that the Warriors are probably at their best point in terms of morale and in terms of the fan excitement as they've been all year long. Man, but people are still reluctant to give Steve Kerr credit. Yeah, don't you get? Don't you? Don't well, what you about deserve? his interview? Go ahead. Stop. No, go ahead. no, his interviews with Willard and Dibs, and kudos to them. I feel like they're having a beer at the bar because they ask all the hard questions. But the beautiful part about Kerr is he answers them. Yeah, and here's he uh, answers the questions they pose to him. Here's what Steve Kerr said about the rotation as we head into the uh, play-in, and then ideally the postseason. It's been a challenge, but I will 100% take this over the opposite and not having enough guys. You know, we are, I think, uh, one of the deepest teams in the league, maybe the deepest. And so what that's meant for us is that we've, we've been able to survive you know, injuries and absences and, uh, and also develop young players uh, and, and accomplish a lot of things at once. Obviously, the, the, the goal is to win a championship, and, and we're still in the mix for that. But uh, a lot of good things have happened because of our depth and because of the quality of the human beings involved. I mean, you know, guys like Loon and Moody who are, are really good players and have started games and, you know, helped us win championships. I mean, for them to not be in the rotation last night, that's really tough. But they're they're such good people that they, they stay with it, put their work in every day as they're doing right now as we speak, and, and they stay ready for, for when their time comes. So we're, we're lucky to have such good guys. Man. He said deep. He's feeling it, Donnie. He said they're the Maybe the deepest team in the league. How do you not get? And I'm uh, yeah. whether they are or they're not. Let's just give them the benefit of the doubt and say, yeah, they're one of the deepest teams in the league. Why? Do, what more do you want? Like, what more do you want from a coach? The only reason they're deep is because he developed two rookies. That's Steve Kerr. 
That's Steve Kerr. I, I just, I mean, I just look at this team and what more do you want? You want a team to play their best basketball of the season as late as possible, and that, that's what they're doing. When he says they're the deepest team in the league, he's basically just saying we just feel like we have the most depth, like 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 what the quality. Because no. when I hear that, like when you say you're the deepest team in the league, like I could beat any, we could beat anyone, any series. Like I'm not taking them against the Denver Nuggets in round one, right? Just because you're the deepest team, like your your rotation is shrinking yeah. in the Maybe, playoffs. But to me, he could say yeah. that, but he's not going to be given heavy minutes to Pajemski if he's struggling. He's not going to be given heavy minutes to Kaminga if he sees a couple. Like That's what I'm still skeptical on when the play-in slash playoffs start is this rotation because there is some things to figure out. You may be the deepest, yeah. but that makes your job harder. Oh, then. no doubt. But I feel like they, Stani and Spadoni, I feel like they've evolved to that. Like, you couldn't, I don't feel like he could have got away with that in December. But now, Stani, I'm thinking there's something to what he's saying, but to Spadoni's point, now they're winning games where I'll just say Steph's pedestrian. You know, he ain't just super incredible, but that's almost a compliment to everything that's going on in Warrior World. <laughs> Shout out Sheed is, okay, if Steph ain't having the super duper game, we still got action. And it's it's been like the last month for me. I mean, I'm I, feeling I, that way. No, and I hear what Spadoni's yeah. saying because the reality of the situation is they're already starting to show they're cutting it down to nine guys. And Moody's out. Moody's yeah. out. If Two look, if everything game. goes perfectly for the Warriors, Moody's out. Because to get, he wants to play Gary Payton the second more than he wants to play Moses Moody. All right. So it, you know, in that in that regard, again, he's going to the vet. But like, I mean, it, here's what it is, barring any injuries. It's going to be Curry and Clay in the backcourt. It's going to be Wiggins and Green in the front court. Yep. It's going to be Trace Jackson Davis at center. Okay, who's coming off the bench? Chris Paul's going to sub in for Steph Curry. Pods. Kaminga's going to play. Pajemski's going to play. And then Peyton II yep. is going to have to play. No doubt. But Looney and Moody are the odd men out. And the only way they're going to play is if somebody gets into foul trouble early or somebody gets hurt. And Kerr said this to the guys yesterday. Like, he, he mentioned Looney not playing, but be on standby. Like, you know, what if you match up with Denver? You're going to need five fouls from Looney or something, Stoney, to throw at him more than just TJD. I mean, they're going to need five fouls first from Trace Jackson Davis, to me, if you play Denver. I don't I don't know. I mean, I, shots, I, I think Trace Jackson Davis has shown that he's a level above Kevon Looney yeah. right now. I, I just don't. I don't, I don't think, think there's any doubt about would that. Would argue that. Uh, Larry's in Los Angeles. What's up, Larry? How you doing, man? L.A. I'm doing great. You guys have a great show. I listen to you guys day, night, and uh, 24 hours a day. But thank you. The only thing I wanted to say was, um, you know, you asked why why the fans think that the Warriors are playing better the second half mm -hmm. of the season or whatever. And yep. I think it's a, two things I've seen in the last two months. Two things are the reason why. One, Draymond got kicked out. And I think Draymond was showing his frustration team like, hey, we are so lousy, I'm just going to quit because it's not even worth playing the team. And I think that sparked an interest. The second thing is when Steph got up on stage and he said, hey, man, I'm losing faith in my own team. I don't even know if we have it anymore. I mean, he, the leader of the team, and I think that sparked an interest in the team. Say, hey, we're going to prove Steph wrong. We're going to, we're going to, it flipped the switch. And the last thing is you commented that, yeah, you know, you're giving, you're giving um, Kerr like, I don't know, a B minus yeah, or B. B plus, B plus. I don't think Kerr is really that great of a coach. I think you surround yourself with great people. You make a decision. But the one thing I saw Steve Kerr say, they put a microphone on the bench. Uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, 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 um, Draymond Green came out. And Steve Kerr said, hey, you don't have to always throw the ball to Steph. And what does he do? He starts throwing the ball to other people. And now what's happening? Steph isn't becoming the main reason why they're winning. It's everyone else getting the ball and making points. And that was the only thing I wanted to say. Yeah, appreciate the call. Yeah. He did say that. I mean, I don't think there's any doubt that that if Steph, if we're finding out, you know, Steph is, is struggling to carry this team for 34 minutes a night, 
then you need somebody to carry, help him carry so that he can pick his spots. If he can still pick his spots and you can stay in games, then you allow yourself the opportunity for Curry to bring a game home. Man, the closer. Maybe he can't. Maybe he can't uh, go an entire postseason and play 34, 35 minutes and average 30-plus and be efficient. It's very possible that he, he, he can't do that anymore. He just won't, I, I said this to you during the break, Stein. I don't know what constitute the, constitutes this, but he just won clutch Steph, clutch player of the year, and I guess – when you hit shots to go up and what time of game it is, but he won that this year. I think that a lot of that has to do with they were in more clutch situations because they had so many games that were tight in the last five minutes. Right. I want to say that he had, I, I don't, I, you know, that stat yeah, is what you. it is, but yeah. um, I know that a couple weeks, as of a couple weeks ago, the Warriors had played so many more clutch games than a lot of the other teams. Well, so that helps them. Like, no, like, the Denver Nuggets are probably never going to have the most clutch player in the league because right. there's too many games where they're up 10 with five minutes wow. to go. I hadn't thought of uh, that. Let's go to Big D. Big D's in the hospital. What's up, Big D? How you doing, man? You want to talk about hey. Steve Kerr? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not a Steve Kerr hater, man. He's doing a good job. You know, he's got the rings to prove it. You know what I mean? And he's got to put up with a bunch of crap, especially from, uh, you know, Mr. Draymond. Yeah. But uh, I want to let you guys know, man, I locked it in on that Lakers game. Eight points. There you go. Tonight, hey, tonight I'm taking Portland, though. The point spread's a little too high. You what know, is and, it? Uh, uh, I was just telling Stoney, what is like it? like 13, 14 or something like that. It might not be no Clay or Dre. Oh, that's why you're taking hey, Portland. I'm going to be yeah. new interpreter. <laughs> wow. Who I'm, got a winner. A... <laughs> I'm a winner. Turn off your loser. notifications, <laughs> buddy. Yeah. Oh, man. Appreciate the call. Uh, Clay Thompson and Draymond Green both questionable tonight for the Warriors at Portland. Three more games left. They're at Portland, and then they're home against the Pelicans, and then the they're one. home against the uh, uh, G Jazz. League Ignite, there you, I believe. Don't do the G is League. Is who they end the season with. They end Utah? the season with Utah, who's 3-26. and 26. The fighting Will Hardys? Man. Man, that, you're right. What? I like Will Hardy, too. At least post-game, he's funny. Well, it's because there's nothing at stake. Exactly. Got to laugh mean, at the pain. Could you imagine? Like, this is the Danny Ainge is like Nahegian on a day where Nahegian says, Hey, you don't, even, don't even worry about the show. Don't worry about the raid. Don't even worry about talking sports. And not oh, only that, oh I'm not just talking about today. I'm talking about for the next three months. Just go in there and just mail it in. Uh, you guys can have a lot of days off and just go out and just try. Because we're going to lose, but just try. Sounds like the pregame show, Monday through Friday, 5 to Link 6. Is start, I don't know about that. Morning. Well, he doesn't listen. It's all right. Can I ask you another random? This is a football question, OJ. Sure. Stani, who's your favorite running back of all time? Earl Campbell. Damn, look at my 34. I'm not releasing even, my top 10 before we get out of here. Not even backs. close. He was my favorite. I'm not Earl saying he's Campbell. the best. But he's in my top 10. To no, me. Don't even get Stani started about the Reggie Bush v. Earl Campbell College day conversation. He well, hold on. I'm just, I'm, I'm just Reggie saying Reggie was this. incredible. To me, Earl Campbell in his prime was the best running back I've ever seen. Now, that's amazing. That's all. <laughs> he was just incredible. Who would fight you on that? Yeah, not somebody, too many. Somebody <laughs> well in the text line in about two seconds, no, probably. Not too many. You shocked uh, me with Earl. Uh, 650, did that, curl, did that caller just say Steve Kerr isn't a good coach? Uh, he kind of said, hey, yeah. he didn't think he's that great of a coach. Yeah. I guess that's... that's uh, where we are. O.J. Simpson passes. That's why Guru asked me my favorite running back. 76 Man. years old, died of cancer. And uh, R.I.P. The uh, the Giants beat the Nationals 7-1 yesterday. You didn't want to get swept by them. Yeah. I went and watched the rest of that game after the show yesterday. Boy, they needed a win. No. <laughs> there you go. The Giants. That's uh, the, the Giants rider in you. They needed, needed to win. win. No doubt. Absolutely. 888-957-9570 is the number. Uh, messing around a little bit. Challenging some of the uh, Steve Kerr critics out there. Tiger's got a and little gut, Snarney. Does he? Yep. And nice. uh, just challenging some of the Steve Kerr critics this year. And wondering so, uh, kind of where you're at right now yeah. with, with Steve Kerr. He's got this team... 25 and 11 over the last 36. Do you think this team, every, 
first of all, do you think this team is better than last year, even though they're going to go into the playoffs from a, a less advantageous position? <sighs> Man. Well, the play-in. No I mean, the play-in ain't the playoffs. I mean, the the one thing is, is I mean, if, if Steve Kerr says we're better now than we were last year, who am I to say he's wrong? By the same token, last year's team was able to win a seven-game series against a three-seed. Yeah. And maybe it was matchup-based. I'm sure that had something to do with it. Maybe there was an experience issue because the Kings had never been there before. But say what you want, last year's team, last year's team won a seven-game series. Can they win a seven-game series this year? Because I'll tell you right now, whoever they play is going to be better than the Kings were last year. Mm. I don't care if it's Oklahoma City. I don't care if it's Minnesota. I don't care if it's Denver. So how do you put that all into the big picture of where this team was last year, where they are this year, and maybe even where they're where they're going next year? It's Is it all just do how they finish? No, well, with the infusion of the young guys, it's bigger than how they finish to me because you got something for the future. And we just talked about and sung the praises, and rightfully so, uh, Dunleavy. You got two guys, Pods and TJD, if the future is your thing and you're into that, that are going to make the all-rookie team. So just let that marinate moving forward. And now you got Jonathan Kaminga. On the cusp is maybe being a superstar. Uh, I'll just throw out all star. Why well, he's taking? I don't the, know about that now. Now that I just is don't. that a rat on the table or they got a? Why well, could think that a, constitute whatever? I just, don't think. Let's just close. say the Warriors didn't even make the. You can't even cite what happens in the postseason. I wonder amongst and in the building over there how much they know they got to break these two apart or they got to choose. Well, I just, I mean, look. Because that's a big you, deal then if you got to choose. You can't be a 10th seed and have two All-Stars. And Steph's got to be an All-Star. Oh, yeah, there's no doubt. I mean. I, I got that. I, I don't know that. I mean. Wiggins was just an All-Star a couple years ago. Voted in. Well, <laughs> boy. Voted in by the fans of. He was at the gays, Donnie. Of whoever yeah. that guy. Who was that guy? Anybody remember that guy? The guy who got Wiggins. Into the All Star game, the TikTok See, that, dude. Don't don't from say that's Asia. what got him in. Though. It is what got him in. Was he a K-pop star? That's right. Yes, he was. So he picked Andrew Wiggins and got him in. How else does Andrew Wiggins get more votes than another NBA player? K-pop star Bam Bam. There it is. Bam Bam. So again, Bam Bam Bigelow. Wow. What do you know about Bam Bam Bigelow? Oh come on, R.I.P. First of all, WWF legend. 888-957-9570 is the number. Warriors Portland tonight, and the uh, play-in is just around the corner. Uh, Steve Kerr was on with the uh, morning show, or not morning show, he was on with Willard and Dibbs yesterday, had a lot to say, and I'm just wondering, they've won 8 of 9, they're 25 and 11. I got a buddy, Harry, Harry. who spends a lot of time criticizing Steve Kerr, and one of the things he said lately is, oh, Steve Kerr's finally doing the things that I wanted him to do, and now he's coaching well. How do you feel? 888-957-9570. That segment sponsored by Alameda County Probation Department. Want a career with purpose, great pay, outstanding benefits, and a promising future?
This is Tim Roy, and you're listening to Steiny and Guru on 95.7 The Game. What's up? I just try to come in here and be myself every day with all my imperfections. You have some, too. And I love you. My boy Tone just texted me. He's upset that I did. How do you not know they didn't call the Bills Old Line Electric Company? I'm 50. I have three kids. That was embarrassing. I forgot. Maybe I heard it. I forgot. I'm being real. It was also 50 years ago. That ain't cool. It's the early 70s, right? What what year did OJ go for 2000? 72? 73? Something like that. That is a tight one. Man, the electric company. Jose Canseco on 73. Twitter. 73. Yeah. What's that? Jose Canseco on Twitter. Did you see that? No. OJ Simpson is a murderer. His death should not be glorified. I think he speaks for a lot of people. Yep. A lot of people. Um, now take the couple, needle out your ass. The uh, the nine two five. I'm sorry, guys. He, See, this is, he shouldn't be saying that. Go ahead. Stay maybe instead on. of saying no, it's a good point. I should. Trace Jackson Davis should have been starting from day one. Shut up. <laughs> Shut who up. Trying, who was trying to own that though? Now you're trying to get to. Come on, you guys. Now. Have no from the clue. Game. About because you ain't called us with that. Steve Kerr would probably say he wasn't ready from day one. He's better now for not having played right off the bat. How did how'd that suit Wiseman? No. And I get it. Completely he different players. Four, yeah, I got you. But you're assuming that Trace Jackson Davis is the same player now that he was at the beginning of the year. There's no chance he's the same player. There's no way you can come on to the Golden State Warriors and, as a second-round pick, establish yourself as the starting center from the first day of training camp. Especially with Looney still there. Especially if you have a coach with a reputation of giving veterans the benefit of the doubt. Right. Like, I guess that's what I'm saying. If, if you really... If you don't like that Steve Kerr has given veterans the benefit of the doubt for the entire dynasty, then you really don't want him as the coach at all. Oh, wow. Because, like, that's his makeup. That's who he is. Um, Stein, and in, I guess we're getting a couple of these. Yeah. And we're just talking about Steve Curry. He was on with Willard and Dibbs yesterday talking about what's changed for this team. A 6-5-0, Steiny. Come on now. Kerr is a C-plus, and you know it. My inner Steiny says C is a passing grade. If you look at how well Kerr has managed the youthful J.K. and Moody have had to make public comments before they get run. Concurrently, while Pods is starting, Kerr did not handle the next generation well, but we were in uh, the offseason. That's a C. Mm -hmm. If we get to the finals, it's an A. Second round, B. I don't... I'm well, sure just, we already know the grades. Right. No more tests. Well, I mean, certainly if they run the table, the, the grade would go up, I would think. But... Okay, let's talk about Jonathan Kaminga. First of all, let's build it off Anthony Slater, who was on with the morning show. I had Steph in transition. And Steph Not that. Oh, the dude, I love that, though. I would say the season term when Draymond returned from suspension. And, and yes, he went small ball center for most of it. Now they've kind of flipped that, and he's not doing that as much. But they're, what, like 25 and 11 in the last 36? Yep. I think that's primarily since Draymond's been back and. Um, I think it is. I think what we most learned is that when this team is whole, with Draymond Green is on the court uh, and able uh, and, and eligible, they're a good team. You know, they're a four or five type seed. Yeah. So that's mm -hmm. like the biggest key for them. Not only health, but like Draymond Green's eligibility. Man, but that comes with a that comes with an accompaniment. With a what? Accompaniment. It comes with something to accompany it, and that is. Kaminga doesn't have the role that he had before. Is that like a, ca a caveat? Is Accompaniment? Is? A ca I've never heard that word before. Dude, that, I'm sitting there with my boy. Son maybe, of an English teacher. May, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I use the word that no. there's, there's oh. something that accompanies that, and that is when Draymond came back, Kaminga took a lesser role over time. So you're saying J.K. broke out when, when well, Dre well, was well, every, suspended? Well, everybody out there who's saying he did, he's messed up Jonathan Kaminga, 
You can't say that now. Okay, well, if he's met, then just put, why doesn't he just put Kaminga back in the starting lineup? Why? Because it's not the best move for the team. So I would, I would make the case, I could make the case that in a way, Kerr, I don't want to say bent over backwards, but I could make the case that Steve Kerr this year, more than any other year, tried to shoehorn Jonathan Kaminga into things where he wouldn't have done it before. And over the course of the season, what they found was that they are a little bit better when Wiggins is not on the floor with Kaminga, but Wiggins is on the floor. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, he would just start Jonathan Kaminga and play Jonathan Kaminga 30 minutes a night. But he's at 21, he's not a better defender on a good day than Andrew Wiggins, right, Stoney? And, and I don't ha- think he grasped the concept. Getting lost, you mentioned it yesterday, you're not the only one. Uh, on the defensive side. So I, I understand why Wiggins, when he's playing well, would be would come before Jonathan Kaminga. Because he's my, better. When he's okay. when both are good, no doubt Wiggins is a better all around player. But for me, my dream would be damn, could both of them coexist? I don't think against the Denver Nuggets and I think, they're gonna be able to coexist. There's and I think that's why we're watching what's happening right now. Listen. Like, you guys that want Kaminga to be a finished product right now, you don't mm. get it. I mean, you don't. He comes in as a rookie with no experience. He doesn't play. Last year, he played very little in the postseason. They had uh, 13 games in the postseason. He didn't play a lot. Okay, you know what You know what this year should be for Kaminga in his third year? He ain't going to be your second best player and you make a run. It, that's not going to happen. You know what he's got to do this year? He's got to come off the bench and be a wild card. And he's got to help him win games starting with playing 20 minutes a night, probably. That's like that's going to be his role. He's going to get 20 minutes a night at least, you would figure, from here on out. It, can he play well enough to pump to 32, 34? I was thinking 25. Mm. And the, the issue then becomes... Can Kaminga play so well that you can play him alongside Wiggins and you can actually beat good teams consistently? Like, that's something that, that to me, is, is a little ways Man. off. It, it just is. You, you're, you're asking a 21-year-old to go into the postseason. You might have to play the defending champions. I mean, I can't, he's not going to be the best player and you're going to beat the, the, the Nuggets. And I'm not, again, I've been the guy who's been saying all year, you've got to get these veterans help. They can't play third. So I'm not saying Kaminga should dry up on a vine and not play. But unfortunately for him, Warriors have played their best basketball of the year when he hasn't had as big a role as he had earlier in the year. So now it's up to Jonathan Kaminga to do more with less playing time. Yeah, it's the only way the Warriors are going to be successful, yeah. I think, in the postseason. Let me ask you this, because I'm as positive on this team as I've, I've ever been. But, Stan, I'm being real with this question because I can't stop thinking about it. And I'm not set tripping, trying to divide. But do you think, because Jonathan was rolling, do you think had he not got hurt, and it's not too far ago, that he would be out of the starting lineup? I don't know. That's I like, don't know. What would no, they, I think know, about they, his mindset. What, they, like, what did they go when Kaminga didn't play? Did he miss five or were, six f- games? They were five. And, they lost one game, and that was to Minnesota, I believe. So four and one, or five and one, or was he out? He was out there for the Minnesota. Well, game. he played the out. first game against Miami. Then they won. Then they won. They won every game on that trip because I they? was all worried. No, I think Kaminga. he played against. Didn't he play against Dallas and they lost? But. Yeah, he played against w- Dallas. W- whatever. Yeah. Um, no, I just, it's interesting. So if Steve Kerr finds something with Wiggins, but Kaminga's got to take a lesser role, it sounds to me like a lot of fans are going to hold it against him for putting the team first. Yeah. Like that's the one the one thing I've always sensed with Kaminga and the fans is a lack of understanding that it's hard to play a 21-year-old and be a title contender. It just is. Especially if you want that 21-year-old to be 
a 20-point-per-game score. Well, that's about to be put to the ultimate test, right? When you're playing basketball, the most important of the year, win or go home. Exactly. So we're about to find out. Exactly. Uh, Marillo is – nobody say, Nobody is saying Grandy. that Kaminga shouldn't have a role moving forward. Now, nobody. who would think we're say, – What I'm saying, saying is – if Andrew Wiggins is playing 30 minutes a night, can Kaminga find a way to play 25 or 30, knowing that he's going to overlap with Wiggins for a stretch, 8 or 10 or 12 minutes? Now, will you fight me on, I think that can fluctuate if six minutes? Sure. Because I believe we can tell a Kerr knows when Wiggins may have it or may not have it. Let's just say it gets too quick foul. Like, I think Kaminga could then, yeah, it came off the bench, but if I got it going, we know when he has it going, Stani. I think that could be 29, 30 minutes. I mean, the, the, the question that nobody wants to answer is, can Kaminga be at his best where he goes ha-ha and he does all the yeah. things everybody likes, but it's in the context of the Warriors' offense as a whole? Wiggins can do that. More All seamlessly long, yeah. than Kaminga. I would say right now we haven't seen Kaminga master that. Well, and and one of the reasons is because he's so young, it's going to take him time. It's just you can't speed this up. And the other thing about Kaminga that, that I feel is when he plays and he's on the floor, you kind of have to make sure that wow, he's man. getting his touches and he's got to feed staying him. involved and that he, he gets his isolation touches. Grandy, we can jump in. The other thing I was going to say yeah. is if you're looking at the offseason and how the team can maybe try and improve, if you're looking ahead to the offseason, man, oh man. Uh, I mean, maybe you're convinced that this is the Wiggins you're going to get man. moving forward. Grandy. Who is your individual ticket a player Jonathan that's on your current Kaminga. roster to get better. Man, in the and offseason. it's a big I'm it's going not James Wiggins, Wiseman. that's for sure. It's a big ticket. I mean, Kaminga will fetch you a lot. Even if you're enhanced, I'm just, I don't want to, hey, it's the eve of the playoffs. They're getting ready for the play-in. But let's be real and put the right on the table, Stani. Kaminga and his future could fetch you a lot. If you decided what Grandy just said. And, you know, like, I man. Mean, I, I wonder, actually. I think, I think Kaminga would be a great uh, foundation for a deal. But I think to move, if you're moving Kaminga, you're going to try to get a, a player who's more established yes, and sir. better right now. No doubt. Well, then that would have me thinking there's probably going to be draft picks that would have to go along with Kaminga and maybe even another player, and that's when I get worried. And that's where I'm not, nobody, I'm not, I'm not getting into uh, moving Kaminga in the off season. Yeah, because we got we got to see how you're going to need them. Things things shake out. Things shake out this year. Who's a better player, Kaminga or Trace Jackson Davis? Uh, Kaminga. Yeah, but who's when are the Warriors at their best? When Trace Jackson Davis starts at center, he starts at center. The Warriors are better, but the league Kaminga has a, is a position of victim. The I mean, a victim of position. When you say that, Stoney, mm -hmm. I get what you're saying. But as far as, I mean, you know, they don't play the same position. They do different things. But right, but they're a better team. Yeah. with Trace Jackson Davis, he's at changed center everything, right man. He's changed it all. So, to me, you know, this this is all to me. And maybe it's not fair to Kaminga because he got hurt. But whether you like it or not, it's Something Kaminga's happened. responsibility now to figure it out as a sixth man. Mm -hmm. uh, Marillo is in uh, Petaluma. Hey, Marillo, how you doing? Gentlemen. Hey, guys. I'm doing well. It's 77 in Petaluma. How oh, nice. How can you complain? You know, it's yeah. gorgeous. Um, okay, I'm going to try to touch quickly in the subject to hand. I think... Kaminga, I can see a good role for him off the bench. Sure. You know Bruce Brown, Bruce Brown with the Denver Nuggets. I think he was really useful because he was flexible in terms of the lineups he could play with because he's a good ball pressure and a, a put pressure in the rim, uh, trying to score in that uh, in the post. So I think he could could be useful in that in that role. Uh, the development thing pointing out to Kerr is just absurd. Guys, these franchises have dozens of coaches now. It's far from his main responsibility, the development of players. These players either come ready to play a very different brand of basketball, which is the NBA, or they don't. And we're just seeing Trace Jackson Davis, and I'm going to transition to my point here. He is the key. 
because not only he helps Dre on the defense, Draymond is at his best on that weak side coordinating the guys, right? If you put him as the main guy, he has to do too much, and then he has to protect the rim from penetration. That's too much. I think Trace Jackson Davis helps. He can interchange with Draymond. They, he can play right. both the four and the no five. No doubt. And he can screen with everyone. Mm. There, there's no player that he's not able to screen with. And one thing that I've, it caught my attention in the past few games is he's been calling plays. He's been calling screens for the shooter. He already knows where the ball has to go. So I think he's the key for, for what's happening. And I think Kaminga could use Chris Paul a lot on that bench row, playing 20, 25 minutes. I don't see any problem with yeah. that. Thank you, guys. I hope you enjoyed the weekend. It's going to be gorgeous. Yes, Appreciate it. it. Appreciate the call. I have a, good, a lot of good uh, stuff. You know your what? boy can screen with the best of them, Stein. The screen and roll. I mean, he's got it down. Talking about TJD. Trace Jackson Davis played 126 games at Indiana. 126 games at Indiana. Just, and I know they don't play the mm. same position, but if you want to know why Trace Jackson Davis is playing right now, that is a big, big reason why. He played for a pro coach at Indiana and Mike Woodson. I just for wonder four why he got drafted years. so low. Yeah. Uh, Bobby's in Los Altos. What's up, Bobby? Bobby. How you doing, man? Hey, fellas, thanks for taking the call. Sure. Um, listen, regardless of whether Kaminga starts or not, uh, Jonathan Kaminga would not be a foolish to complain about whether he is a starter or a bench player this late in the season as, as the team is fighting for their, you know, playoff chances. And I know, uh, Koo, you always talk about availability is the best ability, but I would say for Andrew Wiggins, uh, his best ability is an engaged player, and right now he seems to be engaged. Why would anyone risk trying to, to uh, you know, uh, what is it called, uh, mix things up if he seems to be engaged right now? The thing that I'm more worried about, whether regardless of who yeah. starts or who doesn't, is the fact is that uh, it hurt me a little bit that the, uh, the Nuggets won last night over the T-Wolves because, you know, unless we can get into the eighth seed, I think, uh, excuse me, eighth place or whatever you want to call yeah. it so we could potentially be uh, seventh place uh we're going to be stuck as the eighth seed and and right now it looks like we're going to play denver of all the teams that i feel like uh we could beat every team except denver because you know it's not like okc has they've never been there really and minnesota's compromised i just really wish we could get the seventh seed and avoid denver and right. if we did i really think we can make some uh, miami heat noise but the fact is, even if we get the eighth seed, we're kind of stuck playing against uh, Denver, and right. that's what makes me kind of sad. So, uh, you know, Jonathan Kamingo, let's not worry about that. He'll be fine. He will not complain. You do not no, want no. to. It... Go ahead, Bobby. Yeah. Up to the fans at this point. Yeah, Bobby, I, and let, let me Just make can it he clear. master the role of now being the sixth man and reduce minutes? Let, let me be. It's, this has absolutely not. I. Jonathan Kaminga is not going to pout, and if he does, then then he pouts. But that's not my that's not my worry. My my worry as a Warrior fan would be, you've got to find a way to get productivity in the same game out of Kaminga and Wiggins. Otherwise, I don't think you're going anywhere. So, how do you get production out of both of them? And can you get maximum production out of both of them if they overlap? And if they overlap, how much? Like, I, I do think there's a possibility that we'll see them together. I, how much? I mean, how much will we see them together? That's that's the big question I have. Because, I like, I do think if you just want to start from there's 48 minutes in a game. If Wiggins is, if you have, and again, this is not me saying it. This is Steve Kerr saying halfway through the season that Wiggins and Kaminga do a lot of the same things and there's redundancy there. All right? That doesn't mean they can't play together, but I think what it means is you can't be at your best with them playing together for long stretches. Of course you can overlap them for, you know, three to five minutes here and there. So I look at it now, there's 48 minutes. If, if Wiggins is going to play 32... Okay, that leaves 16 for Kaminga. Well, that's not going to be enough for Kaminga for a lot of people. Okay, well, then it's up to Kaminga to figure out a way to get six to eight more minutes with Wiggins on the floor. 
But does that hurt you to a degree in the postseason where you can't afford to do it? To me, that's one of the biggest things I'm going to be looking for from this point on. I think one of the other factors is if you're convinced that the Warriors are in love with Trace Jackson Davis and they feel like he's a, a legitimate yeah. piece for them in the future, I don't know what that means necessarily for Kaminga's future, but you, you can't really play Kaminga, Draymond, and Trace Jackson Davis together because there's no shooting there for three of your five guys on the floor. Yeah. Lincoln's got one more year left, though, right? Two. I thought one more after next year. Two more after this year. Mm. The most... Oh, it's thought, Wiggins uh, and Draymond Green who two. are the most... Uh, Senior? Well, they've got Senior. the longest contracts yeah. uh, up until this point. Or up until well, this yeah, point. they're going to... I know today's not the day, but yeah, you and Grandy are on it. I mean, here's the other thing. And Some, I, we, we, can get it, we can get into it uh, also. It's... Look, the Warriors have found some... Commi- uh, Wiggins is playing well. So how do we feel about Wiggins? I mean, he was a guy that a month ago... Everybody was just figuring, you know, he's a guy we got to lose. Well, we got to well, lose hoping, Wiggins. Yeah, now look. Well, now what do you do with Wiggins? And what do you do with Kaminga? And that, like that is the that is such a big part of this end of the season. Is what if you know what if you find what if you strike something there? What if you like you know what they can play together in the right circumstances? Well, then maybe you don't have any decisions yeah. to make. But again. That's about to be tested. Again, you just have to read the writing on the wall that Steve Kerr has put up there, and it is Jonathan Kaminga is not going back into the starting lineup after he was a starter, and he got hurt. And the only reason that Steve Kerr would do that is he thinks they're better with with that situation. So let's watch and see what happens in, in the next three games in the postseason. That, that to me, is the, is the part that's going to be one of the parts that's going to be really fun to watch. I can't I can't wait to see Pajemski and Trace Jackson Davis if they get into a seven-game series. Uh, 888-957-9570 is the number. Uh, 831, but how long will Wiggins give effort? No doubt. It's a like, great question. Like I think Kaminga still, <laughs> he could turn his 18 minutes or however many you dubbed for him, Stoney, he could turn that into 30, especially if Wiggins is not. I mean, maybe, bringing it or not having it or kind of just, you know, going through the motions. I mean, maybe that that's the other thing. If, if Steve Kerr doesn't feel comfortable playing both those guys together, he'll start with Wiggins. Yeah. And if Wiggins is playing well, Kaminga won't get as much playing time. And that sounds like coaching. If Wiggins is not playing well, maybe you go to Kaminga more. I, I want to see whether it's mostly one or the other or whether they play together 12 minutes or more a night. Th- that to me is yeah. is going to be very interesting to watch. 888-957-9570. We can put it that way. What are you going to look for as the last 3 games? What's the most interesting part of the last 3 games, the play in and ideally a first round series against a really good team? What are the thing what 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 are you most excited about? What are you most curious about? What are you quote unquote looking for? 888-957-9570 is the number. That segment brought to you by Fremont Bank. Full service banking, no compromises. I'm a waitress, so I know the difference between regular shoes and Skechers slip-resistant work shoes. Skechers slip-resistant work shoes make my job go like this. Here's your pasta primavera. Thanks. While regular shoes make my job
Now, back to Steiny and Guru on 95.7 The Game. No, I think it's a big stretch coming up for Kaminga. I do. Starts tonight. I, I think he could... Part of it's not fair. I guess. And you could say his injury came at a, the most inopportune time for him. Exactly. Yeah. But... He's got to deal with he's got to deal with the circumstances. They were five and one without Kaminga uh, when he got hurt. The only game they lost was to Dallas. Joel's in Berkeley wants to talk about it. Hey Joel, what's going on, man? Hey man, I tried to call in yesterday, but I got uh, I got dropped. Anyway, um, yeah, I think uh, Kaminga and Wiggins can work together, and I think the optimum time is is when when their rim protector either sits or gets in foul trouble. And I think both Wiggins and Kaminga have the ability to get their rim protector in foul trouble. But once he's sitting and there's nobody in there, I would put Draymond for the lob, two shooters, and those two guys, and have them just crushing the rim. And just from both sides, maybe learn to lob it to each other. I don't know. But those two guys crushing the rim without their rim protector in or getting him in foul trouble and getting him out of the way – and then a couple of good lobbers and some shooters to keep them honest, I think we're good to go. I think we can beat Minnesota. And if you could get Jokic in foul trouble, you could beat Denver. Let me, let me throw this at you, Joel, just, just for kicks. Let's say it's game one against the Denver Nuggets, and you're in a tie game, and it's the last possession. And they've taken Curry out of the play. And all you got is an isolation play. You got to put the ball in a guy's hands. You putting it in Kaminga's hands or you putting it in Wiggins' hands to get you a bucket right now? Are those my only two choices? Yep. Well, damn. Well, they're the best isolation players. Uh, they are their best bailout are. isolation players. You know, I I, I got to say, I think I'd like, I'd, like, I'd like to have it in Podzimski's hands. But, um, oh, uh well, See, I think, truth, Pajemski, I, I think Pajemski could make a mistake. It's not I think, even close. It's Wiggins to me, guys. And I love Kaminga. Okay. Like, I just Wiggins. And well, I ain't mad at Pods, but it's Wiggins. But it's Wiggins. No, but I'm this not week. saying Pods hits yeah. the bucket. Pods, Pods drives the lane. Yeah, he does. Creates lanes. And both Kaminga and Wiggins will be open for for uh, an easy bucket. I think Pajemski is, is the sneaky little playmaker that is, you know. I don't know. He, he doesn't have any magnetism. He doesn't draw anybody's attention. But, man, he should. <laughs> the only thing I'd say about Pajemski, and this is a hypothetical, I think Kamingo will get a shot, and thanks a lot for the call, Joel. I think Kamingo will get you a shot. He said Pods. I think Wiggins will get you a shot. Pods may turn it over. But Wiggins has that midi more so than Kaminga. Like, you know, he's got it, he's got you, it down. But no, okay. And yeah. I, I'm not saying, just, I don't know. Oh, my gosh. I just pictured him at the okay. top of the key well, right now. Okay, if I asked you a month ago, the answer's different. The answer's different if I asked you six weeks ago. It's Kaminga. Well, because well, Wiggins I'm being was honest with you. Well, you know what? Now, if you put that in there, you got me. But I've always, and I love like, both, but you know, I've been the captain of the Andrew Wiggins fan club, but it's always been predicated on. What Wiggins are we going to get? But as far as um, what's in his tool belt, Wiggins has got, you know, okay. more polished. And all I'm telling you is if you take the entire season, there was a big chunk of this season uh, I, well, where no. people said Kaminga's now our second best player. No doubt about it. I'm just saying. I, like, I, I, I back This up is on why that. it's not easy. And this is something Steve Kerr's going to have to figure but, but out. But don't you think we have somewhat of an indication of which way they're going to go? Yeah, right like now. It, yeah, because yeah, they played better without uh -huh. Kaminga in the starting lineup, at least. Uh, Mike's in Oakland. Hey, Mike, what's going on? Hey, fellas. Thank you for having me today, sure. man. Great conversation as usual, man. You guys Big really got to... You guys have the best show. I'll just be honest. I listen to everybody, but you guys have the best show. Appreciate it. With that being said, you're welcome. With Kaminga, Kaminga was starting to slip to me when he got hurt. He mm -hmm. was start. He was missing. He wasn't getting those twenty games like he was getting at first. So if you're not going to score, then you got a rebound. Then you got he, with his athleticism, Kaminga should be blocking two or three shots a game, in my opinion. Because uh, uh, if you if you got hops, you should be able to block shots. 
So those are important things that, you know, as a player, he has to learn and not get lost. Appreciate so, the I mean, yeah. that, that's all I got on Kaminga. Yeah. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, and you, what are you, I, I love you for doing this, Donnie. It's no shade, but Kaminga, you'll catch him uh, trying to go the other way or leak out a little bit, you know? As far as, you know, get in there and get, you know, you got all the gifts to get eight rebounds a game, so you might leak out, but that that's a choice. But he's kind of figured it out. He had six games, I believe, his last game against Utah. But, Stani, as far as the uh, which way they're going, I, I feel like they, what you said, they found something, but it can change. And we know Wiggins is like turning the TV channel. If you get the Wiggins, it's just the K-Wig. Jonathan Kaminga can benefit from that if he's on, and I could see games to where we look at the box score guys, and it's finally said and done where Kaminga has more has played more minutes than Wiggins. But if this Wiggins is consistent and it's the 2022 Wiggins, then J.K. I'm going too short. It's going to have to get in where he fits in and make the most of the 18 or 20 or however minutes he plays. And I guess that's where and that's scary for me for him. Well, with with. What I don't think is good enough is you start Wiggins and he doesn't play well. And now you bring in Kaminga and you rely on Kaminga. But I, I think they both have to play well. And for the most part, that's been a struggle for both of them when they're playing together. I'm looking at Kaminga's. So he, he played against the Miami Heat and then he got hurt for six games. Yeah. Uh, against the Miami Heat, he had uh, 18 and 7. He was 8 for 13 from the floor. They won by 21. Against the Minnesota Timberwolves, they lost by 4. That was a close game. Uh, he played 30 minutes. He had 14 and 3 in 30 minutes. Uh, Indiana, that home Friday night when they, they were blown out in the second half. That was when he was four for seventeen. So he had a he had a bad shooting night. Mm-hmm. But the game before that against Memphis, he was twelve for seventeen, and he had twenty six. Um, but he got hurt, and they beat Orlando. He stayed hurt, and they beat Charlotte. Then they beat San Antonio. Then they beat Dallas and Houston. He didn't dress against the Mavericks. They lost, so they were five and one with him. So what do you, what do you make of all that? This is a couple interesting Give it to texts him. here from the Xfinity Mobile text line. Uh, where is Clay Thompson in this conversation? Well, I kind of specifically said, you know, there's five or six on the shot clock and somebody's got to make something happen. I don't want Clay with the ball in that situation. If if it can't be Steph, to me, it's got to be Wiggins or Kaminga in that situation. Just somebody's got to get a shot off. Yeah. No, um, I love it. <laughs> uh, Bernard's in Dublin. Hey, uh, Bernard, how you doing, man? Hey, how you guys doing? Doing well. Hey, hey I want to agree with the the caller. He kind of stole my thunder, but not really. We just think, kind of thinking the same way as far as uh, Kaminga got a rebound. Yeah, I think uh, I forget what the coach. I think Jerry Sloan said that's the opportunity to compete, right? And if be selfish. Complain, not complaining, yeah. but if you want more shots, yeah, you you rebound, and he's so fast, he can rebound, and he can start to break, and he'll get he'll get shots like that, and he's inconsistent, so. If he focuses on rebounding, he'll get more. He'll get more touches. Um, another thing, um, you guys do got the best show, man. It's just something y'all y'all talk serious and you make people laugh. And Guru, I've been listening to you since you used to call in to Pete Franklin and Stani. I used to read a lot of your articles, man. So uh, just, just 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 keep up the good work. Um, y'all hard work is paying off, man. So just, know, just keep man. up the good work. But Kaminga has to rebound. Yeah. And I think everything else will fall fall in place. Because to me, it's amazing how small they are, and they are the leading rebounding team in the league. So that wow. tells you that they play hard. Yeah, they do. So um, I'm looking forward to them making the whatever AC seven C. I think they're gonna give anybody a run for their money. Man, thanks for the call, Bernard. Appreciate it. Thanks for the kind words. I don't think we talked about that all season long, Stoney. Just that? how good of a rebounding. There's all kind of extenuating circumstances to that, but this team and they just pods. They just they. Man, and Kaminga has to join the party. But I know he has to be feeling like Guru. I checked off all the lists. Your ass. Everybody saw. I checked all the boxes. I get hurt. Now you're telling me to get back on the court. I got a rebound? <laughs> you know, like I could. That's the shift, but it's his mentality. He's just got to take advantage of it. Uh, play smart, play hard. And 
Maybe it's not just Wiggins who's in his way in regard to more minutes, but, you know, out the gate, that's the one you would think. But this is going to be interesting, man. I kind of feel like whoever's got it going, Steiny, will be out there. Well, and I kind of I kind of feel like they both need to somehow get it going. They wow. both need to be good. That I mean, if you're if we're talking I don't even care if we're talking Minnesota, Denver, or Oklahoma City. You got to have both those guys Man. engaged and both I those need guys them on the court positive. together. That's just me, Grant. You guys uh Gosh. the head coach of the Philadelphia Flyers, John Tortorella. Yeah. One of my favorites. He was asked about this guy on the power play. Why don't Why don't you use this guy on the power play? And he just said he he stinks. What do you mean? He just, I love the guy, but he just stinks on the power play. He just I don't know. He just he stinks. Why he does to he go stink? Too, he tries to move too fast. <laughs> he tries to make too much happen. I, I I love the kid, but he stinks. For the people out there that don't know what a power play is in NHL hockey, it's when one of the uh, other teams has a guy in the box, so you got more on the ice than the other. And they call it the power play. And what I'm getting at is... <laughs> the kid good job, Goo. Maybe you did a great job explaining that. <laughs> maybe Kaminga just can't rebound and get on the break. Maybe he just can't. He can't do both. He has not proven wow. he can do both. And for and this is where I always say for anybody out there, I'm not Pods saying... Because Pods can. That's why he plays. <laughs> I see him That's why Pods plays. Hey, freak, because when board, Wiggins... Give it up, I'm out. If it's Wiggins and Kaminga and Draymond Green who's an average rebounder for his size, you've got to have somebody who can rebound. Wow. That's why Podjemski was playing. It's because when you play Wiggins together with Kaminga, they don't rebound. Not, oh, man. So something's got to change. Or they are going to be looking at some kind of void when the when the two of them play together. Like, it's to me, it's not a That's secret. Crazy. And I'm not... Yeah. Yeah, I remember when, Clay, remember when Barkley said Clay Thompson and Steph couldn't play together? Before they won ever ever won any rings, I'm not saying they can't. Of course, they can play together. It's about being the best team you can possibly be, and the Golden State Warriors' offense is based on what passing and player movement, yeah. and that's not the strengths of Kaminga and Wiggins. It just isn't. So when you have both those guys on the floor, it gets sticky, and that's not the way the Warriors play. One guy is a little bit different if you have one guy like that. Because you can win a championship. Because you can put the ball in his hands. But Wiggins and Kaminga have got to figure out a way if they're playing together to rebound. Yeah, uh, Jimmy's in, and i tell you right now, if you're telling me the best rebounding team in the league, it ain't, it ain't when Wiggins and Kaminga are playing. Jimmy's in Marin. What's up, Jimmy? How you doing? I mean, when Kaminga hey and Wiggins hey. play is yeah. when the team looks super duper small. Mm. What's up, baby? Hey, hey, Mitch. Thank you so much for taking my call. You know, I'm I have a point about what's happening. Um, you know, your one concern about Wiggins and and you go what's the good what's the young stud? I got it. Kaminga. Kaminga. I'm sorry, got a brain. Live there, the two of them, you know, they are they are some, you know, yeah, but I think everybody just as you can see by the record lately, everybody's being swept up in the in the whole power of the playoffs, and I think right. they're on board. But my main point I want to make is, you guys, I'm dating myself because I remember the early Boston Celtics, sure, and and Steining, yeah. Steining, I'm sure you know about John Havlicek coming off the bench. But, you know, he was like a junkyard dog. He was yeah. like what Pachemski is becoming. I, I think he is like an unpolished gem because he's so driven by excellent team teamwork that he's going to just be more. He, he's almost like a loony, but with more. <laughs> yeah, hey, Jimmy, your, your, your connection's not the greatest, yeah. but you, you got your thoughts off, and we know what you're trying to say. I'm, I'm with you on Pajemski. I'm. I'll never say, oh, there's an all-star. There's a future eight-time all-star. But you cannot tell me. You cannot tell me that Pajemski doesn't have a big role in this team. He's, oh, got, he's got to. He leads in plus minus. He's got to. Uh, 925, Xfinity Mobile text line. There used to be a skill set and technique to rebounding. But nowadays, if you aren't an immobile seven-footer, they don't teach you how to fundamentally box out. And because nobody boxes out today, it comes down to effort and heart. 
man. Pods has it. Wiggins and Kaminga don't. How do you get them to change? So Mike Dunleavy saw the Santa Clara games and saw that Pods had had that. How can Pods be a better rebounder just, than either I, of those I guys? I want to throw something against. I would how? call the guys into the room and say, how? But that's more credit to him. And he's built, too. He ain't no little scrawny dude, Pods. The bottom line is, if one of the reasons Pajemski plays is because he's a guard who rebounds like a forward. Yeah, yeah. And unfortunately, sometimes, Kaminga and Wiggins rebound like guards. Yeah. Oh, it looks like you're going to no. jump in. 888-957-9570 is the number. And uh, the Warriors have three games left in the regular season. Then uh, at least one play-in game. It looks like probably two. They're going to need two wins to get to the postseason. But they've won eight and nine. And what I'm asking Warrior fans right now is what makes you optimistic going into these last few games? And can the last few games turn into last few several games? Man. And then can the last few several games turn into a couple series? What's the thing you're looking forward to seeing the most as the Warriors embark on this run? Three regular season games, at least a play-in, Maybe two, and then who knows what happens down the line. What is the one thing you're looking most forward to seeing? I'm going to shock you. Go ahead. I and I know the chef's listening. Well, they're in Portland. But uh, can he can he hit that turbo button uh, start next week? And wherever they play and whoever they play, Stani, can he just tap into it and go, you know, nuclear again like, like we're accustomed? I know uh, there's been uh, a tail off. He's tailed off, but at the end of the day, for them to to put a you know fear in Denver, whoever step the chef has to lead. No doubt, no doubt. When I think of the postseason, if the Warriors get there, and and what you know what excites me as a basketball fan, looking at the Golden State Warriors, who are right now forty four and thirty five, and whether. You think they can make a run or not? Mm-hmm. Okay, how can they make a run? What, what what what's the most exciting or what's the thing you're most curious to see? I mean, to me, we got to see how the two rookies who are in the top seven of the rotation, the Warriors are going to if they get to the playoffs, they're going to enter the postseason with two rookies in their top seven. Mm-hmm. All right, so how the rookies going to play in a seven game series? Most rookies struggle. All right, I want to know if Steph Curry can. Take it to that next level. Struggled a little bit the second half of the season. Is there excitement that Curry could find that button in Damn. the postseason oh or gosh. now? To me, it's what. how does the Wiggins-Kaminga thing shake out? The Warriors feel like they're playing their best basketball the season, and unfortunately for Kaminga, it came when he missed games, and now he's on the outside looking in. Of course, he's in the rotation, but it's, he's going to have to make an adjustment when the Warriors are playing their most important games of the year. He's going to be coming off the bench now. Okay, how's he going to handle it? And I don't necessarily mean his attitude. It's about his play. Can he, can he find a way to play great in 25 minutes if he has to, not 33 minutes? That's a big thing I'm going to be looking for. How would you answer this from Brian Banks, Donnie, about Kaminga? Why does everyone think, Donnie, we need his production so badly? Who's? Kaminga's. He's, my obvious answer is he's part of your effing team. I just think he's he, you're not going to be able, unless you have everybody clicking, you're not going to be able to beat the Denver Nuggets yeah. if that's who you get. Because everybody was clicking in L.A. the other night, even though Kerr didn't like how other stuff, but everybody was I mean. Hitting. And Kaminga struggled against the Lakers. Yeah, two of off eight. Off the bench. Yep. And, you know, if you listen to Steve Kerr, they might not win that game against a better team. He didn't love the way they played other than making threes. Uh, 888-957-9570 is the number. What's the thing you're most looking forward to down the stretch here for the Golden State Warriors? What's the thing that maybe is piquing your curiosity the most that you want to see? You want to see how it plays out. You know, I also want to kind of see Chris Paul's impact in a postseason. Uh, man, we admit, <laughs> man, this is fun. But they got to get the series. But even if they don't, we get the seven game, we get a game seven feel 
of them throwing the kitchen sink at that game for their season to continue. Yeah. 888-957-9570 is the number. Uh, let me just take you through, Goo, the, uh, the schedule, um, the way it would shake out, and it is this. So the Warriors play tonight. They play Friday, which is tomorrow, against yep. the Pelicans. Then they finish up the season Sunday. If they're a 9 or 10 seed, which is most likely at this point, they would play Wednesday. Wow. Against either the 9 or 10 seed. So it'd be either the Lakers or somebody else. Yeah. If you teams. win that game on a Wednesday, then you got to play Friday, most likely. Yep. Definitely, if you're a 9 seed, on the road. So then you'd have to go on the road on a Friday and beat who? Phoenix, New Orleans, Sacramento, yeah. somebody like that. Okay? Then you beat them. Sunday. Then you got to turn around on a Sunday and play maybe the Denver Nuggets. Yeah. So they're they're look if if everything falls into place, the Warriors are looking at six games in their next uh 12 days with their sixth game coming on day 12 against a team like the Nuggets or the, yeah. the Timberwolves or uh, maybe the Oklahoma City. But believe Thunder. you me, Stoney, they would give their right arm to get that Sunday game. No doubt. And I just hate this, but I just state facts. The Warriors are 0-2 all-time in the play-in. Lost at L.A. and then lost at home in Memphis. How yeah. much do you weigh that? How much do you weigh their home and road record this year? When, when, when they play this game on Wednesday... Let's say they play at home against the Lakers. Now, Willard asked her that yesterday, uh, I believe, and you always want to sleep in your own bed and, and get up out of bed um, at home, Stoney. So I'm going to just say, forget what happened, the 41 home dates. You got to want that game here at Chase with the Warrior crowd getting crunk and, and everybody going crazy before the game. Uh, this is what he said uh, yesterday to Willard and Tibbs about an opponent or opponents. The only focus, honestly, is is winning every game, giving ourselves the best chance to to move up. And uh, so I'm much more focused on uh, the seeding rather than the opponent. So if we can sneak into eighth, uh, and I I really don't care who we play. It's just a simple math equation. You know, get get, get two bites of the apple instead of the one. Yeah, he's talking about the play. Yeah. And he's talking about – he's not saying the eighth seed – you finish as an eight seed. He's saying if we can get to eight. Oh, the real eight. Well, the fake eight. Oh, the fact the that fake that's eight. Because right. that's what because it that, is. The fake eight. The right? fake you got two you get two losses. Right. The fake okay. eight. The gives fake you two eight. That's opportunities. Great, but what the he I guess eight. what he's saying is at that point we gotta take whoever our opponent is. Oh my is. goodness. Uh Jason's in Palo Alto. Uh what's going on, Jace? How you doing, man? I'm doing all right. Appreciate y'all taking the taking my call, man. Sure. I um I want to respond to what you said. What I'm what we're all all looking forward yeah. to. And uh, there's three things. One is uh one is Clay Thompson, man. I mean, right. it took him like six sixty games to warm up, but you know he's he's doing okay now. Yeah. And I'm you know with uh, listened to Kerr talk about this yesterday, and uh, he does seem more free. So I'm excited about that. Um. I do think uh, Wiggins has a leg up over uh, J.K. on defense. So if he, I mean, I saw him do really well and make Luca uh, uncomfortable during that when they uh, when the Davs, uh, mm-hmm. the Mavs were visiting. So I really like that. Um, it would be great if he can really step up his defensive game. And then the last thing, honestly, is this really cool dynamic between CP3, TJD, and Clay Thompson. I think I think Clay and TJD they have a great uh, two man game going on, and of course CP3 in the in the clutch moments, he's he's one of the best uh, historically with uh, um, protecting the ball. So really excited to see that. Thanks, guys. Yeah, appreciate the call. Appreciate the call. Oh, they got some rapport. Uh, speaking of Clay Thompson, I'm looking at last year. So last year, Clay played 69 games, and then he went into the postseason. And in 13 postseason games last year, Clay Clay Thompson shot 38.8 percent from the field, 36.8 percent from the foul line. Oh, the foul line. I'm sorry, the three three. Point I was okay. three point line. So he's going to need to be better. Yeah. He's going to need to be better than that this year. 
Um, he's I, hot right now, look or at, he's in a groove. I'll look at Steph Curry's numbers, too, in last year's postseason, and he's probably need he's probably going to need to be a little bit better than last year, too. Uh, 888-957-9570 is the number. Three games left in the regular season, then it's play-in time for the Golden State Warriors. What are you most curious to see as this season winds down? I see Donnie in San Jose. I see Glenn in Mountain View. I'll get to you on the other side. Anybody wants to jump in, now's the time. 888-957-9570. Don't forget, it's a Warriors game day presented by Xfinity. At home or on the go, you'll get the fastest internet to all your devices. What's coming up next is brought to you by Crystal Geyser Natural Alpine Spring Water. At Crystal Geyser, we're committed to using recycled plastic in all of our bottles. So when you enjoy our natural Alpine spring water, you're drinking.
buddy. Move. Now, back to Steiny and Guru on 95.7 The Game. Oh, from the Xfinity Mobile text line. 5-1-0. I'm looking forward to seeing the Dubs knock off Steiny's T-Wolves. Let's go. Oh, you'll be front row with your boy. You do look like twins. What if it's Denver? We don't want it to be Denver. I know you don't. You're we don't scared. want those. Positions. You're scared yeah. of Denver. No, you're supposed to say you're scared, dog. You're scared. Yeah. You're scared. It's okay to be scared of Denver. But the players aren't. I think they probably don't want Denver. Meet Denver in the Western Conference Finals, damn it. You don't want to see them right out the gate. Denver's beaten you seven straight times. Well, that's why I don't want to see Denver right but you're, now. But you're gonna Let go us, in and but you're gonna go in and beat Denver four out of seven? Uh just come on, Warrior fans. Be honest. You're hey, scared of Denver. That's fine. No, you want to win a series. Fine. You want to win another one, then get them in the Western the WCFs. Yeah. Donnie's in San Jose. What's up, Donnie? How you doing, man? much for taking my call. It's the very first time I ever got on the line. I'm hey, watching you on YouTube here. Hey, Donnie, real quick, uh, real quick, can I can yes. I preface? Because uh-uh. if, if my call screener got it correctly, you're about to say something a little bit controversial. Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know how you see it. I, it. What I see is this. What I see is that uh, I talked about Chris Paul yeah, yeah. being in this equation. Uh, we haven't thought, we don't talk about Chris Paul as much as we should in terms of the negative part of it. I know we talk about everybody else on the court, but I'll tell you when him and Clay, and, excuse me, when him and, uh, 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 Steph is on the court together, it's a bad fit. Uh, if they start or if they're on the court together, I do believe he's just as slow and he has absolutely no defense. The dribble, 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 wait to find somebody, I think is hurting the team because I do not believe he's, he's quick enough. He plays no defense, actually. Absolutely no defense. And it's a, it, it hurts when he's missing a shot. He don't get a shot off, but he'll give up a foul. And no matter what everybody else is doing, the, the, uh, his performance is actually detrimental. I take that off. Yeah, I don't want to get too deep in that. But I just believe there's something that we should really, if you're looking at the game in terms of what he does on defense, he's just out there and they're taking advantage of him. So that's what I wanted just to say. All right. Let me, oh, I got to hit on, huh, Stiney? Yeah, go ahead. I would tell my guy, and I love him, stand here in the single file line because you're the only one in it. I just, uh, Stanley, when I watch Chris Paul, he's not Jordan Poole on defense. He's not a turnstile. He's got a big butt. He's strong, low center to gravity. He plays defense, and he's always played defense. So, you know, I'm going to disagree with the caller there, but as far as him being a minus or other teams taking advantage of him, I'm not saying it's not happened, but more so than not, I, I would say you need to go get some glasses. I I tend to agree with, with me or him? Well, with the theory that, you know what, I'll I'll just apply it the same way to Curry and uh, Chris Paul as Kaminga and Wiggins. No, I don't think they're great together. But I do think what, what we're le- – and I've looked at a couple of these box scores late, which they have gotten a little skewed. But I do think we're looking at essentially Steph playing 32 minutes and Chris Paul playing – 20. Yeah. So that means they only are going to overlap you know, three to five minutes a game. But I do think the one thing that Steve Kerr thinks he's found is that he does just play. He's not playing those two guys together a lot unless somebody's out of the lineup. I get that. And because I think he knows defensively they're going to struggle. Um, the, Chris Paul hasn't been finishing lately, you know? Well, well the and. The idea of Chris Paul not fitting, I I actually do think there's something to that, but I think because he plays with the second unit most of the time. That's what we love. Like the dribble, dribble, dribble actually settles the second unit down. Dribble, 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 and then lob. Dribble, 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 lob. I mean, go, man. Uh, We love you. 5-1-0. I think if we think the Dubs gassed out in the second round last year, it might be better to play Denver in in the first round. It's an interesting theory. Maybe you steal one right off the bat because Denver's rusty, if it's Denver or any team. 
Whether it doesn't matter whether it's Minnesota or you believe they got number one seed. Who? Denver. Just stayed steady Freddie all year long and they're the number one seed. I think they're the best team no, in the league. I think you're right they've too. Been, they've been the best team. I think team they're in the, the best team in the league. Yeah. Well then I guess my question would be why are you surprised that they're the number well, one seed? I'm gonna say this to you about league. Denver, Stanley. I am a little concerned for Murray. I don't know what it is. That knee is Kind of barking right now. You're gonna, no, he'll probably be fine. I'm just like that would change them. Duh, star point guard goes out, but like what you know, it's I something mean, I'm watching. I mean, I, I, I think what every team's yeah. doing right now is getting ready for the playoffs. Wow. All right, and like if and I if, like Reggie Jackson, if, but you ain't it. <laughs> you Clay, talk about going back to back. If Clay Thompson doesn't play tonight, is anybody going to be worried oh, about no. the so called injury? Put Dre on there too. Yeah. Uh, I think they both should see it. Draymond Green, well, you better win. Well, you well, better win the game tonight. ESPN gave you 88% chance tonight. What about without Draymond and without Clay? Well, I haven't seen that one, but tomorrow only 58% against New Orleans. Um, 888-957-9570. If you want to jump into the conversation, we're talking about what you're most looking forward to. As this season winds down, there's three games left, then we got the play in, and then we'll Damn. see if we have the playoffs. Let's go. No. Uh, yeah, let me go ahead. You wanted to give me a list. Oh, no. I was going to do that in the two short segment if you wanted That's to. That's all right. Let's uh, see, we can do it now. Hey, the, uh, Grandy, my top 10 running back list of all time. Tell, what it, you tell don't, people why, why you're doing Because O.J. This. Simpson passed away today at 76 years old. And we're talking about the O.J. Simpson on the field and what he meant to me on the field and how, you know, how he got his fame. So I said, you know what? I'm going to construct my top 10 list. Donnie, I'm so glad you're not on X. I put out four lists. They've all had addendums and been revised because I every list and forgot somebody. Can we but, get some music for this? Uh, what uh, kind of grand right game show music? He's going to go down his list. You tell me top if you 10, have a problem. Top 10. Okay. Well, it's going to be hard. <laughs> okay. But hey, hold, number uh, 10. Hold, hold okay. on. Let me just get, I'm ready. Let me just get a list of greatest I, running backs. I can backs. see that. I can see that, Goo. Backson. Oh, you're bringing it up. NFL. Okay. I just because yeah, these all mean because I won't know if you forgot. Because number somebody one, we're gonna fight because we right, fought before. Ahead. At number ten, Bo Jackson. Is he this would, in any order? Uh, no, this is just okay. in my order, and he would be a lot higher had his career uh, had a little more longevity. But we know okay. he had to stop against that game against the Bengals. Uh, number nine, shout out Evan Giddings, uh, LT Ladanian Tomlinson of the Chargers. Okay. Number eight, all day. Adrian Peterson, number seven. This is where you might be mad. This is his favorite grandy of all time. Earl Campbell, okay. Number six, uh, Patrell Hill's own O.J. Simpson, okay. Number five, Jim Brown. You left too early. You wanted to go okay. date and act. Uh, number four, Mister Goggles, not Anthony Davis. Eric Dickerson, okay. Number three, man, this dude ran like a deer. Sweetness, Walter Payton. Number two, the only 20 there's ever been, Barry Sanders. And number one, this dude just gives me goosebumps, and I call them slippery hips. Look at Grandy. One Mr. Gale Sayers. The no. sweetest running back I've ever seen in my life. But go ahead. What about Emmett Smith? Yeah. Grandy could have ran behind that line. It's <laughs> so good. Jay, I love him. He was a tough, but no hey, Tony Dorsett. To you, Cowboys fan. Not, yeah. not no, no, no Dorsett either. It was tough. But Marshall Falk? Yeah. This is a great list. Though. Thurman Thomas? Uh, he, he was almost on there, but I put Bo up there. Frank Gorgu? Frank made the one that went out to the Twitter verse that I had to read. <laughs> Bring it back. But it's hard. It's just my 10. Uh, Marcus Allen. He was a, a, a honorable mention. All right. What about um, Larry Zonka? Uh, I thought about him, and I also thought about uh, John Riggins, forty-four for the Redskins. But I just went with those ten. What about Kale Sayers, Steiny? He was this. Have you watched him run? No, because he's dead. <laughs> yeah, he's dead. Rest in. What? <laughs> I, I don't know what to do. He retired. When I was like one. Oh, right. But if you see the highlights. The highlights. Yeah, rest in peace. Yeah, no, I've never seen him carry 26 times in a game. Dude. Uh, what about Herschel Walker? You know what? I omitted Herschel. 
Okay, right. who's getting bumped? No, nah, nobody's getting bumped. You have to. Uh, LT. <laughs> Dude, I'm, I, had, I had to delete four tweets. But uh, all in all, Stiney. I don't see good. anybody else that you could be missing. I think I had your boy a little too low, Earl. But Eric Dickerson, Stiney, what do you know about him? He He's was good. great, man. SMU. Uh, Eddie from Oakland said you forgot Marcus Allen. Yeah, that that one I couldn't get him in. Four one five saying what about your own Bettis? Yeah, I feel good about that. I love a bus. An outsider here, not an outsider, but a long shot here. Chuck Muncie. Oh, I didn't get to see a lot of Chuck. I mean, it always depends on whether you're going yeah, by no, their greatest no. years or, or, or yeah, longevity. An yeah. Um, yeah. Just look, John yeah. Riggins. I, I, I'm just looking yeah. at a bunch of names. I gave him list. love. I gave him love. Uh, Franco Harris. I, I Franco I, Harris. But Dorsett didn't make it, so I wasn't being a homer. Uh, Marshall Falk, I think that that's the guy. No, uh, Mike Allstott is stuff. What about Terrell Davis? You know what, Stanley? I wasn't a big TD fan. I respect him, but Frank Gore is the one. When you talk about doing it forever, he should have made it. But uh, yeah, I put Bo in there. Oh, right. Jackson was incredible. Thanks, man. Yeah, no problem. If you got a problem with Guru's list, oh well, people eight 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 nine five. Well, Beast Mode, I mean, Stanley, honestly, Beast Mode tough, in top ten. I love Marshawn. Yeah. You don't have no problem Marshawn being omitted, do you? No. Yeah. Why would I? The people are saying it. Uh, just looking at Carlos some of these. Carlos Hyde, stop. Just uh, <laughs> looking at some of the uh, other names here on the uh, list coming through. Roger Craig. Yeah. I, uh, I didn't have him on this top. No team. Marcus Allen. That was the one that is kind of uh, getting at me. Uh, Marshall Falk. People say uh, Stani is gold. G said I'd put Eddie George over Jerome Bettis. Oh, stop with it. Eddie George was a month, but stop. Uh, that's from G on yeah. the uh, YouTube chat. Curtis Martin, honorable mention. You were damn good. Edgar and James? Yeah, you were damn good. Curtis Martin? I just said damn good. Oh, I think we're getting down to... Uh, Kevin Barlow. Stop, people. What does McCaffrey have to do to get on there, Goo? Uh, he's still playing. He's still playing. What does he have to do, though? Well, who's, the, he's, who's the best running back in football right now? You have the number one pick in, okay. for running backs. Oh, McCaffrey. Who would you take? McCaffrey. Who else is out there? I mean, Derek, Derek Henry. Well, he's at the end. But he's at uh, the end. Who else? I'm trying to think. I guess it is McCaffrey. Uh, it's kind of sad that it was kind of lightweight cricket. Yeah. Eight 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 nine five seven nine five seven zero is the number. Uh, Golden State Warriors, they're finishing up their season. They are I'm 44 juice, and 35. They got a chance to win 47 games this year, which would be three more than last year. But they're coming at it from a seed a lot more difficult than they had last year. Man. And the question is, is what 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 are you most excited about? I was I was talking to Lucas. Um the director during the during the break, and he said, I, I don't know how you feel, Stanley, but I am just Super excited about these play-in games. And I said, he said, as a Warrior fan, and I said, but aren't you going to be, isn't it just going to be ridiculously nerve-wracking? Because you're going to play two elimination games, that's essentially. What you, that's or at least, what you are, At least though. one. Yeah. But I guess, is that fun? Like, to me, a game no, one of a seven-game no. series is a lot more There's fun no about it, to watch. This is stressful. Than than two elimination Especially games. if you're not, uh, what did you call it, the fake eight. If you're not part seven and eight, it's game seven right out the shoot. Yeah. And then another game seven. Uh, Juan Cruz says, yes, Steiny. Uh, to what, Juan Cruz? When I said, aren't these games going to be nerve-wracking? Well, yeah, that's what that's, I believe that's his answer to that. Okay. Warriors right now, they need to go 3-0 and to move up. If they don't go 3-0 and to move up, it's going to be a long shot. Yeah, and they no need doubt. Sack to lose out uh, entirely. The sack has New Orleans tonight. Stani, somebody's asking yeah. your pick for the Masters. Did you make one? No. You still got time. Give a, if you had to. I think it started, head. didn't it? Yeah, but get, you had no, to. No, it started. But not started. Who would you have picked? Well, I can't make a bet now because <laughs> it started. The field's gone off. Now, some person's I mean, listening and supporting the show, and all they wanted to know is, who I, are I, you leaning to? I have no pick. Don't pick Rory. <laughs> Oh, Why not? No, he's he's even through eight. He's not bad. Rory. It's fine. Who's leading right now? Uh, Bryson. DeChambeau. He's seven under through 17. Wow. What's Tiger doing? Uh, I don't know. I'll have to check. Four. I mean, how could you not know what Tiger's doing right off the bat? I mean, isn't he he's still, nowhere near the top of the Isn't he still our most important golfer? No, Stein. Tiger Woods. 
He don't even look like himself. If he makes the cut, he will have made the cut more than any other player in the history of the Masters. I don't even think he's teed off yet. Maybe he hasn't. I think it's 354. I don't know what to, what what zone. Uh, why don't you give me your top 10 NBA players of all time? Uh, this is easy. Michael Jordan. I'm going to write these okay. down right, all right. All right. I like this. Uh, Kobe Bryant. And uh, Clearly, these are in no particular order. Oh, these are in order. Oh, okay. Yeah. Shaquille O'Neal. Oh, okay. Steph Curry. Okay. Curry's better than Magic, Bird, and LeBron. I, okay. That's my list. Yeah, it is Okay. okay. <laughs> but, dude, better than Will Chamberlain. <laughs> okay. No, go ahead. These are guys. Better than Kareem. These right, are no, guys I saw. Okay. That, well, now, does that invalidate Well, you never saw Gail list? Sayers, but he was on your top well, 10 list. Well, you know what? Boy, well, you got me. Three YouTube runs. Stoddy, stop. Okay. Four, <laughs> Jordan, Kobe, Shaq, Curry. These are in order. Uh, right. Tim Duncan. Okay. Larry Bird. Okay. Carl Malone. Okay. Magic? Allen Iverson. Well, this list is now lost all credibility. Now, where? Iverson is not better than Magic Johnson. Nobody. It's just my list. But, <laughs> but that's where you're going to lose some credibility. <laughs> it's not a okay. sparring match One, or two, karate three, kid four, tournament. Five, six, seven. You it's got just, eight. Who are the last two? Dominique Wilkins. Okay. And Pistol Pete. This is the worst list of top 10 players <laughs> ever been compiled. It's my list. I know, but it's... Well, who do you have a problem with? Garnett. The last six, basically. It would be quicker to say who Kevin he doesn't Garnett? have a problem with. Yeah, I, I'm, you, I know you okay, don't like so him. so I would just off the top of my... So you don't have Magic Johnson in your top 10, but you have Bird in your top 10. Yeah, Bird was one of a kind. So was Magic. I just... Okay, so you don't have Magic. All right, I wanted to... Hey, no. Look, look. Uh, you don't have Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Kareem was the in most incredible player. But he's not in your top ten. I got Shaq for him. Okay. No Kareem. Uh, no Wilt Chamberlain. Yeah, I got Shaq. Shaq's my center. Okay. Did Shaq ever average 50 a game? I, hey, I guess what did J.J. Okay. Reddick say? Plumbers. <laughs> hey. Um, let me see my list real quick. Yeah, give it to us. Dominique right? is off. Pete Maravich is off. Kevin, off your top? Kevin, top ten players of all time? Did I get Duncan in there? You got Duncan. All right. I'm going to take him off. KG can't sniff this. Well, Carl Malone, I'm sorry. I'm stand That's the one not coming off. Dude um, was one of a kind, man. I'll give you... Uh, I, yeah, boy. Mailman. It's kind of tough to do it off the top of my head. But All right, we'll do it when we come back. It's too short segment. Well, we'll no, we got time. Uh, Jordan, yes. Kobe, Kobe no. yes. <laughs> Kobe's a no. Then you're done. Kobe's a no. On Just to top Stoddy, 10? unplug the mic. I don't think Kobe's a top ten, and I'll, what 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 didn't he do? Jordan, I'll put Curry on there. I'll put Duncan on there. Okay, what did Curry but, do more than Kobe? Is all, and I'm not pitting him against each. He won. Better, he's a better teammate than Kobe. This is not romper room. We're talking about at the game of basketball. Kobe left nothing, just like Curry yeah. on the bone. Yeah, I think Curry's better. Okay, but he still should be top ten. You also you also don't have LeBron James on the well, list. Well, see, that's how you know. I, d just I'm a, a an addendum's coming. So you're gonna so now let me. I'll do it again. Okay. Yeah. So you I put me on the is better than LeBron James. The, well, it, it's listen. not like that. Why do you have to look at? It's guys I like watching. That's oh, how I think of my oh, top okay. ten. Well, then do you have Nick Young on there? <laughs> like, Stoddy, uh, just tell the people about Kobe. I'm, I'm trying to help you no, out. No, I don't want to. He's Jordan, in your top ten. Kurt, no, he's not. See now you're because I like is basketball prejudice if he's not on your top ten as opposed to you not putting Chamberlain on. Well, I took Sha Shaq is I, I wanted Shaq to just be the lone center. Jordan I, Curry, Duncan Bird, Bird Magic, LeBron are automatics. All right, but are Kobe absolute is too. automatic. Kareem's an automatic. All right, I'm not mad at Chamberlain's got to be an automatic. Who else we got? No here? Jerry West for you. No. Uh, let's see. Okay. Jordan, we Curry, you, Duncan, Bird, Kobe, Magic, LeBron, Kareem, Chamberlain. That's eight. So you took LeBron over Kobe. My God, yes. Absolutely. LeBron may be the most greatest all-around player so, of all time. And, and I don't argue that. But if we're being real, if your life depended on a shot going in, that's different. Or, you didn't okay, say shot. I, no, I you love said you. player. I love you for saying when that's I different. When I hear player, I appreciate you saying that. Okay. When I hear player, right. I think of all around player. Right. You, I didn't say clutch. 
Um, yeah, people Chamberlain. Give it to oh, Bill, <laughs> Bill Russell. You think there's room for Bill Russell? But, but what? How many centers do you have? These are the best. Bill Russell was the best defensive player in his era. Um, yeah. No, no Kyrie. No. <laughs> now, I was just like, right. hey, right. LeGrand, I was no. doing that. I was running with the Kyrie. Hey, I'm sorry. That dude is special no. as a movie made about him. But, Grandy, I was trying to get you to chuckle. Oh, you well, got I'll, tell me. You else, I'll tell you who else is in the top 10. Oscar Robertson. I have no problem with that. Oscar Robertson maybe should be in the top 10. Well, if we're going now, let me slow down. Here's the other thing. People get, you know. No, go ahead. I'd stick Rick Barry up against Kobe Bryant. I would stick Rick Barry uh, cause I love against Rick. Kobe Bryant. Yeah, I love Rick. I'm just, I don't know what he did not to make your top 10. Who? Um, Kobe, and then I'm gonna throw well, this. I mean, if you're going big, one, one thing Elgin you can say Baylor. about Kobe about, is I like he was Elgin never Baylor. the best player on a championship team. He like, won two championships well, can, with Paul Gasol. Okay, so how can you win? Okay, yeah, how, okay. I'm talking about with Shaq. But so you have two, you have teammates on there. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting to me. You know, because when I think of greats, I think of you know Jordan. He was stood by himself. Bird yeah. stood by himself. Well, Magic stood that. by himself. What are you laughing at, Grant? What you, about Elgin Baylor? You, yeah, he, he, he can't hold the candle to Big O. Score, well, like you know, my Oscar Robertson averaged a triple double. That's how I like him. Um, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I don't. Kobe. I, think, I think there's a lot of lists that wouldn't have Kobe on the top ten. Steiny, I'm gonna tell you right now. And, and you think it's a generational the, thing? No, I think it's a death thing. I really do. A death. If wow. Kobe Bryant were still alive. Then I think people would not think as highly of you him. You think that? Yes, I do. But they were wearing his shoes while he that's, still played. But what does that have to do with he his was game? Like a, no, that's the biggest like form it, of respect, Stani. But, but that means nothing about a guy's game. So what if he has a pair of shoes? No, I'm talking about his game. They're, not wear, they're wearing your shoes because you're great. One of the most clutchest athletes on the hardwood we've ever seen. Nobody missed more big shots in his career than Oh, Kobe. you're going townie on But me. it's true. But like, that, yeah, Kobe's one of the greatest of all time. I don't okay, have him in my right, top right. ten. Well, I'll, if you say that, I'm good. I mean, why, why wouldn't I say that? I mean, it's a subjective. This is word. amazing. No, I it mean, totally is. I, but listen, you I think his death well, made him greater. Well, I'm going to tell you right now. I don't. I think. I think if we we could come up with 25 lists from people today, and nobody would have Kobe at two. Oh, nobody. I, wow. I would I love don't to think see so. before we... Grandy, how would you answer that? Uh, some people might. No doubt but, about right, it. I wouldn't. Right. And, okay. some people, and I think we got to stop people pretending... people would have Curry at two also. Yeah, I want to hear yours when we come back. We but, got to stop pretending that not being one of the 10 greatest players of all time is some sort of... This, and you know what? That... Kobe might not be a top okay. 10 player of all time, but he's probably top 15, I'm and that's mad incredible. That. No, no, no how do you, doubt like, about How do you factor in Kobe's selfishness as a player? I, I, I use it as a badge of honor. I love it. Yeah. And I use Magic as a teammate as a badge of honor. Well, he or used Bill to. When Russell. we found out Magic was hard on his teammates behind the scenes. I didn't say the greatest one-on-one -on -one players <laughs> of all time. Yeah, I don't. Jonathan Kaminga would be on that list. <laughs> oh, my... I didn't say that. I just love hearing that the best one-on-one -on -one players. Of... Oh boy! You don't want to read the text line right now. Uh, all right, we got the two short segment coming up. On the other side, and what's coming up is also brought to you by the Alameda County Probation Department. Navian tankless water heaters, the proven leader in condensing technology. Request a Navian because you deserve the best in endless hot water delivery. Learn about Navian's condensing tankless water heaters and find a Navian contractor at tanklessmadesimple.com. There are any number of reasons you might consider selling your home. That's where an agent who is a realtor comes in to navigate the process to sell your home in a way that's right for you. Because that's who we are. Realtors are members of the National Association of Realtors. What's up, Price?
Now, back to Steiny and Guru on 95.7 The Game. All right, I got my top 10. Let's do it, baby. But, again, it's going to skew not recent. So that's going to okay. make it different. It's your list. The beauty of it. Uh, no particular order. Jordan, Magic, LeBron. Let me hold on. Jordan, Magic, LeBron. Bird, okay. Duncan, Kareem, Russell, Wilt. And then we get into a, a, a couple interesting areas. So that's eight. Okay. Uh, I know two. I always go by what Rick Barry told me, was that Oscar Robertson was the greatest player that Nobody ever gave the respect to. Said he's one of the greatest players of all time, top ten, but he just the big O just got lost. That averaged the triple stink. double when nobody averaged the triple double. So I'll I'll just out of respect okay. for Rick Barry, I'll put Oscar Robertson yep. at nine. Who looks good, by the way, okay. big O. Well then you know who we're down to? Curry, Kobe, and LeBron. Shaq. No, LeBron's in. Oh, I can link of my LeBron's back. gotta be in. <laughs> who do, who would not have LeBron in their top ten? Well, you're a hater. Clear. And if you, if, 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 I if, didn't. Then, no. if you have Kobe in your top 10, I don't have a problem with it. I just don't have him in I didn't mind. have LeBron in my top 10. I mean, who who do you who are you taking, Kobe or Shaq, when it's all said and done? But see, this would... And go ahead, Stanley, because it's the, the last point. one. Top you 10 is juice. 10. Yeah. You got to stop at but 10. But if we went by position, then it's a whole well, different thing. Well, that's why we didn't say the greatest yeah. centers. Yeah. We said the greatest players. But go ahead. This is your final. It's got to be Curry. I would put Curry over Kobe because Curry's easier to play with. Better teammate. That's just me. And I think I think, believe it or not, Curry's impact on the on a game. Yeah. In a game is just was it's great to me, it was greater than Kobe, believe it or not. That's just me. I got Curry over Kobe. But I also, you know, then I gotta put Curry over Shaq. I don't Correct, know if I'm yeah. doing that. Correctly, did you send mine out yet? As we speak, I just hit send on the oh, tweet. Boy. So he's got a guy in his top 10 who played 26 total playoff games. Pete Maravich. You want to take him off. Take uh, him also off. has Allen Iverson on there. Oh, my God. What's, oh, what Do we need to talk? The greatest little guy ever took that Philly team to a finals with Eric Snow. Oh, my God. Come on. See, Grandy, now you're you're aging yourself. You're showing us how, how good, 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 good. Allen Iverson is That's a great really, player. There's nobody else like him. Top 10 of all time. <sighs> right. So you take Can him. you bring the tweet back or it's gone? It's out there. Yeah. I'm going to have to deal with it. Pierce right. Evans, you want to talk about Iverson? LeBron should have been on my top team. So, so Iverson took that team to the finals? Yeah. What about the team that LeBron took well, to the finals? Yeah, the I Cleveland to, team that first I remember, year. I remember they got swept. Yeah, I think Pierce Evans, that, that Cavs roster was absolutely atrocious. Dude, who was the uh, two? Uh, who was my guy? Mike Brown? No, for the Cavs that uh, was working with uh, LeBron. He was jealous of LeBron. Ricky. Uh, Ricky Davis? Ricky Davis. I think he was on that squad. Here's, how, here's why I put LeBron in there for sure. Because remember when we had Mike Brown on about five years ago? All right. And he said, I got a, I got a couple questions for you guys. Name me the players on LeBron's team that got to the finals his first year. And Those guys I had no it. business <laughs> right. making the finals. Ilgowskis. But you don't take anything away from Iverson taking that Philly team. Is no, that but because... he's not a top 10 player in my mind. Well, I mean, not even close. I mean, I can't take Iverson over. I can't take Iverson over Curry. Kobe or Shaq? Yeah. No chance. Well, everybody on my list was a Hall of and Famer. If you're, and if you're and asking I'll, I'll be me, able to sleep at night. And if you're asking me, I'm taking Jokic over Iverson with one title right I'm now. I'm surprised you didn't uh, bring up uh, the dream. My boy He's Gerard up, I mean, me you could make a, You could make a case. You could make a uh, Being a teammate 510 is not a non-basketball reason. That is absolutely a basketball reason. Because I was going to say that to you. So, huh? um, no, but I got Curry in mind. I had him in mind, too. So, yeah, Jordan, Bird, Magic, LeBron, Duncan, Kareem, Bill Russell, Wilt Chamberlain, Oscar Robertson, and Curry.
I guess I'm going to catch the take most o- heat for I'll take Iverson, Oscar, and I'm I'll okay take, with that. I'll take Oscar Robertson off and put in Ka- Shaq. But, you know, I'll put Shaq in. But you know what I did? Grandy, I kind of took it out of context. I, it was like well, you, you, 10 guys you I, that it. I liked watching because Penny Hardaway would have been on there. He, But he was too short. You know, his career was too short for me. But still, I'm proud of mine. Well, then you should have said these are my top – 10 yeah, no, favorite players how, to ever yeah, watch. Yeah, that's, that's then how, that's then how nobody comes it. down your road. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, just make a list of active players and retired players. That would be one way to do it. That would be one way to do it. Uh, Lists are incredible, though, Stani. Chris Rock has a great, great movie. It's, I know you haven't seen it. Uh, years ago, it's called Top 5. Yeah. What's it about? Just what Top 5 means. To, it has nothing to do with the list, but uh, it's a great flick. Yeah, I'm just getting some. I'm just looking at the. Yeah. Uh, just it's looking awesome. At the list. I mean, like you said, I answered it. Yeah, in Grandy, who sure I like, what, like Kyrie would have been on my. Who do I like? The well, guys that I've okay. loved to watch over okay. the years. Well, Kyrie okay. is just up there. Curry's well, up there. Well, He's now, on both yeah. lists. Okay. Yeah. Now it's love to watch. Yeah. Which can be anything. Yeah, I got. I. I mean, can you really put together a top ten list without Bill Russell? Yeah. I mean, now if you want to. I'll tell you what we could do to make Who it easy. Always struggles guys, with these lists. Guys in your lifetime. So well, there like, you go. And then, yeah. then there we go. Then we could take. We can take. Yeah. Uh, then you're not Wilt offended. Off. Yeah. We can take Russell Keep off. Keep going. Big O. I'm Kareem. I saw. So yeah. I saw him too. Those are the only two guys I take off. Are Russell and. But Wilt. I will argue, argue any man or woman that Shaq was the most dominant center. There was but most that, skilled. No. Okay. Well, then that that, that should diesel that should take pounds. away from Kobe Bryant. On the list. Oh, so you go going direct. Curry couldn't be MVP. Well, I, I don't each other believe. Out. I, Remember, I hated that. I though. don't believe Durant was, was the best player on those Warriors teams. Now that's wild. I mean, but, well, you admit a lot of people did. Yes, sure, some people did. I, yeah, but that's why Curry allowed but, him to do that. And Curry also won two titles without him. There, Durant never won a title yeah. without him. I was about to say so one title. Curry's, it should have been three. You're right. He won two without I mean, him. That's why Curry, to me, is over over Kevin Durant. Yeah. All right. Uh, coming up on the other side, we got the uh, crossover with Willard and Dibbs. And that's brought to you by Fremont Bank. Full service banking. No compromises. Say hello to spring at the California Academy of Sciences. Spring in the garden. See the massive animatronic insect.
Now, back to Steiny and Guru on 95.7 The Game. Uh, 408 Steiny, by that way of thinking, Magic and Kareem can't be on that list. Only you forgot. Oh! Kareem, Kareem won one in Milwaukee yeah. as Lou Alcindor. What list? We, I did my top oh, 10 boy. running backs. Then it turned into top 10 NBA players. I was oh. going to say, Kareem is definitely not one of my top 10 running backs. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, he's, so, he had a good little career at UCLA. He did. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And That's the point. other Kareem. Yes. Thank you. And a cameo on an airplane. I am, right? I thought he spelled it the same way. Oh, did he? And in other news, the new Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, who is was that big white kid from Indiana State. I don't know if you followed his little run in March, there's a kid, 6'10", gigantic white guy from Indiana <laughs> State, and one of his nicknames was Cream, C-R-E-A-M, that Cream has... Abdul-Jabbar. He's now entered into the portal, oh, so okay. he won't be a sycamore right. anymore. Oh, tough and break. They also were calling him different uh, names uh, because Larry Bird went there, Steiny, of course, as you well know. So uh, this, this young man had a bunch of nicknames, and then yeah. Indiana State got snubbed for the tourney. They went to the NIT, the coach left, and so now every single one of their top seven scorers has entered the portal. Could you imagine if the portal had been around when you were playing? Mm. I don't think it would have mattered. Oh. <laughs> you wouldn't have tried to take that run I, at uh, at D1? No. You were pretty happy at, in no, your spot? Okay. I couldn't play We've had this convo over beers. Don't get it. Yeah, let's not I go down. Yeah, I couldn't play D1. You could have. Uh, then we talked about the top ten players of all time, and that's where Guru my list splintered. I bet they're different. They're very different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like the Kobe. two of you. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, I'm not yeah. mad you have Kobe. Kobe. You know he's, just on, he's right on the verge of top ten for me. He's not an automatic, yeah. that's all. But well, I'll actually, tell you who's not even close is this guy here who shot 42% from the field Iverson. and 31% from three-point range. I can't put him on my top Iverson. ten list. <laughs> Iverson yeah. took that. These really conversations are always so difficult no because of the eras. No, 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 generational. Yeah. The, like, Talk to me. If you didn't see someone play, we were having this conversation earlier today, me and Lucas, about OJ. And he offended me, actually. What did he say? Well, because he's like, well, it, you saw him play. Oh, <laughs> hey. Hit the brakes. I saw him play. But you loose, saw him play. Loose. But I was very young. He came to the 49ers when I was three. And he, was, was he wasn't even young. OJ. He he was, and he yeah. was washed up. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he was washed up. Larry but Holmes, I mean, yeah. Like, if you didn't, I, I, I don't know. To me, I am so, like, mystical about sports. If you didn't see someone play, you you can't experience it. You cannot have someone tell you about it. You know what I mean? That's why, like, you know, there's oh, always boy. some old timer who's like, "Well, Wilt Chamberlain, I didn't see him play. How do you want me to rate someone who I just right. but heard about?" My number one running back of all time, true story, is Gail Sayers. Okay, and I was captivated at the videos that I saw of him run. Okay, does that because I mean, like, I Gail yeah, you can you can do it however you want to do it, but I like Gail Sayers, Jim Brown, even OJ. Yep. All of those conversations, I don't know, man. I didn't see them. Do you know the, the offensive off. line of the Buffalo Bills nickname while OJ was there? Because I forgot or did know Stani knew. It. I learned it this morning oh. when I was in the car, and then I have subsequently forgot it. Uh, I was driving after I had to bring lunch to the misses, so oh, okay. baby, can, my my and I were in the car, and whenever I'm in the car, we put on ninety five seven the game, and uh, she tries to stay awake in the back, and Stani actually mentioned the nickname, and I was like, I didn't know that. And I've subsequently forgotten. And, and you still don't. What is it? I don't know it. What? What's the, uh, the electric company? The electric, the electric company. company. Wow. That's what turned the juice on. <laughs> that's why they. Gotcha. That's why they, yeah. Well, that's a bar. Right. So, like, yeah. it's interesting about Chamberlain. So, Chamberlain, like, do you have to have seen him play to put him in your top ten? I'm gonna say no. It, to, to me, yes. I don't even know how I'm supposed to. How am I supposed to put into words what Wilt Chamberlain was to me? But you've had like, to but, see but, some footage. Of course, what, what you see foot, but how am I going to compare about, like, footage to actual man. moments in games? No like, doubt. But what, what know, if the resume, and I'm not saying he should or shouldn't. What about if the resume just kind of speaks for itself? And, and, and resumes are, are completely based on the eras in which they're built. I, I, I mean, it, who was he playing against? How many teams were in the league? J.J. Reddick says plumbers. How, how many yeah. other seven right. footers were Bill Russell was not a plumber. You know, so right. we so, want to talk about it. And he played him, I think, uh, 15 uh, times a, a year. Yeah. It, it, it's yeah. like, I can't. 
I can't take anything away from him, yeah. but I also can't I can't quantify and put into words how good he was and see him. You want me to help? Sure. <laughs> you and I always agree. <laughs> Tell me what to think. <laughs> he led the league in scoring his first six years in the league. How many other players were in the league? Four? I'm just saying. Okay. That's uh, derisive. Four-time four <laughs> MVP. Purposefully. Right. One year he led the league in assists. Oh, I've heard he's a good player. Good little players. Yeah, you're supposed to say to really tall. demean him. He's tall. He's Tell you the what, you got, you got him on the free throws. He couldn't make any free throws. Wow, he's only uh, 50, fifty. That does bug 11. me. Those those are big. Yeah, I just, what I got, bugs me is yeah. the idea that a player like Wilt couldn't play in today's game because he couldn't shoot the outside shot, and that sort of uh, mm. narrative is what turns me off to all these conversations right. about top ten all time. Because if Wilt Chamberlain was, I don't know, an eighteen year old. Right now, at 7-1, with his unbelievable overall athleticism, I would imagine by now he would have developed an outside shot. Yeah. But in that time, the outside shot was for suckers. The best shot mm -hmm. was giving it to Wilt inside of two feet. They outlawed the dunk because I he was so that. dominant. I hate hearing that. <laughs> Think about that. That's, that's akin yeah. to them saying, you know what, Steph? You're so good at the three ball, we're taking the three-point line away. Well, they, they wow. tried to do it at Augusta for Tiger. Tiger proof the course. Yeah. Right? They changed the rules around Shaq. Um, yeah. You know, the, the, like that's. What about if it goes the other way? Could Steph, uh, yes, could yes. Steph have played 40 that, years ago? Yes. That's what. That's the one thing that I was going to yeah. add to Dibs. Just like I, I, you know, no, Isaiah Thomas didn't get to play in this era. Uh, oh, and he'd be, like, I think he'd be unbelievable. He just would have added a three point shot. Well, if Steph Curry were back playing with Isaiah Thomas, he still would have been a great player. His 25-footers just would have been two. You yeah. know what I mean? A lot less points. Well, he wouldn't yeah. have shot a 25-footer. I mean, Red Auerbach would have had him in the locker room. I don't know. If he, you know. If he made him at the clip he's making him now, right? I think you probably would have lived with it. But, I like, and like Curry would have made that adjustment, I think. Speaking of which, I don't know if it's just me, but I, I watch a lot of basketball. Have you guys processed, because I feel like this is flying under the radar, and it may have something to do with how far the Warriors go or don't go because I think it benefits them. But the league, these refs are not calling, I want to use the S word, crap. Oh, I mean, Here we go. And it, just as a bystander, I'm not mad, but Dibs, I'm not used to the, the right. prison ball of, and the players are like, now they're getting it. They figured it out. Like, I got to just get my ass up and go help my team play D. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and you, I'm sitting there like, that's a foul. Well, you are very representative of the fan, and many fans have been crying for years, if not decades, over the fact that they call too much. I was one of and them. And now we've pendulumed all the way the other way, and now they're not calling anything. Didn't Boston Steining just have a game where they None. attempted zero free throws? Yeah, Get some bucks. First game None. in history, right? Or in, in the modern game. I think so, yeah. Where a team did mm -hmm. not attempt well, a free throw. But so there's now, fouls out there. Though. Fine. Yeah. So we've swung the pendulum the other way. Which do you prefer more? 87 free throws a game or maybe six free throws six. a game? Yeah. But I'm just saying, it's Willard. I'm watching like I can't ignore. That's a foul. Let me ask you I'm this. I'm getting used to it. Let me ask you this. This uh, GP2 block on Hachimura that's the other a, night. Oh it was, God. That's a is, that, is that a foul? That's a foul. It's a foul. And GP, but, we love you. But I loved it because right. it was that's also, a foul, right? Dude. It was a moment, and we'll remember it more because it wasn't a foul. And I'm not saying he did, like he hit the ball he with did. his hand. He also <laughs> it used to be the a two foul. bodies completely whacked into one another. Right. Hachimura goes flying underneath the hoop. That's a foul. But Dr Draymond talking about I'm getting hit in the face. Yeah. Get used to that. I, I mean, I don't know, man. Like, it just... It's, it's weird. It's a weird feeling is all. It's but, different. But That's dibs, all. Dibs, you, and I think say. you know this, even though you always react like you don't. It doesn't matter what the metrics are. People are never going to be happy with Of refs. course. Of course. That's think, like... like think refs, about... Uh, refs are like the Washington Generals. They're there right. to be picked on. Think about That's the who they are. women's semifinal game and how... Three oh, we days worth of Twitter. I. Yeah. I mean, On the Domino app. Yeah. Do you think so that was a foul? People. Of course it was but a foul. But you don't call it there. But it, you don't call it. it you but absolutely it call it. And you call it because she did three different things. <laughs> she moved 
and she widened her stance, yep. and she threw a little spicy hot wing to boot. <laughs> that one, to me, that was, was uh, Wesley Hoagland. Oh, boy. The biggest no-brainer in the history of mankind. That's all, to me, that's always a tell whenever someone goes, but you don't call that then. Right. Oh, oh, oh. oh. No, Wait, okay. Hold on a second. Well, that's my favorite. Yeah. What do you mean you don't call it then? So with 31 seconds left, you can. If it's but a with, foul, or with is six it a foul? seconds left, you can't call it. Yeah. And that's like in the NBA and the NFL, you could call holding on every play. Yeah. And in the NBA, you could call a foul on every single play. So do we really want that? Or would you rather have it this way where go ahead and maybe mug a guy, get up. Okay? Yeah. Get up. But Let's they kind of did it in contact. the middle of the night. They all. sure did. That's what's yeah. weird, Donnie. It's like. They just doing it. I mean, yeah. I was looking at the other way. If it's the last, if it's the biggest possession of the game, then make damn sure you set a the right screen. call. Yeah, because and make the right call. Yeah, because by doing what she did, now it is up to the official one way or the other. Because I guarantee, if they don't call it, somebody on the other side is going to say that's a moving screen. Well, you can't call it then. Right. Well, then when can you call it? Exactly. It is, it is a little bit more controversial in the call direction than the non-call. Just because Probably. Of the, because of the nature of no, what it was yeah, and the that. way that it looked at full speed. Right. I don't think anybody would have complained if they didn't call it. But if you just watch it from all the yeah. angles, it's a foul. Yeah. yeah. You, know why foul. This, you know why the Celtics were not upset with shooting zero free throws against the Bucks? Because the Bucks shot two. Mm. That was it. There were two free throws. That in the is higher. Are you game. serious? Yep. How about not one team went about zero for zero. The other I'm team went one that? for two. <laughs> I mean, that's forty-eight minutes, Dibs. Yeah, and that seriously is uh, like playground where uh, you know you call one Third more foul, ball. we're gonna yeah. have to throw hands. Man. Shout out the Panhandle here in San Francisco. Which uh, did you ever play out there at no. the Panhandle, Steiny? Once. Yeah, you, you're Once. not missing much. That game, one, one you time. might as well play uh, in a robe. In a with a gavel in your hand because every trip down the floor was a seventeen minute argument. Well, and you have to you have to work yourself around all the shopping carts that are being pushed around by the homeless, and you end up playing seven on eight half the time. You're listening to nine five seven the game KGMZ FM and HD One San Francisco. Always live on the free Odyssey app, Twitch, and YouTube, powered by First NorCal Credit Union. See this 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 strikes to me. This strikes me. If you're going to say the greatest players of all time, players. Yeah, I think you could make a case to put Elijah on over oh, Shaquille yeah, O'Neal. Yeah, yeah. I'm not totally get in terms that. of players. I just want skills, mind. basketball yeah. skill. Now Shaq's the most dominant. Yeah. That's why I like those kind of kind of. OJ uh, passed. I told mm-hmm. you guys I was going to ask you. Do you both remember where you were at when the verdict came out? When he went on the uh, it, chase? It, both that Friday. Oh, both. I know where I was at. I'll never forget it. The Giant game. Both, both. Yeah. It was on a, a family trip, and and I think they were trying to. Maybe do some clothes shopping for my sister or whatever. We were down. I think we were down in Southern California. I just remember being at a mall and there were TVs up. No social media yeah, there. Yes, so I just stopped. We just stopped and watched the Bronco drive drive through the freeway. I also remember exactly where I was when the verdict was read. I had a I had a a, a, a summer job at Cal Poly. Uh, one of the years when I was there. So, but I stayed there. So it might have been after my. Sophomore year, junior year, one of them. I got a job at the admissions department. Most boring job you could ever have is in the back room, in the mail room, just sealing envelopes and sending them out, like to people who either were like got into Cal Poly or didn't get into Cal Poly or here's your welcome yeah. packet, whatever, just sealing envelopes. And so I'd sit in this little back room with a radio on and I listened to the entire trial. Like for the entire summer. Oh, so you were wow! And then everything just stopped when they finally were like going to read the the verdict. And I was a college kid, and I have grown up with just an absurd amount of privilege that I am thankful for every every day. And so, like, still kind of sheltered in my brain to where I was surprised. I was surprised when the verdict came down, and then have done all kinds of learning since then. No doubt about why nobody should have been surprised. And there are a bunch of reasons why, which I think everybody kind of gathers now. Yeah, yeah. I was not surprised that uh, the verdict went that way. And as you you worked your way through the trial, and the length of the of the deliberation was such that I kind of felt like it was going to go that way. Mm. And I'd mentioned off the air how I was in L.A. during the Rodney King trial, and I covered it every day up in Simi Valley. I went yeah. to Cal State Northridge, and I was anchoring the news. I was reporting, and so that verdict. When that came out, that the four white officers 
were found not guilty man. of a videotaped beating of a man where they struck him 52 times with batons. The fact that they were exonerated and what took place after that, we covered the riots. I was at UCLA the day that the riots began. And so based on all the things that I experienced being in Los Angeles those years, I was not surprised when the verdict came down the way it was. Man. And I do remember where I was during the white Bronco. Uh, I was furious because I was living with my buddy Kenny down there right by St. Cecilia's in San Francisco, which is, we were on like 16th and Vicente. And we had a small (laughs) TV, you know, it was the 90s, watching TV. And they had the Bronco in the big box and they put the NBA game in the small box. And so I called the local affiliate. Wait, 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 I would eventually go. To, I would eventually go to work of for them. Of course you did at Cron, <laughs> and I called him at Cron, and I said, oh, "Would you do me a favor? Could you put the little Bronco in the small box and the game in the big box? I don't need to see a low speed chase Man. in the big square." And then they hung up on me. Yeah, and I called back about seven more times, getting Man. more and more angry each time because I understand it's a big deal. He's going twenty miles an hour and. There's people on the overpass, go OJ, go, yeah. and all that. But it was a big game. And the, <laughs> af- <laughs> the aforementioned Akeem Olajuwon. I remember. And it was Ewing trying to get off the yeah. moments in American right. documented history. Well, but, it, and you're like, can we minimize that, please? Yes. Ewing, yes. Yeah. Charles yeah. Smith, yeah. and uh, all the rest <laughs> yeah. of the Oakley, yeah. and all the rest of the fellows. Allen Houston. Yeah. I love that line. But it was a big game. Yeah. <laughs> Was it Game Five, Steiny, of the NBA Finals? Or I, I like I said, and I'm gonna have some fun with Willard right here. I wasn't watching the NBA Finals. I was at a Giants game. Hey, hey. Oh, hey. at the stick. You. Yeah, the stick. You were at the stick. June seventeenth, nineteen ninety four. Okay. Why don't you get some game show music and I'll see Ooh. if Willard knows the Giants' starting lineup oh, that God. night against the <laughs> Chicago Cubs. Oh, God, nice. No, please. Uh, don't. I'll tell you who started the game. Who was it? He won twenty games. At least once for the Giants. Uh, Billy Swift. Correct. Ah! Look at you. Billy Swift. You got it. Uh, just for old time's sake. They try. They won 6-1. Mm-hmm. Uh, they tried it out. Uh, Dave Martinez. Yep. Darren Lewis. Matt the Williams. Use. Barry Bonds. Was Todd Benzinger on Todd that Todd Benzinger team? in yep. fifth. He went one for four. <laughs> uh, Royce Clayton. Steve Scarsoni. Kurt Manwaring. Steve. Manwaring. And Billy Swift. Uh, J.R. Phillips pinch hit. Oh, what was how do you do? That year? Did and Rod Beck got an inning, but oh, no save. Shooter. God. Uh, Swifty raised his record to eight and four that year. On his way. Uh, what was, was their there. record, Stoney? Do you know? That uh, eight and four. Oh, that year? I yeah. don't know. Also, I looked Not at the great. Cubs. Uh, I looked at the Cubs lineup. I think they had a guy who hit four homers in a game. Ooh. Uh, a guy named Rhodes. Tuffy Rhodes, Tuffy Rhodes, Carl, Carl Tuffy Rhodes. Rhodes. Sure, 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 sure. Didn't he have like an unbelievable game? Once? Are, are you thinking of? Uh, I don't think. I don't know if Maybe that was I'm Rhodes. That, you're thinking of Mark. Um, shoot, big hit and Witten. They, Mark Witten. That's it. Oh, yeah. Mark Witten in four for yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah, with the Reds, right? Uh, uh, Cardinals. Yeah, Cardinals. Sure. Good I call don't <laughs> It was in Wrigley. Something. Yeah, good Let call. Something. And it was game five, by Uh-oh. the way, of the NBA Finals. Knicks win to go up three games to two. One win away from, ah, uh, never mind. Yeah. Houston won six and seven. Uh, oh, Paul the, Rhodes. Yeah. Toughy Rhodes. Did he hit four in a game? He had an unbelievable opening day. <laughs> so Rhodes had a good show. On this day, the stage was set for Rhodes. You don't need can to I read, get to the lead? You don't please? need to read the whole article. I you know, know I do. It's happened. already down at the you bottom. You know who else hits four homers in the games, Donnie? Who? Well, Tom Levito. Yeah, Rock did it. The Rock. Right? Scooter Gannett he's, also. He also Scooter Gannett. Yeah. Was I, he a red then? Yes. The, yes, wow. he was. He, uh, he, the thing that separated that was he hit four in a row. Calavito. The Rock. Like when Schmidt hit, Mike Schmidt hit four I, two. I gave you some love. I'm in the car yesterday. The gentleman sweep. Yes. I thought it was you're up 3-0, you, you drop that fourth game, yes. and then you come back and win. That's what he said. That's, oh, a, okay. yeah, that's what right. it is. It's not, said, what he was saying, just not any five-game victory. So right. when you lose victory. the first one, then you If you, you lose any three. any other than game four, right. it, it doesn't count. It's not count. a gentleman's sweep. Yeah. That's it's just, just a winning five. Game. five. It's just right. winning four that's games to one. That's a boy. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. And it's, again, the things that bug me are really petty, and I should try to get over them. What's bugging <laughs> you tomorrow yes, uh, sir. at uh, 2 o'clock? Yeah. And you know what's always bugging me is I'll take my answer off the air. 
Yeah, and that one, you know, yeah, we've been yeah, over yeah, that. Yeah, no, so, no. you know, you're not going to take the answer off the air. I'm not calling you at home. Okay. <laughs> what's bugging you is is everything. Yeah. That's, Man, that's not really. You know what's bugging me today? What's, what's bugging you today? Bryce and DeChambeau in the lead. Uh, it's not good. It's nobody, bugging Tiger, me. Nobody, oh, nobody, nobody. How's oh, Tiger he's doing? Even right Tiger's even Tiger's, he just threw yeah. up a bogey on the uh, very ah. difficult par, uh, par three fourth. Yeah, that is a hard hole. Yeah, but uh, we're underway oh, in Augusta. Nice I'm excited. Okay. It's fun. Who'd you pick? Did you have one? Uh, Rory McIlroy and uh, Scotty Scheffler were my two picks in my uh, fantasy golf pool. Scheffler right now four under, three shots back. Rory's one plays. under. Rory yep. made a birdie. He's one yep. under. Yep. Grandy was ripping him early. Earlier, well, that's, that's Rory. Grandy. <laughs> yeah. Grandy's, yeah. Grandy's just that Boy, kind I'm of guy. Grandy. Yeah. It's just. So it's, what do you make of uh, what, what do you make of Draymond Green and Clay Thompson out? Tonight. Are they out? They, they are, are out. Yeah, it's confirmed. Out okay, they are confirmed. out. Um, here's what I make of that. Uh, the, all the Blazers are out and they'll win anyway. But <laughs> I have a deal. I, I, actually, thing. before you guys go, don't put the bag on your shoulder because I do want to ask you guys this. You're the perfect guys to ask this. Why are we having such a hard time keeping our Warriors conversations from slipping into the offseason? Because of the play-in. Is now not got your attention no, we 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 no, and, it has it to the point where okay. we didn't talk about the off season at all today. Essentially, all yeah, week we have. Yeah, you did. Yeah, no, yeah, you no, did. No, I listened the, to it. No, but the mo- I'm not. By the way, most of the conversation I, has not, been. But I'm not how you, how you get Kaminga reintegrated. Him versus but I Lakers. heard you talking about yeah. whether or not he'd be traded in the oh. off season. Like I'm not saying you're even wrong. We've all done it. Our listeners have done it. You got us, Willard. I know. I, no, no. I, it's not a, it's not a, I'm not trying to ping no, you in the corner. I, I just got your radio. Yeah. I want to know why, though. Like, well, I'm su- locked into right now. Simultaneously hear a lot of people go, I think they can go on a run and then have a terribly hard time talking about now. Yeah. Like, I am, to me, the, the Blazers, right? Who cares? Yeah. Locked in. Tomorrow, I'm there. 7 o'clock tonight, the yeah. Pelicans play the Kings. Big deal. And the Warriors play the Blazers. And my remote control will be yeah. on, on overdrive, and, and, and there will be food, and I will sit my son down next to me and go, this is right, and I won't even yeah. need to say a word. He's li- more locked in than me. Like, they've got my attention. Yeah. and uh, But for whatever reason, I feel like a lot of us are having a hard time not Letting the conversation immediately spill into because we've done it too. Is Clay Thompson going to stay and blah blah blah? Like, it, I don't know, man. I'm in. I'm excited about right now. Yeah. And uh, but we're having next a, Wednesday. We're, yeah, we're like. having a we're having a hard time talking about right now. It feels like to me. Yeah, I'm. I I came in today. He meant with, all week with, with, with a goal, with yeah. the goal of not talking about the off season. We did. We're talking good about how, you know if you think this team's going to make a run, w- what has to happen? And to me, you got to figure out a way to get Kaminga and Wiggins both playing well, which has been a challenge for like Steve. Like that's Curry. the right yeah. now, right? I, I ain't cutting you off, Stoney. That's the right absolutely. now. That's what I our think, show was ninety percent. I think Steph and Clay have to go to another level. Because I think they've had too many games where they're good, and then they don't like. I want to, you know, they can need two out of three good games in the postseason, and then I'm, the two rookies. You got two rookies in your top seven. Yep. You're going to be you all have two rookie rookies team. in your two top seven rotation, eh. well, and both of them, you're playing three important games, and then maybe two more important games, and then maybe a series. Rookies traditionally can struggle, so how are they going to play? And in the we postseason? played your sound with Kerr. We gave him a grade A minus. Steiny listed. Every coach day for the year or for yeah, the that, interview for the year. Okay, oh, so you got to do it great. But you know, all kind of stuff went on. Moving Clay to the bench. To me, the, the interesting thing. Yeah, the yeah. interesting thing Steve said was he said, "Oh, what, why are we better? Oh, the young guys have been unbelievable." And then he goes, "And the veterans have really done a good job this year of what did he say? Bringing them in." And of course, I'm thinking, is that by default? I wonder or if that means that in the past it was more difficult for those guys. Well, well last year I, it or, felt more difficult. I, well, they, they didn't do it. Draymond they, said he didn't talk to right. guys on the road. And well. Maybe Draymond will say now, yeah, well, Pajemski and Trace Dashton Davis are good. And how big of a deal is you know, Chris that's Paul why. with that? Did he make that? Because those guys are playing with him. I mean, it's but also a, they had no choice but to accept that, those guys because that, those guys had to play man. because Draymond was unavailable and Chris broke his and hand. That, and we'll, I think you just we'll, hit it. We'll, we'll forever have a hard time. Like I think even the organization, they have a hard time talking about 
what it was within the dynamic of Jordan Poole that just went south. And it, that's not about who you blame, mm. but like that, when, when they say that we're was be- south. Yeah, when they say we're better this year than last year, I feel like that's at the center of it, is they're not dealing with whatever that was. Yeah. And they got over the Draymond Green thing, Man. no doubt. All right, guys, we'll be listening. Okay. Have a great show. On 95.7 right. The Game. On 95.7 The Game, yeah. That was a big game. They're longtime friends. Let me tell you something real quick about Dibs that I'm sure not everybody knows. <laughs> and first-time partners. Hang in there, big guy. There'll be brighter days ahead. Now these two homegrown Bay Area boys finally come together to take over sports talk. Get the hell off of my doorstep. Major League Baseball, you stink. It's Willard and Dibs <laughs> on 95.7 The Game. All right, what's going on? 888-957-957. Let's have some fun today. Um, I mean, we there's a lot of different stuff going on. It's kind of a weird day. Um, but that's where my head is at, to be honest with you. Um, the Warriors are playing a bunch of people you never heard of tonight. The Blazers are sitting out all of their players, and you probably haven't heard of the players that you're supposed to have heard of. So um, whatever. But I'm, I'm like, I'm in. I And I can't even pinpoint when exactly the energy got ramped up to another level like we're always in we're always watching every game that's our job that's our love that's our joy a lot of you are the same way um but somewhere along the line in the last few weeks uh this story just kind of connected with me to the point where i'm almost like i'm actively trying to reject all of the thoughts of the off season. We've done it too. I wasn't trying to right. pin any other show or any 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 listener or anyone. You know, we had Clay Thompson's dad on two days ago, and we're trying to pick our way through. Hey, we're well, in the off season. So, like, I'm not saying it's not there. It hangs over everything. We know that. But I've reached this moment where I'm like, I want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I just, I don't. My my mind wants to block out all thoughts of um, Wiggins being traded. Right. Is Kaminga off the table? Will Clay stay? Is this the end of the big three? I don't know, man. Put it, put it this way. If they play next Wednesday night and they're down by 10 with three minutes to go, then the thought is going to suddenly be in my mind. Am I, am I watching these three in Warrior uniforms together for the last time? But until then... Man, I'm I, I'm. It's like when you're watching a movie or you're reading a book that you love. I don't want to skip ahead. I'm in. I'm in. I'm into right now. Is now not gra- grabbing all of your attention? Is uh, is anyone else having a hard time, like keeping this story away from slipping into July? I, I I don't know. I feel that it feels like all roads end up leading to July, right. and um, I'm not saying this is some sort of belief that they're going to go on a run. This is just a, a, a an acceptance and an enjoyment of what's happening right now. Yeah, and I've told you all along that I think that the play-in tournament is cockamamie and it's contrived <laughs> and all the rest of it. But I'll admit to you, and this is a an open confession, that I'm more excited about the play-in tournament than. I've ever been, and then I thought I would be. And it's twofold. One, the Warriors are a part of it, but the other piece of it is they're good teams in the play-in tournament. And put aside the Eastern Conference for the time being because I'm not that invested in the play-in for the East. Atlanta, eight games below 500 as a 10 seed. That, to me, is a joke, and that's the joke of why I think the play-in tournament is not successful. But in the West, you've got a battle for the 7, 8, 9, and 10 Maybe a battle for the six and the seven. Can the Warriors be 10, nine, or eight? Absolutely. They look like they might have an inside track at the eight. The eight's not out of the question, and we'll know, we'll know more tomorrow where they sit. If they win and New Orleans beat Sacramento, all of a sudden now you're tied with Sacramento. You lose the tiebreaker, but the Kings still have Phoenix. If you win and Sacramento loses tonight, you have a good chance of getting the eight. I actually would argue that if you win tonight, you've got a good chance at the eight, period. Period. Because if the Kings don't lose, that means the Pelicans did. And you play the Pelicans tomorrow night, which means that you've got a chance to beat them and draw them closer to you. 
and the Pelicans have to play the Lakers on Sunday. Now, the Lakers right. may need that game. They may not. I don't know if all of their uh, if all of their paper mache players are actually going to go to New Orleans and play on Sunday. I have no idea. But there are good teams that will need these games who are on the schedule for New Orleans and Sacramento. So if the Warriors win tonight and they win tomorrow, they are going to have a fair shot at, at not just the nine, but the eight. And the nine, as you know, is guaranteed if yeah. they win the rest of their games. That's a whole lot of ifs. And the Warriors will play without two of their key players tonight. Um, I do think that that's about tomorrow. I do. The Warriors know where they're at. Portland has stopped playing. Utah has stopped playing. If the Warriors want the eight or the nine, they've got one game that they've really, really, really got to focus on. It's tomorrow night here at Chase Center. And and so give Clay and Draymond the night off. Look, they did it for Steph last week. And what did he do? He went to L.A. and hit all of his threes. All of them. So they're trying to do the same thing. I have no doubt that Draymond and Clay are plenty healthy. But at this point in the season, with the playing tournament looming and the realization that the only opponent that's going to try is on the schedule tomorrow night after a road yeah. trip, they're going to get all three of their guys a day off here coming down the stretch. No doubt. And you figure you can beat Portland anyway. And no game is a gimme in the association. Portland is... 21 and 58 they've lost eight of ten and they look to be a team making travel plans sooner rather than later so you would hope that even without clay and without draymond you could still go to portland and win and if you don't well then all bets are off about the eight you can forget being the eight and maybe the nine is in jeopardy as well but you feel good about going there you've been playing great and i think you're right you you preserve these guys i don't even know if they if they made the trip that's something that we should uh investigate maybe you, you left those guys behind uh give them the the real rest and relaxation the I true r and r i would yeah if i if i were them and this was the way i was playing it i mean well you would have planned it yesterday and you would have just said hey guys you know go ahead and skip the flight we're gonna go without you and you know maybe you had them fly anyway just for to be a part of the show of hey maybe they all play yeah but that's something we can investigate as we go, but well, if they were true game time decisions, we wouldn't know yet, right? Like, why right. were they announced out at at one thirty, as opposed to when we normally get that when Steve Kerr talks pregame and it's somewhere more in the neighborhood of four or five, right. six o'clock before a seven o'clock game. But we found out at one thirty. Is that because the Warriors have known for two days that they weren't playing? Maybe I think so. Maybe probably after they beat L.A., you realize that okay, we can go to Portland without them and, and probably still win. And you knew that Portland wasn't going to be playing a lot of their frontline guys. So you're getting down to the nitty-gritty. But the fact that we're even talking about the machinations of the play-in, can they be eight, can they be nine, can they be ten? I don't know if there's a if there's any chance of them getting all the way up to the seven. I don't know about the... I don't think so because too many of these teams, teams play, play each, each other. other. So, yeah. yes, someone's going to lose, but someone's going to win. Right. They would need everybody to fall apart, and there's too many games. The you Suns, need New the, Orleans to lose out and well, the Kings to lose two. Well, and that's not possible because the Kings play the Pelicans tonight. Right. Right, and the Suns play the Kings next. Gotcha. So there's too much There's yeah. too, too, too much interconnectivity of all, all of all of these teams. But that leads to kind of the point you were just making. Like I love. Are you giving the playing tournament its flowers? I I'll say this. Yeah. This year's Western Conference will be the year that people point to in the future when people poo-poo the playing tournament. Oh gosh, this playing tournament. Well, let me take you back to 2024 in the Western Conference when the 10 seed had 46 wins. And iconic Hall of Fame players. I don't even know if I'm talking about the Warriors. I might be talking about the Lakers. Right. Or I might be talking about the Suns. Like, these are very good teams with very big names. And the NBA ratings next week are going to be massive. And the other way to look at it, how would you feel right now if you didn't have the play-in tournament? Oh, my God. Well, I... I'd feel better and more excited about these last three games. Sure, but you're also going to end up leaving out 46 and 47 win teams. Wouldn't be the first time. No, it wouldn't. And I mentioned the 2008 season with Steiny yesterday where the Warriors were 48 and 34 and they were the nine seed 
And if had you had to play in then, Portland was the 10 at 41 and 41, but the Warriors were ninth at 48 and 34. And it was, well, sorry, you missed out by two games. Yeah. Although stuff, Denver was the eight at fifty and thirty-two, it's incredible. But stuff like that usually leads to change. Like the, you know, the San Francisco Giants won a hundred and three games in nineteen ninety-three, yeah. and got golf clubs. Yep. See ya. Thanks for your one hundred. Yeah. Three and fifty-nine was their record, and that was it. And Atlanta won the West. Exit interviews. Atlanta. I mean, what the hell were they doing in the West? Thank you. Falcons and Braves at the time. That led to the wild card. Yeah, exactly. Like the Giants absolutely in 1993 led to the wild card. And so, I don't know, man. And the play-in was born out of the pandemic, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I don't know what the... I, I thought mean, that's when they I don't know if that was the it. motivator. Right. They might have been doing it anyway, but The that's, motivator is just more money. Of course. And, and I think the realization by um, the NBA, you're looking around and you're going, okay, baseball has created this wild card thing and they've got one and done games football has nothing but one and done games ncaa tournament one and done games you know what what seems to do really well one and done games why don't we get some let's get some one and done games up in here let's get some urgency for some of these games because these seven game playoff series i mean you see them the playoffs will start in a week and a half and they will go until 2029. Pretty much. Like, it that is first round unbelievable is, yeah. how spread out it is. So the NBA was like, let's get some urgency going. So they did this. And I love it. I love it. Why not? I know that I know that the longer you watch sports, whenever there's change, you're like, okay, uh, this is this is man-made. This is concocted. This is whatever for money. Cockamamie. Well, I'm always like, but 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 so was the thing that they made before that. So is the entire league. What is NBA basketball? It's made up entertainment for our right. enjoyment and for them to make money. What is this radio station? What are we doing here? Entertainment. Are we saving someone? We're changing the world, Mark. Are, <laughs> are we? We're, I, I'd like to think we we'll get people through their day. You know, I'd like to think that, that, that there's some fun here. Maybe there's some information, um, you know, does it provide some sort of a service? We're certainly not saving lives. So I don't know. I'm just not bothered by that stuff when people are like, let's do more. That's the United States of America. When something is good, we do more. We do more. Yes, you will still be alive, Dibs, when the NFL is doing like a 20-game schedule. Right. Because why? Because more. Because they did 17, and it worked. So guess what's happening next time? 18. And then when that works, guess what's coming next? 20. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it'll be 24 by the time we die. There's all these months of the year where there are no football games. Let's have some more football games. It's dreadful. Let's put them in every country in the world. Why? Because more. Let's do more. I'm all in favor of more when it involves quality. And this year in the play-in, it's a success because it involves quality. And I'm just looking back at previous play-ins and I looked at 20, 21, 22. The San Antonio Spurs were the 10 seed at 34 and 48, a winning percentage of 415. At that point, I could do without your garbage. And I'm talking to you, Popovich, your craptastic team <laughs> that lost 48 times. But you don't deserve to be in a play in. Miss me with that hot steaming pile of garbage. But that's the way it fell that year. Like, the nickname Beast Mode came from a playoff game Marshawn Lynch performed in when his team was 7-9 and nine and they were at home. Because that was the division that year. And seven they and nine shouldn't won. be able to host home playoff games. But they did. But it's and, it's, and, it's, and, it's and, not a good thing. And when you're 34-48, you don't belong in no, anything. I agree. Other than the lottery. But it fell that way. And this way, it, it fell this way. Where a 46-win team is going to barely right. scrape in. We're sponsored by Pacific Coast Termite. Let's get to it. We'd love to hear from you. 888-957-9570. Are you having a hard time having a warrior conversation that doesn't end up in the off season? And if so, why? Are you here now? Are you into this? Um, let's get into that. This is Willard and Dibs. Americans pay about $5 billion to control termites and repair their damage every year. Many people underestimate exactly how much damage they do.
the only focus, honestly, is is winning every game, giving ourselves the best chance to to move up. And uh, so I'm much more focused on uh, the seeding rather than the opponent. So if we can sneak into eighth, and uh, yeah, I, I really don't care who we play. It's just a simple math equation, you know. Get 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 two bites of the apple instead of the one. Hey, Dub Nation, it's Steve Kerr, and you're listening to Willard and Dibs on 95.7 The Game. Well, thank you, Coach. Uh, yes, you are. Glad you're all with us. 888-957-9570. Who are you rooting for tonight, Kings or Pelicans? I am rooting for the Pelicans. I think I am, too. I don't think that the Pelicans are going to lose all three. Well, I think that the Lakers are going to go Wisnowski on that game on Sunday. I don't think they're going to fly AD or LeBron to that game. I think the Lakers <sighs> will be resigned to the 10 at that point, so they're going to rest their guys. I think that uh, the Pelicans beat the Kings, and then the Warriors run the table. The Kings just need to lose one more, and they have Phoenix. Phoenix will be playing for something. I think it's more likely that you can pass sack mm. and be the eight. I think you're right, but I also I don't know about this. The Lakers are going to punt Sunday thing. The Lakers are in Memphis um, over the weekend. Their second to last game is in Memphis. Okay, That's a win. Yep. Right? Yep. Okay, so if we're working on the theory that the Kings could lose tonight, then I don't know who's got the tiebreaker between the Lakers and the Kings. I'd have to look that up. But the Lakers will absolutely, especially with the Kings still having the Suns on their schedule, the Lakers will have something to play for on Sunday. Like, that absolutely could affect seeding. At minimum, it could affect whether they're home or road for the 9-10 game. So... Any, but I get your point, and I think I'm with you that I'm rooting for the Pelicans tonight, even though when you say I don't think the Pelicans will lose all three, Pelicans in Sacramento tomorrow, they're uh, uh, tonight, they're here tomorrow, right? and then their last game is, aforementioned, the Lakers on Sunday, and so they're losable. Those games are all very, very losable, and, uh, and if the Warriors win out and the Pelicans lose out, the Warriors pass them. So if the Warriors win out, I like again. Either the Kings or Pelicans will lose tonight, and if the Warriors win out, that obviously presupposes that they're going to beat the Pelicans tomorrow. Yes. So, in other words, you only need one more loss from either of those. That whichever one loses tonight, you only need one more loss to pass them and get into the seven eight game. Well, the Pelicans would need to lose all three, right? But again, if they whoever loses tonight, right? If it's the Pelicans, right? You're, if the Warriors win out, that means the Pelicans lose again tomorrow because they're here. Right. Right. But and, then if they beat the Lakers, you still trail the Pelicans. Right. And same with the Kings if they beat the Suns. My point is, is whoever loses tonight, you're 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 really just saying you need to lose one more, and you both have a good team that you need to beat. So if if the Kings lose tonight right. and they lose to the Suns, Warriors can pass them. If the Pelicans lose tonight and the Pelicans lose Sunday against the Lakers, the Warriors can pass them. Right, so, the Warriors hold the tiebreaker over the Pelicans. Correct. They don't hold the tiebreaker over the Kings. Correct. So that's why you need three, but you have a game in hand against the Pelicans tomorrow night. Right. Whoever loses tonight simply needs to lose one more non-Warrior game right. for the Warriors to pass them. And I think it's more likely that the Kings lose to Phoenix than the Pelicans lose to L.A. because if you get to that spot and the Warriors have won two games, and then the Lakers have won one game. If the Warriors and Lakers are both at 46 and 35 with one game to go, then the Warriors have Utah in the final game. I think the Lakers would look at that and perhaps decide to rest their guys, not even fly their guys to New Orleans, knowing that the Warriors are going to beat Utah. So why exert to try to knock off you know, the because, Pelicans in be, that spot? Because, because they could pass the Kings. Or potentially the Pelicans. The Pelicans could very easily go zero and two in the next thirty hours, like that. That 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 is beyond plausible. So again, I'm with you. I yeah. think it's more likely that they catch the Kings. So I'll root for the Pelicans tonight. But should the Kings win, the Warriors still have a path to the eight, which just means beat the Pelicans tomorrow night, right? And then and hope then, the Lakers and then be beat Laker them. fans on Sunday. Yeah, which is always tough to which do. But stinks. yeah, and it's. <laughs> The only thing, well, the Warriors could end up as the ten if they Absolutely. had a hiccup, you know, if they, if didn't, they lose one. Yeah, if they don't win out, and the Lakers with two games left to go, 
you would figure that uh, who do the Lakers have before the New Orleans game? Memphis. They've got Memphis. So yeah. you figure it's a win and then, you know, likely a, a tough game I, at New Orleans depending on how that goes. I think it's likely that the Lakers um, are, are, are going to have something to play for Sunday. I really do. Um, the fly in the ointment is the war is tomorrow night. And, and, and so I, we go back to what we were saying earlier. Yeah. I definitely think the warriors are just resting clay and Draymond. Right. Because tomorrow night is massive and tomorrow night is losable. Yeah. And, for sure. And Phoenix for their part, they're at Sacramento and at Minnesota. So Phoenix could fall into a 35 loss situation rather easily with, you know, two fairly difficult games at SAC and then Sunday at Minnesota, Minnesota will be playing for a seed, either the number one or the number two, trying to avoid the three. So a lot of these games, that's why I'm really, really in this year, Mark. On, and I know I've been a big critic of the play-in tournament, but the fact that all these games on Sunday are happening at the exact same time is a great move by the NBA, yep. borrowing from international soccer, which has been done for decades. And now the NBA emulating what, you know, the NFL has started to do in Major League Baseball. Have those last games all concurrent. One big wild jamboree. And what are the game slots on Sunday? What time is everything I it was happening 12, 30 on Sunday? Pacific was uh, the East Coast. The well, Eastern yeah, Conference games are at 10. There's two sets, exactly. Gotcha. At uh, 10 a.m. our time. Yeah. Yep. Correct. And then, and then at 12 30 are all the Western Conference So games. you got seven at 10, and then you've got eight at 12 30. Okay. Two and, full racks. And then uh, go ahead and racks those guys. Totally. And then uh, as soon as the Warriors game is over, somewhere in that neighborhood of 3, 315. Grandy, are you doing Sunday? Correct. You got post game? Mm -hmm. And then you know who he's going to hand it off to when he's done, right? That's yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we'll be ready. My guy, uh, Kyle Rudolph. No. <laughs> he's taking a powder. Who are you with these days? Ephraim. E, you're back Ephraim. with Ephraim. Yeah. Okay, good. Ephraim, who's a huge Laker fan. Yeah, so that's unfortunate. I'm so, a big Ephraim fan, but... Every time you mention that, I know a little it's part tough. of my Ephraim fandom dies. No doubt, no doubt. It is fun to talk Dodgers with him though, because he'll say he's a Dodger fan, but he don't know what the hell's going on in baseball. Right. I'm trying hard to get him to Otani this whole thing up, and he's just like, "Yeah, yeah, it's crazy." And that's all I'll have to say. Like, yeah. so he he's that like he is all in on Lakers. He's one of those football players who I think likes basketball better than football, but football paid the bills. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, he's all in on Lakers. So, 5 o'clock or so, whenever Grandy's yeah. done, uh, you'll Grandy, get... Grandy, go ahead and talk block him to about yeah, 6. Yeah, go as long this as you big. want. I'll yeah. go to like 8 o'clock. We'll, well see. That's fine. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. You won't. But anyway... <laughs> Uh, Keep Mark out of the market. Whenever you're done, you will get a, uh, a Warrior fan and a Laker fan yelling at each other right here on 95.7 The Game. And I wonder if you ask this question, and I'm sure you will ask Ephraim on Sunday, the question you're asking our fans, which is... Are you more invested emotionally in this play-in and the rest of this year or the questions that are coming in the offseason? Because well, I, I wonder, as a Laker fan, where his mind is. And, you know, Warrior fans, where are you? Are you fully invested in these last three games plus play-in plus possible playoff? Or are you more intrigued by the questions that are out there in June and July and beyond. Well, I, I, there, there's something in there, what you just asked. There's something in there that I feel is sort of a tell. It's showing that some people, because all fans are different, but some people don't believe the words that are coming out of their own mouth. That's what I think. Because I hear it from a lot of you. They can go on a run. So, but, 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 but would you trade Kaminga in the offseason? It's like, well, then you don't believe they can go on a run. If you believe they can go on a run, and I'm not going to call you stupid if you do, and I'm not going to call you, uh, you know, a wet blanket if you think that the people who think they can go on a run are, are just unrealistic. I get it. I get the whole picture. They're the Warriors. They've got the DNA. They've got the people. They are getting older. It sounds absurd to be talking about a title when you're the 10 seed, but as I said and borrowed from Scott Osler, belief is free. What the hell? Like, let's just do this. This isn't where they wanted to be. It's not where we wanted them to be, but it's where they are. So let's do this because they're not out of it. And whether it ends up in a title run or not, I'm also someone who values each round and will take that for 
whatever it is. But I do think there's a handful at least of the, you know, a percentage of the base that's like, they can do it. Come on, you don't want to face the Warriors. They can go on a run. Do you think Clay is gone? Right, it's right. like, wait a minute. Because what if they did go on a run? Well, then the whole offseason conversation was for not. Right. It was a pointless exercise. How many postseason wins does it take for Good all question. of this to become, you know, a moot thing? Because if they make it out of the play in but get bounced in five, well, you you're probably thinking about blowing it up. But if they make it out of the play in okay. and they they shuck Minnesota <laughs> or OKC and then you tangle with Denver and you go seven gutsy games and the Joker hits another forty seven foot stanky leg throw and you lose in seven in Denver. But darn it, you put a scare into the defending champs. That, the, even the phrase that, run it, but then it, maybe might, you were in running back. Yeah, though. no, maybe the, yeah, like that will definitely gather some. Some just make the playoffs. But right, are, like if you really want to just eliminate every offseason conversation that we've had so far, are you counting play in victories? No, or just playoff wins? Playoff wins six. I think it might be six. Yeah, six. Yes. I think it might be more than six. That means you're getting late into the conference semifinals. Last year you went six. You got six playoff six. wins. Yep. And they did ostensibly run, run it, it back. back. Well, you got rid of Jordan Poole and you brought in. Yeah, but you brought in was, a temporary 39 year old Chris Paul. That had nothing to do with with running it back or doing something. Right. You new. kept the core together yes. and you shuffled a 30 million dollar out for a 30 million dollar in ballparking salaries there. Six. Yeah, I think it's more than that, but really, that, yeah. And I, I think if you're Joe Lacob, it would be a little bit of the insanity uh, approach if you just ran it back. But, but then, and I don't want to get into off season talk because I'm locked in on no, game eighty. No, but this is this. This is now, like because right. what? Remember now, not all six games in the playoffs are created equal. It was one thing to beat the Kings last year, gather those four wins, and then get two against the Lakers. Remember, if this team is to get six playoff wins, that means they eliminated a big boy. Right. Possibly the Nuggets. Well, last year you eliminated the three seed, yeah, which is a big boy. Not uh, Come on. The adorable little big fella. Uh, adorable little <laughs> cha-cha-cha. Totally. Coochie-coochie-coo. You snuffed the beam. Yeah. They Took remember, the bulb right out of that just thing. Just patted them right on the head and said, that was fun. Yeah. Thank you for coming. We'll see you at camp again next week. Totally. That's not going to happen this year. This year, you win four games. You took out Denver, or you took out Minnesota. And or then, OKC. And then you, right. And then you went, well, let's be real. Actually, um, yes, the Warriors could still end up being the seven. It's unlikely. Denver's going to be the one. That's a wrap. Looks like it. Last night, did it. And by the way, I don't know if you watched. Did you watch? Oh, yeah. Man. <laughs> no one's beating that team. <laughs> Good. No one's, no one's beating that team in the uh, in Denver. They're like 33-8 and eight at home. Dude. Eight home losses. They're not Boston, 35-3. and three. Yeah. Regular season's different. It is. You and, just watch yeah. them get to the fourth quarter of a very tight game and then just go, okay, that's enough. Flick. Yep. I mean, just absolutely boat race Minnesota in the fourth quarter. Um, let's talk it out. Tim on 680. Hi, Tim. You're on Will uh, with uh, Willard and Dibs. Hello, Tim. Hello. Well, it's a good call, Tim. Rack him. All right. Thanks, Tim. Rack him. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Man. Call back, Tim. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I it, say that, yeah. and, and, and that goes back to the point I'm trying to make if the, uh, if the, if the Warriors get six. If the Warriors get six... They took out a big boy, and then they went late with another big boy. Like, yeah. You probably went late with either Dallas or the Clippers. Well, the way it looks now, if you wind up in that 10-9 play-in game, and you find a way to win that, and then you beat the 7-8 loser, and you get the 8 seed, you're getting Denver. You're getting Denver. Denver's got San Antonio and Memphis left on the schedule, Denver, both on the road. And now Denver has a tiebreak over Minnesota. And Den they have a one-game lead. Yeah. They're, so Denver's they're not the losing one. to San Antonio or Memphis. Denver's the one. So I think it's even more important, now that we're looking at it in this way, in this lens, you got to get to that 8. Because you get to the 8, as Steve Kerr said in that soundbite we played on the way back in, you do get two bites at the apple. Right. But more importantly, you get a chance to avoid Denver. A chance to be by the winning seven. that eight seven. Correct. You get the seven, 
and you would get three days off because the 7-8 game is Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So you win the 7-8 game, you're the 7, you would play Saturday, and you'd have Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday off to get ready to travel to Minnesota or OKC, a much more desirable first-round opponent. By the way, Minnesota and OKC, I'd like to know who is likely to be the two. They have the exact same record, and I think Minnesota's got the tiebreaker. Minnesota's got the Hawks and the Suns. The Hawks both and the at home. Suns. Oklahoma City, in turn, um, Oklahoma City with these last two games is going to have Milwaukee and Dallas. Yeah. Both at home. I'm going to guess Milwaukee that, playing for, well, they might be playing for the two. No Giannis, but, but no Giannis. And, and they're not playing that well anyway. And Dallas, very likely to not need Sunday's game. Right, unless but, they have a chance to get the four, which would be home home court against the Clippers. They're a game back of the clip. That, that, that is the 4-5 series, but you're right. It is not decided who's at home. Right, where's game seven going to yeah. be? But uh, both those teams getting playoff ready. Giannis probably won't play. I, I think he already is out, no, for, the out yeah. for the regular season. he's ruled out for the rest of the regular season. And yes. Milwaukee's going to be the two. Uh, barring a big collapse, they got a game up in the loss column on the Knicks. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I think it's going to be Minnesota, and that's who you wanted, right? That's who I wanted. That's who you wanted, but you got to get to the eight, seven eight play in right. to get there, and they, which, so they need help. Yeah, they which help. means I, I think it goes back to New Orleans. I think you need New Orleans to beat SAC tonight, and that would help. Yeah, the problem is, is you're also going to need Phoenix to beat Sacramento. And um, I don't know if you've watched the Phoenix Suns play. They're not very good right now. They're good, and then they're awful all over the course of 20 minutes. Uh, yeah, well, right. They have spurts. They had one last night in order to beat the spurts. Clippers late. But, I mean, they beat a Clippers team that did not play any of the, you know, Clippers. Right. They didn't have any of their players. What did Bones Highland end up with last night in that game? Uh, Bones Highland went for 37. Bones. Bones Highland. Wow. Scored 37. And uh, <laughs> Brandon Boston went for 25. And that game was tight until there was like three, Who are you? three yeah. minutes left to go. And then the, the, the Suns went on a little run and, and ended up winning the game. Um, but if you saw that and you're like, oh, yeah, Suns won by 16. That thing was tight. That thing was tight the whole way. So I have no faith in the Suns. Yep. Um, I almost have more faith in the Lakers in New Orleans if they try on Sunday than I do Phoenix in Sacramento. But, look, that's where the Warriors are at. They need help, yeah. and it's not out of the question. Well, and the Suns are still playing for something, especially sure. if New Orleans loses, then they're in a flat-footed tie. Phoenix still has designs on being the six. So Phoenix is going to give it their, no their best effort. And, you know, you look at Phoenix on paper, Mark, Phoenix is probably the second best team in the West, but unfortunately, this game's not played on paper. On paper has to be one of the funniest sports phrases that we of use. Of course. You know, on paper. Uh, I mean. Well, it, on, on paper, Phoenix is a 60 win team again. On paper, the Warriors aren't the 10. Right. But. On paper, the Warriors are probably the five. Yep, somewhere in there. But they're not. No. On paper, the Clippers are probably the two. Minnesota and OKC on paper would be where the Lakers and Warriors are. Totally. But totally. it's not the way it goes. Yeah, man. I, it's going to be fun over the next four it's days. Gonna, That's kind of where I am. You're right. It's yeah. going to be really, really fun. And I don't want to think about if any of the big three are leaving. And I don't want to think, God, I don't want to think about the salary cap. I don't want to think about the luxury tax. Yep. I don't want to think about declining Chris Paul's option. I don't want to think about is Jonathan Kaminga available through trade. I don't want to think about does anybody want Wiggins. Like, I get it. There is a better than 50-50 shot that that's where we're headed sometime soon. But I don't know, man. This story now has, has my attention. And, um, you know, we've talked about it a bunch. It's not always easy to do, but to try to keep the offseason out of our, our conversations as much as possible. Steve Kerr did the same, you know, when we asked him yesterday um, how much of the offseason has to do with the way these next week, couple weeks go. 
And he's just like, I, I mean, we're, you know, we're not even thinking about it. And Clay Thompson, oh, I'm not even thinking about free agency. And his dad, yeah, we're not even thinking about it. And I'm sure they are thinking about it the same way we're thinking about the offseason. But I, I, I'd love to go through the exercise of pushing that off as far as possible because whether whether you're happy or not that the Warriors are in this position, they are. And, and it's going to be, I think, really, really compelling the way this whole thing plays out. And I feel about as good as ever that they've got a real legit chance to come out of this stupid thing, this cockamamie play-in tournament, as you call it. Yeah, especially if they can get to the eight, which doesn't seem so far-fetched anymore. If the Warriors can handle their own business and get not a lot of help, they just need a little bit of help. And it starts tonight, I think, with New Orleans beating Sacramento, and then you get the Kings to suffer one more defeat, and bada-boom, bada-bing, you are the eight. And I think if they are the eight, that gives them a great chance and a great motivation to get to the seven, and then you take on the two, and all of a sudden you might be looking at a little bit of a runny well, run. I mean, look, what we're looking at right now is tomorrow night. Again, I know that sounds like we're looking ahead, and that's because we are. Right. Like, you lose tonight, whatever. You don't deserve anything. But provided that the Warriors are able to win in Portland, tomorrow night, I view as a playoff game. Tomorrow night with New Orleans in town as a playoff game. Yeah. Um, all right, we'll get to more of your calls. Bobby Fitzgerald's going to join us a little bit later on in the show. We're presented by Fremont Bank, full-service banking, no compromises. Love your calls. Are you in on this? Um, or does the offseason just keep creeping into your mind? 888-957-9570, Willard and Dibs. Are you facing eviction or homelessness in San Francisco? EDC Radco.
Bay Area, it's Draymond Green. And you're listening to Willard and Dibs on 95.7 The Game. Okay, Dede. I was getting all ready to uh, play a little bit of our of our interview with Steve Kerr yesterday. Okay. Some key comments that he made that I thought were interesting that we could talk out a little bit with our listeners. I was all ready to do that. Um, and then I got upset. I got Why, upset. Mark? Yeah, what happened? Because I got attacked on my phone. Attacked? Attacked. By whom? Somebody the, we know? The lovely Christy. Uh-oh. Yeah. yeah. Um, I have received just within the last three minutes, twice, the pancake emoji. Uh, the pancake emoji. The pancake emoji. Please explain. Yeah. That's what I said. The hell? What, you want pancakes? Why are you, why are you texting me pancakes, honey? I know what happens when you it. get the <laughs> waffle emoji. <laughs> It's well, because maybe you're you're flip flopping, you're waffling. Well, so maybe next time you text Christy, you should tell her that she should have chosen the waffles because that's what she was trying to express. Wrong breakfast food, <laughs> sweetie. <laughs> Schnookums. Don't, don't call my girl sweetie. But anyway, honey. Whatever. You, you guys are fine. I know. You, I know you slide into her DMs all the time. It's Occasionally, fine. when I thank her for it's her fine. lasagna. Yeah, let's get it's fine. Um, whether or not she chose the right emoji, right. I am now on the defensive. My dukes are up because I am being accused of flip flopping. Oh no! And there's only one person on this earth who can debunk such an accusation, and that would be you. Okay. What have I been saying for eight weeks about the Golden State Warrior discussion? What have I wanted to avoid? You've wanted to avoid the offseason. You've been trying to stay in the moment. You've been trying to just be where we are, where your feet are. That's where you want to be. And the Warriors have got 79 behind us, three to go. We're not worried about games 81, 82, and hopefully the other games in the 80s that are yet to come. We're locked in on tonight. Okay, Portland, game 80. Do you feel that I am flip-flopping? I actually don't, Mark. Okay. Because I'd be the first one, well, maybe I'd be the second one <laughs> sure to would. call you out if you were flip-flopping. <laughs> I know you and I have both struggled at times to stay in the moment because invariably a Michael Thompson interview leads us to talk about the future. Sure. I mean, and that's in the moment. We were talking to Michael. A Steve Kerr interview, sometimes it leads you to talk about things that maybe... You know, can you imagine a time when the big three aren't all together and actually know he can't? So that's a little bit of a look ahead to the summer. But I, I don't think you've been flip flopping at all. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that. That's right. I do like pancakes. Delicious. I made waffles for the kids last week. Do you have your own waffle maker? Or I do. Look at you. Thank you. Impressive. Yeah, I don't mess around in the kitchen, dog. Yeah, I actually I kind of do. But anyway. I actually should get. A waffle maker because uh, my Very baby easy. girl, she's yeah. turned her back on uh, toast à la France. <laughs> I make toast a good a little French toast. Oh, I was going to say, what toast the hell is that? French toast. <laughs> yeah, I make a good turn French toast. Turn her back on French toast? Not into it. How the hell do you turn your back on French toast? She's not feeling it. Who doesn't like French toast? I have, I know a 19-month-old baby who she's just not into it right now. Are you now. making them with brioche bread? Uh, no, just your standard wheat bread. Try it with brioche. Okay, I'll oh, try it. Oh, wheat? Oh, that's a little... 100% honey wheat. Yeah, it's that's, delicious. That's, I'm not saying it's not delicious. You got to keep it as healthy as you can. Uh, you really don't. Not if you're making French toast. When you are dealing with uh, a wife whose nickname is Supper, uh, and she is she's very... Uh, health conscious? Very passionate about healthy food. And I'm sorry, what is it uh, you're uh, endorsing uh, Mr. Skinny Pants over there? Uh, abundant lifeweightloss.com. Thank you. What am I currently eating over here, Mark? Not, not toast à la France. No. Nor am okay. I eating waffles or pancakes. Okay. I'm so, having a salad. Uh, good. Delicious. Salads are wonderful. I like salads, too. I, I had one yesterday. So, uh, here's what I'm saying. Thank you. The flip and the flop oh, boy. is not the thing to say here. Because what she's accusing me of is, oh, last week you thought there was no way they were going on a run. And now look who's all excited about the play-in tournament. No, 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 no. I have not said at any point today, we've been talking for over an hour. Have I said at any point today, hey, Dibs, I really think this season's going somewhere. I think they're going to win. I think they're going to win next week. And then I think they're going to take down Denver. I watched Denver last night. You know what I decided? Jokic overrated. Forget that. 
We got DNA, Dibs. We got the chef, and we have DNA. We going to be championship. Have I said that to you today? No, you haven't, Mark. Okay. Thank he you. hasn't, Christy. Thank you. I don't have it on Christy. tape, though. I can play it Oh, back. thank you, uh, Grandy. I appreciate that. That's good. I've not said that. I don't know where this is going to go. I'm simply saying that we're here, and I'm in. I'm in for the trip. It might be a short one. It happened to me once in college. We're all in the dorm rooms doing things we weren't supposed to do. And someone looked at someone else and went, you know what we should do right now? We should go to Vegas. Let's go to Vegas. From San Luis. From San Luis Obispo. <laughs> Not an easy drive. <laughs> what? And, and, and for some reason, to that group that night, it made sense. Mm. And everyone went, let's go. It's got to be about seven hours That's from That's right. There. You know how far we made it? 20 minutes. 20 minutes into the trip, the police pulled us over, and that was the end of that trip. And that might be what happens to the Warriors next Wednesday night. Was it an incarceration no. sensation? <laughs> no, and it was. Whoop, whoop. And no. And yeah. no, and for the driver, it was not an inebriation sensation either. Thank you. That's it, what it, I was was implying, but yeah. it was not. But it was, you know, like if you're a police officer in the Central Coast and some van flies by at two in the morning with like nine college students in it, you just pull it over. Yeah. For no reason. You're just like, let's check. And so they did, and then they were like, you, you guys should go home. <laughs> You're not we're going like, to Vegas? Oh, you're probably right. <laughs> oh, okay, we'll go home. Fish in a barrel. Yeah, that might be the Warriors' playoff trip. We're going to the play-in tournament! <laughs> whoop, whoop. Let's go home. Seriously. That might happen. I'm not here to say that it won't, but I can't wait to see what plays out over the next week and a half. Like, I'm in even on tonight. Right. I'm in on this simultaneous basketball that matters to Warriors fans, two games at the same time. Let's go. I'm I'm in on that. I don't want to talk about the offseason. That's different than me saying the offseason is not going to start for two more months. I know it. I can feel it. Here it comes. The Warriors are great. They're playing better. Let's take a look. Yeah. That's where I'm at. So you're ready to hop in the van and go to Vegas. Even yeah. though, even though it might in the be back a of your mind, trip. yeah, you might get pulled over right there on one on one, right before you get you. to uh, right Pismo the, Beach. Right the, well, we're going the other way. We're going up the Quest of Grade. You got to find the right spot to go east. Okay. So we were going north to go south. Going north to go yeah. east to go south. That's correct. I got gotcha. you. I yeah. thought you'd go south to go east to no, so then you, go you, further east. Yeah, head up to the to, to, to forty six and pass the Robles. Get yourself out to Highway Five. And gotcha. Then, uh, do, and then go then down. Do the wow. darn thing. Yeah. That's, I mean, well, we no easy way to do it. <laughs> well, we had a lot of people. We were going to share the driving. Right. So anyway, that that might happen. I totally acknowledge that. I'll be the first one to sit here and say it. But I don't know, man. That that sort of underlies the challenge, I think, that, that that's facing all of us right now. And I get it. This is different. This is different for Warrior fans. We don't know what to do with this. And so that's the conflict that I hear. Yeah. I hear the conflict of, we can do this. We're the Warriors. You know what, though? This isn't working. We should trade Wiggins in a week and a half. But come on. We can do it. It's We're like, going to run. Right. I don't know what I mean. I, all I'm saying is let's just take half of that and save it for when it matters. Right. You don't need to find an Andrew Wiggins trade yet. Well, because you don't know if that's even going to be needed. Right. And you and I talked about it last hour about how many playoff wins would it take for that conversation to be non-existent. And if it's, you know, you think it's six wins, and I think that it's maybe more than that, but you can't even get to, into that part of the conversation until you get into the playoffs. So before you get into the playoffs... You got through the play-in. And before you can get through the play-in, you've got to know where you're going to be in the play-in. It's either Tuesday on the road somewhere, Wednesday at home somewhere, or Wednesday on the road somewhere. You don't even know what your road is through the play-in. So let's get through Portland, and we'll reconvene tomorrow. I don't think you'll be here, but uh, my buddy Larry Kruger will be. Yep. And you, our dear friends in the audience, will talk tomorrow about what took place tonight and what that means for the final two games. You think they're going on a run? Uh, no, I don't, Mark. Yeah, yeah. And I haven't I'm thought same. that this whole time. <laughs> same. Probably not. And But but we're wrong three, three, four times a day. And to play off of your Vegas road trip analogy, yeah. 
I don't think we're going to make it to Vegas, but I'm going to get in the van anyway. That's right. That's and, exactly what I thought that night. And I'm if, like, this you know is what? probably not going to go anywhere, yeah. but let's see where it goes. I've got nothing else to do. And <laughs> so, you know what? Pile me in the van and uh, let's see how far this thing goes. So this is what I'm dealing with with my absolute lovely here. She says, one week ago, you were all naysaying, and I predicted they had a 75% chance of winning both play-in games. I, I knew, you love math, Dibs. you got to listen to this. Okay. I said they had a 75% chance of winning both play-in games and a 75% chance of losing the first. Okay. That's, <laughs> that, uh, that strikes me as uh, not adding up. That's called playing both oh, well, sides you, of the aisle. Thank you. Yeah. I'm like, you can't, like, you can't. You want to talk, talk about breakfast food. I think the Warriors are going to win tonight, but I think the Blazers probably will, too. Yeah. Boom, you're ah, covered. There you go. It's I like was right. Going to roulette and playing the red and the black <laughs> and hoping it doesn't come up as green. You know? Sponsored by the Alameda County Probation Department. Uh, 888-957-9570. And uh, uh, Bob Fitzgerald in an hour. And it's Willard and Dibs. Want a career with purpose, great pay, outstanding benefits? And
Hey, Dibs, I really think this season's going somewhere. I think they're going to win. I think they're going to win next week, and I think they're going to take down Denver. I watched Denver last night. You know what I decided? Jokic overrated. Forget that. We got DNA, Dibs. We got the chef, and we have DNA. We going to be championship. Now, back to <laughs> Willard and Dibs on 95.7 The Game. Yep, that's my opinion. So, Lucas, if you could put that on Twitter, please, that yeah. would be great. Thank you. Hashtag Christy was right. <laughs> Hashtag breakfast foods. Hashtag waffles. Hashtag pancakes. She did find the waffle emoji after the afterward. Good. Yes. Good. Yeah. I'm glad you directed. You do back. always yeah. complain about people not listening to the show. Can I actually tweet that and just to see who will react to it and think you're um, serious? Um, what do you mean I complain about people not listening? The to name the show? of your autobiography right. is going to be "I Never Said That." I never said that. Turns Did out you, you did say it. I want to make sure, Lucas, because there's there's two ways that someone could interpret what you just said. You you mean that I get annoyed when people aren't actually listening to what's being said. Sure. Not, not I get mad because people don't listen to the show. Because people do listen to the show. Some. We're doing okay. No, we're doing great. But yeah. also, there's the don't majority you, don't, don't in the world. Say, well, yes, yes. There are more in people the out world. there. Aren't there more people? Don't you always tell me there are more people who don't watch the Super Bowl than do, right? Yeah, there's seven plus billion people on the planet. Yeah, and how many watch the Super Bowl? Not even a billion. Weirdos. That thing is almost unwatched. What are they? What are? The, what is everybody doing? What are you doing that day? Well, there What's are a lot of people on? who don't have uh, the ability to have a television sure, set. Sure, I get that. I would say there's probably of the seven billion people on Earth. How many have access to the Super Bowl? Probably, uh, I would say about half. Okay, half so half the three, seven billion, three and a half billion, correct. And then, and then, how many watts? Like one hundred and forty million? More than that worldwide. One twenty-four okay. this last year. Worldwide. Mm, sure. Mm, See, Lucas. If, <laughs> if you're gonna throw stuff out from the blind spot, no, that's at least sports be able radio. To back no, that thing up. No, no, no. Just throw it out. Then you worry about it later. Well, yeah. then when I say worldwide, then he should say yeah. Or, Definitely. Or I'll look. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Be definitive in there your you BS. <laughs> How do you think I've gotten this far in Seriously, 25 years? You can't get a job in sports radio if you're afraid to just throw it out there, even if you know if it's true or not. Can confirm 123.7 million worldwide. Uh, Perfect. What, what's everybody else doing? Right. So that's 3.3 and a half billion people. Most are probably asleep Who if are you think about time choosing. zones and all that. Yeah, but they could, you know, DVR it or something. Right. right. <laughs> and, and I just ballparked that half of the people on the planet don't have... What's everybody doing? Right. I don't understand that. Gardening? At all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I told you that year I almost followed somebody. It was halftime, and I don't remember what the year was. I wasn't that into the musical act, and I just looked out the window, and there was a guy going for a run, and I swear to God I almost chased him down the street because I just wanted to talk to him. Sir... Do you know that you're not supposed to be out here right now? There's a very large football game on. What are you doing? <laughs> this is not time for exercise. We've got hummus and bruschetta in here. What are you doing out here? I wanted to invite him in. I'm like, sir, I think there's, I think you don't know. Do you not know about today? You're supposed to be inside. What yeah. are you doing here? Yeah. I didn't, well, I don't get it. But I know a guy who doesn't watch the Super Bowl and he could care less about the Super Bowl. So And I'd like to talk to him. Yeah. It's my son. I'll put you in touch with him. Oh, well, I like to talk to him about a yeah. bunch of stuff. Yeah, yeah. He's just <laughs> He's not into I'd it. Like to, yeah, I, I know is, what he's into. It's fine. Yeah. All kinds of criminal activity. No. Anyway. Yeah. Face value concert tickets uh, for shows like Taylor Swift. Right. Because those are everywhere. Anyway. If you're smart, you can find him. <laughs> It's lazy. <laughs> no, believe me, I know where this is going to go. Next time Taylor comes to town, I'd like to talk to him. Exactly. Because I have a 15-year-old daughter. No doubt. And so please and thank you. Yeah. Anyway. Put you in touch with Nina. Appreciate it. Yep. And I will apologize to her and everything. <laughs> uh, we're streaming live on Twitch and YouTube. Go to twitch.tv slash 957thegame, youtube.com slash 957thegame. That's where you can see how small Dan Dibley is. This is just a wee little man. This is a tiny little thing. Christy hopped into the YouTube chat, and she called you Skinny Dibley. Yeah, I'm getting there. Is that your new nickname? Hopefully. I like it. Hopefully, we'll keep working on it. All right. You know. um, it's all powered by First NorCal Credit Union, and you can also download the free Odyssey app there, Twitch or YouTube. little QR code, bottom right corner of both of our 
uh, our digital streams there and uh, download it with your smartphone and poof, you've got yourself all set. So check this out. Uh, this is what Steve Kerr said when we asked him, like, what what turned this around? You looked one way, now you look another way. Why? Just the overall uh, growth of the team. You know, guys like Jonathan, Brandon, Trace, young guys, Moses, these guys, the young guys who have progressed and become you know, really important players for us in terms of winning and losing. That's been huge. And then I, I just think the vets have helped foster that environment. They've mentored these young guys really well. Having Chris Ball to me is such a huge advantage uh, for, for our group. Uh, the non-Steff minutes, I've never been more comfortable with them than I am this year because of Chris. So, you know, getting him back from injury, but also having him mentoring uh, the younger group. Um, it's a really, really good group of guys and a well-balanced roster. So we're, uh, we're healthy and knock on wood, hopefully we'll stay that way. Well, it's such an interesting answer because I think it goes to the heart of there's the, just what has been a forever debate the last few years of Warrior basketball. When you see young guys develop, do you think to yourself, Steve, you should have gone to them early? Or do you think to yourself, no, they're playing now because they're ready to play? There's no way to answer it. When they're on right. the bench, they're on the bench. We don't know. But um, it, it sort of defines which kind of a Warrior fan you are in terms of you see Jonathan Kaminga play well, and you either go, see, he would have played that well if you had gone to him in November. Or you think to yourself, hey, Jonathan, Jonathan's clicking now. And so now he's ready to go, so that's why they're playing him. Yeah, I tend to lean toward the head coach who's been here, and during that time they've won four championships, and they've been to two other NBA finals. He's been to six finals in his, what, 10 years at the helm of the Golden State Warriors. So when you have a question like this that is virtually unanswerable, right. you can have your opinion, but no one will ever know. If he would have played Jonathan Kaminga from day one and given him 30 minutes a night, would Kaminga be better? Would the team be better? That is an answer that you can't possibly know because it didn't actually happen. So I look at the way Kaminga has developed, and I give the credit mostly to Jonathan Kaminga, but I also give yeah. the coaching staff credit as well. And the TJD one's even more interesting because some people are now saying, oh, he should have been playing from the get-go. Well, I don't know if he should have been playing from the get-go, and I will default to the head coach who's with him every single day and has seen his own development from TJD. And now you got to a point where when you started playing him regularly, he took off. Would he have been doing this back in October or did, was he not ready until February? Again, it's unanswerable. And for me as a warrior fan, I'm willing to give the benefit of the doubt to Steve Kerr because I think he's done wonderful things with this team. Um, Grandy brought this up before uh, we even got started today. He reminded me of the last time the Warriors played Portland. They played Portland a bunch of times early in the year. And I, if my memory serves from our conversation, he said the last time they played Portland was December 6th. And if you remember, the Warriors were playing a sleepy first half, and it was not going well. Um, that was it, the first time they played Portland. Oh, that was the first time? They played them on the 6th, 17th, and 23rd of December. Of December, okay. Three straight, boom, boom, boom. Uh, which one, and I think it was the first one, was the one where Kaminga came in in the second half, played like the final 15 minutes of the game or so, and really sparked them to the victory. Was that the 6th? Yeah, he played 16-43 in that game. Yeah. He went 6-of-6 six six from the floor. And he had 13. He was a plus 13. The Warriors won that gutsy win by four right. to get to 10 and 11. And they don't win without him. Right. They don't win without him. But the, the cool thought that he brought up was the idea that imagine now, that's a while ago, it's December 6th. The other way of saying it is, yeah, that's only, uh, what, that's only three, four months ago. Right. And uh, he, Jonathan Kaminga, was told by Steve Kerr before that game, yeah, sorry, uh, you're you're not in the rotation tonight. You're you're not there yet. Like he got the Moody Looney Sharich thing four months ago. He got the yeah, you're not you're not in our plans. I I don't know if everyone else has the same sort of reaction I do. I think so. Where you're like, God, that Jonathan Kaminga. The guy we now know, three, four months ago, was like not in the plans for, for, for a lot of nights. 
And and that night was one of the nights that I think really started the angst because he came in and and won the game for them. And so that made a lot of people go, see, dude, you got to get him in there. And then for another month or so, Steve kind of waffled still or pancaked, whichever one right, you like. Right. He kind of went back and forth, and he didn't really commit to Kaminga, leading to the Shams tweet of Jonathan Kaminga has lost faith in in Steve Kerr. That brings them to a discussion, and they've worked much better together since then. So I don't know. It's interesting. It's pretty wild to think about that and then where that shapes your head for the whole year. Like think about the journey that was and why they look so different now than they did then. Because, yeah, just four months ago, they didn't even want Jonathan to play on some nights. Yeah. At all. Right, and this is a and, great case study. And now D- Draymond Green's like, that's our two. He's our two. Yeah. Four months ago, they didn't want him on the floor. He comes in, they're down 77-66. And think about it. To the Blazers. You're 9-11 and on the year, and you're playing against Portland at home, and you're down 77-66. Steve Kerr takes time out with 4.45 to go, and in comes Kaminga for Draymond Green. And from that point forward... You went on and you won the game by four. He was a plus 15. He played every minute the rest of the way. But still, as you mentioned, <laughs> it, it wasn't like, okay, I'm sold on you, Kaminga. Go out there and get your 30 minutes a night. It still took some time yep. for Kaminga to earn the trust of Steve Kerr. And that's why many fans have been critical of Steve. And, yeah, you could look at that and say maybe Kaminga should have been playing more and should have been playing more often and earlier in the year. But I look at what the team was in totality that night. Wiggins, 3 of 12. Clay, 3 of 13. Uh, Steph was 8 of 18 with four turnovers. Your top-line guys weren't very good. No. So you needed Kaminga to come in and save the day. Well, well, yeah, and December was, you know, Clay mental journey time. Right. He wasn't there yet. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, you hadn't really found the solution in anybody, and then... It wasn't too long after that where Draymond Green was asked to not play basketball anymore. Uh, I think it was December 12th against Phoenix when uh, he got ejected for hitting Nurkic. Mm, but that wasn't the, uh, which was the one that led to the, was that it? Was that the suspension? Yeah, the first one was go bear with the choke. Right. And that was early in the year. And then the Nurkic was when he was like, Draymond, go bye-bye. Right. Right. Was that 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 early? Okay. Yeah. That was December twelfth. So that was two nights later. And he missed a little bit over a month or so or around a month. Yeah, more than a dozen games. I think he ended up missing fifteen. He was cleared to play and then there was a few games he didn't play to ramp back up. Right. Um, So but that's where they were and you know, they they lost to Phoenix that night. They that was one of their three straight losses. They fell to ten and fourteen. So Steve was searching for not only the real Kaminga, please stand up. He was searching for anything at anything, that point. Anything. And it was when Draymond got suspended that Kaminga got his opportunity out of necessity more than any other reason, I think. I, uh, yeah, that's an interesting sort of a, 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 of a spot to, uh, to discuss this a little bit. I mean, I feel like Steve Kerr has caught a lot of strays this year. I really do. And I've made that point this year based on the fact that I don't think that this was an easy year to coach because of a lot of the things that the players started, uh, st- I don't want to say doing, but like, yeah, Clay Clay had to figure out being okay with himself. Jonathan had to figure out how to play better, be more well-rounded. And then Steve had to figure out how to get him an opportunity. And then Wiggins had to, you know, whatever Wiggins is always doing. And all these guys um, had to had to figure it out. And you had to usher in a future Hall of Famer into the lineup and figure him out. And then he got hurt. And then you had to bring it back. Here's what I'm getting at. I always view it this way with coaching. If your team is way better at the end of the year than the beginning, that's great coaching. If your team is way better at the beginning than it is at the end, that's bad coaching. Hey, Nick Sirianni, I'm kind of talking to you. Yeah, boy. If you're way better at the end 
that's good coaching. If you're way better at the beginning, that's bad coaching. So this to Putting me... Putting health aside, of course. Yes, yeah. of course. Yeah. This year, despite all the strays and the opinions we've heard, now that we've arrived at today, I think Steve Kerr has done a damn good job. I really do. Steiny gave him an A minus. They're way better right now than they were at the beginning, and that that's coaching. Like things well, have and been they're involved. healthier. Yeah. Well, sure, of course. But even putting aside health, the only guy who is not in a better spot now than he was at the start of the year is Dario Saric. Yeah. And you could add in Kavon Looney, I or, think. Yeah, and maybe, I guess, a little bit of Moody. He's all over the place, but yeah. I, I think Moody's it. exactly the, the player that they thought he was in the, in the start of the year. Now, is he not getting as much opportunity as he should? That's a question for next year, depending on if he's still here or not, and that's an ongoing thing. You don't have minutes for everybody, Steve will tell you, but the thing about Kaminga... His first 22 games that he played, when he was coming off the bench, he averaged 11.9 in 20 and a half minutes a game. Clearly, he was not used as much as he could have been used, and he wasn't producing when he was used. Draymond gets suspended. He goes into the starting lineup, and boom. Minutes go up, production goes up, confidence goes up, and all the rest of it. So would he have been better earlier had he been given more of an opportunity? Perhaps, but yep. Steve Kerr is always going to default to the veterans, and so those minutes were going to Wiggins and Draymond, and when Draymond had to go bye-bye, hmm. then Kaminga got to start, and Kaminga took off. Uh, 888-957-9570. Hey, Lucas, is this Junior or JR? Is it Junior or JR? Junior. Want, okay. All right. Junior. Hey, junior in Pacifica. Hey, Junior, what's up? Hey, I am going to quote the late, great Bruce Willis uh, at this point. One of his best lines, wah, wah, call the wambulance, okay? Because if Steve Kerr did not lean heavily on his veterans, we would have to give back that parade from two years ago. That, that championship was like a bunch of master criminals cracking the toughest bank safe in the world that they brought home trophy with the, with the talent and so on that they had and some of the other teams had. It was amazing, and they got it by leaning on the old heads. Now, I can agree that maybe the thermostat should have been set a little bit more to youth, you know, after that. But what the heck? We, we aren't giving that championship back. We aren't giving the development this year back. The other, other point I just want to make is that Kaminga took a hand in his own development with that play me or trade me kind of stuff. Artfully played through his team rather than through himself. Yep. But uh, I think it's. But I think it's been uh, exciting and fun and and maybe a couple of things I would tweak, but then you might lose some of the great things that you got. Hey, uh, Junior, before you go, uh, you should first apologize to Bruce Willis. Yeah, still with us. Yeah. Oh. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. my apologies. Okay, yeah, no. yeah. I had to stop out. <laughs> now, now, and then uh, other than that, yeah, you make... I think a really strong point. Thank you for the call, Junior. And this is what this is one of the things I've been getting at. At least admit that this is a hell of a, a of a needle to thread, if you will, to 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 look at Steve Kerr and go, you need to you need to develop the young guys and you need to give them a big shot, but also we're going for a title. Now, I know what a lot of people say about that. Oh, come on, man. We're not actually title contenders. Uh, you don't get to do that at the beginning of the season. That game we're talking about, you said, was the 21st game of the year. Right. 20, 21st game of the year. You were 9-11. and 11. You were 9-11, and 11, but you've got Curry and Clay and Draymond and Chris Paul joined the team, and you were... Wiggins. At, and, you were, and, and at that moment, you were 14 months removed from a parade. Okay? Yep. That's where you were. And for some reason, people will go, come on, just give up. Just develop them. That's not right. You don't, you don't do it that way. And even if it would have been good to get Jonathan in 10 games earlier, 12 games earlier, whatever, I could acknowledge that. I think Steve could acknowledge that. If you could acknowledge that it's not that easy to know exactly when to do it because those two things we have learned better than any franchise in America. 
Those two things do not happen at the same time. Take it next time anyone ever says two timelines, just crumple that up and throw it in the trash. You cannot win a title while also developing three or four young players with key minutes at the same time. You can't do that in the NBA. It doesn't work. Very difficult. And I think about if these two rookies this year were on the championship team two years ago, how would they be developing in that same construct that they had? They probably wouldn't be developing as fast, but I think that they'd be more of uh, contributors than Moody, Kaminga, and Wiseman were. Wiseman was hurt all year. Kaminga was mostly a garbage time guy, and Moody didn't play either. But I think Pods, the Poughkeepsie kid, as we <laughs> like to call him, I think he's more ready to contribute, and certainly TJD is as a 24-year-old rookie. So not all rookies are developed in the same way. I think these two would have been able to develop more in that championship team than the you know Jonathan Kaminga, very raw as an 18-year-old, and Moody at 19, and Wiseman, heck, he, he got hurt before the year even started, and he missed the whole season. Uh, Bruce Willis just seen two days ago in the passenger seat of a vehicle in Sherman Oaks, California. Really, really, yeah. really sad story. Uh, it with, is. Uh, it is. He's been yeah diagnosed with uh, with uh, dementia. It's beyond dementia. What he has yeah. is it's a dementia related uh, illness. But man, just so sad to see how quickly he's fallen into ill health. Yeah, sixty nine years old, uh, but very much yeah. uh, still with us. It's a good today. correction. Yeah, thanks. appreciate that. Just Wait. one more piece about Kaminga and the development before we go back to the phones. No, go for it. Opening 18 games, he's coming off the bench. Yep. He shot 45% from the floor, 24% from three. Oof. 11.3 a night, uh, three rebounds. How many minutes? 20 minutes. Okay, that's tough. 20 but... minutes, he's shooting it nine times. Yep. He was shooting too many threes. He wasn't rebounding. His defense was very suspect. So... Yep. And that was the reason why his development was slow played because he was not playing winning basketball. I, I, like maybe we slant too far in the other direction. I get it. We do. Yeah. But I. But Steve's I, a friend of the program. Well, but no, I don't mean just for Steve. Right. This goes for Shanahan. This you know goes for this goes for the Giants organization and the fact that they won't call up Luciano and Free Matos. I just think if you're awesome in professional sports, you you get on the field. Right. If you're amazing behind the scenes, if you're doing all the right things, you have the perfect attitude, and you kick butt, and you are more talented than the next person, they let you in. They let you in. They're not sitting there being like, I think he's the best option for us, but... Hasn't had his 24th birthday yet, yeah, so can't play that's him. a no from me, dog. <laughs> right. I just don't think they do that. We're presented by Fremont Bank, full-service banking, no compromises. Hold on a second. Uh, we got a few calls, but one of them says Kerr is doing a terrible job. Okay, let's have that conversation coming up. Right here on Withered in Dibs. Steve, did we lose you? Yeah, I'm, no, I'm sorry. I'm here.
Wah, wah, call the wambulance. Now, back to Willard and Dibs on 95.7 The Game. Yeah, he came out hot. Yeah. Wah, wah, call the wambulance came right after he... Um, he made Bruce Willis pass away. And that's my bit, Mark. It's been my bit for years. No joke. Yeah, so rule, just so you know, callers, please do not call this show and um, and, 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 and and kill people who are still alive. It's not cool. We have Dan Dibley here yeah. to, to do that. I haven't done that in a while. You haven't? Either, no. Who's the last person you did it to? Can't remember, but it might have been Bob Barker when he was still with us. Someone's like, uh, he's 99 and he's alive and well. Someone did it. I was listening to the radio. It was not us. I was listening. Uh, I was out of town. I think it was in San Diego listening to my old friends down there. And someone killed Bill Walton a couple years ago. Horrible. I'm like, wait a minute. No, I just saw him on TV. Yeah, like, especially in San Diego. You can't kill Bill Walton in San Diego. Right, That's legend. his town. Exactly. Well, to be fair, he'd probably confirm, oh, I did pass away 17 years ago to the day. That's a pretty good Walton right there. I was, I was on a trip. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, that's good. All right. Um, so Steve Kerr's doing a terrible job, says Joe in San Jose. I'm I, excited to hear this. I, I'm, I'm excited. Uh, go ahead, Joe. What's up? Hey guys, thanks for taking my call. Yeah, I, it took Kaminga to go public for him to get playing time. I thought Kaminga should have played a long time ago, but once Kaminga went public, then mysteriously Kaminga started playing, and he, and he made a big difference. And all the other thing is that the turnovers. Steve Kerr never fixed the turnover because they had talent; they could overcome the turnovers. But now it's their margin of error is just has reduced because they're an aging great team. They're a great team. Don't get me wrong about that. They have greatness. You can see it in them. But they're struggling to find that greatness. And um, and that's just part of aging, you know what I mean? But I, I just think Steve Kerr, um, he's not... Let me ask you guys a question. Okay. If the Warriors get knocked out in the first round in a playing game, would you still consider Steve Kerr doing a great job, did a great, fantastic job? Well, I have a hard time removing Steve Kerr this year from Steve Kerr all the years, right, Joe? So um, would I still consider Steve Kerr having done a good job this year if they get knocked out next week? Yes. Yes. Yes, I would. And, I like, I'll meet you halfway, though, in that I do think Jonathan Kaminga could have played a little bit earlier. However, I think that you are removing any accountability to Jonathan for when he played. Do you see any of that? Do you see any of it being on Jonathan for the things that he wasn't doing on the floor when he was being given opportunities early? Well, there's, a, there's always a learning curve, and you only can fix those learning curves when you play it. And um, so the fact that he didn't play, he couldn't fix, you know, there's a learning curve in the NBA. I mean, this is the best of the best. So um, maybe if he had fixed it early and played earlier, they could have gotten fixed earlier. And that could have um, uh, cost the Warriors and won more games. Ooh. But, you know, there's always that learning curve. And you only could fix it if you you in action. You're on the playing field, not on the, on the sideline. No doubt. But, Joe, didn't you just answer your own point there? Like you just said, that if they do that and they go to them earlier for the learning curve, they could have cost themselves games, which uh, for a team that has high aspirations, they can't take that chance, right? I mean, the results are the results. I mean, they, they're struggling to get into that. I mean, you know. I mean, you, if you if they're a, a number five or a number four seed, then I I can agree with you. But they're struggling right now, even with the best of the best. Right, but but I guess what I'm saying, Joe, is is it your belief that they would be that four or five if they had gone to Kaminga earlier? I don't think they'd have been that high, but they would have had a better chance. Yeah. Okay, Joe. Thanks, thanks very Joe. much. Yeah. I just I, I I like I don't see that at all. I I like. Yes, I will buy this. Jonathan Kaminga goes public to Shams, and then poof, that leads to a meeting. And yes, he's had more minutes since then. Yeah. And so it does make you wonder. You're like, okay, did he just talk you into it? He 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 hit a pressure point. Um, I think Steve could have gone to Jonathan a little bit earlier, but not a lot. Right. Not and, a lot. He well, hadn't earned it. He did go to him, and he went to him out of necessity because Draymond Green got suspended. 
because he couldn't control himself. And when that Shams tweet came out, it was January 5th. Up to that point, Kaminga had played 33 games, 22 minutes a night. He's averaging 12.8, four rebounds, not shooting it well from three. Okay from the floor, starting to play better, but the frustration came from the quick hook that he was getting. And even when he was starting, he played 19 minutes against Denver. He played 23 minutes in back-to-back games, and I don't think that Kaminga felt like he was getting as much uh, run as he should have. And then the game after, Mark, the game after the tweet comes out, Kaminga gets 35 and a half minutes in a win over Detroit, and he goes for just 11 points. But that was the moment where Steve was kind of like, all right, you want to play? Here you go. Yeah. Have all the minutes you want against Detroit. By the way, the game on Tuesday night feels very similar to the numbers that you talked about for early in the season. Yep. He's only been back for two games. Off the bench both times. He's phenomenal against Utah. Goes 9 of 11 for the field and goes 21 and 10 in 27 minutes. Then, two nights later, in L.A., in a score fest, he only gets 21 minutes and he only scores eight. Why? Largely because Wiggins was better of the two. Yep. And that's probably going to be the cadence. Whichever one is better is going to get the extra five minutes. And so 21 minutes and eight points, that sounds a lot like the Jonathan Kaminga you were talking about early in the year. Yeah. So he still is prone to to fall into that. I don't think that wh- while I do think that they could have gone to him a bit earlier, I don't think it would have changed the standings very much. And I will stand by my point, which is a lot of things for a lot of players happen. You have to figure them out. You have to go through all of the algorithms of this guy with that guy, and then there's a suspension and an injury. You have to figure all of that out. And if you do, by the end of the year, and at the end of the year, you are a much better product than you were at the beginning of the year, I'm going to give some credit to coaching when that happens. Yeah. And that has been the Warriors story this year. And now you're in a spot where three games left to go, game 80 tonight, against Portland, you for the first time, and tonight isn't a good example because you won't have the nine-man rotation that you discovered against L.A., but you feel like going into the play-in, you know who your nine are going to be. Tonight's an interesting one because no Clay and no Draymond, so what do you do with your starting lineup? Do you put in Chris Paul to play alongside Steph Curry? Do you bring in Wiggins, I mean Kaminga to play alongside Wiggins and TJD? Probably. Even though those two have not played great together. Although, right, we talked to Steve about that yesterday, and he 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 did say that um that 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 that's getting better. That's gotten much better in the second half of the season, right? Yep, it, definitely. And I think the metrics would uh meet that out as far as how, you know, the three and four man combinations have improved with Kaminga and Wiggins. And another thing about the rotation tonight, you're gonna see Kavon Looney get uh, more chance to get in there without Draymond Green, and you're going to get Moses Moody. And the Moody game log is fascinating yeah, because go. he goes from no minutes to 28 minutes at the drop of a hat based on who's available. And tonight, no Clay and no Draymond. So Moody's going to get elevated. Kavon probably will get 15 minutes or so. And you're going to get a, a long look at TJD and uh, Podjemski as well. I, I, yeah, I might start both the rookies. I, I might keep Chris Paul... I love Chris Paul in that second unit. Yep. Um, he's going to be in the closing lineup, I would think, but I might go Steph, Pajemski, Wiggins, Kaminga, TJD starting lineup. And then you'll have uh, GP2 coming off along with CP. CP and GP. And some Moody. And double M's and Kavon. Yeah, and some Moody. Would yeah, be your nine man rotation. If you, yeah, if you need, if you need, uh, need, need some, maybe a, some messy a stuff down there. Dash low. of Lester and Gee. Well, that's that's when it, yeah, that's when you're ready to light the cigar. No, I, but I do think one of them might get more yeah, meaningful might. minutes might. tonight. When especially, you know, when you think about how thin you'll be at the two and, and four position without Clay and Draymond. Uh, no doubt. Let's go to Charles, who's up in Canada in Ontario. Hey, Charles, what's up? I'm good. How about you? Uh, we're fantastic, man. Thank you for calling. <laughs> yeah. So. I listen to uh, all these uh, sports analysts. I get so mad and frustrated when they when they count the Warriors out. <laughs> now, if if you look back at the Warriors, they struggle on uh, four different things. One, Clay is not shooting the ball well. 
Wiggins took some time off, came back, a little rusty. Draymond had some time off with suspension. And uh, Steve Kerr had rotation issue, trying to figure out what the rotation is. Now that he has figured out what the rotation is, Clay is now shooting the ball uh, properly. Wiggins is back. He looked like the old Wiggins. Draymond's back. I don't see any team in the league right now that can beat the Warriors in the seventeen series. I hear them talk about Denver Nuggets. The Nuggets cannot beat the Warriors in the seventeen series. <laughs> you really think that, Charles? Hundred percent. Why? Have you watched a lot of the Denver Nuggets? I watched the Warriors versus the Nuggets. I watched every Golden State game. I haven't missed a single game. I've been following the Warriors for ten years. No, but have you watched the Nuggets? Like this year, did you watch them? Play. Did you watch them last night? I saw the game last night. They play against a very immature team when it comes to crush down decisions. Yeah, that's true. That's that's a good point. Team will have a good team. They have a very good defensive uh, lineup. The last five minutes of the game, they put the ball in Edward's hands. He doesn't know how to make decisions. During the playoffs, that really matters, and that's when Golden State comes in. And Kids need to understand you got you got the game plan for Seth Curry. But everyone talks about the Joker, uh Anthony Error, LGA, the Celtics. Why not the Warriors? Well, I, I mean for a few reasons, Charles. And Charles, thank you. Here well, I, I'll meet you in the middle. I don't know about you, Debs, but here's what I'd say. Do I think it's unfathomable but that the Warriors could beat the Nuggets in a series? I don't think it's unfathomable. No. Um, but but the way, Charles, the way you phrased it, the Nuggets cannot beat the Warriors in a seven-game series. Yes, they can. Right. <laughs> oh, 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 yes, they can. A lot of teams can. Um, the, the Nuggets have beaten them uh, 10 of the last 11 times. Correct. Including seven in a row. Yeah. I, I, I just like, if, if the Warriors are at their best, are they going to be a really hard out? Can they beat anyone? These things are all true. But... You you also have to look at the circumstances that that are what they are. For the Warriors to beat any of these teams, they're going to have to do the entire thing on the road, and that's coming off of high leveraged urgency one and done games, or at least one of them, at least one of them. Right next Tuesday, if which will be on the road. Right, if everything goes perfect, they get to be like, for instance, in New Orleans next Tuesday night. They win that game, get three days off, and go to Minnesota. And whatever they do after that, it's all on the road. Uh, like, to say that, oh, and that's it. Like, no one can beat them. Oh, my God. Well, yes, they can. This is what well, If the Warriors were to do something like that, this would be probably the most unbelievable playoff run in the history of the league. How about that? Well, I wouldn't no, go that far. No. You wouldn't? When the Warriors, the We Believe team, beat a 67-win Dallas team as an 8 over a 1, but, that to me would be, that was more improbable than this. But that's one series. He's saying nobody can beat the Warriors in a seven-game series. In other words, the title is theirs. Right. If so they're the, going to win one or two play-in games and then win 16 playoff games? Correct. If they went from the play-in to an NBA championship, that would be more impressive, more remarkable than we believe winning one series as an eight over a one. That's what I'm saying. Okay, I, I think like, that like to even Warriors, entertain the, that is, the, uh, the Warriors, we can entertain that. I mean, the Warriors winning a championship, that's the way I want to say it from here on out. I'm not going to dream crush. I'm not going to tell you it's no, not possible. You can believe that. If I'm you want to dream it, I'm believe it. I'm going to tell you it's going to be the greatest achievement in the history of the National Basketball Association. They are 60 to one right now to win the NBA championship. And if they were to do that, that would be series wins over likely Denver, Minnesota, and the Clippers or Dallas would be the way that would have to go. Yep. And then you go ahead and probably beat Boston, a team that has been the class of the league, including Denver, and, for the entirety of the season. And there will be no game one at home, and right. there will be no game seven at home. Exactly. Ever. That's off the table. Which, I mean, the Warriors better on the road this year than That's they true. are at home. That's true. 
Uh, you're listening to 95.7 The Game, KGMZ FM and HD1 San Francisco. Always live on the free Odyssey app. Twitch and YouTube powered by First NorCal Credit Union. Upgrade your savings dividend. Open a First NorCal First Class Money Market. Today, Bobby Fitzgerald is coming up in about 12 minutes. Uh, we have it. Here's what Steve Kerr said with regard to the whole Wiggins and Kaminga thing on the floor at the same time. I think we found something, you know, when we started them together with uh, with Draymond at the five. That, that's when things started to shift uh, for those two guys in terms of their ability to play together. And um, by going small, it really opened up the floor for each of them. You know, playing with Steph and Clay or, or Brandon, you know, we just had uh, a lot of skill and a lot of space around those two guys. So they were able to, to thrive together. You know, now that we're going to trace at the five, it lessens the possibility that we're going to put those two guys in, like at the two and the three, because those, those just aren't our best lineups. We need, you know, a good combination of skill and spacing and athleticism. And that's why last night you saw us go back to, you know, playing them more separately. Okay, so, yes, they can do it better, but they're still not going to do it a whole lot. But that's not because they can't. It's because Trace Jackson Davis. Right. Yeah. So without Dream on Green, does that change your your willingness to do that because part of it is Trace Jackson Davis and Draymond together because that's two non-shooting options. So if you throw Kaminga in there, who's not a three-point threat, now you've got three non-three-point options. If you have Wiggins out there, then you don't really have the same spacing as you might have if you have, for example, Moses Moody out there who you could put in the corner and he's more of a threat than Jonathan Kaminga to shoot the three. Uh, let's go to Ryan and Alameda next up. Uh, hey, Ryan, what's going on? You're on with Willard and Dibs. What's up? Just in rush hour traffic, but yeah, I just want to address what the last caller was talking about sure. with the plan because like, the NBA wants teams like us in the 9 10 spots to get excited about the plan. Like, oh, we have a chance. Like, we could do something. Because look at Miami Heat last year, right? I mean, no one thought they were going to beat Milwaukee or New York or Boston and. They ended up in the finals, and yeah, they got crushed by Denver, but like, this is what the NBA wants. Like, fans to get excited even when their team's not a top three seed, let's say. Yeah, no doubt. I get that. But I'm, I'm just, Ryan, I'm failing to. So, so what are you getting at? I'm just getting at. I'm not agreeing with that last caller at all. I, I don't, I'm not saying the Warriors could beat the Nuggets necessarily, but I understand, like, the, I think this is what, this is a good conversation to have because, like, even though we're not a top three seed or whatever, it doesn't mean that like our playoff chances are just a wash, you know? Not no. that you guys are saying that. Yeah, but. no, not at all. Not at all. I mean, here's what I would say, and it's this isn't, Ryan, thanks. This isn't just about the Warriors. It's the whole Western Conference. Yeah. Uh, I said this yesterday, and I'll predict it right now. I might be wrong on this one, but I'm going to go with this. No Western Conference series goes less than six games. None of them. Yeah. None of them. I don't think anybody's dominant enough to start rolling people in five games. And I think that whoever the road team is, no matter what in any of these series, incredibly capable team. It, look at the five teams that are that are possibles for the play-in. Pelicans, Lakers, Suns, Kings, Warriors. Good God. They're all they're all very good teams. Very capable. All yeah. have stars, like individuals who can take over games. Absolutely. Like multiple stars. Yes. These series are gonna go six or seven. I think all of them. I think one of them will go less than six, but we talked about this before and you said there'll be no sweeps in the West, and I looked it up and the last first round sweep in the West was two thousand and eighteen. So it's been a pretty tight pack of first round matchups only. I didn't look at all the yeah. matchups, but just in the first round it's been since twenty eighteen since we even had a sweep, but I wonder about Denver against anybody and their ability to come out and take care of that baby in five. You know what I also think? Of, part of this is is uh, just like the era that we're in. Um, I don't know that teams play that way anymore. And and maybe this is... What, the, play for the sweep? It just they, they, Nobody shows up every night. They just don't do that anymore. Right. I don't know if this is the result of the uh, of the... Uh, load management era, but you see teams being so much more strategic now about when they really step on the gas. And in order to beat someone in four straight games, especially a really good team, like if we're looking at Warriors, Lakers, Kings, Suns, these are really good teams 
with really excellent number one and two options, all of them. In order to beat someone like that four straight times, you've got to be maniacally focused and and motivated to do so. It's just not the way teams play right now. Yeah. Well, I think the team that would be looking to do that would be one of the teams that are in the play-in right now, your older teams, the Lakers or the Warriors, and understanding the value of rest. So if the Warriors were in a spot like Minnesota or OKC, where you're the two or the three and you're going to play a lesser team in the first round, you'd be thinking about a sweep. That way you get nine or ten days off as a yeah. an older team. And maybe younger teams don't yet have the experience. Minnesota, OKC, I don't think that they have even a player who has an NBA championship. I'd have to pour over the roster to confirm that, but these are younger, more inexperienced teams who don't yet have the acumen to know how to snuff a team out in four or five. I know a 60-win team is like that. I mean, that's amazing. That's a really good team. And I know Denver and Minnesota and Oklahoma City, they're going to fall short of that but come close. I'm not saying that they don't have great records, but all of these teams in the West, and, and a lot of it is because they have to play each other, but you look at the way they conduct themselves throughout the year, and, and they just, all of them, even sometimes it's just within games, within, you know, for half of a game, it's just like, God, you're not, your foot's not on the gas. Watch the Clippers with the way they conduct their entire season. It's just like, are you always trying? Like, they'll just go into a game. Look at last night, and I get it. Their 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 seeding is sort of set, but not really. Like, them and Dallas could flip-flop and, and, and all of that. And the Clippers have the Suns in town, and they're just like, yeah, we, we just sit everybody. It's just, I don't know, man. Yeah. Those players and that team in particular, the, how do you sweep? They don't know how to all play every night. Right. So it, I'm sure they'll suit up for all the playoff games, but they just, that instinct doesn't really seem to be a part of the NBA all that often anymore. No, and look at last year. Denver was the number one seed, and they had 53 wins, Mark. 53 and 29, yep. and they were the one. And I go back to the year that the Warriors won the, the title and Phoenix was the one with 64 wins. And what did that get you? That got you a big adios yep. in the first round, I believe, right? Where Against Dallas. Yeah, yep. you got straight bounce. So I do think that the regular season has become more of an annoyance than an actual necessity. And I'm, I'm looking back year by year, at the, and I'm trying to find the last team to win 60 in the West and win the NBA championship. And you have to go all the way back to the Golden State Warriors. Golden State. I'm looking at Houston in 2018, 65 and 17. What did that get you? Well, it got you bounced in the Western Finals by Golden State. So regular season dominance does not lend itself to NBA championship. Did Denver have any sweeps last year in their playoff run? In the playoff run... Denver Nuggets last year to win the whole thing. Any sweeps? They went uh, five, six, swept the Lakers. Swept the Lakers. Correct. In the conference finals. Yes, and then they beat Miami in, in five. In five, okay. So they won uh, nine of their five last passes. ten. So they only lost four games. Is that they, right? They beat the Lakers by six, five, eleven, and two. Is that right? So they went 16 and four they, in the playoff run? They, uh, yeah, because they lost... Uh, Damn. Damn, that's dominant. They lost one, two, zero, and one. Yeah, that's not the Warriors going sixteen and one. Uh, no, that second no, no, no. KD they weren't that dominant. No, but, but sixteen and four is. It's really good. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really a clean good. piece. Uh, all right, we're sponsored by Prize Picks, and Bob Fitzgerald's going to join us next. Plenty of time for your phone calls after that. Eight 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 nine five seven nine five seventy. Willard and Dibs. Cash in on basketball's biggest moments with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Use code Guru.
Well, I'm excited about this. This is uh, this is a voice we love, of course. No doubt. And by the way, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to Willard and Dibs on the free Odyssey app, wherever you find your favorite podcast. While you're there, you can check out, you know, the other shows that are here on 95.7 The Game. And for instance, uh, Slates was on with the Morning Roast. That's always a good primer for Warrior Basketball. And so is our next guest, our friend Bob Fitzgerald, live, Portland. Here we go. Hey, Bob, what's going on? Man, you, you brought me in with little Michael McDonald. I like that. Yeah, That's yeah. Solid. Yeah. Lo- loosen you up a little bit. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, I can't forget we're not in love anymore. That's, uh, that's 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 what he was singing. That's, yeah. that's exactly right, and uh, and oh so true with you in the city of Portland. Apparently, like uh, you, Lucas was just saying, you were like, yeah, I've been here like a bajillion times. Do you ever do the whole like wake up and I don't even know what city I'm in? Yeah, but not not on a one day or type of thing or right. a short trip. You know, I think when we did the Minnesota, Miami, Orlando, Charlotte, San Antonio, San Francisco. Dallas Houston oh. trip. I think that was the uh, what room am I in again? What <laughs> what what floor am I on? I, I think we we definitely had that going on. Are you able to still in a city like Portland find new things to do, or do you go out and go to the old go to tried and true stuff? It, it depends. Raymond Ritter and I watched uh, the Denver Minnesota game at a place that we had never had dinner f- before last night. So. That was, uh, you know, for, there's a few places we'd normally gone to. I said, hey, this one's a couple blocks away. Let's walk and watch that game. And so we went and had dinner. And so it was a different spot after, whatever, 111 trips to Portland. We went somewhere different. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Bob, what did you think of that game? Is, any, is anybody beating Denver? Uh, no. That, that, I think their starters are so good. Yeah. I think Jokic is so good. I, I just don't, uh, you know. Their weakness is their bench, theoretically, but in the playoffs, I think Michael Malone's going to ride those starters big time. You never have back-to-backs, and they're going to be the number one seed and have home court advantage all the way through. I mean, Denver is going to be a big Megillah to to try to deal with for a lot of teams in the NBA. Well, that's why uh, getting to seven could be so important, and Mark and I were talking about this, Bob, and uh, we were throwing it out to the listeners about staying in the moment, and we're trying to focus on Portland tonight and game 80, but... How much do you think it's uh, top of mind for the club to try to battle and do all they can to get to that 7-8 play and to maybe avoid the big uh, Magilla, as you called him, Denver? I think right right now, Dibs, you just have a let's win the last three games, let's finish with 47 wins, and then let's see what happens. I, I think there's so many permutations. And, you know, I know Kalen and I will be calling the game in a couple hours and then also watching – the Kings and New Orleans game because that has a huge impact on what might be available and you know what what is possible for the nine ten game as well as seven eight and are you traveling are you hosting the game and so but but I think it's for the Warriors win tonight huge back to back with New Orleans and then take care of Utah Sunday and go from there yeah Bob Fitzgerald in Portland with us here with it and Dibs as we're getting ready starting the countdown here to uh, Warriors basketball no Clay no Draymond. Bob, are there any concerns there, or are they low key just kind of also resting for the bigger game tomorrow night? No, I, I think they're they're just being smart. I, you know, just like resting Steph on Sunday to kind of get ready for that Laker game. I mean, at some point you have to acknowledge these guys are thirty six and thirty four years old, and um, Draymond's going to be dealing with Zion and a few other people tomorrow night. And you know, he got he got a knee contusion, so he was a little banged up from the Laker game. And uh, I just and Clay has been remarkable. He's played the most games of anybody on the team all year. He's only missed four games. So um, I, with the back to back and travel and the whole bit, I think just probably just being smart and just these guys being honest with where their body feels and and knowing how important all these games are. Are you starting to see some? I guess cohesion between Wiggins and Kaminga when they play together, and is tonight kind of a big test case for that, knowing that Draymond and Clay are out. Yeah, I mean that's something that uh, I think they had never played together. So then when you know they st- that starting lineup with Draymond at the speed five and and played you know Kaminga and Wiggins together, it was sort of. What what do I are we, wait? You're a post up guy. Wait, I, I want to be in the post, and you know if I drive, do I pass to you and stuff? You know, so it's just a lot of learning stuff. I mean, Jonathan's 21 years old, so I think a lot of it is he. You can post him up, and you can isolate him on the wing and let him go one on one. But you know, a lot of it is he's so good that if they bring a second defender, his passing skills are the next thing to to work on. And for Wiggs, him on the left block is one of the best 
and most efficient offensive sets the Warriors have, and they've gone to it to start games the last you know weeks, last couple weeks. And so, you know, I think you're learning a little bit. I mean, Steph, Clay, and Draymond do stuff like breathing. So these other guys learning to play with each other. I think Draymond and Trace developed a little thing. I think Pajemski has been great with how he's figured out how to get other guys involved. So it's just a matter of playing together a little bit. But as a combo, it gives you athleticism and size and switchability defensively. So you do want them as a tandem to be good. So sure, tonight will be more extended minutes to, to continue to develop that. So it's a good observation on your part for sure. Uh, Bob, you're absolutely right. Win the three games, end up at 47, chips fall where they may. But in your opinion, what's their best path out of the play-in tournament in terms of opponents? Well, I think you'd want Sacramento at home in the 9-10 game, and I think you'd probably want to go to New Orleans if they had lost a game to the Lakers or Phoenix. You know, some, something along those lines. It, it sucks to try to have to win two games, but, you know, that's that's really what the Warriors have foisted upon themselves with about five games they should have won earlier in the year. You know, and we talked about it at the time and throughout the season that, you know, the West is so good that, you you know, you have four or five missteps that were completely avoidable. It would come back to bite you. Well, here comes the bite. So, you know, it's uh, it's not that right now they're playing their best basketball. And since January 30th, they essentially have the best record in the NBA. So that's that's not a small sample size. But, you know, f- not fouling up three, the two games they lost to OKC, blowing 24-point leads to SAC and to the Clippers. I mean, these are the games they just should have had, yep. and they didn't. And, you know, they're going to have hopefully 47 wins. It probably should have been a 52-win season and, and the seed accordingly, but it's not going to be, and a lot of those wounds are self-inflicted. Okay, and then because of that, um, they are where they are, and then that leads to what? So... In your opinion, the off-season decisions, how much of those are based on whether next week goes well or not? Uh, that that would be kind of ridiculous to just, we're going to base the entire you know off-season on what happens a week from now. The, the Warriors have proven they're a 50-win team, probably 50-plus wins. They're super deep. You know, having Chris Paul's amazing as the backup point guard. Steph, Clay Draymond are still very good players. Trace and Brandon have been a knockout of the park draft. GP2 is a huge Swiss Army knife defensively. You know, and Wiggins has been played his best basketball the last two and a half months. The difference is, and this is the one I can't answer, the owners have paid a huge amount of money in salary. You know, the Warriors' luxury tax bill is bigger than the payrolls of many of the other teams in the league. So how sustainable is that? So you have financial decisions with Chris Paul and with Clay and, and things like that, and you have payroll decisions on how they look. But that, that Mike Dunleavy has been evaluating this for months. I, I, I highly doubt whatever happens in a week all of a sudden informs, you know, every decision that they're going to make in the offseason. So what is the biggest motivator of the two? Is it keeping the band together or getting below that luxury tax threshold? Because it may be difficult to serve both masters in the off season. Yeah, I mean, that, that's the, the thing with Joe and the ownership group is they always spend to be the best they can be. You know, and I think that's one of the greatest things for Dub Nation is that they spend a lot of money on tickets and they support this team at an incredibly high level and always have but the owners haven't taken a dime of profit and put it in their pocket. They've always put it back into payroll and always spent the money to put the best team on the floor. So I think there can be a lot of, we need to get out of the tax and do this and do that. But then when it's, wait, you can re-sign Clay for this number or you can acquire this guy or do this, they always go to put the best team on the floor. And, and I probably would expect nothing different for next year. Bob Fitzgerald with us here with it in Dibs, 95-7 the game. Bob, especially as someone who is so locked into every single game throughout the year, in your opinion, what is the biggest difference between them now versus what they were in November? Uh, the biggest difference is just attention to detail defensively. I, I think the Warriors just had so many lapses, you know, simple things like, you know, helping off the strong side corner and letting guys shoot wide open threes and stuff, not closing out. I'll give you a good example. Like the beginning of that road trip, the super long one, they lost to Minnesota when Minnesota hit 21 threes. But Nas Reed had five walk up threes where no one closed out at him, you know, and that makes a good shooter, a great shooter. 
You saw with the Warriors making 26 threes where there wasn't a Laker, you know, within the vicinity of a bunch of the shooters. What happened after that Minnesota loss? They were phenomenal the rest of that road trip. Just absolutely terrific and locked in. So to me, better attention to detail defensively. The turnovers still are a plague at times in certain games, but I just think you've seen Wiggins come along, Kaminga come along. You've seen Clay come along. Draymond has been back after having kind of a very odd first, you know, 20, 30 games of the year and in and out with the suspensions. So cohesion, health, and then attention to detail. And then also, hey, we can be good. I mean, the thing about tonight is it could be their 25th road win. That's amazing. This this franchise has been around for 78 seasons. You don't have to, you know, get your fingers and toes involved to count 25 win road years. Like, not very many seasons that they've done that. And so that can be special if they get that done tonight. How many of those years where it was uh, 25 wins, period, Bob, and you were pining for <laughs> such a <laughs> such a lofty total? You, you mean, how about the 17 wins, a couple yep. 19 oh, wins, a 21-win season? I mean, 25 would have been Shangri-La, dudes. Come on. I was all about click and roll at warriors.com in those days, Bob, believe me. <laughs> yeah. Take it still available. Hey, it's a great timeout. It just sure a great was. Timeout. Just, just <laughs> remember that. But that now, I mean, in 31 seasons, I've seen just about every kind of year that you can. I think the crazy thing is one playoffs in the first 18 years I'm doing the games, and then all of a sudden, you know, the decade run of just incredible excellence. So it's just uh, you always appreciate the good seasons, the winning seasons, and you know, you you suffer through the the down ones with the hope that it's going to get better. And you know, fortunately, it has. You look at this season for the whole Western Conference, Bob. Can you compare this to anything else where you've got ten teams that are going to be north of forty six wins, and and you could argue that all of them are at least dangerous. Well, go back to the year after we believe the Warriors won forty eight games and did not make the playoffs. Yeah. 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 And and they and they would have been like the five seed in the Eastern Conference. And that was when there was a big thrust and I was a big proponent of it. Why do you not take the best sixteen teams and have them in the playoffs? Like why geography wise are you letting sub five hundred Eastern teams be a quote playoff team? and have 48-win Warrior teams sitting home as, as, quote, lottery teams. I just thought that was a joke. So, to me, I still, the East-West thing, I still think is a lot of stupidity. I, I You know, we're watching the Masters. They, they don't say, well, if, if you live in these six states, you qualify for the Masters, but we can only have X <laughs> amount of golfers from Arizona and only two from California. That's just stupidity. They don't do that for the Olympics, for yeah. the fastest men and the women in the world. Like, I want the best teams playing for the championship, and the arbitrary geography of it, I think, is dumb. Uh, that sounds like live golf, actually. I think they've got teams, <laughs> exactly. and, and they're all slotted all over the place. But anyway, Bob, before you go, what, what's your confidence level that they're coming out of this playing tournament? Uh, pretty good. Pretty good. I, I, I like the vibe. I like where they're at. I know how dangerous they are, and... You know, I think this the second half of the season. Do you guys see the movie Sea Biscuit? Oh yeah, of course. You know what? Yeah, you know, you know when the biscuit would uh, <laughs> smell another horse and get super competitive and kick it into another gear. Yep. Uh, the the compete level that is in the DNA of these guys is really strong, and I, I think that they know if they can get into a, the playoffs and size somebody up in a seven game series, that you know the Dubs are not a light touch. So. I just think when it matters for Steph and Clay and Draymond and these guys, Steve Kerr, that there's just a lot of winning in that DNA and a, and a lot of real resolve to be a competitive team. So uh, I'm going with the Sea Biscuit. Oh. Let them in and let them sniff a few of these other teams, and then let's go after them. And thank you Whoa. for Sea Biscuit. It uh, completes my Whoa. Bob Fitz bingo. So uh, I am now a winner with the Sea Biscuit Square. <laughs> I worked in golf. I worked Incredible. in horse racing. Come on. It's, that's that's what you got to have. And a new motto. It used to be strength in numbers. Now it's warrior basketball. Sniff a horse. <laughs> uh, well, it, or it's going to be warrior basketball. Don't let us smell you. Okay. There you have it. I like it. <laughs> I like it. it. Smell see. you later. Warriors right. basketball. Smell Thanks. you later. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. <laughs>
<laughs> Anytime, guys. Great hearing your voice. Yeah. Good. Enjoy <laughs> Portland. Yeah. There's Bob no Fitzgerald doubt. here on 95.7 The Game. Uh, Bruce Bochy is who we're going to hire to do the commercial. Yeah. Um, um, sniff a horse. Totally. Um, yeah. Um, and, 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 and have a beer. Uh, that, I love it. I yeah. love it. Warrior basketball, sniff a horse. Yeah. I do wish his voice had gone a different direction when I asked him. <laughs> Pretty good. Yeah, like the Larry David in there. What's your confidence? Pretty like, good. If he had just been like, uh, pretty good. Yeah, I oh, wanted him boy. to go pretty good, but he went uh, pretty good. Pretty, uh, pretty good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> would have been I'm, better if the voice went down. It went up. That's a few percentage points off. Sorry. Or if he just would have gone uh, Jim Rome and said, "Great, great, phenomenal." Yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, pretty good. In other words, don't hold me to it, but, you know. No, but he's right. Like, No, he is. And what's I, your confidence level? Well, I mentioned it yesterday, and we talked, yeah, we talked yeah. about a Sacramento 9-10, and I put it at a 60% chance that they win that game, even if it's in sack, and that you're the 10 and they're the 9, whatever, and then you go to New Orleans or to L.A., and I'd put that at about a 40%, so... If it's a 60 followed by a 40, eh, pretty good. Well, like Bob encapsulated uh, it. Pretty good. Uh, the Warriors should you not. keep that, though, for future, uh, for future references. The Warriors should not be going to L.A. The Warriors should not have to go to L.A. They would have to lose a game in order for that to come to pass. Correct. And they shouldn't lose a game. Well, um, I don't know what the number will be tomorrow night. I assume that Clay and Draymond are going to be back in the game. Um, I, I I am hopeful that nobody gets hurt tonight. Of course. Um, but when we get tomorrow, Warriors will be favored in that game, right? But not by a lot. Tomorrow, they'll be favored probably but, by six. Oh, you think that high? Yeah. New Orleans is good. Correct. New Orleans is really good basketball team. New Orleans plays tonight, so they'll be on the, the second half of a back-to-back. So both teams on a back-to-back, both teams traveling, although the Pelicans on a bus ride and the Warriors are flying from Portland a sack favored by one and a half over the Pels tonight. Pelicans on the second half of back to back. I would imagine maybe not six. Maybe I was a little hot there. Four right. and a half though. You want to know what uh, a, a similarity between the Warriors and the Pelicans? Way better on the road than yeah. at home. Pelicans twenty six road wins. Twenty six and fourteen on the road this year. Pelicans twenty one and eighteen at home. So that's like. There's a lot that goes into tomorrow night's game, and I will reiterate, that's one of the reasons I think that it's probably a smart move that the Warriors are doing what they're doing. Steph got his day off on Sunday, then looked really good, went 5-5 five or five for 3, and, and the Warriors hit all their threes and beat the Lakers. Um, the Warriors have got to win tomorrow night's game. This has huge ramifications up and down the play-in tournament, at minimum, at minimum, I believe tomorrow night's game provides you the play-in tournament game being at home. At minimum, the Warriors get to play next Wednesday at home Right. if they can beat the Pelicans tomorrow night, and it could launch you into the 7-8 game. Yep. So that's massive. So, hey, Dre, hey, Clay, um, stay home. Just stay home. I don't know that they did. Maybe they'll be on the bench tonight, but no basketball for you tonight um, because the rest of the guys should be able to beat who the Blazers are going to give uniforms to tonight. You figure, and the spread I just looked is still 13 and a half. Is it kind it of that wiggled high? down from a, a point with the, the ouster of, of Clay and of Draymond, but you will be favored <laughs> tomorrow as well. You will be favored over Utah. So if form holds, you go 3 and 0 oh, and you wind up as the nine seed at worse. Um, hey, Grandy, who, like, what, what's the Blazers deal tonight? Who, who's not playing for Portland? That's, that's, that's a big part Anthony of this. Anthony Simons, Jeremy Grant, Malcolm Brogdon, Shaden Sharp, Robert Williams III, Matisse Thibel, and Tamani Kamara. All not playing tonight. Holy crap. <laughs> yeah. I just. So Scoot is in? Scoot and DeAndre Ayton are uh, two of, uh, maybe only like three Blazers yeah, they, that you've ever heard of that will play. Do they have five players? Have you ever heard of Ryan Rupert? No. Nope. He'll probably start tonight for the Blazers. Okay, who else? Give me some more Blazers. Uh, Jabari Walker. Okay. Uh, you know Chris Murray. 
Yeah. Yeah. Sure. You don't know Chris Murray. So they're, they're most brother. likely starting five is Chris Murray, Jabari Walker, DeAndre Ayton, Ryan Rupert, and Scoot Henderson. I wanted the Warriors yeah. to draft Chris Murray. How's he doing? He doing anything? Uh, he's averaging about six points per game this year. Okay. Solid. Yeah. <laughs> but last game, 14 points. See? Four of six from downtown. Because they gave him more minutes. Hell, he might score 25 tonight. He might score 30. Yeah. Let him eat. Let Murray eat. Mm. Yeah. I mean, come on. If you can't beat that group of can't wait for the offseason to get here Blazers, then what are we even talking about? Even without Clay. And without Draymond, you should be able to gee and Lester it up. Hang on. I'm going to my betting app. You're going to bet, 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 bet. 1 800, bet, bet, bet. 1 800, bet. Call my message phone. This is Mark Willard. When you're here to bet Chris Murray's over? No. I like, what what are we doing? Who? Right? Like, come on. Ryan Rupert, a six foot eight rookie from France. Currently or previously played on the New Zealand Breakers. No, as I mm. as I as I place this bet, I want to re, it'll make me feel better. Read off the Blazers who are out again tonight, please. Uh, Anthony Simons, uh-huh. Jeremy Grant, uh-huh. Malcolm Brogdon, uh-huh. Shaden Sharp, Robert Williams the third, Matisse Thibel, and Tumani Kamara. Yeah, that'll make me feel better. And place bet. Okay, there it is. You're laying the 13 and a half? Is that what the number is on your app? I got it at 13. Okay, there you I go. I got it at 13, so I figured let's grab it now. Let's grab it now. Do it now. I did it live. There it is. I love it. I put a lot on it, too. I'm sure. Probably <laughs> 10 bucks. More. Whoa. Not five, not six, not seven. I'm feeling it. Okay. I'm feeling it. Fire away. It's a good night. You should, uh, yeah. Back it up with the Pelicans. You should have uh, parlayed that into the Pels. Oh, why didn't I think of that? Yeah, I, I think the Pels, uh, and that's a money line ah, play. Yeah. Sacramento favored by one and a half. You probably get a good price on the money line. Call my message phone. <laughs> I have two questions for you. Yes. Shoot. Would you like a spelling question or a betting question? Ooh, why don't you give Dibs the betting and me the spelling? Okay. okay I used let's... to do spelling bees. Uh, only I never made it out of my own elementary school, but I was in the spelling bee as an elementary school uh, participant, and uh, my mother is still mad at my ouster. Uh, but go ahead, Lucas, please. All right, we'll start with spelling for you, Mr. Willard. Yeah. His name is Ryan Rupert. Can you spell his first name, please? Well, because you're asking, that means it's not R-Y-A-N. I have never seen it spelled like this. Uh, R-H-I-E-N. Close. What is it? R A Y A N. R A Y A N. Ryan. Ryan. Dinner. Ryan. Ryan. <laughs> yeah. That's on the, um, you know, like that's a, uh, what's the word I'm thinking of? The the period, the, the table. Like the, right. Rayon. Yeah, Rayon. Yeah, that's different. One of the noble gases, that's as you know. A- it's Rayon not, is one of the noble gases. It's with, not a uh, blazer, it's a gas. With neon and uh, xenon, argon, and, and, also one of the noble gases. And your son. Keon. Keon, right. Yes, K-A-Y-A-N <laughs> is how we spelled it. Well, Although, right. looking at the uh, blazer's pronunciation guide, it might be pronounced Ryan Rupair. Oh, he is French. He is French. Oh, there you go. And you're over here calling him Ryan Rupert like an American. It's spelled R U P E R T. I mean, uh, you know, what am I supposed to do here? Rupert. Like Ryan the legend Rupert. from Survivor Rupert. years back. Remember Rupert from Survivor? Yeah. What's the mm. betting question for Dibs? Uh, I have over unders for Ryan Ryan Rupert and Chris Murray. All right. Let me know which side you're go, going uh, on. I'm going to go over on both of them. Really? And you don't even care what the number is. <laughs> Rupert's uh, over under is seven and a half. I got it eight and a half. Okay, I'm still going over. Uh, okay. The Warriors have no answer for Rupert. <laughs> and uh, the, the Murray guy? Yep. Got to be 14 and a half. I got it at nine and a half. Oh, Will I'm he get to over. double digits? Oh, no doubt. No Man. doubt. This one feels like uh, 128 98. And uh, Rupert and Murray combined for 46. I need to oh, hi- my God. I got I to gotta hire one of those Rupert's, man, with uh, this time slot and a 10-year-old at home and and uh, no way to figure out. <laughs> anybody knows a good Rupert. Not an O-pair, no, but a Rupert. A Rupert. Yeah, I need one of those. That's great. All right, we're presented by Fremont Dad Bank. jokes are on fire today. <laughs> full, full service banking, no compromises. Uh, in addition to your phone calls, you want to know what I'm going to do next? I'm going to throw the word at you, Dibs, that knocked me out of the spelling bee. 
when I was in third grade. Oh, S. And let's see if you can spell it. All right. All right? I came in second in eighth grade to oh. uh, Amy Clisham. I, I couldn't oh. outlast the Clish. Only you would still know her name. Why do you know all the names of everyone you ever went to school with? It's so weird. Amy is married to Rob Forrest, and who was a good friend and, of mine in high school. And you still know them. That's what's even weirder. They got hooked up at our 10-year reunion from high school. I don't know where any of my elementary school people are anymore. I don't even know where they are. It was at Amy's house when I discovered what a bidet is. <laughs> that took a turn. The ceiling got wet. I didn't know what that faucet was for. That ceiling is wet. <laughs> totally. <laughs> what, what did I what did I do wrong? I'll tell you what I did right, Mark, while we're here, and that's weight loss.
pretty good. Dumb. Now, back to Willard and Dibs on 95.7 The Game. So, um, 888-957-9570, and, and we're going to keep going with Warrior Basketball. But a little, little like uh, knuckleball to throw at you. All right. This is totally off the beaten path. Listen to this and let your mind wander. All right. One day there's a situation, right? Maybe it's the 49ers, maybe, you know, heading to the playoffs. Offense is great. Patriots somebody, could be somebody, somebody, Raiders look, could be. You never know. God forbid somebody goes down. Would you pick up that phone? I'm not opposed to it. If they would, I don't know if they're going to let me if I become an owner in the NFL team, but I don't know if, uh, I don't know. I'm always going to be in good shape. I'll always be able to throw the ball. So to come in for a little bit, like MJ coming back, um, I don't know if they let me, but I wouldn't be opposed to it. Okay. You recognize one of the voices. The other one is Vic Blends, the Deep Cut Podcast. Vic Blends. Vic Blends. <laughs> All right. The Vic Blends? Yes, that was, that, I mean, was yeah. that was him. Vic blends. Okay. I can just tell it's late on a Thursday. I just this is one of those moments you gotta be careful because I'll get the giggles. This is one of those moments. I'm feeling a little punchy. So just be careful. All right. I just <laughs> Who's the second person who talked in that? That one well, I know. A, yeah, that was Tom. That was Tom. That was yeah. Tom Brady. I'm not going to diss Vic Blends. He's okay. got three and a half million followers on on tw Instagram. I, I've never heard of him. Nor have I. But obviously he's doing the darn thing because he's getting to him on his podcast. The Deep Cut Podcast. And based on his IG, he cuts hair. <laughs> I see him. And again, I'm not. He's got a, a tattoo of the number 26 on his neck. What? And <laughs> he's cutting Who Tom's is he? hair. Who is he? He's Vic Blend. He's a famous barber, <laughs> and yes. he he goes viral. He does some really cool things. I've seen videos of him on TikTok where he goes around just randomly with a, a pair of scissors, I guess, or clippers. And, yeah, clippers, yep. and grabs people off the street and offers to give them a free haircut, and then they talk about life. Okay, that's amazing. Great content. That's a, I love it. Love it. He's got a lot less followers on X than he does on Instagram. I'm looking at his ass. Yeah. It's only got forty four thousand. He's about that IG life. Yeah, <laughs> which makes sense in the tube. Yeah, um, he's on the tube. Okay. Good for Vic. Yeah. Vic and, blends. And Niner fans, now you know who your third string QB is next year. Vic blends? No. <laughs> no. The other guy he was talking to. To him. Yeah. Yeah. You don't need to worry about Brock Purdy getting hurt anymore because Tom is willing to come in for the final five of the year. And you, you talk about your all time flexes if it <laughs> being an owner. If they'll let me, because, you know, I, I kind of own, uh, I'm an owner. There were a lot of flexes in there. There's a lot there of flexes. There were a lot of them. I'll always be in shape. I right. mean, I'll always be in shape. I'll always be able to throw the ball. He'll be 47 in August. Yeah. 47. Tom, we only need you to play two games. One of them's the Super Bowl. Oh, right. Yeah. I mean. If anybody's arm falls off in the NFC title game ever again, Tom. Get in there. He's ready. I just, I mean, is he that hungry for attention that he's got to, uh, he's got to drop that in there? You're not going to rip Tom, are you? He was asked a question by Vic Blends. You have to right. answer it. He has to answer. You're not going to go on to a podcast to not answer questions. You go on to answer questions. Yeah. Vic asked a question. Tom answered it. Yeah. And, he, and Vic, by the way, Vic was the one who put the 49ers in there. Tom was like, Patriots? Yeah. Ra Raiders? Anybody. Yeah. Raiders. No. Raiders. Well, he would not be the oldest Raider quarterback ever if he went back as a 47-year-old and threw a pass. Is that really? It's George really? Blanda. Really? I just Googled it. George Blanda, born in 1927. You got to Google it. Thank you. That's what I do. Uh, 1975, he was one of three. Uh, throwing the football for 11 yards. He did throw a pick somehow in those three <laughs> attempts. Well, but that was 1975, which tells me that George must have been 48 years old. Good Lord. In 1975. Wow. Wow. Well, there you have it. Yep. So but, maybe he wants to break one last record and be the oldest quarterback to ever complete a pass in the NFL. Not going to rule it out. 
Right. So Tom Brady and the Niners could still happen. Yeah. I mean, sure. You're not he's wrong. Like, no, no. He's, it's on the table. That's all he's Possibly. Saying. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. A lot of fun. Um, it is. And yeah. I'm, glad, I mean, I'm glad to meet Vic Blends, too. I didn't know. Yeah. I didn't know. Dropping I hate, knowledge. I hate not knowing stuff like that, too. I don't like lack of knowledge, especially with the new stuff that's coming up, because invariably it'll come up with, with the kids at the house. Yeah. And, like, I know you've experienced this. Like, you get to... It's, it's, we're not old, but you get to a certain age yeah. where where your your own kids will look at you like you're a moron for what you don't yeah. know. They're like, yeah, there's this girl on TikTok, and so we got to go to Target because she's got this facial cream, and, Dad, we got to go get it. And I'll be like, I don't... What are, what are you talking about? Oh, my God, Dad. You don't know? What are you, an idiot? What do you, live under a rock? Right. I had never heard of Vic Blends. Yeah. Now, when they bring me the Vic Blends interview, I'll be like, oh, yeah, Vic Blends. Got hair. It's going to make me sound smart around the house. That's awesome. I'm very happy about are it. Are you familiar with Mr. Beast? Uh, <laughs> Mr. Did, Beast on TikTok? Marshawn Lynch? No, Mr. Beast. And I, I don't know a lot about Mr. Beast, and I just came across one of his videos a couple weeks ago. More of a YouTuber than a loved TikToker. Loved it. Okay, that's fine. See, here comes Grandy. 93.9 million followers on TikTok. Yeah, don't and know. Yep. Yeah, he's a, he's a phenomenon, a YouTube phenomenon. Do you know about Bob Does Sports? No, and this is where we can educate each other yeah. and sound like complete ancient fossils <laughs> in the process. Is that like drink coffee, do stuff? It sounds like it. No, Lucas, it's not drink coffee, do stuff. South Lake Tahoe will never be the same. But, Granny, do you know Bob Does Sports? You no. look like you knew Bob does sports. No, I don't know who oh, that you is. He's so quick to correct me about wow. Mr. Beast, and now who's in the dark? Wow. Yeah. So I got all three of you on Bob does sports, huh? You guys should, should all look up Bob does sports. I am. And he's I'll, funny. He's yeah. funny, and he's been doing a lot of content lately in the golf space with Paige uh, Sporanic. Ah, okay. Uh -huh. There you go. Yeah, I know you know who she is, Dibs. Dirty dog. It's he's only got six hundred and ten thousand followers. Doesn't matter. Nobody. It's more than you got. Yeah, it is. <laughs> How many followers do you have on Instagram? About four thousand. Okay. Yeah. Six, six, all right. Six, six, six. That's pretty impressive. All the people want to look at Dan Dibley. See all the weight loss. Looks I'm, to me like this guy just does golf. It is. What are the other sports? It's a lot of golf. It's a lot of golf. I don't know. I didn't name him. He does a lot of golf. Bob does sports. I'll tell you what he doesn't do. <laughs> AbundantLifeWeightLoss.com Mm-hmm. Were you supposed to throw that in there? No, or you just but decided I just, to? I just Googled Don't him. Don't be like, disrespectful. Why, right, Bob? Bob does sports. Bob also does lunch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway. All right. I got a couple things to tell everybody about. And then we can uh, then we can keep kicking around Warrior Basketball and, and how all of you hypocrites are are uh, speaking out of both sides of your mouth. I'm well, just a little bit more concerned about, about the, the Warriors play-in scenario after listening to Bob Fitzgerald. So Why? Just, okay, I want to hear that. Yeah, just, okay, I mean, first of all, yeah, tomorrow boy. is what? You know what tomorrow is. It's the 12th of April. That's right. It's also known as Friday. Every Friday for the rest of the season, we bring you the Big Three Unplugged. Check out our social media platforms every Friday. Our very own Whitley Sandretto gets the big three. That's Steph, Clay, and Dre, for those of you who don't speak dubs, talking about non-basketball topics, such as who's the most famous person you have in your phone, um, or uh, you know what color are your favorite shoes, whatever. Uh, it's the big three unplugged. It's brought to you by Alameda County Probation Department. Are you ready to make a lasting impact in your community? Visit Join acpd.org to start your journey today. Together, let's make a difference. Your community needs you. You're also listening to 95.7 The Game, KGMZ FM and HD1 San Francisco, always live on the free Odyssey app, Twitch and YouTube, powered by First NorCal Credit Union. Okay, why? Why are you more concerned about the Warriors playing tournament all of a sudden? Because we had a great conversation with Bob Fitzgerald and... Very informative yep. and conversational and fun, as always. And then you asked him as a last question how you felt, how Bob felt about their chances, and the way he answered it. Uh, pretty good. <laughs> I mean, if he's not feeling really good, 
then how can I, as a non-Warriors expert insider, well, how can I feel better than Bob? And Bob feels 50-50 at best. Bob, I don't, I don't, Bob sounded a little shaky with I, his confidence. I level. don't know how you could feel better than that. Because nobody wants to play this Warrior team. Yeah. And they're and, playing great. And most of them are not going to have to play this Warrior team. Right. I mean, they've been good on the road. They've been yeah. better on the road than at home. Everybody's getting healthy and back, and they're starting to click on all cylinders. I thought he would feel better than, ah, uh, pretty good. Okay. Here's the thing, and this is what happens, I think, when we view things only through the lens of the team you follow. You can say, hey, they're playing pretty well. They're playing pretty well right now. Right. So are the Lakers. Okay, and, um, you know, varying levels as to whether or not you want to apply that answer to the Kings, Suns, and Pelicans. The Kings are a little banged up. Uh, Suns are 6-4 and four in their last 10. Pelicans are 5-5, five and five, but they were dealing with some health issues too. Whatever. Like, even if the Warriors are playing well, understand that the likelihood is they end up in the 9-10 game. And if they do that, that means that in one week, You've got to beat not one, but two pretty good teams, one of them on the road, just in order to get out of this thing. So I'd argue if you end up in the 9-10 game at all and you feel, ah, uh, pretty good, that's pretty good. Ah, uh, pretty good. That's pretty good. That's better than you would have felt a week or two ago, no? Probably, but considering how well they've been playing and the fact that they found their nine-man rotation and everybody – is healthy and this is all clicking and you got championship pedigree and the rest of it, I would have thought that Bob, who is never shy about his support, shall we say, for the Golden State Warriors, sure. I would have thought he would have been more definitively confident over I, their, their chances. I just I don't know how you can be. You can be playing so well and you still have to acknowledge that what they're going to have to do next week is really hard. It's really hard. Potentially. I mean, I mean, it could be the eight, and it could be a little bit easier. The eight is less than likely. Yeah. I'd give them probably a 20% chance of getting the eight. Yeah, they need help. I would give them a 75% chance or an 80% chance of getting the nine. Okay. And then a 20% chance of being the ten. But the nine still means, let's play it out in our heads. The nine means, okay, you got to beat the Lakers at Chase Center. That's no gimme. Right. And even if you do it, then you hop on a plane or a bus and head to either Sacramento, Phoenix, or New Orleans. That's not easy. And you've got to do both with zero margin for error. I mean, we have to call this what it is. Like, we're all sitting here going, the Warriors can go on a run, and, and, and it is at minimum 50-50 shot that they don't play basketball after next week. At minimum a 50-50 shot, I'd say. Well, if you're one of the 9 or the 10, it's probably more of a... 35 to 40 percent right. chance that you are able to win both if you get into the eight seed then i would give you more of a 65 or 70 percent chance although we've seen them before Jeez. lose both games in the play-in they were the eight i believe when they were were they the nine that year when they mm, lost to the lakers no, no, no. In they were in the seven eight game yeah they were in the seven eight game yeah they had to have been yeah, because both. they played yeah, twice my, yeah. my bad they I were the eight the, seed they the eight ended seed. the regular season as the eight and, yeah, they, lost, you, and they lost to memphis in their own building in the right. second game. And they lost to the Lakers that was first. In the first game, yeah. On the road, and then yeah. they lost to Memphis at home. So I know that the history of the play-in does not favor the Warriors, but this is not historical. And so if you get to the eight, I still like their chances of winning one of two this time. Yeah, yes. I would like their chances on that one, for sure, especially with the second one being at home. That's that's all That's all wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, yeah, this is... This is going to be tough, and these other teams are good too and, and, and playing well, and they'll have the urgency and all that stuff. I just think that these playoffs are going to be so fantastically memorable, and I really, really hope that the Warriors get in it. Um, I'm here for this weekend. I'm here for next week. I, I, I have reached a level of being excited about it. And, you know, circling back to where we kind of started our conversation, and we'd love to hear from you throughout the hour 888-957-9570. Are you having a hard time 
getting excited just about this week. In other words, when you think Warrior basketball, does your mind go straight to the offseason? Because one thing I have consistently heard for a while now is Warrior conversations will start in one spot, and no matter where you start them, they end with, well, they need to trade Wiggins, and I'm not giving Clay $30 million a year, and they've got to get under the apron. This is where the conversation all goes. So sometimes I wonder if there aren't a lot of Warrior fans who say they believe that the Warriors can do something this postseason, but in the back of their mind, you don't really believe it. You don't really believe it because you you, you, you fail to even get in to a conversation about what this might all look like a month from now, you automatically go to the, quote, changes that need to be made. Right. And that is obviously predicated on the idea of the next couple of weeks not going very well. Well, and Bob uh, Fitzgerald, who joined us last hour, mentioned that he didn't think that the decisions they're going to make are at all predicated on what's going to happen over, over the next couple of weeks. Well, that that was an interesting answer. I'm glad you pointed that out because think about what he's saying there. He actually goes, it'd be ridiculous to right. make your decision based on one game. So in other words, I think we were asking it in like the negative way. Right. In order, in other words, if they lose in the play-in, like how much does that have to do with what they do next? Bob almost answered is, well, you'd be stupid to change your plan even if you win it. Right. But... I was also asking it, well, what if they win the next series? What if they win the one after that? Yeah. And maybe you're right. I don't think Bob thinks that that's going to happen. Neither do I. Neither do you. Right. But it, it does ring a little different coming from him. It does, but also he pointed out that he thought that they were a 50-win team, that this club is a 50-win team. Now, no excuses over the games they lost, and he cited a long list of leads blown and games kicked away. And the fact that this team this team very well could have been a 50-win team had things gone a little bit differently. And I know any team can say that. You can look at a handful of games that you blow and think about what could have been. But his argument was this roster, this collection is good enough to be a 50-win team. So why wouldn't it be good enough to be a 50-win team next year with Pods and TJD and Kaminga and Moody and the veterans that you have, and you're able to bring the veterans back, Clay at whatever number. So what I got from Bob is the sense that this team is 50-win potential, so why wouldn't you just run it back? Mm. At least that's what I was hearing him well, say. Well, you might. Right. You might because because there's no other better option. Now, it's going to cost you more, I think. I mean, sure, Chris Paul's going to come off the books. There are some other people that they can have come off the books. Right. Clay Thompson, at minimum, is going to make a lot less. But you know the complexities of the tax and all of that stuff. Like, it may need to come down even more than that. So even, even if you just X Chris Paul out of this, um, that has reached a point where that's pretty significant. I mean, Steve yesterday pointed out to us, when we asked him the difference between the beginning and the end of the year, he went on and on about the young guys, but 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 did you hear what he said toward the end? Just the overall uh, growth of the team. You know, guys like Jonathan, Brandon, Trace, young guys, Moses. He's got young guys who have progressed and become you know, really important players for us in terms of winning and losing. That's been huge. And then I, I just think the vets have helped foster that environment. They've mentored these young guys really well. Having Chris Ball, to me, is such a huge advantage uh, for, for our group. Uh, the non-Steph minutes, I've never been more comfortable with them than I am this year because of Chris. So, you know, getting him back from injury, but also having him mentoring uh, the younger group. Um, it's a really, really good group of guys and a well-balanced roster. So we're, uh, we're healthy and knock on wood, hopefully we'll stay that way. I've never felt better about the non-Steph minutes than I do right now. So even if you're the whole run it back family, Oh, but minus Chris Paul, well, then you're not as good. You're not as right. good. Like, don't, do you go right back to, well, what the hell do we do when Steph's not on the floor? In theory, you might. And, yeah. And we've watched that before, and it doesn't work. It's not good enough. No, and I, 
I wonder, and I don't want to get too far into the off season, but hearing Steve talk about the import of Chris Paul, is there a way to keep Chris Paul and oh, you know God. have him play for less? And <laughs> because if you look at what he's done, he broke his hand and he was out for a handful of games. He came back February twenty seventh. He hasn't missed a game, Mark, since he came back from that injury. Twenty three games he's played, mostly off the bench, darn near twenty five minutes a night. And he's averaging almost 10 points and six assists. And his usual one and a half turnovers a game, he's shooting it well. His three balls at 40%, which is much better than earlier in the year. He has been a fantastic backup point guard over the course of the last month and a half since he's come back. So the $30 million for Chris next year is non-guaranteed. Right. But it's not a player option or a team option. It's just non-guaranteed, which means, I, I guess in theory... You could ask Chris, like you could you could say, okay, we're yeah, we're not picking up the option, but then re-sign you him for for way less. That would I, be the thinking. I yeah. think that's within the rules. Yeah. Right? Well, you, you would decline the option, and you would ostensibly cut him, and he yeah. would become a free agent. And I I can't see why they wouldn't be able to just bring him back. This is not during the season where he'd have to clear waivers. I think that he would be eligible to come back. Yeah, I was going to say, it's, it's not necessarily an option. It's by a certain date, the contract becomes fully guaranteed. That'd so they June, could just, June 28th. They could decide to cut him before then they would owe him nothing. Yeah, June 28th, yes. right. And then and then they could have him back. Correct. They could have him back for the veteran minimum. Well, and if you look at Chris Paul, <laughs> Chris Paul's uh, situation, he's going to play next year, even though he's, would think. Uh, he's playing well enough right. to where, why would you stop? I mean, he's going to be 39 in May, May 6th. He's coming up real soon. In fact, I think in two weeks, yeah. Two May weeks. 6th, he'll be 39. Okay. So, you know, by the time maybe the season's over, then maybe you're still playing. But Chris Paul is playing well enough to to where he's going to have a team who's interested in his services for, for 25 sure. minutes a night. For sure. Assuming that he wants to play, absolutely. And he's been sure. healthy other than the broken hand. I mean, he didn't knock on wood sustain one of those older guy injuries with the hammy or the groin or the adductor, you know, just a, a broken hand, which he's broken many times. Um, 888-957-9570, you'll be very happy with a development that has just taken place. Uh, yeah? You pulled me aside before the show even started, and you said to me, we need to track down the Anapons. Liana Pons. She, she's been ducking us. Yeah. Because she placed a bet with us. Mm -hmm. She said the Warriors would be a six seed or better, mm -hmm. or else she would cook food for us. <laughs> and, you, and you said, where'd she go? Exactly. Where are you at, Pons? She's right here. No. Wait, the the Liana Pons? Hi, Liana. What are you doing? Hey, hey. I heard you guys are talking about me. I have boots on the ground. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I Here's a burden, do. Pons. To be fair, I'm not. I'm not ducking you guys. I need to. I'm calling to officially concede, and um, got to figure out this when this is going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, but but I'm still pulling for them to make at least the eight seed. Of course we so, are. We're all on the same page there. We're all in the same game. We are, Liana. Think, you know, I I really think that I've been saying this for about a month or so now that I, Wiggins is really the key to how this is going to go. I feel like if he's going to be playing well, I feel like we have a shot to beat, you know, Minnesota or OKC. Um, but yeah, let's, let's make this happen. I, I'm, I will uh, connect with, I'll have your people call my people and oh. we'll, we'll hook it up. Can you please, before you go, Liana, can you please describe your lumpia? <laughs> well, I mean, the thing about lumpia is if you're not Filipino, right, you need to have the wrapper, uh, very crispy on the outside, right? And so, mm -hmm. and then the filling is just nice and warm, oh. flavorful. We can do whatever kind you guys want. We can do chicken, beef, vegetable. I don't know what how you guys want uh, to have that cooked, but, you know, the key to it is it can't be soggy, so it has to be warm when I get there. Um, mm. Okay. And so we're trying to, I'm trying to make this happen for you guys before, you know, before uh, May, hopefully. I, I love think, it. Uh, yeah, I think what I just heard is that you, you just invited us to your house. <laughs> That's what I heard. 
I mean, if you want to come to the U and we'll ask Guru to come over. Hey. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> now it sounds like a field trip. <laughs> yep. Indeed. It sure does. Now um, it's all, yeah. Uh, Liana, why, why is Dibs so quiet? Yeah, why are you so quiet, Dibs? <laughs> because I'm Googling the uh, the calorie count for your average lumpia um, so I can call my shot on you know what flavor. Because uh, unlike the old Dibs, uh, yeah. Liana, uh, your boy's counting calories a little bit. So I'm I eat it. Yeah, it used to be I would have had 20 pieces and not worried about it. But Slim Dibs yeah, over here, no. Dim, Dan Slimly, uh, as Lucas calls me. <laughs> so I think uh, pork might be the call. Is that your go-to, Liana? I mean, I would do I would do ground beef. Honestly, I'm not a big pork person, but yeah. I mean, pork is the most flavorful. So I, we can do half and half. It's no problem. I just you know. Yeah, just just I am, just. Uh, I'm busy conceding and. That's very nice. I appreciate of you. it. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, uh, Liana. Yeah, the only request I would make is yeah, make sure there's some meat in there. I don't want to do a veggie lumpia. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's okay. all I but but all I don't right. care what else uh, outside of that. Liana, thank you very thank much. Thank you, Liana. And uh, all right, love you guys. Yeah. We'll see you. You too. And yeah. make, make the normal amount, and I'll eat Dibs's portion too. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. There she goes. Making food bets, and then you go on a diet. It's I owe you donuts, you and do. she owes us lumpia, yep. and you know I'm I'm gonna eat it, as you like to say. Mm. But uh, I'm gonna eat it. Are you? Yeah. I'll, it'll it'll be an allocation sensation in terms of calories, okay. and uh, I will I'll clear the schedule so that I can uh, give her my a proper my appropriate attention to her lumpia. I love a good cook. Because she's literally like, I'll pay up the bet, but I can't just bring this to the studio because it's not going to taste right, right, and I'm not putting bad food into the universe. I like that. You could tell that she was like, she's torn up about this. So, anyway. Maybe we bring her in and just uh, have her do her work here in the oh. kitchen. <laughs> B-Y-O-F, bring your own fryer. Come here and cook. No, there's no oven or stove. No. But plug in the deep fryer right, right there in the yeah. kitchen. We'll get one of those George Foreman grills and everything will be fine. Let's go to uh, Gene in Oakland. Hi, Gene. What are you doing? Uh, I just came from the park with the dog. It was a uh, anticipation sensation. I bet it was. That's a buck. I bet it was. It probably was a defecation sensation. sensation. I know it was too easy, Gene. Wait for the yeah. <laughs> yeah. good dog. Anyways, good dog. Yeah. Good dog. <laughs> By the, yeah, she's a good dog. Oh, by the way, uh, I'd, I'd order some of the Punfit noodles if you're going to get Filipino food. Yeah, we're not we're not placing an order here, Gene. This is a listener <laughs> who's who's cooking something. She doesn't have a menu. Oh, all right. Yeah, she's. I mean, my gosh, <laughs> let, let, she can. Liana, you cook whatever the hell you want, and we will be grateful. All right, Gene. <laughs> well, I was getting ready to invite myself to. All right. Anyways, turning to the uh, playoffs. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, my concern all along, as it has been for the last few years, has been fatigue. Okay, especially as they're they're older, and uh, you know, I, and towards that end, I mean, it doesn't matter quite so much to me uh, when they play who. In fact, uh, you know, if, if fatigue is indeed an issue or becomes an issue, they might actually be better off playing Denver early on than if they you know, say they meet them in the championship game because they're going to be you know <laughs> have. Uh, stronger and more lively legs under them than they will by then. So, um, and then as far as, you know, what's going to happen at the end of the season, I would expect it to be pretty nuanced. I don't think it's going to matter. Well, I would say that how soon they go out of the playoffs uh, certainly is a factor, but who they're playing, how well they're playing them, uh, money, of course, I think there's just going to be a lot of factors that are going to be cranked in to determine steps will be no the th over. there's no doubt and gene thank you always good to hear from you and i'm glad your dog is feeling a few pounds lighter uh here, good dog good dog yeah thank you yeah here <laughs> now here's what fit said when we asked him how much of the off season depends on what happens next week take a listen that would be kind of ridiculous to just we're going to base the entire you know off season on what happens a week from now the, the Warriors have proven they're a 50 win team probably 50 plus wins they're super deep you know having Chris Paul's amazing as the backup point guard Steph Clay Draymond are still very good players Trace and Brandon have been a knock out of the park draft GP2 is a huge Swiss Army knife defensively you know and Wiggins has been played his best basketball the last two and a half months. The difference is, and this is the one I can't answer, the owners have paid a huge amount of money. 
and salary. You know, the Warriors' luxury tax bill is bigger than the payrolls of many of the other teams in the league. So how sustainable is that? So you have financial decisions with Chris Paul and with Clay and, and things like that, and you have payroll decisions on how they look. But that, that Mike Dunleavy's been evaluating this for months. I, I, I highly doubt whatever happens in a week all of a sudden informs, you know, every decision that they're going to make in the offseason. Yeah, I, I will agree with this. And I said earlier when we were talking about this that six playoff wins, not play-in wins, six playoff wins, that's the baseline to where this suddenly gets interesting. In other words, whatever their plan is right now, I don't think it changes unless they at least win that many. Because in, in order for it to change, the Warriors don't just have to make noise. The Warriors would actually have to do something that makes it look like they are still able to contend for a championship with this particular roster. I think that's highly unlikely. I think it's also just getting ahead of ourselves to even talk about or think about. Right. Like right now... Again, focused on these three games and either the game or two games that are potentially on the schedule for next week. Nothing really kicks into gear until those go well. And by the way, they might need to go undefeated in those four or five games for it to even matter. Right, and if they they go undefeated in those games and they get into the playoffs, then you know it might feel like uh, found money for Warriors fans. But I do agree with Bob in that... Mike Dunleavy and company have an idea of what they're going to do. Probably a firm idea, and they probably know what the course is that they're going to chart as it pertains to all of the question marks on their roster. I don't know if anything would change that course other than a really deep run into the playoffs that might, and they might already have come to the decision that, yeah, we like our roster. We think that things went south this year that next year won't go south and we are going to bring everybody back that we can and we're truly going to try this again i i think that they know in their minds what they would like to do this offseason already yeah I, and i know that i wonder if joe lacob doesn't and again we're running the risk of falling into offseason talk we won't do it but i i wonder if joe lacob if you could really get him into a private space and go did you did you want to say on the podcast that that potentially big changes were coming this off season because I think what happens to people's brains is when you say that you use the word big. So how are we supposed to think? Well, let's think big. And I just don't think any big changes. Um, I don't think that they exist. You know what I mean? That's how we end up having conversations about Giannis Attentacumpo, which for, for God's sakes, like right. what on earth does that even mean right now? How would that look? How would you get there? Why would that happen? There's not like, that's just, and that's why, that's one of, there are many reasons, but it's one of the reasons that I've, I've actually done mental work here to just block all of that out. Doesn't mean my optimism for next week changed at all. I can acknowledge they're playing well. Could they come out of this thing? Absolutely. Absolutely. But I just want to do this. I just want to do this and then worry about the rest right. later because- uh, so much of what I think a lot of us are thinking about and talking about is it, it, it runs the risk of, of being run irrelevant before we even get there. It just all depends on how all of this goes. And, you know, you can't get to the off season until your season's over. And when your season's over, then we can talk about off season stuff. And we've done it with every team. We did it with the 49ers after the Super Bowl, after a one or two week mourning period. Then we got into the Brandon Ayuk portion of the show where we're following all of his social media Man, accounts. That and got quiet, by you the way. Know, yeah, of course it did, because it's quiet season. There's nothing to say right now. Not really, if you think about well, it. Well, when it's, you get closer to the draft. We're pretty close. When we get to the week of the draft. The draft is still two weeks away, right, if um, I'm not mistaken? It, it, two weeks from today, I yes, think. The yes. 25th. Correct. On a Thursday, so Correct. did you guys see what Ayuk put on his Instagram story today? Did not. Did not. Uh, okay. The Hello, dog Mark emoji. Randy. The dog emoji, the okay. house emoji, followed by only place for a big dog. Is Ooh. the dog house. Ooh. So the only place for a dog is in the a dog, big dog house. A big dog. So is he saying that he's back in Kyle Shanahan's dog house? Or at least he's referencing that he once was in Kyle Shanahan's dog house. Mm. Good and times. Yeah, he's a, he's a dog. He's a big dog. Brandon's not happy. But... These things make you uncomfortable. You know what would make Brandon happy? A contract. Four years and $100 million with $70 million guaranteed. Mm. That would make him happy. 
cash me out one time. I actually don't know that it would. Well, I don't, I don't know that he would sign that. I think he would sign that. Four and a hundred seventy seventy million guaranteed. Twenty five a year, on average. Yeah, the average annual, which is what uh, Debo's making a little less than that. There are only six receivers, I think, who make an average of twenty five a year. Right, but if that's, that. But that's mm, that's the past now. I, I I'm telling right. you, man. Every every couple of years, there 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 comes a contract that that messes with the wide receiver market. Two years ago, it was Christian Kirk, who's a solid player, don't get me wrong, but when he made $18 million, there were so many receivers that went, well, I'm worth more than 20 now. And then Tyreek went and got 30 So what did Calvin Ridley get? That's the one. That's the one this year. Ridley got uh, 92 over four. Ugh. Average of 23. So, gonna be, it's going to be tough. It's well, going to be tough because Brandon is significantly better than that. He's better than that. He's significantly and, well, better and than that. I this think year. Ridley has the upside to be as good as Ayuk, if not better, but he's coming off of his own mm. off field issues, right? He missed a whole year. I mean, for gambling. Yeah. Stupid, but he missed a year. Yeah. So I think that Calvin Ridley is as good as Ayuk when he's at his best. But if I'm the 49ers and I look at 4 and 100 with 70 guaranteed. And Ridley's guarantee, I believe, is 50. It is. So he got 50 out of 92 guaranteed. If I'm offering Ayuk 100 with 70 guaranteed and he says no, well, then um, yeah, go, ahead, go ahead and play your, go ahead and go play your option year. Play yeah. your option year, and we'll see how you, you, you take it when you're only playing for 14, and we'll see how that year goes, mm. and then maybe we franchise you. The Niners do this well. And 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 they do it better than most of us fans do. Yeah. And, and what that is is that they've got the stomach for this. Um, they have the stomach for this. Uh, we watched it with Debo, and there were moments where it very much looked like Debo and the 49ers were headed for a divorce, but the Niners stayed true the whole time. They're like, no, we got no intention of doing that. The Brandon one, though, is a little bit interesting. Don't you feel like... When the 49ers talked about Debo, they're like, we're not interested in trading Debo. The tone with Brandon has been like, yeah, we don't want to trade Brandon. So we'll see. It's just a subtle difference yeah. of we don't want to. However, we do see a scenario where we're going to have to, where either Brandon is asking for too much or the, the 49ers have decided that the timing is off. Because, quite frankly, the Niners would probably like to wait one more year and see how Debo does. Because if they are of the opinion that they got to pick one or the other, they might want to wait one more Debo year, see if he gets through another year healthy, and then, who knows, maybe they sign up for more Brandon and less Debo. Maybe Debo's the one that you move. I don't know. I don't know. But this one runs at least the risk of being the next DeForest Buckner, yeah, which is the homegrown star. Um, and when it's time for a second contract, the 49ers feel like we want this guy, but he's just asking too much. I know that that's how they felt about DeForest. They wanted to keep him, but they felt like his demands were unreasonable, so they moved on. And by the way, you could make the argument, it bit him in the butt. So also, add that into this conversation. They've only done it once. Homegrown star, and they decide to move off him. They've done it once, and it burned him in the butt. So do you want to do it again? Because they don't like doing it. Um, and, and they're 0 for 1 when they do do it. So I still lean in the direction of they will figure this out, and it's only April, and so it's Instagram month. Yeah, it is. But it's not trade month. It's no. just Instagram month. Well, the trading would happen in the next couple of weeks. And if it is going to go down, it would probably happen the day of or the day before the draft. And I think part of it that is complicated is I don't know if you'll get a first-round pick for Brandon Ayuk if you were to trade him in similar fashion to when you traded DeForest I, Buckner. I think you would. I think you would. For Buckner, you got the 13th pick in the draft. Right. And you took the 13th pick and you moved back one spot in a trade with Tampa Bay. You picked up an additional pick and you drafted Javon Kinlaw. 
So that wasn't necessarily a win for the Niners no, in I mean. that it, it the him player in the that you got. It bit him in the butt because the player that you got was not good enough to even be a facsimile replacement to DeForest Buckner. But I don't know if you would get a first-round pick I can tell you the Bu- Buffalo Bills give you the 28th pick for Brandon Ayuk right now. Well, what did they get for uh, for Diggs when they just traded him? Second it? rounder. Right. Right, and he's better than Brandon Ayuk, I would say. Ooh. Although he's a little bit more of a of a puzzle. I would argue that he's younger and Ayuk is way less of a headache. Way less. I got a thing about Stefan Diggs, man. I just think that that, that Well, the more teams you go to, the more right. it becomes a head scratcher, well, right? You know my thing. When you start going multiple places and each time you're like, gosh, they're awful to me. And then they're awful to me. And then they're awful to me. And everyone's an idiot. And I go, you know, at a certain point, could you maybe ask the question, could it be you? What's the common thread between every time you don't get along? And when you're a wide receiver and your career has been spent with Kirk Cousins and Josh Allen, I know with the Vikings there was some pre-Kirk Cousins stuff. But when that's your career, dude – you're lucky. You've had it good. Like, you, you you could be Hollywood Brown and be running around with Kyler Murray. You, like, that could happen. You could be a Panthers receiver right now. You, you didn't, you're with Josh Allen and you're mad. What the hell's going on there? Why do you keep having these same things happen everywhere you go? I he doesn't get enough targets, man. I, <laughs> Here are his targets the last four years. Targets. Go ahead. 166, 164, 154, 160. Jesus. Catches. 127, 103, 108, 107. He's on a Hall of Fame track. Absolutely. He's got 810 catches in nine years. He's averaging 90 catches a year. He's a great player. And he's But he's always mad. I know. It's, he's always mad. And you know, something else caught my eye that you'll think is just like, well, that doesn't matter. It's kind of a joke. But it's just something that stuck with me when I first saw it. You remember the uh, Netflix thing, quarterbacks? Yeah. Okay. So they're following Cousins with the Vikings. And they're playfully going through the Viking locker room. And they're asking every guy, hey, if there's one guy here on your team that you would not let watch your kids for the day, who would it be? I'm telling you they went to 20 guys and 19 of them said Diggs. Mm. And they did it with a smile and a little tongue-in-cheek, but I was also like, huh, that's a lot of the same answer. What's going on there? And so then he talks his way off of that team, got all upset. Then he talks his way off the Bills and started ripping Josh Allen on Twitter the night before the trade. And so now he's off to the Houston Texans. And if I'm D'Amico Ryans, I have concerns. I've got two really good young receivers who are now going to be mentored by Stephon Diggs, who's mad every single game. Ah, I look, it's they turned it into a one year deal so they can get out of that thing next year if it doesn't go well. But uh, he's a great player, but I I, I'm tiptoeing into that one. If I, you know, the whole, oh, the fantasy world, here comes Stefan Dick. A lot of mouths to feed, a lot of big egos at a position that has really big egos. Yeesh. I don't know, man. I still think that uh, he got, they got more compensation for Diggs than the Niners would for for Brandon Ayuk. Oh, I don't think, I think. that at all. Yeah, it's no, just. No, because, because. They got Diggs, a second and they got a fifth, but they had to send a sixth to right. Houston. So it was a late round swap, essentially. But the Bills. They got were, a second. But the Bills were getting rid of him because he's a problem. He's a problem. And he's already gotten paid. Right. So, you know. Well, you have to pay Brandon Ayuk if you acquire him. And not you're right have to away. Pay him. Well. Not right away, you don't. Depends on how that goes over with Ayuk. If you trade him, you're going to make him play out his fifth-year option on his well, new no, team? You can't tear up a, a football contract. But you'd want to extend him if you were the acquiring team. Right, but it's going to be a year before that money actually kicks in. So you like if you're going year-to-year on your salary cap, your Brandon Ayuk number next year is not that big. Right, it actually it's goes a, down if you extend right, him. It's way less than Stephon Diggs' number, that's for sure. And you're getting a younger receiver who's ascending versus... 
an older one who's probably pretty soon to descend. He's thirty, yeah. so I I haven't seen any signs of a uh, of a descent but in his game. But that's when it happens in football. Is thirty for that's running backs? To yeah, you know, to a degree, everybody. I don't know. I, mean, I just football, don't. I don't think that fast. the market for Brendan Ayuk in the trade market would be enough to command a first. Mm. If I had a first round pick and I was in need of a wide receiver, and you make Buffalo as a great example, could you draft a guy? At uh, what Buffalo's picking, like 24, 28, 20, 28, 28. 28. Can you find a wide receiver at 28 that could be as good as Brandon Ayuk before his contract runs out? I would hope the answer is yes, mm. as opposed to sending that pick for Ayuk and having to pay him $25 million a year yeah, starting next year. I always feel like those picks, it's worth it when you're like, okay, this is the position we want, and you're like, well, you have a known quantity. Or, or the unknown quantity. Yes, the unknown quantity is cheaper, yep. but the known quantity is what? It's the known quantity. If I'm the Bills, I'm in win-now mode. I'm not in, let's see if this guy can be good. I, like, absolutely, I would take Brandon Ayuk with, for, in exchange for the 28th pick. If you want a receiver, and there are some very good ones in this draft, supposedly. Yep. i got to start adding that word in because we've done that too many years. It's a great quarterback draft. No, it's not. No, it's not. Three years ago, amazing quarterback draft. It was. No, it was Trevor Lawrence and a bunch of junk. Well, and Trevor Lawrence has turned out to be maybe not as good as advertised. I think the he's jury's good. still out. Yeah, I think he's good. I don't know if he's going to be great. He's good, right? Yeah, I he's mean, good. Yeah, he's good. But it was not a great quarterback draft. So it's supposedly a good receiver draft this year. We'll see. But especially all the way down at 28, yeah. Now I got Josh Allen. I need to win right now. But g give me someone who I know. I don't have to worry about growing them and are you going to be okay and blah, 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 all that stuff. Like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going with someone who I know is going to come in and perform right away. But we'll see, man. Yeah. The, the, the sound of it is not good, but the sound of it is usually not good in, uh, in April. Debo didn't sound good in April. Right. Either. And he didn't get signed until well after the draft. So, some Niner fans will be holding their breath as the draft approaches. I don't think that the 49ers are going to trade Brandon Ayuk. I'd be surprised. You know, even if you were able to get a first round pick, even if you wound up picking, what, 28 and 31 in this year's draft, if you got Buffalo's first this year and you had 28 and 31, and maybe you could package those two to move up into the teens or even a little bit higher and get a player that you really, really love, you still need to get a receiver because you're a team that runs. 21 personnel with two wide receivers, and right now you've got two great wide receivers who fit what you do. You've got two physical guys, one who can run the ball a ton, both are good blockers, both know your scheme, both fit your quarterback. It doesn't feel like a team in win-now mode would want to take that risk to I agree. do away yeah. with one of its two key receivers for for what? To draft a guy yeah. and hope he fits? Yeah. Doesn't I, make sense. I but. Would hope not. Yeah. Um, Willard and Dibbs, glad you're with us. We're moving toward Warrior basketball against the Blazers here in just about an hour and a half. Uh, now let's go uh, Let's go live to the other room where Mark Randy has this Warriors injury update. Yeah, we already knew about Clay and Draymond. They're both out tonight. GP2 has been added to the injury report. He is also out tonight with left calf tightness. Uh, Dario Saric has been upgraded to probable okay. for tonight's game. Uh, we can play a little bit of a game without Clay, without <laughs> Draymond, without GP2. Can you guess the Warriors starting five tonight? Um, okay, you have the starting lineup. Um, I will go. Uh, I will go. Steph Curry. I agree with you, Mark. Okay, I will go. Draymond. Oh, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. no. Uh, so I'll go. Don't Trace, talk about that. Trace Jackson Davis. I agree. Um, let's go. You we get and, Wiggy with Andrew it? Wiggins. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Three out of five done. I know which the other two that I would pick. I would pick uh, Kaminga and Pajemski. I'm gonna go with uh, Paul and Kaminga. Dibs is correct. All right. All right. Good job. Thank Congratulations. you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. I you, think the you uh, coaching. Yeah, I Chris should Paul be. Chris Paul starting. Yeah, I I don't know. I feel having, like I owe Alan Styles dinner or something like that. I, I feel like with uh, 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, R- I was going to say RIP to Allen, no, but he's he still with die. us. Yeah, yeah exactly. He's in Sacramento. This is adorable. I, I just thought that uh, he actually is. I thought that it fits better with having Chris Paul run the point and, you know, Steph yep, can do what he do. does and run around and, and jack the trays. And I think Podjemski's starting to show uh, a comfortability on the bench. He hit that rookie wall, but of the last couple of games, he started to play better in that second unit. Okay, so Kaminga and Wiggins together yep. on the flow uh, coming up here in just a little bit, and they will be playing Children of the Blazers. That's who's uh, on the other side tonight. Uh, Grandy did not give you the full Portland Blazers injury report because it's just one word. Uh, everybody. Right. Everybody is out for the Blazers. So people in Blazers jerseys and the Warriors – just over an hour and 20 minutes away. Okay. Um, glad you're with us. We're sponsored by Crystal Geyser Natural Alpine Spring Water. It's Willard and Dibs. Still got time for your phone calls. And in addition to continuing to get you ready for the Warrior game, this is kind of fun. Coming up next, what prosecutors have presented as evidence against Ipe Misuhara in the Otani case. Wait until you hear this list. This will blow you away. That's coming up on Willard and Dips. At Crystal Geyser.
no. We're in the freaking bay. Now, back to Willard and Dibs on 95.7 The Game. Oh, yeah. It's almost about that time. Oh, yeah. Here comes Grandy, everybody. Warrior basketball. And you got a little uh, a little three-day coming. You get off tomorrow. Uh, Ellen Willard is turning 80. That's so great. Ellen Willard, and, and she's actually not turning 80 for another uh, 11 days. But uh, this was the weekend that we could celebrate. I'll be just straight honest with the audience. Uh, Ellen is turning 80 this weekend because next weekend the Warriors are in the play-in tournament. Right. So, uh, Ellen, we're doing 80 this weekend. We're right. not doing 80 next weekend because... Mark's not available next weekend. No, hopefully so, next weekend go. is game one, Warriors at yeah. Minnesota, yeah. OKC, yeah. or Denver, most likely Minnesota or OKC. Uh, I'm hoping if they get to that seven, it's a Warrior game one on the road kind of weekend. Yeah, we we looked ahead at this. Uh, Mr. Nahagian and I sat down a few weeks ago, and we're like, they might have a really big basketball game on Friday the 18th, like a really, really big oh, right, basketball right. game. And so, um, so let's do this weekend, and uh, and that's what we're doing. So awesome. Yeah. So yeah, we're heading down. We're heading down, and we're gonna uh, we're gonna take her out to a to a big old dinner and and toast, and everybody will be there, and it'll be awesome. So so anyway, yeah. Thank you, Larry Kruger, and uh, you be nice to him, and I'll tell him to be nice to you. And I'll tell I'll tell him to stop being so negative, even though I haven't even heard him talk yet. No, and yeah. uh, if you so want to know who the 49ers are going to take in each and every <laughs> round of the NFL draft, tune in tomorrow, 2 to 6. Larry's seven-round mock. Oh, God. We're going to mock it up. We're going to do the full mock arena. I'm just going to tee him up. Larry, uh, Larry, Niners with their third-round comp pick. Who do you like? Seriously. Well, Dibs, I'm glad you asked me that. There's a, there's a long snapper. Who's your Big 12 sleeper? That's what I want you to okay. ask. I, I need hey, to Larry, that. who's okay. your Big 12 sleeper? What'll be the funniest thing is not what he says. It'll be that there's no pause. Oh, yeah. Who's your Big 12 sleeper? Well, Dibs, I, it'll be... Dibs, there's an edge rusher <laughs> out of Kansas State I've had my eye on. He's got eye motor. Totally. Even it, Just go to Larry's Twitter <laughs> and, like... Three out of every four tweets is, uh, I think the people are missing out on this Temple tight end. He's a six-round six grade on him. Love, Larry. Yep, I'm looking yep. forward to tomorrow. But then again, then again, we sat there and laughed at him for months when he's like, I'm telling you, don't worry if if Jimmy doesn't play. This Brock Purdy guy, yeah. he's good. And we were like, that's nice. What? Who cares? What's a Purdy? Why do we Stop care? Whopping me. Yeah, totally. why do we care about the third string quarterback? Larry, stop watching YouTube. I don't care about stop. Iowa State football. Stop it. Yeah, well, he was right. Yep. He was right Score right. one stop for the crew. Me. <laughs> I can't right, wait. No, Larry no. tomorrow, two to six. Whooping. It's going to be whooping cough uh, between Dibs and Larry Kruger. Stop whooping me. No, we'll never stop. Never stop. Can't stop, won't stop. Yep. Warriors and people in Blazers jerseys, about an hour and 20 minutes away. Uh, Kings and Pelicans will play as well. Um, it's that kind of night in the National Basketball Association. This is big. And I truly uh, find the Kings-Pelicans game to be enjoyable because I have a rooting interest. However, if it doesn't work out, the, it, it's like, remember Price is Right when Bob Barker would yeah. have hole-in-one? Or two yeah. is like, if it doesn't go well, we got another option. And and I feel that way tonight about the Kings-Pelicans game. Want the Pelicans to win, but if they don't, okay. Forget the Kings. The Pelicans are the target now. Right. And, um, and, and that is equally doable and possible. Not likely, but doable and possible. So if the Warriors just take care of their own games... And that's largely pointing to tomorrow night. If they can take care of that game, uh, the eight seed is very much still in play. Yeah, a Pelicans loss combined with a Pelicans loss on Friday to those Warriors would put the Warriors one game back of the Pelicans. They would hold the tiebreaker. The Pelicans would face the Lakers in the final game of the year on Sunday. So a three-game losing skid by the Pels combined with a three wins from the Warriors the Warriors would jump the Pels, and Golden State would be the eight. Yep, yep, which would be big. That would be big. Can you imagine being, let's say, in Sacramento 
next Tuesday for an opportunity to be the seventh seed and go play Minnesota. Be great. And uh, now that starts to feel like, oh, they could do that. For sure. They can do that. No Malik Monk? Yep. Okay. All right. So um, this is on the table. All right. Before we hop on out of here and get Warriors Live going, this is unbelievable. Now, you were off for some of these shows. Yep. But FP and I ended up in this whole law and order thing about the Shohei Otani deal. And we very much have reached a point of like, okay, it does appear uh, that there was, at least the accusations are, that there was high-level federal criminal behavior from the interpreter, Ipe Mizuhara, uh, directed against Shohei Otani. However, there is still confusion, and I will still say to my grave, I still don't think we've got anywhere near the whole story. No. And there's no way, I, I do not believe... That that somebody didn't know something in the Shohei camp. I don't believe it. However, listen to this list. Prosecutors have presented evidence against Ipe Mizuhara. This is what they believe they have. Ipe set up Otani's bank account for him since his arrival in the U.S. Ipe was the one responsible for making all purchases for Shohei Otani helping him get settled in the country. Within a few years, Mizohara had changed the settings on Otani's account and linked it to his own phone. He had full access to everything. Yep. That's number one. He set it up so he knew how to get to the money. Next, prosecutors have forensic computer evidence in the form of IP addresses and location data that show all transfers and bets came from Ipe's house and devices. Okay. All bets. And that's 19,000 bets over the course of eight, 800 days. Correct. Which is 25 bets a day yes. on average. And and some of them as high as $160,000. Some of them as low as $10. 10 bucks. What was he losing confidence about with that one? Yeah. He's like, I don't know. He's a horse. It. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I think that's a $10. Yeah. That was probably on the Warriors back when uh, Steph was hurt or something. And no like bets on baseball, by no, the way, of no. those 19,000 bets. Prosecutors have multiple call recordings with Ipe and the bank where Mizuhara is pretending to be Otani. Hi, this is Shohei Otani. <laughs> You're listening to Shohei Otani. This is James Watson. Totally, that's what I was going for. I just... <laughs> it's amazing. No, no, hi, this is Shohei. Right. Yeah, no. Uh, authorizing the wire transfers. That's one of the big questions we had. Yep. How the hell How the hell do you do this? Okay. Prosecutors confiscated both Otani's and Ipe's phones. They read every single text message for seven years. Zero instances where betting or wiring or money ever came up. Thousands of messages between Ipe and the bookmaker, including texts, where Ipe admits to stealing from Shohei. There is also a text where the bookmaker says to Ipe, hey, I know this is all a cover-up, that you're taking the fall. Right. And Ipe goes, well, technically I did steal from him. Right. Um, and then he wrote, I'm done for. He's right on that, by the way. All right, back to the list. All of the gambling winnings, this was another question. How is the money only going out of Otani's? Did you never get a bet right? Ever? All of the winnings that Ipe made were transferred into his own bank account, not Otani's. Genius. So the money out from one account, the money in to another account. Out with the Otani, in with the Matsuzara. The bookmaker has admitted to prosecutors under oath that he knew Otani was not a client and that Ipe admitted the truth to him. Ipe did not just steal money for gambling, but also other leisure purchases. Ready for this? 325 k to buy baseball cards on eBay. Got to get a Mike Trout. <laughs> Got to get that Mike Trout rookie card. It's the stupidest thing So ever great. Heard. Every bet slip was made with the bookmaker. They number in the tens of thousands. Ipe did not make any bets on baseball. Otani did not make any bets at all. So that is the standing... Of prosecutors. Right. And unless they have some other way to prove that Otani did make these bets through the uh, the interpreter, 
I find it curious that he was averaging 25 bets a day. A lot. Yeah, it. I mean, and, and how did the bookmaker just give him that much of a line of credit? Did the bookmaker know that he was tapping into the account? I still don't think we have all the questions answered, but this definitely looks good for Shohei Otani. Unfortunately, it appears Otani will be in the lineup for the rest of the year. Yeah, no doubt. Um, all right, here comes uh, Warriors Live with Grandy, brought to you by Fremont Bank, full-service banking, no compromises. It's the Warriors against portions of the Blazers tonight. Uh, Want to do it again tomorrow? Not with you. Okay, sounds good. For Dibs, for Grandy, for Lucas, I'm Mark. Shoot your shot. It is all you got. Made to shine. Real stories from Shane Company customers. We met later in life. I liked his dimples. Both of ours.